Arc Omega. Arc Hybrids. Taming everything while on hardcore. These are just some of the challenges I faced throughout this 1000 days. It was my goal to try and defeat a massive variety of these challenges across the many different maps of Arc. So, strap yourself in for this colossal sized movie and be prepared to witness the psychoticness, uh, wait, hold on, uh, I mean the fun of trying to complete these trials. And if you do enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more. Welcome to Ark Ragnarok. One of the best maps found across all of the Arcs and we have exactly 100 days to beat the bosses of the Ragnarok map, which include the Dragon and the Manticore. As well as that, we have 100 days to tame up all 98 creatures found on Ragnarok. Will we be able to do it? We're going to find out. And so the journey begins on the Viking Bay Beach. We wake up surrounded by compies. Thankfully, none of them are game enough to try and attack us. And uh, we give ourselves a bit of a scratch there. Got a bit of an itch. And we head out and start gathering our basic materials. Not too sure what we want to try and tackle first. Whether or not we want to try and get a tame or go for experience or even set up a base. But nonetheless, we start by gathering some fiber, some berries and some stones so that we can build our beginning starter tools. Once we had made ourselves some cloth armor, we decided to go back to picking some berries, trying to farm up some resources and just get some extra levels to get ourselves started on the Ragnarok journey. However, to prove and make sure that everything was on hardcore mode, we decided to end our life. So once again, back with a wiped carry, we then decided to repeat everything that we had just done, grab a bunch of fiber, grab ourselves a mangrams, all the resources that we need, learn everything we need, grab ourselves some levels, harvest up some resources, and thankfully we also managed to find some prey with this poor Lystrosaurus. We harvest this bad boy up for some juicy, juicy hide. However, our spears just tend to break whenever they feel like it. And we go ahead and harvest up the Lystrosaurus. I then spotted a 145 Pteranodon on the beach, so we decided to bowler it. Now, we only had a boomerang at this stage due to the sand on the beach, so I went ham on it, and thankfully, we were able to knock it out. Although it did cop a couple of hits after we had knocked it out. Nice. High on the idea of having a 145 Pteranodon, I then went out and proceeded to kill and harvest everything in sight for some hide. I then stumbled upon a Pigomastix, which I decided to tame and call Pinch. Our very first tame of the season decided definitely needed a name. Once we tamed up Pinch, I made my way back to the Pteranodon, pumped some narcotics into it in hopes that it would tame up off this raw meat that I put in. Didn't have really much of an option, couldn't find any prime meat. I then went ahead and killed a turtle to try and get enough keratin in order to make the PT saddle. Thankfully, I managed to hit exactly the right amount of chitin and we tamed up the Pteranodon and called it Flaps. So, first day was a huge success getting a 145 Pteranodon. It did lose quite a few levels with the raw meat tank, but all in all, I was more than happy with how the day went. Day two began and we spotted a Megalosaurus that was cruising around on the beach earlier. I had the smart idea to go ahead and try and tame it. Are you sure so about I spent that? the morning of day two carefully, strategically looking at the Megalosaurus and deciding whether or not I wanted to tame it. Instead, I did find a trike and I crafted up a bunch of narcotic and trank arrows to try and get this guy knocked out. Now, at this stage, I had already completely forgotten that we were playing on a hardcore version of this map and I was game enough to try and face tank the trike. But I opted to fly up to a mountainside and trank it from a safe distance. It only took a few hours because it was a low level trike at level 20 and it started running away from us because it couldn't hit us and its torpor was high. We knocked it out successfully and then fed it a bunch of Mejo berries and narcotics to try and tame it. I then made my way over to the Megalosaurus and so began the very slow, tedious method of knocking out the Megalosaurus. I only had a set amount of Trank Arrows and those ran out very quickly. So I then resorted to my trusty Boomerang from the land down under to try and knock out the Megalosaurus. He took quite a few hits and started running from us and we successfully managed to knock it out without losing our life in the process. So hey, that's always a bonus in my books. I then went ahead and found some crystal notes so that I could make myself a spyglass because we were gonna need it if I had any intention of taming up any future tames. And I also managed to find some primate from some stegos. I learned the trike saddle and we began our harvesting methods with the trike. 
together a bunch of Narco berries and Mijo berries for future adventures. I managed to tame the Megalosaurus up successfully. It was only a low level. Before I got ransacked by a goddamn seagull and stole 100 of my Narco berries and decided to eat them in front of me. The wee bastard definitely had this arrow to the head coming. I then went ahead and made up a bunch of narcotics because we were going to try and tame up an Argy. I made myself a smithy, made myself metal tools and a crossbow, and I went ahead setting up the Argy trap. I flew out, found a 150 Argy, cut it into the trap, and uh, yeah, this, this was a painful experience. This took nope. me much longer than it should have, considering I'm a seasoned Ark veteran. Three times on nope. the Argy trap, and the bastard still managed to elude us. It was, uh, it was frustrating to say the least. My brand new Pteranodon already at half health, struggling to stay alive, but we managed to successfully trap the 150 RG, and I set about knocking this poor sucker out. It took us quite a few Trank Arrows, but thankfully, because we had tamed up the Trike, I had plenty to spare. So, the 150 RG was successfully knocked out. I did have to tame my shots because I was worried I was going to murder it. I then went ahead and killed a Bronto for some prime meat to try and tame up this 150 Argy, as I didn't really want to risk losing a lot of taming effectiveness. So, with all this prime meat, we then made our way back to the Argy and stuffed it full of the good stuff. However, my Megalosaurus did eat some of it on the way over there, but nonetheless, we still managed to tame up our brand new Argy. At 150, this guy was going to be key for going ahead and gathering a bunch of metal and resources for ourselves. And real quick guys, I just wanted to say that if you find yourselves enjoying this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. A lot of time and effort has gone into this video today, so I really would appreciate a like and subscribe. On the morning of day three, I decided to head to the southwesterly islands to try and find a potential base spot. I settled upon this island and kind of liked the way that the ruins were laid out, and I opted to make this my temporary base spot. I then also went ahead and decided to tame up some tech parasaurs because these would be key in allowing ourselves to get resources, electronics, scrap metal, oil, without having to go deep into the ocean at the early stages. I then also found a Anki that I decided to try and knock out because this would be key once again to gathering a bunch of metal to get us started on the Ragnarok map. Once I had run out of Trank Arrows, however, I switched to my Boomerang and still had managed to knock it out. It was a 135 Anki. I then went ahead and made a bunch of Cryopods at Blue Up because, well, I'm going to need a way to transport these dinos around, so what better way than some Cryopods? I then went to the Beaver Dams to get some pace so that we could start making a bunch of different structures. And just because we were already over here, however, Pinch in the process did accidentally get yeeted off my shoulder. And uh, we had an army of beavers after us, so I opted to fly away, rescue Pinch. We couldn't let Pinch go down like that. Pinch was the OG day one tame. Pinch was never going to die at all. We, we just couldn't let Pinch die. Went back to the base, tamed up a female tech parasol so that we could have a breeding pair, and we could harvest the offspring for all the juicy electronics, metal, oil that we could possibly ever need. I then went ahead and started building the foundations of the base. I tested it out to see how it would look. I wasn't entirely for the idea of having the base out here, and I, I don't know, I just wanted it to be flat and nice. I then went ahead and harvested up a bunch of metal with our brand spanking new Anki, built some refining forges to cook this metal, and then I made my way to the swamp to try and tame out a Sarko. We were on the island, so having an amphibious mount would be a good idea. I successfully managed to knock out the 140 Sarko, but I wasn't happy with just this 140 Sarko. So I flew out, taking a look at what else I could find, and lo and behold, I found a 145 female Baryonyx. I set about building a trap for it and kiting it into the trap. However, I had to make sure that Capros couldn't reach us, so I decided to build a little platform on the back of it just to make sure. I then went ahead and decided to trank out the Baryonyx on our little safe platform just to make sure, once again, Capros could not reach us. Successfully managed to knock it out. However, Baryonyxes are a pain in the butt and they require a lot of fish meat, so we had to get that. However, our Sarko had been starved long enough, so I pumped it full of prime meat before trying to dodge some very hungry piranhas underneath us. The Sarko successfully tamed up. I then made my way back to the Baryonyx and pumped it with some raw prime fish meat that we had gotten. And this was key to taming this guy up with some relatively decent levels on it after taming. We did get attacked by a Titan of Bob, but that wasn't an issue. I cried up the Sarko with the remaining food on him. On her, I should say, because it was a female. A lot of our teams were female, and I honestly kept referring to them as hymns, so I apologize. <laughs> the Baryonyx was successfully tamed up. It did lose a few levels, but 
it was still a really solid tank. So we cryoed everything up and decided to go back to base. I then decided I wasn't happy with my base spot and decided to scout out a new base spot and I found a Giga over here near Green Ob. I then went ahead and tamed up some utility dinos such as this poor, poor Dodicarus here. Unable to catch up to us because of its slow little legs, I knocked it out and we left some berries on it to hopefully tame up while we left it. I then made my way to the ice biome where we found a 145 mammoth and I needed this guy in my life. He would be a key harvester and one of the dinos that we would use all the way to the end of the series. So I thought better invest in it now than later when we're going to need a bunch of wood at this moment. So I kited it down from the snow because otherwise I was going to freeze to death and you know, hardcore series and all that, I couldn't really afford to die to the cold. So we kited it slightly down the mountain where I wasn't freezing anymore. And thankfully it wasn't able to get to us for some reason, so I, proceeded, I then proceeded to lob Trank Arrows into its butt until it fell asleep. I then went back out to look for a better base spot and I opted on the Redwoods closer to Green Ob. This would make a great spot for a treehouse, which was something that I had never really built before or spent the time messing around with in Ark. After making my mind up about the base, I then returned and tamed up the Mammoth, which I aptly named Tusker. Makes perfect sense, right? We then proceeded to take Tusker home and ended day four. The morning of day five, we were busy at work in our temporary base, going ahead, building everything we could possibly need for our treehouse base. We were gonna need a lot of metal and a lot of wood to make the treehouse platforms. I also found some really good blueprints for some armor and some saddles. So we made those up and stored them in the smithy. I then also had one tree platform made up, but I wanted to go for a double story treehouse. I still needed oil for some of the structures that we were building for the new base. So I went underwater while keeping a very close eye on my oxygen to make sure that I didn't drown. I then proceeded to return back to base and started loading everything into our RG for the long trek to the green op. I just couldn't make my mind up on a base spot, but I know that I wanted to do it before I went ahead and started building everything because that would be rather chaotic. I chucked my treehouse platform down and uh, this, as you can see, was the S plus one. So they are slightly bigger, well, quite a bit bigger than the vanilla ones, but they do have extra snap points. Thankfully, our RG had enough weight to hold all of our stuff. And then I decided to go ahead and mess around with the S plus tree platform and try and get these snap points to work for me because I needed resources and structures to go ahead and make this an actual base and not just a good old wooden plank floating in a tree. So I finally found the snap point for the stone walls and to say I was a little disappointed was to say the least because some of these structures I had no idea how to use because I was not familiar whatsoever with the S plus tree platforms. So I was trying to make a nice fancy looking base with a dome shaped and a cone top and all this fancy stuff. But for the life of me, I just could not get it to work with me it just it was painstakingly difficult to try and get these things to snap where i wanted them to so i opted to just go ahead and place down some structures so that i could craft some things while i tried to figure out how the hell i was going to design my base and go ahead and work around this obvious structural flaw that we had going on on the morning of day seven i decided i needed a better flyer so I headed out and luck brought me this beautiful, beautiful level 150 Griffin, which mm, wow, piece de resistance was amazing. So I had everything I needed for a Griffin trap. I had already made it up and I decided to head over to a perfect spot to build the Griffin trap. A nice flat ledge slash mountainy terrainy bit that would allow us to kite the griffin up there with nothing else to attack us in the vicinity. I then kited the griffin all the way over to the trap, which honestly wasn't too difficult in hindsight. However, I had a little bit of a uh, round the rosy because I could not trap the griffin to save my damn life. Very similarly to the RG trap, you would think I would have more experience and luck with this, but uh, turns out I'm not as successful as I genuinely thought I am. Except with the griffin this time I am. So we managed to trap the griffin and I then had to go ahead and knock it out with some crossbow arrows. However, I needed to be very careful because of the low health of griffins. They get very low and damaged and you have to time your shots perfectly. Otherwise, you could potentially kill your griffin. 
and you can see here it was oh my heart it was beating through my chest i was gonna explode i was like we can't we can't lose this 150 griffin i had nothing to sacrifice it in terms like this i would go ahead and sacrifice my body for the griffin to eat so that it could restore all its health but this was a hardcore series i didn't have that option this time around i waited the five seconds in between shots and thank the Ark Gods, the Griffin managed to get knocked out. We did have a bit of lean way, however it was looking really bloody and we had no real way to test how much health it had left. While the Griffin was knocked out, I then went ahead and started taming up a bunch of creatures for the Tame Them All achievement. I found some Terror Birds down here that were relatively low of a level and would make some good alternatives to, well, just cruising around and floating everywhere because of their little flapping abilities. I went ahead and bowled the suckers. I didn't really want to get into close combat with these guys because they would freaking kill us. Terror birds are such a pain in the ass. Flaps luckily was nearby and we whistled Flaps to kill one of the terror birds while I got to work on knocking out the other one. Once I had knocked out the terror birds, I had found a 145 saber tooth, which you guessed it. I decided to go ahead and knock this out as well. This guy would be great for going out and gathering a bunch of hide if I ever needed to make up a bunch of saddles or high tier saddles. So I thought, what the hell? Plus it was a 145, you know, I, you, you don't pass up high level teams on Ark. Its friend decided to join in on the party though and we had to train this out as well. However, obviously I wasn't gonna tame this petty level saber tooth. I ain't wasting my time with that sucker. Pretty sure I got knocked out, but it did run away. Flaps was very low at this stage, tanking most of the saber tooth's hits while I was trying to knock it out. But uh, thankfully, I did manage to knock out both of the Sabertooths. Our Griffin was still peacefully asleep, just starving, while I went ahead and set about doing all of these little errands that we had. The Terror Bird, I had to knock out again, but here it was and ready to tame. I had flown to the Highlands and decided to get some mudden. So with the mudden, I tamed up the Terror Bird, thankfully. We did have to wait a little bit longer for it to, to tame up, but that was fine. We had narcotics ready for it and needed one more bite. So it didn't take too long. Thankfully though, by the time the Terror Bird finished taming up, we had tamed up the Griffin as well. Now, I didn't give it a name right away, but I did come up with a name for it later down the line, and that name was Icarus. I wasn't entirely sure on what we should call our first Griffin, but I did settle on Icarus, and uh, I feel like that's a very good name for our Griffin. So we then decided to move on to the Sabretooth. We grabbed the Sabretooth and cried up that sucker, and then we flew back over to the Terror Bird to cryo up that sucker as well. But not before I got ambushed by a Raptor and a Scorpion. And I'm not gonna lie, I shat my pants a little bit because Scorpions can knock us out. And the fact that there was a Raptor there definitely means we could have died there. So I threw Tusk around and decided to give Nicarus a little bit of a helping hand because Icarus wasn't, wasn't the most talented at dealing with them. But with Tusker around, we just absolutely demolished them. So we were A-OK -okay after that. Day 9, I spent the morning trying to figure out how the hell I was going to lay out this base. Honestly, the S Plus Foundations are such a godsend, but at the same time, they are so annoying because the tree foundations were just so much bigger than the standard ones, and trying to line up foundations and everything so that it would snap properly, because I had a specific design in mind. And like you can see here, the more I went around, the more it started not to line up. So I was like of half a mind to just demolish everything and go hide in a hole because I, it just wasn't working for me. So I went ahead and demolished all these foundations that I had placed, and I was like, okay, let's move on from the foundations and we'll go ahead and work on the walls. Because I was like, we need to try and enclose this. I did want to put foundations on the floor because that would help me line everything up in terms of like all the structures. So like the industrial cookers, the forges, all that sort of stuff, which is why I wanted to get some foundations down because with the foundations, I could then use the foundations to snap walls and, and make a nice base because you know, when you're doing these PvE sort of style of videos, you want to have a nice base because that's what majority of the game is going to be about if you're doing on PvE. So I opted to try and enclose everything. I put three of those big wedged pieces above and at this stage I was kind of just messing around with the extra pieces that we had because I had never really experimented with these. And then I found this piece. It was kind of the same as the one that we had already used. However, it had a big gap in the middle of it. So I was like, mm, I'm sure I can figure something out for that. Eventually though, I did manage to build one sort of little segment of the base and you can see here it was a two-story segment the bottom area was going to be for crafting stuff and then the top area was going to be a dino storage so even trying to get this goddamn dinosaur gate took me so freaking long to try and line up and get it straight how i wanted it to 
And even then, I still wasn't really all that happy with it because it placed in reverse. And I literally spent like an hour on this stupid bastard trying to get it to snap the right way. Mind you, these walls weren't even snapped on correctly either. So I gave up on that and we moved on. On the beginning of day 10, I decided to take Icarus out and do a little drop farming. We headed over to the Ice Worm Queen cave, cut it off some die bears because these bastard hit hard in this cave. They're like level 200 or something. And we then went ahead and farmed up all the drops. And I mean, we got some decent stuff. The main thing that we got out of this that was freaking amazing was an Ascendant Long Neck Rifle. Now, this thing was going to be absolutely amazing for taming stuff. It was incredible. We also got some blueprints for a simple pistol and a shotgun, but the long neck alone made that trip so worth it because with a good long neck, you can pretty much knock it, you can knock out anything. I then flew over to the Highlands and lo and behold, I found a goddamn unicorn. I was like, we need to, we need to. Like you, you, you can't pass up a unicorn tank. So I sneakily approached it, tried to insert a carrot into its butt, successfully inserted the carrot. And then we went about taming up the unicorn. Hopefully it doesn't run us off the edge. <laughs> nope, the unicorn decided to yeet itself off a goddamn cliff and reset its taming effectiveness. Mind you, it didn't stop there. No, we decided to yeet off another cliff okay. and then continue to kill ourselves even more and then try to drown ourselves. So at that stage, I was like, you bastard, look at this, going straight into the water for a swim, trying to drown itself. So I gave up on that prospect and went for some wyvern eggs instead. And you can see here, I may have garnered the attention of a poison wyvern and I picked the most opportune time to run out of damn stamina on a hardcore series against a poison wyvern, which can one shot us off the back of our goddamn griffin. So I got as much stamina as I possibly could quickly and I took off. I was like, I am not hanging around for this sucker because I do not want to get shot off the back of my griffin and die. But I checked what level the wyvern was because I wanted to see if there were any decent level legs. And uh, lo and behold, there was a 185 poison wyvern. So I was like, there's got to be a ne an egg over here in this bloody trench. It's just a matter of finding it. So we took Icarus back out and we found the 185 poison wyvern egg. <laughs> yeah, boy. It's in a bit of a weird spot, but we grabbed the egg and we got the hell out of there as fast as we freaking could. Because like I said, hardcore series and wyverns do not go well together. We did cop a fire breath attack, but that actually didn't reach us. The main concern I had was the lightning and the poison wipe. I then headed out to try and find some aloes. I thought, why not? They're going to be strong. We can use them for pretty much majority of the map and possibly even the bosses. So luckily I got pretty lucky finding this 145 here and we got to work trying to trank it out. Although I was a bit worried about this tech raptor killing it, I had to intervene because the aloe was getting a bit bloody. So we decided to knock it back a bit killed the raptor, and then thankfully the aloe consumed the corpse. So we were in a pretty good spot, knocked it out successfully without any issues, and then I headed to the highlands to find some more aloes when disaster struck. Mate boosted. Nope. Oh, <gasps> no. What the shit? Oh no, he despawned. I'm spewing. He must have been in like a weird piss. Oh no. <laughs> Nonetheless, I managed to track down another 150 aloe over in the Highlands. So we got to work separating it from its pack. And uh, we took a couple of them down the bottom there and managed to successfully separate the aloes. So I got to work on trying to knock this one out. It still had its alpha buff though. So I had to kind of cut it away for a bit so that A, it would stop trying to murder us and B, it would take some more damage from the tranks. So thankfully I did manage to get it far away enough so that it lost its alpha buff and I got to work knocking this poor sod out. Got it knocked out successfully. All I had to do now was find a bunch of mudden to hopefully tame up these aloes with very minimal effort. However, I did find one more aloe and this would complete our pack and allow us to breed them because I believe this one was the female. The other two had been males. So I did need a female to get them breeding. Now this was also a 145, I believe. But we tamed them up and decided to take them for a bit of a test run. First up was this juicy looking Bronto. And boy, oh boy, did our aloes absolutely freaking destroy this bastard. He got absolutely melted with the bleed attack. And uh, we figured, why not? Let's take him up against something a little bit stronger and see how they fare. So guys, before we continue the video anymore, I just wanted to say that I've launched my merch site as well. So you guys can now pick up some juicy CJ the Cheese DJ merch. We've got some funky Rex designs with neon colored Rexes and heads and all the stuff located across the channel. So if you're interested in some merch, definitely check it out. I'll leave a link in the comments, but there is a lot of different merch here. So 
I took him up against an Alphacano that had spawned near our base. But before I wanted to take them up against it, I made sure that we had an offspring. Just to make sure anything went wrong, we'd have a baby to fall back on. So we went ahead and decided to try and fight this Alphacano wandering around near our base. I needed to kill it anyway, otherwise we were going to be in a bit of trouble if it managed to come over to our base. And after fighting it for a while, we did manage to successfully bring this Alphacano down. Didn't get any crazy good loot, but we still managed to kill it. Day 14, I decided to dedicate some time to the base because at the moment all we had was a bunch of foundations doing absolutely nothing. So I went ahead and I started making some more structures because I had the bright idea to go ahead and build another treehouse platform underneath. Now this was the vanilla one and I went ahead designing a beautiful treehouse based off of Aaron Long Star's video and a few alterations and alterations, alterations by myself. But uh, nonetheless, this base was going to be our final base and I was much happier with how this area was turning out in comparison to what we had before. So we ended up making quite a large base and honestly it was worth it. We still had the original tree platform above us and we were just going to use that for dino storage whereas this base was going to be our main base of operations. We chucked down some glass walls, chucked down some stone just to make it a little bit fancier and break it up over the monotony of uh, the same type of walls. And you can see here we've got this downstairs section that was all open as well. Put down the forges, we put down all our stations and then I decided to, well, you know what, I don't like them down here, let's move them. So we took them upstairs and put everything upstairs. And I can tell you now the base came out looking a lot nicer for it. I was really happy with how the base was looking after that. And I was more than happy to call this place our home after wandering around for quite a few days trying to find the perfect base spot. Day 15 began and we started gathering. After the metal, I decided to try and get our Rex lines going and I found a 145 Rex here. So we went ahead and knocked it out and then I decided to go for some beaver dams when the unthinkable happened. Griffin, please don't leave me when I try to get back on top of you because I don't want to die to a bunch of beavers. Imagine going out like that to a bunch of bloody beavers. Oh god, looks like reality is about to happen. Come on, Griffin. Icarus, you're going to get destroyed, dude. Get out of there. Come here, you stupid bird. I hope, I really hope it's not, it's going to die. It's going to die. What are you doing? I have no idea what this stupid griffin is doing. It's going to leave us, it's going to fucking kill us. I don't know why it's not listening to us for. What is it fucking doing? Luckily, I had flaps on me in a cryopod, so we threw flaps out and we were able to get away. But the death of Icarus, it was still hard to cope with. So we went ahead to the volcano and decided to tame up a bunch of dung beetles. We were going to try and get our farms up and running as soon as possible so we could get access to kibble. So we tamed up four dung beetles, got them cryoed up, and then we headed over to the highlands to get some mudden for that Rex that we had knocked out. And uh, as you can see, we managed to tame the Rex up with, well, no troubles whatsoever, which is a first for me. It, <laughs> it happens. All right, and then we checked the stats of the Rex. They were okay stats, not amazing, but it was okay health. Melee damage was slightly average, so we weren't really too fast on that. All I knew was that we needed to get more Rexes for this to be enough. We headed back to base and we created a gravestone to commemorate Icarus's contribution to the series. Icarus, mate, we wouldn't have gotten this far without you. So, we created the tombstone for Icarus, forever memorized in our hearts. And then, day 17, we headed out to get some die bears. Like I said, we wanted to get a farm up and running. For the farm, we were going to need honey. So, I figured with the S Plus mod, we could go ahead and get some honey to make the beehives because at this stage in the game with Ark, there was an update and bees were actually bugged where all their beehives actually had no queen bees in them. So you couldn't actually physically tame a giant bee, which is actually one of the creatures that we did not tame in this thing because we it was impossible to tame it. So unfortunately we didn't tame any bees. So a bit of a spoiler there for you guys, but we dragged the corpse over to the Bodai bear to feed it so that we could continue tranking it out because we didn't want to risk killing it. 
So this here was a 145 die bear, and I believe it was a female or something like that, but shooting that bear did get the attention of its friend, which was the male die bear at 140. So we decided to cut him into the trap as well, and you know, two for the price of one, what could possibly go wrong? So we went ahead and started knocking both the dire bears out. We got the female 150 knocked out, and then we started working on the 140 male. And soon enough, he was knocked out as well. So just like that, two brand spanking new dire bears knocked out and ready to go. Got a bunch of mudden or honey, I can't exactly remember, but chucked it in there and then we just waited for them to tame up. All in all, it was a pretty successful day 17. I was happy with how that went. We still needed to make the beehives, but that was fine. We could tackle that at a later date. And there is the 150 taming up perfectly, which was awesome. And the 140 male followed after us shortly. We made the beehives, got those up around the base so that they could also water the crops for us. Because that would cover the range of the crop plots that we had planted as well. Day 18 began and, well, we started off with a little bit of mass murder. Because, you know, nothing gets you going in the morning like some mass murder. And uh, we killed a bunch of baby tech parasols. Like I mentioned earlier, we did need to farm them up for a bunch of scrap metal and oil and element dust and all that good stuff. So we decided to shoot them all and kill them all. And then we were going to harvest them with a chainsaw. Which in hindsight is a little bit morbid, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes. And you can see there all the scrap metal electronics and oil that we were getting was totally worth it. But we did however break the game. One of the parasaurs just wanted to get sweet sweet revenge on us and uh, leave us a big old body to run through and walk around. And I, for the life of me, could not figure out where the hell it was to get rid of it. Day 19 began and I started off with trying to get a Tapihara. There was one that I had spotted, I think it was a 145 that we had found and I was trying to be all sneaky sneaky on it and getting ready to bowler it. It's just up ahead there. And uh, yeah, I missed the bowler and spooked it and it flew away from us. So we had to play the very long waiting game with Tappies and then I missed this bowler shot as well. As you can see, I am definitely not made for PvP because my bowlering is absolutely terrible. But we did get another shot at it and I lined up the perfect shot this time around. I wasn't letting this bastard get the best of me and we loosed our bowler and we managed to successfully bowler the tappy. From here on out, it was a simple trank arrow, trank shot to the head for the tappy to fall asleep permanently. Except it wasn't permanently because we went ahead and decided to tame it up with some good old mudden and we successfully tamed up a 150 Tapihara, which was perfect for our tame all dinos on the Ragnarok map because these guys are rather elusive. Next up, we headed to the snow biome to try and get our hands on some muties. Main reason for this was because I wanted some low level muties to produce eggs because their eggs are one of the highest eggs that you can use to produce kibble, which would be perfect for when we were gonna actually go ahead and try and tame up Rexes and stuff like that and the woolly rhinos as well. That was the main reason why we were trying to get kibble at this stage of the game, because we wanted to tame up woolly rhinos with kibble. Because if we tamed them up with berries, we would lose quite a lot of taming effectiveness. With kibble, however, we would retain that taming effectiveness and result in higher level woolly rhinos. And we wanted some woolly rhinos for the boss fights. So we cried up our two new Yudis that we had tamed, a male and a female pair, and we took them back to base and got them breeding up as soon as possible. Next up, I needed some crystals, so we headed over to the crystal cave over in the desert and we went ham on farming up all the crystal we could possibly ever need with our Anki. I don't exactly remember why we needed so much crystal for, but we made sure that we were never going to run out of it again. I think we were going to make a chem bench or something like that. I honestly could not remember, but we farmed up a crap ton of crystal and decided to take it all back to base alongside our Anki, where we began day 21 with some more mass murdering. So... <laughs> These poor baby tech parasols had it coming for them. I apologize to them, but it was too late. Their, their, their sacrifices weren't in vain. I also bred our Yudis because we were looking for some more females so that we could continue with the egg production. Unfortunately, only one of these Yudis was a female, so you can guess what we had to do. Kill some more babies. I don't like to pride myself on, baby, on being a baby killer, but when it comes to Ark, sometimes you got to do these things. I went ahead and hatched three more of the fertilized UD eggs that we had because like I said, we only got one female from that bunch. So we needed a lot more females if we were going to go ahead and try and breed these up for 
more egg production. Luckily in this bunch we did get two extra females. We killed the extra male off because nobody thinks males are useful for anything. So we killed him off and then we decided to go ahead and hatch our poison wyvern egg as well. That had already been plenty incubated. So we chucked that out with the remaining two UD eggs that we had left and we got them all hatched up. We did get twins in one of the eggs but I'm pretty sure they were all males anyway. So once again you can guess what we did. Uh, I'm gonna have to tell you right now, this is a recurring theme with the murdering of babies on uh, on this series. Luckily they were all female, so none of them died this time around, which, let me tell you, is a holy bloody miracle. We then dropped the poison wyvern egg, like I said, and got that hatched up at 185. And unfortunately, we didn't really use the poison wyvern actually all that much in the series. We raised up our poison wyvern until it was a big boy because, well, poison wyverns are useful. We didn't bother taming up any other wyverns because technically once you've gotten one wyvern, getting another one is all the same. Nonetheless, the unis were successfully raised and in a very awkward, precarious position. So we did have to cry them up and throw them upstairs with the rest of the unis. And the tech parasols as well had been breeding good. So we threw out all the females that we had kept and then we threw out all the female unis so that we could have a mass production of babies coming through. We took the poison wyvern out for a bit of a test run because, well, we hadn't actually taken it out yet. And uh, as you can see, we missed all our freaking shots. Thought we'd take on some griffins to try and get some new ones to spawn in because we did need a replacement for Icarus. Unfortunately though, these griffins were a bunch of low levels, so I was hoping that we could get more to spawn in by murdering all of them and their cousins. Thankfully though, we did find a beautiful, beautiful 150 griffin as well over here. So you can bet your sweet cheeks what we went ahead and did with that bad boy. We went ahead and we tried to kite it to our trap. Now, doing it on a Wyvern, slightly more difficult than a PT. However, I still think we did manage to do a pretty good job. It did lose interest in us about halfway to the trap. So we set out and started tranking it a little bit earlier in hopes that it would follow us back to the trap and get caught. However, for that to happen, I actually had to hit the Griffin first. That would be a great start if we could actually hit the damn thing. So we cutted it back to the trap. And oh, let me tell you, this was much easier than using our PT. We almost did get caught out here but thankfully we were able to trap it and we set about knocking this poor sucker out this was going to be our replacement to icarus the 150 griffin thankfully did get knocked out and we decided to hatch a bunch of baby aloes on the morning of day 23. so we got these guys hatched up i'm not exactly sure what we were breeding them for i think i was just going to get an aloe army because i was contemplating taking them with us to the boss fight Thankfully though, we headed out and the brand new Griffin had been tamed up with some mudden and we decided to call this one Nicarus. In honor of our first Griffin, Icarus, this guy was going to be formally known as not Icarus. <laughs> so we then headed out to the Death Worm Queen cave where we were going to try and get our first artifact and as well deal with the Ice Worm Queen. We tumbled down the waterfall hoping not to take any fall damage. I always get like massive PTSD from this cave because I died once from fall damage and ever since that point I always get freaked out that I'm going to die again from fall damage. We had taken our aloes and our bread dire bear to this cave in hopes of defeating the Ice Worm Queen and uh, not going to lie I was freaking out a little bit. Here we go you can see the Queen is coming. And now we have to attack her. Okay, I don't, I don't know where our die bear went. I did throw it out. I don't know how much health she has, but we're dealing damage. Can we go down there and fight her? I didn't realize you could go down there. I thought you had to fight her up here. There goes our die bear. I don't think he actually got any attacks in. For poor I have feel bad for him. Did I throw out the right aloe? I'm not game enough to get off and find out. It is looking pretty bloody. All right, this is fine. So our poor die bear did die, but that was the one that we were using to fight the other ice worms anyway. So I'm not going to lose too much sleep over him. We can always breed for another one. And she's almost dead. We can see the blood on her. Come on, Queenie. There we go. She is dead. Manticore helmet skin. I don't know what else we got. Manticore helmet skin. After defeating the queen, we went ahead and checked the loot drops. Got some okay-ish stuff, and then we grabbed the artifact of the pack. Day 25 began with some gathering of some organic polymer. So we harvested up a bunch of mantises because we were going to need as much poly as we could possibly get. We made the chem bench. We then went ahead and decided to look for our first woolly rhino, and lo and behold, we found a 150. 
This was going to be key to getting our rhino lines started for the boss fight because my plan was to bring two rhinos with us so that we could ride on the rhinos and have the rexes attack by themselves. So we successfully knocked out the 150 woolly rhino and we chucked some kibble into it because we had the means to make the kibble and it was pretty much a perfect tame. So we were pretty happy with how that went. Managed to get the 150 male rhino and he had decent stats as well. He had semi-decent health. The melee damage was a little lackluster. I then went ahead and got the artifact of the strong. We spent the day pretty much farming up artifacts here. We flew to the cavern under the castle and got artifact of the cunning. And then we got the artifact of the immune as well because there are two artifacts under there and we got both of those bad boys there. I then headed out and looked for a female woolly rhino and we found a 145 up here in the snow biome once again. Went ahead and started knocking this one out. Managed to get it knocked out successfully as well. It was on the border of the Redwoods, which was going to be great for us because we then went ahead and got Artifact of the Brute. But we got into some trouble here. Extra. Oh, are you fucking serious? Drink, 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 drink. We're about to die. Oh, far out. Okay. Oh, my heart. After making it out alive, we tamed the Woolly Rhino up and it had 343 melee damage before getting tamed up. So we left that to feed a bit and we decided to go do the Jungle Cave for another artifact. And I hate this cave because of the way that you have to utilize grappling hooks and the way it's laid out. Let me tell you, I absolutely hate this cave, especially when you're doing it on a hardcore series and there's a bunch of lava underneath you that can literally one-shot you. So we made our way through the cave, thankfully avoiding most of the creatures and just not having to deal with them until we got to the artifact room. In which case I had to grapple once again over there and try and avoid the bats and killer bugs that were trying to murder us and eat our brains. So thankfully we did manage to get the artifact as well with minimal casualties. Obviously we didn't die, otherwise this video wouldn't be seeing the light of day. So we did manage to get the artifact, take a little bit of fall damage, but that was artifact of the hunter successfully gathered. So we made our way outside of the cave and we found a cute little otter to tame up. So we went ahead and tamed our, this otter up because, you know, it's going to be great for going into the snow and the desert. Um, we just had to obviously chase after it first and actually get the fish into the otter's inventory. This has to be one of the most frustrating taming mechanics in the entire game. Honestly, this is like... Trying to feed a fish that takes up majority of your screen to an otter or like a Hesperonis is super annoying. Nonetheless though, we do manage to get the otter cryomim up and we head to the highlands to kill a sheep. Because we need mutton obviously, because we're gonna we're gonna go do some taming today. We grab the mutton and we return to the ocean where we find a Bacillosaurus that we are gonna tame up. We kill all the mantas off with our baryonyx and we start the process of taming up the Bacillosaurus. We're gonna need these guys to go to the depths to find the artifact that is located down there. We tamed up our first Bacillosaurus at 194, which was, you know, it wasn't amazing, but it was a 130. You can't complain about that. These guys are super tanky. So we decided to head to the depths to try and find the artifact where we stumbled upon an Alpha Tuso, Toothus. Mind you, we've only got the one Bacillo, so uh, chaos ensued. Please leave me alone, sir. Is there a cave down here that I can go into? Okay, I think we might be getting close to where we need to. Fudge knuckles. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is very bad. I might have to surface here. We escaped the Tuso and decided to head to the Snowbine to tame up some Kairukus so that we could constantly have an organic polymer farm. So we tamed up a bunch of Kairukus and we went back to base and started breeding and killing some more Parasaurs. This was our main source of metal. We didn't really take the Anki out too much more because we could kill these guys and ultimately crash our game at the same time. Yep, oh, there it is, <laughs> fatal error. Uh, whoopsie daisies, hopefully I can get back in. Next up, I then decided to head out and try and tame some more Rexes. We still hadn't gotten our Rexes line started and we were kind of freaking out that we weren't gonna have enough time. So we found this 145 Rex and started getting to work on knocking this big sucker out. We did already have that first Rex that we tamed up, but like I said, its stats were subpar. 
After knocking this one out, I then saw another Rex off in the distance, checked its level, and lo and behold, it was another 140. So we set about knocking that one out, and it managed to take some mountain climbing lessons and scaled itself up a bloody mountain face where I could barely reach the damn thing. So that was fun. I still managed to reach it, though. We found a little bit of a cheeky spot for our griffin to land so that we could actually still access its inventory. And then I set to work about getting a dodo so that we could sacrifice it to the desert cave in order to get the artifacts located there. That and we still needed dodos to tame for our ultimate tamer. We then took our two Rexes back and we started breeding them. One of the Rexes came out with 372 melee damage which was absolutely freaking phenomenal. It was incredible that amount of melee damage. That has to have been the highest melee damage that I had ever received from a wild tame. So we got them set into work and started breeding them up and while they were doing that we headed to the desert cave. Now. Let me tell you right now, this cave is a pain in the ass. There are so many different ways that you can die in this cave. It is crazy. So I set about going and pressing the button to begin access to the actual labyrinth of the cave. Everything before this had been a walk in the park. I had to make sure that I wouldn't touch anything or make it through this door before it closed. Otherwise, we would get set on fire. And let me tell you, getting set on fire is not a fun experience. It is, it, it's really not. The door closed and I got set on fire, which was wonderful. Exactly what I wanted to happen. I got shrecked for half my HP. It was just gone down the drain just like that. Luckily, I came prepared, which is once again a very first. And we had medical brews on hand to heal us back up. But I had to crawl my way back to the button. Mind you, this also takes a massive chunk out of your armor durability as well. Getting set on fire is not a pleasant time, let me tell you. Can I get her up anymore? There we go. That's probably a bit easier on the eyes. Okay, so I know this room has traps. And I'm pretty sure... That Onyx spawn in. Oh my god, these are strong freaking Onyx. Reload the gun. Reload the damn gun. Okay. Whew. Okay, that's that's over and done with. Let's. I'm going to take this food real quick because I'm going to eat it for a little bit of food and water considering... Oh, I filled up my water jar anyway, I think, in the water. So that should be fine. Okay, let's just... Yep, cool. All right. All right, there. that should be all the Onyx dead. I should have put a shotgun, a flashlight attachment. We're going to go around here. Oh, ouch. I just got shot by spears. Ow. I completely forgot about those. Yep. Uh, I'm hoping our armor holds up. Oh, shit. I didn't bring any extra armor. This could be very, very bad. This could be very bad. Oh, fuck off. More. Why am I... Come on. Really have the damn gun. Jesus Christ, this is terrifying. I didn't realize they would spawn back in. I, I'm, I swear to God, I hope I don't regret to eat my words. All right. Artifact of the Clever. Boom. Got him. Oh, we don't have a player to sacrifice. So let's get our dodo out here. Let's pick you up. I'd love to sacrifice a person. Fudge Knuckles. I did not realize that we would be set on fire. So after successfully running the labyrinth of the desert cave, all we had to do now was deal with the spirit wolf and the spirit dive bear. Luckily, I had brought my allies with me, so they were more than up to the task of dealing with them. And we managed to kill the Spirit Wolf and the Spirit Dire Bear with ease. Like, that was super easy. Once that was done, we could grab our prize, which was the two artifacts that we were going to need to do the boss battle. Artifact of the Devious and Artifact of the Massive. 
We then decided punishment wasn't enough, so we ran the labyrinth again on the opposite side to get Artifact of the Skylord, and we also got a, another Pigomastix team up. Don't worry, this was not Pinch. We needed this Pigomastix to go ahead and sacrifice once again to the Labyrinth Maze. So we headed in once again because we are a sucker for freaking punishment. Lost our armor at the first room because we decided to set ourselves on fire again and almost died once more. Pressed the button to open the door on the other side and... <laughs> and set ourselves on fire again. At this stage, I was like, this is this is the worst run ever. We were so close to death here. We were so damn close. And our armor is absolutely freaking destroyed from that ordeal, which is not a good thing for us. I'm hoping, Jesus, I'm hoping that that help med brew gets us back up to pretty much full health. That is ridiculous. That freaking fire room. Is this the end? Yeah, all right. One door closes, another one opens. All right. Guys, I'm really freaking nervous. This is really terrifying. What the hell was that? Okay, there's obviously like a... Pressure pads or something? Or like sensors that are going off? That was terrifying. We got freaking bowlers or something flying at us. Alright, take that off. There's no point. We have two bits of armor left. I am terrified. Alright, we've got two buttons here. Alrighty, so I'm assuming we've got to go in there, and I'm hoping that this button will open that. Okay. We've got some traps in here. Uh, I'm going to go for this button. It seems to be the one that the floor is guiding me to. Now we run. Okay, that's opened up. Okay, there's a button here. Let's press that. Casually opened up. There's a loot crate here. Let's grab that. Is that a die bear saddle? Thylacolio saddle? Oh, 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 okay. That's opened up. Uh, press them all. Run. Just run. Oh, okay. Uh, we got a loot crate here. And this door wasn't open before. I'm going to go through. All right. I'm gonna run. Oh god. Just keep running, just keep, don't look back, just keep running. Alright, and I think we're through. Oh, that was nice and easy. Is there anything else? Oh yes. Beautiful. The final artifact. Let's grab this bad boy. Bam. Artifact of the Sky Lord, got it. After completing the labyrinth in the desert, I then went ahead and started taming up another Bacillosaurus. And then we found another one not too far from that one and tamed that one up. All in all, we were, ha we were on our way to getting three Bacillosauruses. The reason we were taming up another male was because it was a higher level at 145 instead of the 130. So we got the 145 male tamed up and we tamed up the female Bacillosaurus. It came out at 149, which it was fine. It was going to do the job we needed them for. I was hoping that they would get mate boosted and we could take an army with us down to the bottom of the depths because this was the last artifact we needed. But... Thankfully, I began breeding and hatching all our Rexes. We were trying to go for mutations, and let me tell you, mutation stacking, oh boy, is it a big pain in the butt. So we set about our day and began killing, once again, all the baby Rexes, because, you know, we're a little bit of a baby killer when it comes to not getting the donors that we want. We then also decided to harvest up a bunch of our baby Kairukus, because I think we needed organic polymer for something. I don't remember what. But a lot of these days were pretty much just filled with us breeding and killing Rexes and baby Rhinos. Looking for mutations, because we did need some mutations. And uh, yeah, it was just non-stop breeding. Our poor dinosaurs didn't get a break from churning out the offspring, so I kind of feel bad for them. But hey, they're not there to live a happy life. They're there to provide offspring for me. We did manage to get our first mutated woolly Rhino. It had a weight mutation, but it did have a cool cyan blue color. So we kept it as a little trophy. It was it was cool, but it wasn't the mutation that we were after. So after breeding up our Bazzies, we then decided to head to the deep again. However, idiot me completely forgot about the fact that if Bazzies are taking damage underwater from the depth, they do not attack if they are not player ridden. So here I am trying to figure out why the hell they're not attacking, and I completely forgot about that mechanic. Nonetheless, I heal up my Bazzy and we head back into the depths to try and face this Alpha 2 Sotuthus. I don't know why they're not attacking for. There goes the first one. Oh, we're not mate boosted anymore. We're taking a lot more damage. And I think that just got fully held. 
Yeah, I did. That's the alpha over there. What level are you? Can I just straight out kill you? Level 90. I can probably kill you. i got to track down that alpha, though. We can't let that alpha go. There he is. Oh, he's coming back. All right, I'm going to surface here. We're going to force feed our Bazzy. Main reason I want to surface as well is because that Alpha Tuso can kill the Tuso that we're fighting. And it'll just get all its health back. Should have waited to more stamina. Dude, just stop doing this to me. What are you doing? I'm not I'm not getting off so our Bazzy gets more stamina anytime like quicker. That's that's a no way no. Come on. Yes! Killed it! Let's go. It sucks that we can't see it. Oh no, someone's trying to... Someone just harvested the body up. Damn it. Fucking anglerfish, are you serious? Of all the things that it could have been in this damn ocean, it was an anglerfish. <laughs> yeah, boy. So, after defeating the Alpha Tuso Toothus, I now had access to get the final artifact. Located down here near a sunken ship, we finally managed to get what we needed. The artifact of the Devious. And we made sure the coast was clear, because I was not risking dying at this stage. It was Artifact of the Devourer. So we surfaced, we get back to base, and we started making ourselves an industrial cooker. We were going to need a bunch of broths, brews, and kibble to continue going forward. We got our industrial cooker down, and then we started completing our Tame Them All achievement. We started off with this unsuspecting galley here. Boy, oh boy, let me tell you, this bastard <laughs> did not go down. He's just two Trank Arrows from like a 300 damage long neck rifle was not enough to bring this level 90 freaking level 50 galley mimers down it was painstakingly difficult should not have been this hard to bring down a level 50 galley but nonetheless it did manage to elude us and get away from us so i went ahead and started tranking out a megaloceros and a dimorphodon instead and then we started getting to work on taming up this gigantopithecus that was wandering around near the base Thankfully though, all we needed to do was squirt berries into its butt and it would tame up. Megaloceros, all we had to do was squirt berries into its face and it would tame up as well. We did give it a couple of veggies because I think we had some from uh, trying to use them on the Gigantopithecus. And then we kept going and taming up the Gigantopithecus. Luckily it was all low level, so we didn't really have too many issues going ahead and uh, taming these up. Dimorphodon was tamed up with some prime meat and that ticks the Dimorphodon off our list. Mind you, there were 98 dinos that we had to tame up and we had only tamed up a very small fraction of them. I then went ahead and knocked out this Paracer that spawned near our base as well. This was also a low level tame as well, so I was like, we're not probably gonna find anything lower than this and it's near our base. We can keep a close eye on it and just feed it a bunch of berries and wait for it to tame up. And our rhinos had plenty of berries to oblige us. However, the Gigantopithecus that we were taming up did get into a fight with our baby rhino. Well, I mean, Thankfully, it didn't get attacked, so it was taming it to make myself suffer. Set. Day 56 I began, and we started getting to work on knocking out a quetzal. Base on the way but this cheeky bastard had other plans in mind. Pretty sure I did make another 30, and they're just sitting in the smithy as well. Please don't. Oh, you freaking bastard. So, we went to the Highlands and tamed up some sheep instead. This would be a breeding pair that we could use. We also went ahead and knocked out a scorpion to tame up. We had some insect repellent and I did plan on taming up the Uranio as well as some other bugs that required us to have insect repellent. Thankfully, we did manage to passive tame up an Uranio and an Arthur. Got him. Whoa, oh, baby. Oh, thankfully, right, they were that's... also low level, so we didn't really have to deal too much with them. And then I went ahead and knocked out an Archaeopteryx as well. Chasing this guy through the Redwoods was not a fun experience, but these guys are super easy to tame up with some Chitin. And we managed to tame up our Archaeopteryx with ease as well. I then journeyed to the depths to try and get an Anglerfish because I was like, well, why not, right? Tamed up the anglerfish successfully, and that was another dinosaur ticked off our list. I then set out to try and tame some higher level UD so that I could use these ones for the boss fight. Instead of the ones that we already tamed up and we were breeding back at base for the eggs, these guys were going to be our boss UDs. And I knocked out a Galley Mimus and the other UD so that we would have a breeding pair. Mind you, this is like the third time that I've knocked out a goddamn Galley Mimus. <gasps> And then oh, what happens? We go back bitch. to him and he freaking wakes up just as we're about to put Torpor in. Damn it. <laughs> we murder God. him. Damn it. Oh my God. Oh, Galley oh, Mimuses so uh, are the bane of my up. existence right now. So we go ahead and tame up, knock out a Daedon as well. It was pretty easy to knock out. It was only level 20 and a headshot to the head was enough to tame it up, to knock it out. 
We tame up the Udis, the female comes out at 197, and we also find a bright red and black direwolf and knock that out as well. Update on tames up, we decide to leave it in the snow for now because, well, I don't have a use for it, and the direwolf also tames up successfully. So all in all, a pretty successful day of taming, I would say. Up day 60, I then went ahead and built a better breeding slash taming pen for our woolly rhinos so that we could get more of them all together and have females just churning out the babies. We were a baby making factory. So we came up with this little design. It was a bit crude, but it did the job of what we needed to. The males were on the top there and they were able to reach both sets of females down below. And all in all, I would say it came out pretty good. Like. You know, three females to one male rhino. Eventually, when I would get more female rhinos, I could go ahead and put six. We then got our first mutated Rex baby. And boy, oh boy, it had a bright blue color on it, so I was pretty happy about that. So we kept breeding through days 61 and 65, hoping for more mutations, but unfortunately, we didn't really get too many. We did manage to get a melee damage mutation on our Rex line and a HP mutation on our Rhino line, but that was about it. Next up, another galley taming. This, these bastards just, just need to tame up. Successfully knocked it out with one shot, which was a miracle. And then I headed to the swamp to get to work on taming up a Bezel Bufo, a Fiomia, an Akatenia, and any other creatures that we could find in the swamp that we hadn't tamed oh, up already. Fine. Oh, get out of here, mate. You thought you were going to fucking nab me off me, Griffin? Nah, not today. Not today, Capro. You thought you were so smart, but you didn't see that coming. Getting knocked out mid-air, you cheeky bastard. So we got to work taming up more, and we tamed up this Dimetrodon. Well, knocked out this Dimetrodon. We're getting a bit of ahead of ourselves there. Dimetrodon's torpor drops really quickly, but we managed to tame the Gallimimus, the Fiomia, and the Caparosuchus. Cryoed up the Dillo and the Dimetrodon that we had also knocked out and tamed, and we decided to take those guys back to base. On the way back to base, we found a Compi that we knocked out, and we got that guy as well. I then decided to go ahead and start working on tranking out this Megatherium, got that guy knocked out, and we started going on a taming journey. Taming up a Pachyrhinosaurus, and a bunch of other stuff. A Pachycephalosaurus. We were, we were just a taming machine with all this kibble. We also managed to tame a Perlovia, a Raptor, a Carno, a Microraptor, a Castoroidus. It was just it was just a taming bonanza. It was crazy. We cried all of these guys up. We also got a Bronto, a Fairy, and a Mesopithecus. And we also had a Quetzal knocked out waiting to be fed as well. So a lot of the dinos were getting ticked off our list as we were going through. Bright Red Mesopithecus tamed up. We then tamed up a Carboninus on the Viking Bay beach where we started and we chucked all of them into the cryo fridge. So as you can see here, our cryo fridge is slowly starting to fill up, which was great. We also got an Ichthyornis and a Pelagornis as well. Let me tell you, those bastards were not a pleasant time. So, day 76, we headed to the desert to try and tame some desert-dwelling creatures. We managed to tame up a Lamantria, a Morellatops, a Pomioscorpius, a Thorny Dragon, and a Vulture. And we also got some Thylacolios. Now, we did get a pair of these Thylacolios because I was going to breed them and use them for something, but I didn't really use them for anything except to just fill up our base with more dinos. We also tamed up a Megalania when we found a shark in a pond. It's a pond. There's, there's no other way to describe it. What level is this thing? So I thought, you know what? Level 50 Meg, I reckon I can long neck dart it through the through the water from here. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to tame up a Megalodon right now because for some reason it's stuck in this poor pond. It's not a very nice place to store a Megalodon. This guy doesn't have any quality of life going on for him, that's for sure. Holy smokes, what the hell? I then went ahead and knocked out and tamed a Kentrosaurus. This guy was running away from us, but his short little stumpy legs couldn't really carry him too far away. Doesn't help that I missed almost every shot on this guy. And then I tried and tamed up a dolphin that just constantly would swim away from me. This was one of the most painful tames that I've ever experienced. Luckily, it swam back and near us, and we managed to tame it up without any issues. Cried up the Megalodon, cried up the Kentrosaurus, and we chucked them all back into our cryo fridge back at home alongside the Scorched Earth Tames that we got. Day 81 began and we set out to tame a Giga, but this didn't go as smooth as we would have liked. <laughs> okay, he should... <gasps> oh, 
no, 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 stay alive. Necros. Oh, <laughs> my God. 33 health. No, 330 health. That's not much better, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> Necros, mate. Level 15 one. It'll be nice and easy. Let's just make sure this Giga should be able to do an Equus tank. Oh, oh. Nicarus, I'm coming! Hold on, buddy! I'm not shotgunning because it'll kill Nicarus. 100% definitely will kill Nicarus. <gasps> After the ideal of almost losing Nicarus, we went and got an Equus, a Diplodocus, and the Giga successfully tamed up. Thank God for that because I could not stand to lose Nicarus as well. That would kill me. We then decided to call the Giga Gary because what else do you call a Giga? Day 82 came around and we headed into the ocean depths to knock out a bunch of underwater creatures. Starting with this donkey. Tamed up the donkey successfully with a bunch of kibble that we had made up and we continued on our journey to tame up a plesiosaur as well in at the same time. I then went ahead and started knocking out a mosasaur. This was a relatively low level mosasaur so I wasn't gonna have too many issues. However, I almost didn't make it back to it in time. It almost woke up and whew, it was a close tame. Tamed up the Mosasaurus, and then I went ahead and tried to tame up a two. So luckily we found a low level one and used our Plesiosaur to get grappled. And we tamed up the Tuso Toothus as well. However, that brand new Plesiosaur that we had tamed up, unfortunately met its demise here by level 100 Tuso. So unfortunately we didn't get to cryo that up and put it back into the cryo fridge back of base. We did get revenge for it, however, and then we went out and started looking for a Lyopluridon. Found one of these big boys and let me tell you, they are a pain in the ass to track down. But I fed it some giant bee honey and we tamed it up for it to do absolutely nothing because I couldn't cryo it and it's just useless. Day 83 to 85, we then went ahead back out to the desert and tried to get some tames that we didn't get, such as the Jaboa, an Iguanodon and a Procoptodon. So thankfully we managed to get both, all three of them and then we went and tamed up a rock elemental. Build a Captain Fat Dog trap Check it out if you haven't already, guys, because he builds some amazing traps. Wanted to make sure that the rock elemental couldn't hit us, and we got to work with knocking it out with a big old cannon. Thankfully, we did manage to knock it out with only two cannon balls left, so it was cutting it close. I'm not going to lie, we were cutting it very close. Oh, surprisingly, no, it's still alive. Managed to tame up the rock elemental when he went for One a bit of a One bloody spare kibble. Look at that. Well, we have the big boy. Where's he going? Whoa, 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 big fella. Calm down. Where are you going, mate? You're trying to get this. Where's he going? He's just, he's, all right. Yeah, you're just, you, you satisfied now? Did you just really want to get out of there? Because, well, hold on. I have to dispel this correctly. And not in capital. Rocky Balboa. There we go. Day 86 began and we calculated that we only had 13 creatures left to tame up. So we went ahead and started going and hunting for those creatures. The Spino was the first on the list and we knocked that out successfully and tamed it up successfully as well. Only a level 20, but it didn't really matter. We just wanted to get all the dinos tamed up. Next up was a Titan Boa and this guy took us so much longer than it should have. We did manage to get him to eat the first egg successfully. But getting to eat the subsequent eggs turned out to be rather troublesome and I had thrown a lot of them down there. Tamed the Titan Eboa up as well and then we got to work on trying to tame a Trudon. And oh my god, let me tell you right now that they are not pleasant to try and tame up. I always knew they weren't pleasant. Trying to tame one up though is just... It's just an experience. So we started throwing our babies into this crude trap that we had built for it to try and get them to eat the babies, but it was just super frustrating. The cryopotted babies were getting launched out of the trap. I fired pheromone darts into the babies to try and get the Trudon to attack. And instead of the Trudon attacking it, everything else in the vicinity decided to attack it, but the damn Trudon. So we did manage to get the Trudon to actually munch on our baby Yuta here. And uh, you can see here, it was going pretty ham on it. Dealing 8 damage, and it did eventually kill the baby Yudi. However, it didn't actually do anything for the Trudon. It was, it was painstakingly obnoxious. The baby Yudi was killed. Apparently, the Trudon didn't kill it. So, my guess was that it starved in between a bite that the Trudon did, which was super unfortunate. But, we headed back to the Ice Worm Queen Cave with Gary our Giga to try and take her on to get some good loot because we were looking for some Rex blueprints for their saddles or some Woolly Rhino saddle blueprints. I wasn't really too fast, I just wanted a better 
blueprint instead of the primitive one that we got. Gary successfully took out the Ice Worm Queen with me providing backup, and we headed Worm out to the, the volcano to try and tame some mantises. Oh, fuck yes, let's go. Let's go, I'll take that. No, 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 no. Gary, Gary, come out, mate! Gary! Come out! Come out, your new brethren! He's only low! Gary, get over here! <laughs> Kill the bastard! Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't want our mantis dying. That was close. All right, let's cry this up. This is one that I don't want to have to tame. On the night of day 90, I went ahead and tried to tame up an Onik located at the castle. I found a low level one at level 45, popped my bug repellent, had the mudden on me, and we just could not get any of the things to pop up to feed the Onik. So it was super frustrating. And as far as I could tell, there were no other Onyx that were tameable on the map. The ones in the jungle cave also weren't tameable. So for some reason you just couldn't tame an Onyx. So that was another creature that I was unfortunately able to tame. But we then went ahead and tried to tackle the Trudon taming experience again. Because, you know, it's so great doing those experiences. Nicarus wanted a piece of the action as well. Had to try and get him to calm down because he was just going ham. But we did throw the baby in there and I was praying. I was hoping that one of these Trudons would munch on the baby Rex. And it did. It killed a Rex and we managed to tame up a Trudon. Hallelujah. And then all our dinos lost their shit and wanted to kill the other Trudon. Our baby Rex was then also killed by another Trudon. And we tamed up an Oviraptor on the day of 91. So that was pretty successful. I was just super stoked that we had tamed up a Trudon, to be honest, because those things are a pain in the ass. We then headed out to the ocean once again to try and tame up a Manta Ray. Had our bug repellent, our scuba flippers, and everything we could possibly need to try and tame these suckers up. We were definitely getting closer to completing the Tame Them All, and we managed to tame up the Mantis successfully as well. Let me tell you, it's exhausting taming up all these dinos. We also went ahead and tried to tame up an Electrophorus. Now, this was actually the first time I've ever attempted to tame up an Electrophorus. And thank God I had the Bazzy because this would have been impossible without it. Fed up the Biotoxin every now and again, and then we hopped back on our Bazzy and waited for its shocking attack because our Bazzies are immune to it. Like I said, this was the first time I'd ever tried taming up an Electrophorus. It was, it was terrifying because one shock from these guys and I would pretty much be dead, right? Like I would get stun locked and we would die. So it was, it was very daunting, but I managed to successfully tame up the Electrophorus as well. And I was on top of the bloody world. Went ahead and to finish the night off, we started taming up a hyena don. I built a trap for it where we could pet it without it aggroing on us. And we successfully tamed up the hyena don as well. It was also a pretty high level one as well, because that was the only one that we could find. Day 92 began and all we had to do was try and tame up a Chalice Ethereum. So I squirted beer up the butt of this female chalice ethereum and all we had to do now was patiently wait for it to be ready to tame and eat again i managed to tame up the chalice ethereum and aptly named her guzzler because she's real good at guzzling beer day 93 i went ahead and tried to get one of the final tames that we needed a goddamn hesperonis so i grappled this sucker took it to a little trap that i had built for it and we actually found a use for our stupid seagull bird that always steals our food and we used it to feed the Hesperonus fish because if you want to try and tame a Hesperonus with normal fish it's going to take you literal hours they get like no taming percentage of fish that you catch yourself Stupid so fish. we used our Ichthyornis and that boosted Stupid up the fish. fish we went ahead and fed the Hesperonus as much fish as we possibly could but let me tell you this feeding the fish mechanic oh it is painstakingly Please, brutal. Just constantly dragging and dropping the fish instead of feeding the damn fish to the stupid seagull pelican bird the damn fish. thing. It was super frustrating. One of the oh, but it was one of the last tames that we needed and I needed to persevere to game this sucker fish. tamed like, Honestly, the otters and like... These guys make me never... I mean, I don't really plan on... I don't ever plan on taming one of these guys again. Alright, cool. That we needed to tame up. So we just have to try and get the Titanosaur, which honestly I'm kind of dreading. Beautiful! Hesperonus is all tamed up. I have no idea what you do aside from lay your golden eggs. So we took our Hesperonus back home. And if you guys have made it this far in the video, I just want to say thank you. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And also leave a comment for me saying that without Peck, we would not have been able to complete this video. Because in hindsight, 
Our week the honest was key here, and Peck was an absolute bloody legend for doing so. So, in celebration, we drank a beer and flew back to our base on Nicarus to celebrate taming every creature bar the Titanosaur. Day 94 was the big day. The day we decided to head out and try and solo tame a Titanosaur. Now, let me tell you. This was an experience. We saddled our Quetzal up, chucked a foundation, chucked a cannon on it, and we got to work. Now, unfortunately, our Quetzal didn't actually have enough weight on it to hold all the cannonballs, so I actually had to store them in our RG because we just didn't have enough weight on our Quetzal for everything, because it was only a low-level Quetzal. So we were constantly flying around the Titanosaur, trying to get a cannonball into its head, and it just was not working for the life of me. I just could not get this to work and like trying to solo tame a titanosaur, it's a lot of freaking hard work. It's a lot of hard work. So I had to rethink my strategy a little bit to try and get this to work because it, it just was not working for us. Trying to get this guy to line up and, and cop a cannonball to the head with our bird flying behind us was super difficult and every time I got off to try and fire it, it just switched directions slightly. So we decided to flip the cannon and put it on the front of the Quetzal and try our luck like that to see if we could hit him. We hit him probably like three times successfully where he does the animation to show you that he actually has received Torpor and that was literally it. This guy was going to be impossible to try and tame up solo. If I had a partner to do it with, sure, 100%, because you know, you've obviously got someone controlling the flyer and then you've got someone operating the cannon, and it's definitely doable. But doing it solo, I can tell you right now that it is not a fun experience, and I just, for the life of me, could not get this guy knocked out at all. Like, we were flying around him for hours. We spent the whole day trying to tame up the Titanosaur, and it just. It just was not working for us. You can see here, we were lobbing the cannonballs into his head and he wasn't even doing the uh, torpor gaining animation. And that was even when I freaking hit the, the bloody Titanosaur. So a lot of the time I just absolutely missed. And like you saw there, that one there was the animation that he needs to do every time you fire a cannonball at him. Otherwise you're not dealing any torpor damage to him. He's just taken, he's just taken damage. So super hard, super annoying. And I eventually ran out of cannonballs and I was like, well, this, this just isn't going to bloody work, is it? So I decided to take a look and see just how much torpor he had taken over the entirety of the day. And you saw there, he's only taken 400 torpor out of however much torpor he has. So I gave up on trying to tame up the Titanosaur and instead we got ready to fight the bosses. So I threw out all the baby Rexes that we were going to take with us to the boss fights, double checking their melee damage, making sure that they were the right ones. And we spent the rest of the time up to the boss fight tallying them, making sure we had the right amount of Rexes to hit that level, that 20 dino limit. But I also had to factor in taking in two of our Rhinos, two of the Udis. So I ended up taking in 16 Rexes. Now, it was currently day 95, so we still had a couple of days before we had to wrap up the series. So in those days, I obviously raised the Rexes and we imprinted on them as well. I also gave them a bunch of levels by going ahead and killing a bunch of the other baby dinos that we had, like the rhinos, the other baby Rexes that weren't good enough to make the cut. And eventually we were ready to try and take on the bosses. So you can see we went ahead and just imprinted on as many of the Rexes as we could. We did also relocate our nanny from upstairs down to the bottom here so she could help us out with the imprinting. And all in all, the Rexes, I would say, were pretty much ready to try and tackle the bosses of Ragnarok. So, day 99 we began and headed I'm out. I'm not going to lie, I'm shooting bricks on. right now. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's make sure everyone's in. I know you, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to kill the dragon first. I just, I can't even get on my. My rhinos. I don't know where my rhinos are. Okay, I see the boss. I'm scared to get off though. Guys, come on. Okay, just kill something. Someone kill something. I'm trying to get out of here. I cannot move. This is why people, you generally see them just taking rhinos. Alright, here we go. I'm going to smack this. Oh! There goes the man squad. 10k damage! 10k damage. 1000 damage. I'll take that any day of the week. Let's go. I don't know if I can fire and nah, melee damage at the same time. Our shotgun runs are dealing 1750 damage though. Let's just do another little bit of a rope around. Done! Freaking done! Look at that! Let's go! Let's so, after go. successfully completing the Gamma, I figured, you know what? Let's freaking do it and go for the Alpha. 
There's rock elementals. Manticore's on half. Dead. I was not expecting this to go well. Oh shit, we're getting attacked by Dimorphodons. We're gonna spin around here and we're gonna... See if I can get him to switch onto the dragon. There goes our first... Our first Rex. We're losing a little bit of health here. I wish I'd, I'd disabled the berry gathering. We're gonna try and get them to kill the dragon because I reckon the dragon is the biggest threat here. I'm gonna pop all of these. I mean, the dragon's half health. We're definitely chunking him. I don't know where our other rhino is, which is cause for concern. I wish I could get rid of these stupid dimorphodons on me. Because they are hurting. Let's spin around here. I mean, the dragon's almost dead. Okay, there goes our last UD. We've got no more courage buffs. Oh, he got one more off. The legend got one more off. There goes the alpha dragon. Get out of town. Oh, shit. Am I going to get clipped on his body? Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Manticore, Manticore. Actually, I should probably be a bit careful here. Ro those rock elementals are really piling in. I'm trying to freaking dodge the dragon shit, but we're hitting for 500 and 400 and stuff like that with the rhinos, so it's definitely a worthy investment. I think bringing one, like two rhinos was a good idea. And even if we, we our rexes aren't even damaged. Let's freaking go. We're gonna take a second here just to get some stamina back. And while we wait, we'll just pop some shotgun shells into the manticore. Let's freaking go. This guy's dead. I can't move. Oh, baby, let's go. Whoa. Oh, you bloody beauty. We've done it. We did alpha with, honestly, quite a few Rexes still alive. I can't, I, I, I am genuinely gobsmacked right now. I was... Fully not expecting to do the Gamma, let alone the freaking Alpha. That is nuts. Our Rexes still have so much health. Can I get this, the Dragon man Dermis? Can I get the Manticore? Is that bugged? I think the, the Manticore Dermis is bugged. I have a feeling it's bugged because like its body was right here. I mean, I'm not worried about these guys' saddles. This, this, this is the end of the series, honestly. I'm not pushing my luck past this point. <laughs> oh, we survived. Those, um... Those whatchamacallits almost gave us a bit of a problem. The Dimorphodons. I had to play very close attention to our health there because, yeah, it was it was getting pretty low. We got about halfway there. But I can't believe it, guys. We managed to successfully do the Alpha. In all honesty, I genuinely thought that we were not going to pull off the Gamma. I still cannot believe we... I still can't believe we did the Gamma, let alone the freaking Alpha. That is absolutely crazy, to be honest. And a, a lot of you guys... I mean, the last time I've done the Ragnarok bosses was ages ago oh like it had to has to have been years but our rexes are still like the ones that are alive anyway are still relative oh oh this one made it out by the skin of his teeth 300 health our rexes are all still pretty damn healthy we didn't really need to breed for too many more mutations actually a lot of our rexes were on the verge of dying so i'm glad we kind of pulled it out of the bag there we still had our shotgun and our rhino so i'm sure we could have probably killed it but still, that is awesome. Day 98. We still have two days left to spare. Oh, one and a little bit. I am genuinely gobsmacked, guys. I cannot believe that we pulled that off. I am so freaking happy and proud of myself right now. And just like that, our 100 days hardcore Ragnarok Tame Them All had been completed. Now, Lost there were... Island. A dangerous, beautiful, luscious place filled with tropical jungles, fetid swamps mystical ruins and lavery peaks of death this map has it all if you like a danger so i decided to try and survive this map for a hundred days in a hardcore mode now my goal here was to defeat the gamma dinopithecus king as well as that i had the added challenge of only being able to use dinopithecuses to fight the gamma king and so i set about on my journey to try and survive this dangerous landscape and tame up the additional creatures that called Lost Island home. Which included the most adorable primitive backpack that you've ever seen, the scariest ape that would cause you to poo on sight, and a very horny sauropod that wanted to horn you all the way up. So let's jump into it. But first, a message from me. Now guys, this video doesn't have a sponsor, so I'm just gonna chuck in my merch store. Definitely check it out. It's well worth looking at. Some of my favorite designs are the two on the far right. They're really cool. 
If you feel like picking up some merch and supporting the channel a little bit extra, this is definitely the best way to go about doing it. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. A lot of you haven't subscribed to the channel. It really helps out the channel. But no more lollygagging around. Let's jump into it. And so it began like any other Arky Day. Waking up on the beach, freshly spawned, scratching our arm because, you know, there's an alien embodiment in our arm. And god damn was the sun bright. So the first thing that we had to do was obviously turn down the bloom quality because that shit is a killer. Whew. All right, now that we are up and running on the beach, we are good to go. Looking around, this was the first time that we had played on Lost Island, so we had no idea where anything was. But we went ahead, started gathering our basic resources, the wood, thatch, berries, fiber, all that good stuff that we needed to go ahead and make our first tools. Now, obviously, we had to make our first tools. The pickaxe was the first item among them that we made alongside the hatchet. Once we had those, we made some spears and we decided to start hunting some dodos for some precious hide. We wanted to get some levels, we needed to get the bowlers going so that we could get everything up and running. And obviously, on a hardcore run, we're gonna need some solid hide armor to begin with. Gacha Claws was getting attacked by a dillo, so we decided to help him out by heating a spear straight at the dillo and saving him. Then we decided to go on a killing spree. Not that we had much of a choice because we got bombarded by a bunch of compies and an army of dillos. So once we successfully dealt with all of those with absolutely no stamina, we went out and found a raptor. Now, luckily we had some bowlers made up and it was a low level raptor and we had a club handy dandy ready to go and try and knock this guy out. Started to hit him in the butt because what's more effective at knocking out a raptor than smacking it in the butt than the head? Thankfully, we did knock it out, chuck some meat into it before we got bombarded by Mega Neuros and successfully tamed up our first raptor. It was a very bad level, but hey, you can't be complaining. Then we almost lost everything. There's another raptor. Okay. Okay, you can attack now. Get in there. That one was kicking our ass. I don't know what it, level it is, but that was destroying us. I hope I don't hit my raptor. Alright. He's going to finish that one off. I can't really risk uh, trying to tame these guys up because they are way too high level. Holy smokes, we almost died. Thankfully, we didn't though, but it was a bloody close call. We then decided to call our first raptor, Craptor. Now, we then head out and tried to find some Cinemacrops and we got absolutely bombarded with so many leeches. I've never seen so many leeches before in my life. Had to burn them off, obviously, because they were sapping my health. I was worried I was gonna die, though, because I had six leeches on me and my health was already super low due to our encounter with that raptor. Thankfully, I did burn all the leeches off and lived to fight another day. Now, we then went and found our first Cinemacrops. We found a low level five one out here and we went ahead and started taming that up. Thankfully, we did successfully tame it up, even though these little bastards were super annoying. We had our eyes set on another one as well, as it was a low level and we could tame it up easily. And we successfully tamed up the level 25 Cinemacrops as well. We were cheering, we were on top of the world. We got two Cinemacropses, we were good to go. Day two began and we found some metal nodes. We wanted to get into some metal tier stuff, but not before we had to fight an Arthropleura and make a very heavy sacrifice. It was a sad day indeed. We lost our first Sinnoh Macrops. The level five did perish to the Arthropleura attack. There really wasn't much we could have done. So instead I decided to name our other Sinnoh Macrops and get emotionally attached by calling it Wings, which is great for when we lose it later on in the thingy. Definitely not foreshadowing. I then went ahead and got a bunch of resources so that I could start building some foundations, refining forges, and eventually a smithy to get into our metal tools. Once all of that was down, we made our first metal pickaxe and I went ahead and went out looking for some Dinopithecuses. But thankfully I did find this lone Iguanodon and we decided to go ahead and knock it out. Stuck up on a cliffside, thanks to our Sinnoh Macrops, we could easily get up there and knock it out successfully, chuck the berries in it, and we were good to go. Once the Iguanodon was knocked out, I then continued my search for some Dinopithecuses, and luckily I did manage to find some. So I decided to start kiting them back to the trap. I had no idea what level they were because I didn't have a spyglass at this point, but I didn't really care. As long as we had a couple of them so that we could kill them and tame the alpha, we were a happy chappy. Kited them up to the trap, and thankfully I did build a pretty sturdy trap this time around, <laughs> and managed to kite them successfully into the trap without really too many issues. I then found a high level 156 tech raptor, bowled it and decided to try and knock it out. 
because you know what, we were already doing some taming, why not try and tame up a Tech Raptor? We can, worst case scenario, use it for electronics later down the line. So thankfully a few lucky headshots later and the Raptor was successfully knocked out. But then I got assaulted by a literal army of Mega Neuras. Why? I have no idea, but they had a death wish against me. So I had to kill all of them, but once again, the cold, the little bastards being so annoying to hit and just dealing so much damage in a swarm took us very low in HP. We were very close to death, but that didn't stop us from running back to the Dinopithecus trap, finding another monkey and kiting it into the trap so that I could try and kill the little minions and hopefully tame up the alpha for our first Dinopithecus because boy oh boy, that would be the dream. So I made a bunch of stone arrows, made my way back to the trap, and you can imagine what happened next. I went ahead and started pumping these monkeys full of stone arrows. Careful not to hit the alpha so that I wouldn't get aggro from him and I could kill his little minions. Managed to kill the first adolescent Dinopithecus, and then went ahead and killed the second Dinopithecus. With the two betas dead, we could start taming up the alpha. Squirted some raw prime meat straight into its butthole as it loves it. Look at all that shit around it too, mmm, tasty. And we managed to successfully tame up our first Dinopithecus with it coming out at level 82. Didn't really care about the level, we were just super pumped to get a Dinopithecus on day two of Ark. It was a very happy day for us and we decided to go ahead and tame up another one so that we could have our pack and get the alpha buff for our monkeys. So thankfully we did manage to tame it up successfully and we then went ahead and went out to our potential new base spot. Now, I had found this castle earlier while exploring Lost Island and thought, you know what, this would be a perfect place to set up and call home for this series. So I went ahead, built up a Dinopithecus trap in this area as well because there are a crap ton of Dinopithecuses that spawn around here. And we went ahead and started bringing them into the trap as you would do because obviously we wanted more of them. So we decided to start kiting them into the trap more and we got our first alpha. Now this one was a 145 and that was our first high level Dinopithecus. So I was pretty stoked at this stage to get such a high level. I then kited its betas in and went ahead starting to kill the betas so that I could tame up the alpha. Managed to kill the betas and it let us begin on starting to tame the alpha. Although we first had to become a child killer and kill this baby Dinopithecus. Damn! With that done, we could then finally begin our taming of the 145 Alpha. Now I gotta say, these guys are super easy to tame up once you get the betas killed. And just like that, we managed to tame our first 145 Dinopithecus with it coming out at level 216. We were on top of the world at this stage. A new day began and I started out by taming up this level 15 Dodicarus. We needed a stone gatherer for the building of the base and this guy was a low level and he was around the area. So I went ahead and started knocking him out. And oh my God, for such a low level, this bastard took a lot of damn Trank arrows. I'm not even joking, like he just kept eating them up. But after a little running around and doing circles and loop the loops, we did manage to finally, and I mean finally, knock out those Dodicarus. Not before he almost ran off the edge of the cliff though. After knocking out the Dodicarus, I then went ahead and started trying to get some more Dinopithecuses. This is a recurring theme across this video because like I said, I wanted to use Dinopithecuses to take down the boss and pretty much as our primary dino for getting around the map. I didn't want to use any flyers, even though the Cinemacrops is technically a flyer, so I've kind of already failed that challenge. I didn't really want to use any flyers like Argies or anything like that to do stuff around the map, just to make it a little bit more interesting for myself as well. So I went ahead and started killing off all the betas while the alpha was trapped, and this is when we discovered the stunning for the Dinopithecus. Getting stunned by the littlest of nudges from enemy dinos causes you to get stun locked, and you can't attack unless you jump or use your secondary attack, and it's really annoying. Which sucks because the secondary attack does less damage than the primary attack, but you can see here, because they're in the trap, we're able to use the primary attack, which is obviously dealing a lot more damage. So we kill the first betas, and then we find the alpha and tame the alpha up. This female over here was stuck, and we decided to tame her up instead because we did have a bunch of male Dinopithecuses. Chucked some refining forges down and went ahead and started getting things set up so that we could smelt metal and get metal stuff for our base. Once we had done that, we then went ahead and started naming our monkeys. We had Cheeks, Mandrill, and Shitstain to top it off. Could it, if you couldn't tell, you know, the color of the butt, it, it's pretty out there. It's pretty out there. 
Once they were named, we went ahead and decided to do a crystal run and another metal run with our Dino Pithecuses so that we could get some metal going, get a spyglass going and get some of the soul traps up and running. Managed to get quite a bit of metal and then we went back to base and started mapping out the foundations for it. We decided to use thatch as it's easier to build with thatch, cheaper resources and you can just replace it with higher tier foundations later down the line. My Goal here was to build a flat layered foundation base and still have access to all the ramparts and everything. I chucked the smithy down, we learned the engram for all the flax so that we can make ourselves some armor and make helmets for our monkeys, practically making them very, very tanky. They become very tanky with their helmets. Managed to get helmets on all of the monkeys, including our new monkey, Big Kahuna, and uh, oof. Gotta say, they were looking pretty damn dapper at this point. Once the helmets were on, we went out and decided to start taming up some new Cinemacropses. Managed to tame this Cinemacrops here, and we did try to tame this level 55, because it was a bright red, and it looked bloody dope. Unfortunately, however, the red one didn't manage to get away from us, but we did find a knocked out Stego in our travels, which was uh, pretty interesting. So we decided to get some berries and chuck them in the Stego's inventory so that we could have a herbivore that would be capable of gathering berries for us. And then we decided to get leached because, you know, we totally had a choice of that. And we found a 145 Cinemacrops. So we decided to feed that a piece of chitin while we had some bloodsucking leeches on us because I didn't want to scare it off. And then we went ahead and burned them off. You know the drill at this point. These damn bastards are everywhere on Lost Island. The 145 Cinemacrops was slowly getting tamed up and this level 55 one did return to us. We did successfully tame up the 145 Cinemacrops though and it was great. We were pretty much set for Cinemacropses now with breeding pairs between wings and the 145. We were very happy because we could just breed them. The Stego successfully tamed up as well. Once we got back to base, we then went ahead and bred the two Cinemacropses up because obviously you're going to want babies and eggs just in case something bad happens to them. This is a hardcore playthrough, so if we do die, we probably will lose the Cinemacropses with us. I then went ahead and got to work on building the upper segments of the base. This upper area here I was going to use as sort of like a bedroom area where we could decorate it and stick some stuff down just to make it look a little bit nicer and, and roleplay a little bit. Once we had the thatch foundations down, we were using the similar strategy that we were going to use down below. Pretty much cover the entire area with the foundations, leaving the staircase open so that we could still go down and in between the ramparts. We chucked the staircase down so that it would look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, and I was really happy with how the foundations were looking. They did stick through the floor a little bit, but we weren't really planning on using those floors for much. A new day began, and we started off by hatching our baby Cinemacrops. And this thing is the cutest darn little thing I have ever seen in my entire life. It is just, it is just too wholesome and too cute, and we have to protect it at all freaking costs. Look at this little dude. Look at how cute and adorable he is. He's just too much to handle. I could not handle his little tiny face and his little tiny eyes and just, oh, he's just so cute. So we successfully managed to breed our Cinemacropses and we were just admiring this little baby for so long. But I went ahead and kept working on the base, building some staircases up to the bedroom section of our little castle area place design thing that we were going for. These staircases were essentially going to function in a way that would allow us to get up there easily. Now, we also kept breeding our Dino Pithecuses because at this stage I was just trying to get some good stats and get some imprinted ones. But as well as that, um, you can see here that we did put different hats on them. So now they had top hats and uh, explorer hats, so that was pretty good. And we successfully managed to breed them and, and get them raised up because we we're going to use some as guards. Now, I then went ahead and started trying to tame some Diplos. Like I said, I didn't want to use any flyers, so Diplos were going to be our main way of gathering metal. Because there was a metal cave just across from our base underneath a waterfall, which you saw us go into earlier in the video. And I figured Diplos were going to be our easiest way to transport all this metal back to our base. Yes, they're big and annoying to get through, but they have heaps of weight and be able to just barge us along through everything. And they don't get aggroed on by many things either. So I figured, why the hell not? So, tamed up about five, I think it was four Diplos, and we went on our first metal run. Mining up all the metal, and we also mined up some crystal as well, because I was like, eh, we're probably going to need that later down the line as well. Loaded up all our Diplo boys, and honestly, I was kind of disappointed that they didn't have 
more weight. Granted, they were only relatively low level, but I got the metal back to base and figured, you know what, it's time I get an Anki for these metal runs. So I found this sick looking Anki out in the desert and we went to work on knocking it out. Luckily, I did have an Ascendant Bow that I found in a drop and this was actually dealing more damage than our crossbow, so it made knocking things out super easy. Also tamed a Jaboa while we were out here. Once we tamed up the Jaboa, we found a Dung Beetle to tame up because I was going to get a Greenhouse eventually and tamed the Dung Beetle up super easily. And I figured, why not? We're out here. Let's get some Organic Polymer from a bunch of Mantises as well because we're going to need it to build a lot of the structures that we need for our base, such as the refrigerators, air cons, and all that good stuff back at the base. So we got a crap ton of organic polymer, and then I found a 145 thorny dragon. Now, I was going to use this guy for our wood gathering, because if you didn't know, thorny dragons have the capacity to gather really good amounts of wood, and they also reduce the weight of wood in their inventory, and their saddle acts as a smithy. So, knocked out the thorny dragon and went ahead, killed some more mantises while we waited for the thorny dragon to tame up. Found a Paresa for some prime meat to eat and feed to our thorny dragon. Killed that guy and tamed up the thorny dragon. But then I got jumped on. Oh, I can't see, it's dark. Let me on a monkey. It did lose some taming effectiveness, but it, it's, I don't think it lost too many levels. Once the Thorny Dragon was safe, I then went back and collected our Enki and headed back to base. Today, a new Dinopithecus tame. We found this 140 male Dinopithecus and got him tamed up and we called him Red Rocket. At this stage, we were just trying to find monkeys so that we could breed them for stats because we didn't really have one with the greatest health and melee damage. So I figured let's start trying to find some monkeys with stats. Then I worked on the base. After getting all the foundations down, we we needed so many foundations for this. Oh my god, it was ridiculous. I then went ahead and decided to start putting up some railings around the base. Just in case, I wanted to make sure that we didn't fall off or anything like that. And I also wanted to just kind of make it a little bit prettier, a little bit nicer to look at. Because, you know, th this once again is PvE, so you got to have nice stuff. We then threw out our Diplos because I wanted to get these guys breeding. And we had... A lot of Diplos. They went down at the bottom of the base. They went out pretty decently. The only thing was obviously that their heads stuck through the castle walls. But, you know, that's fine. They don't need to look at what's going on. Next up, we then decided to throw out all our guard monkeys. So essentially, these guys were going to wander around this area. Because I was noticing that there were a lot of wild Dinopithecuses running around. So they were out patrolling the area. I then got the soul terminal down and just whacked a bunch of our uh, breeding things in. Because I needed to figure out how to actually get this breeding thing working. New day, more Dinopithecus taming. So today, guys, I decided to set up Captain Fat Dog's Dinopithecus trap. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. It is one of the best Dinopithecus traps you can use. Essentially, all you need to do is kite the Dinopithecus into it like that, and uh, it'll pretty much run up and go straight into the trap, which is great. They get stuck, they're floating there. So you can see here we found an alpha here. I believe it was a 150 female which uh, I really needed because obviously it would have helped us greatly with breeding and everything like that. And once again, we were still out looking for something with decent stats. But you can see the trap in working progress here and uh, it goes straight in, not an issue whatsoever. However, we also managed to capture a stray Kano at the same time. Which Now, because there weren't any other monkeys really in the area, I decided to leave the female 150 because we only had this juvenile and it wasn't enough to actually kill and then tame. So I decided to head out and look for some Magmasaur eggs. Now, I hadn't really explored the caves all that much, so I kind of was a little lost in trying to find them when I found this mound, and I wasn't entirely sure what it was. It's not a Pelovia. What the hell is it? It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. <gasps> it is a Pelovia. Alright, thank god it's only level 15. Because otherwise I'd be dead. So after my close encounter with the Polovia, I then found a cave, thinking it was the Magmasaur cave. However, this cave was not the Magmasaur cave whatsoever. It was an artifact cave that housed one of the very many artifacts located on Lost Island. It is full of lava, full of bats, full of Arthropleurus, all the dangerous stuff that you, you generally want to avoid on a hardcore playthrough. That didn't stop me, however, from getting some supply drops. However, they weren't the greatest of supply drops. We did get an Ascendant hatchet um, but we did eventually find the magmasaur cave and we went ahead sent our monkeys in to try and deal with the magmasaurs so that we could look for eggs without having to deal with them and we actually did a very solid amount of damage to them however an issue arose that honestly we could not have seen coming my monkey was stuck in place 
I'm hoping that there's some eggs. Oh, I see one right in front of us. Why can I not move? Are they bugged? This happened last time we tried to use the battle cry. So after leaving behind our stuck monkey, we went ahead and grabbed our first magma sword. It was a level 45. I was pretty stoked about that. A level 45 magma sword is better than no magma sword. Our monkey, however, was still stuck. So I just cried it and moved on. The next day, I went ahead on fixing up the bedroom section of the base. It was bugging me that it was all just thatch and gross to look at. So I went ahead and replaced it all with wooden foundations. And this actually blended really well with the floor that we had going on underneath, thanks to the castle ramparts. So once all the wooden foundations were placed, we got to work on setting up the rest of the structures for the base, such as the fabricator, the smithies, and everything else that we needed. Refrigerators, air cons, we got it all up and running, ready to go. After taking care of the downstairs crafting area, I then got back upstairs to work on the bedroom by crafting this very wonderful, bountiful bed that I will never use by Eco, as well as dropping some bookcases, part of the RPD core mod. We also dropped a bathtub because we felt like soaking a little bit and I thought there were two of me Oh in there. my god. It's kind of weird that there's two of me. Oh no, it's the... <laughs> I thought my Cinemacrops was another person. because I thought it was me because of the helmet. Oh shit, that was... That's funny. After coming to terms with my doppelganger, I then went ahead and kept decorating the rest of the upstairs area. Had this funky ass chest that we could change. And boy oh boy, I gotta tell you, Eco does some amazing mods, so you definitely need to check out Eco's mods if you play on PC and you've got access to it, because they're great. Uh, you can see here, I went ahead and placed a desk. I was just trying to fancy up this upstairs area so it didn't look so boring, and that, you know, we had something nice and cool to call our own. Chucked this little egg basket on the desk, and I was pretty happy with how the upstairs section was looking. You know, like if this was in the middle of nowhere and I had this as my bedroom. I'd be pretty stoked. New day began and I started it by taming up this green dung beetle. I also needed to find a bunch of cementing paste. So I went out and looked for the beaver dams. However, I found the beaver dams, just uh, no beavers. And because I'm not a monster, I also emptied all of the wood out of the beaver dams. I know. I know, you can thank me later. I then had a mission to find some tech creatures for electronics. However, I was running through a cave and uh, yeah, as Rexes. So, I don't know if anything will aggro. Oh! I don't want to fight them. I don't want to fight them. Freaking run! Run! Oh my god. They look like boulders. They're freaking megalos. They would have killed us. After my close encounter with some megalos, I then found a tech raptor that I was looking for. Like I said, I wanted to breed these guys so that I could get a bunch of electronics going for myself because we didn't really have a reliable source of silica pearls. Managed to knock out the raptor with obviously no difficulties whatsoever. And then I found a tech parasaur. Knocked that out with one arrow and I was like, you know what, if we don't get a pair of raptors, we could try and find a pair of parasaurs. However, that was very <coughs> short-lived because someone else had something to say about it. You bastard. Well, it looks like it's not going to be a parasaur. However, the parasaur didn't matter because later on I found a female tech raptor out in the desert and I got to work knocking her out. Once again, she was relatively easy to knock out because she was actually a super low level raptor. So I managed to get her knocked out and I was pretty much just going to feed her some raw meat and she tamed up successfully. So we now had our breeding pair of tech raptors that we were going to use in order to breed and harvest for electronics. Got them back to base and got them breeding up ASAP. Their eggs were being incubated without us having to grab any extra air cons or anything like that, which was great. Plus I hadn't exactly set up the soul terminal to work correctly. Got a baby tech raptor up and running though. Made sure there was food for it so that it wouldn't starve to death because that is honestly a recurring thing whenever I try to raise babies. They just always starve to death for me. And then I went ahead and made a chainsaw. I needed this bad boy to harvest up the tech raptors as these guys gather so many more materials than when you use a pickaxe or a hatchet. And that goes for the trees as well as hide and meat. Chainsaws are your best friends in Ark, and they are even better than using dinos to harvest things. So I'd heavily recommend making sure that you get a chainsaw whenever you are playing on a map, because they're absolutely incredible. Once the baby was raised up, though, I had to kill it. I slightly regret my decision, but I really needed those electronics. We harvested it up, and oh boy, oh boy, was this gonna work. The next day, I was just exploring the map of Lost Island because I still wasn't sure where everything was and I was looking for an artifact cave. We needed to start getting the artifacts for when we were eventually going to fight the Dinopithecus King and I managed to find one. However, due to the Dinopithecus's unique 
aggro terms, nothing was aggroing on us. Because if you weren't aware, Dinopithecuses have the aggro, I guess, range of a T-Rex. So if nothing aggroes on a T-Rex, nothing will aggro on the Dinopithecuses. However, I'm a sucker for a fight, so I decided to get into this fight and go ahead and murder everything I could see. This also gave me the opportunity to check out the battle roar for the monkeys, as well as how strong my monkeys actually were as well. I then found a cave drop while we were spelunking, and boy oh boy, it was okay. We found an 81 Mastercraft Sarko saddle, found another drop with a Paresa saddle and some Mastercraft fur leggings. Nothing crazy good that we were going to use. But then we found the aberrant area, and I also found another female tech raptor. Now, I had to be careful here, as once again, nothing would aggro on me as long as I didn't get off my monkey. However, I successfully managed to knock out the tech raptor without any issues. But oh boy, oh boy, let me tell you. The issues definitely arose later on. I kept exploring the aberration part of the cave and found another red drop. And boy oh boy was I excited for this one. Yep, that's right. A billboard and a freaking catwalk. Nice. Wonderful, you love to see it. I did eventually find the artifact of the brood up here on a ledge. I jumped off and this caused pretty much everything to aggro on me, unfortunately. However, we were in a safe spot, but I didn't want to risk dying. So I decided to jump down there and deal with everything before coming back up and claiming the artifact. Let's go. Let's get to work. Because I'm pretty sure the Arthropleurus also destroy our helmets. Like, look at him getting just stunlocked. He's not even dealing damage. He might actually die, to be honest. I'm coming, Red Rocket! He's just getting slammer jammed. Whew. Alright, that was good. I don't know if that's an Onyx back there or what, but yeah, look at how much damage he took. He's freaking almost dead. All right, let's get our prize. Well, I mean, we got another Tech Raptor as well that we can try and tame up. Oh, actually, I should have held on to some of that prime meat. Can we... Bro, just chill out and just land on the platform. There you go. Attaboy. Oh, that was close. All right. Artifact of the Brute. Got it. Beautiful. Oh, strong. Never mind. Wrong artifact. I then made my way back through the rest of the cave, trying to return to my Tech Raptor that we had knocked out. And just to help out... Die, freaking bugs. Yeah. That's what I was worried about. Alright. Let's grab our prize here. Hopefully it's something freaking good. Oh, shit again. Some cave drops. How annoying. I managed to return to where our tech raptor was knocked out. However, I had a little bit of a problem. I had to get off our Dinopithecus to put food in the raptor's inventory. And I accidentally aggroed on these ravagers. So I was going to have to fight my way through this one in order to get our tech raptor and survive, but it was not a fun time. If I can hit this one. All right, there we go. Okay, we're good. Let's, I might. I'm not really too worried about the Tech Raptor taking damage. If it does, it does. If not, that's great. I'm pretty sure I just hit it there. Good job, Big Kahuna good over here all right well I mean that's a pretty much a tech raptor guaranteed tamed up there's a lot of high level Kanos in here this might be a good spot to come back and try and tame some uh, this is definitely gonna end bad come on monkey <gasps> no no they're aberrant raptors Oh shit! I didn't even think about that! Oh my god, I didn't even think about them being aberrant raptors. I didn't even realize they could have grabbed us off. Oh my god, I'm so oh my what do I have that kept me alive? My armor, look at that. Oh that was terrifying. I am glad we didn't fight them first, because those Kanos would have messed us up. We would have been dead. Oh my god, was that close. That was terrifying. My heart, the heart palpitations are real right now. I was like, what's going on? Oh, the heart palpitations are real. Alright. 
We are getting out of here. I forgot. I didn't even think about it. So after that terrible encounter, we then spent the rest of the day taming up some Sarkos. We got that Mastercraft saddle from one of the drops with 81 armor. So I figured, why not? Let's head out here, let's see if we can find some high level Sarkos. We might as well try and get our hands on them. And I pretty much spent the rest of the time of this day taming up a breeding pair of Sarkos. There was a 145 over here in the distance. We went ahead and started working on getting that one knocked out. But because we could use weapons on the back of our Dinopithecus, we were able to just go ahead and trank them on the back of our monkey in relative safety. I really wanted to get a breeding pair because obviously then I can imprint it and I figured I'd need to go into the ocean at some point to get some artifacts. And what better mount to use underwater than a Sarko with an 81 Mastercraft saddle. That's definitely gonna do the job for you. There she is. Beautiful. All right, let's go get her. And then I think that's our army of Sarkos done and dusted. I do like these Dinopithecuses though. They are very powerful. I can kind of see why they got the stun lock going because like they've got the aggro thingy of a... Oh my God, this one looks sick. They've got the aggro thingy of a Rex and like nothing attacks them. So I can see why when you do decide to attack something, you get stun locked. It's just annoying, that's all. She's chunking us though. I'm worried about killing her. That should be enough for her to go to sleep. Beautiful. All right, I really need to figure out a way to get rid of all these stupid Cinemacropses on here. All right guys, first Sarko is all tamed up. 150 Sarko is tamed. You got an extra 108 levels, so I think we lost about... Beautiful. Bro, you don't want to fight me. Just... <gasps> okay, I can grab you, okay. Yeah, it can still grab us. Out of the water. Out of the water. I mean, I don't think it'll kill us with our armor, but... Just to be on the safe side of things. Alright, we're good. So, after the little adventure in the swamp, I went back to base and figured, you know what? Let's do some breeding. So, I placed down some air cons. I really wanted to hatch these magmasaur eggs that we got a lot earlier. Because magmasaurs, you know, they're awesome. Plus, the sarco eggs and the raptor eggs just need a little bit of extra love and stuff like that. Just to get you know, everything up and running properly. I could not for the life of me get this stupid aircon to stack on top of it. It was driving me crazy. It just always wanted to sit right in front. It just would not sit in between them on the second level. Watch this, ready? Ready? Nothing. So I gave up on trying to do that and was just like, you know what, stuff it, this still looks okay. Let's just, let's just run with that. So we dropped the Magma Sorig. This was the level 45 one that we got and it had a little bit of incubation time. So I figured, you know what? Let's throw the rest of the Sarkos that we got and get them breeding up because then we can incubate that egg and work on getting an imprint going. And I also got our Cinemacrops eggs as well. Now we were going to use these Cinemacrops eggs for kibble, but not before I had to go and kill some more raptors for their juicy, juicy parts. I'm hoping that's the first and last time I'll ever have to say that statement again. While the other eggs were incubating, I decided to try and find the other Magmasaur cave to see if I could get my hands on some more Magmasaur eggs. Because once again, mag Magmasaurs are amazing. They're awesome. They're great. So I was finding this cave and lo and behold, I found two eggs. But no Magmasaurs in sight. <sighs> Woo! We, got a, we got a 135. Let's, let's go. Do I just take this and dip or do I keep exploring? I kind of want to keep running around. I'm curious as to where all the... Oh shit. I'm curious as to where all the Magmasaurs are. I didn't actually know there was another nest here though, which is great. Yeah, where are the Magnusaurs at? I ain't complaining, I'll happily take their babies, but... I'm curious as to where they all are. You know what, I'm gonna take both these eggs, because... Stuff it, we can't, let's go. Alright, so we got a 135, I should just freaking forget about the level 45 one and hatch this. After returning to base, our first egg had successfully hatched and was waiting us in the soul terminal. So I got the 135 egg laid down and ready to incubate. <laughs> oh, that's hot. God damn. I hope that's a female. Oh my God, this is glorious. Look at this Christmas themed little dude. After hatching our first Magmasaur egg, you can see where this is going. I went ahead and killed some more tech raptors. This was the sole purpose we tamed these guys up. I do feel a little bit bad every time I do it, but I really needed the electronics and the scrap metal. So we harvested them up and got all the metal cooking electronics in the fabricator. And then I decorated upstairs some more with some more headpieces. And honestly, this looks awesome. I love the way that these look. And once again, they are part of Eco's mods. You need to check out Eco's mods. They are well and truly worth it. So I chucked a couple of these down just to make upstairs a little bit more homier. 
make it feel a little bit more like a base and whatnot. And I gotta say, they looked pretty phenomenal, if I say so myself. So the other two Magmasaurs hatched, and I got them out and started raising them as well. Now, at this stage, I wasn't sure if they were going to take Sulfur, because the Sulfur update had just came in. But unfortunately, we didn't get a cool color mutation on our 135, so it was stuck in that color. And we couldn't breed our green one either, as it was a male. I was really hoping it would be a female so that the green color would be a lot easier to carry on. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But here they are all grown up in all their glory and oh my god, do they look incredible. However, I forgot that they, you need to be level 95 in order to use their saddles. The next day I descended into another cave of the depths to try and find another artifact. We did find a couple of cave drops on the way. This one had two prods that I will never ever use. Now, our monkeys couldn't fit through these caves, so I had to be very cautious and I did get run over by bugs quite a lot. So I had to play it super safe. Now, I didn't really have the greatest amount of weapons on me either. I had my Ascendant standard bow and that was about it. I didn't have any Trank arrows. Uh, I didn't have any stone arrows. I only had Trank arrows. So I was trying to Trank this freaking spider so that it wouldn't eat me because I really had no other weapons. In hindsight, I probably could have pulled out my hatchet. That probably would have fared better against it, but I just panicked. I was getting attacked by a spider. I didn't really have too much of a choice. Luckily, I had cleared out the rest of this room anyway with our Dinopithecus before we decided to head on further, but there was stuff coming out of the walls. So thankfully, we were able to throw this guy out here and we could get into a tussle and actually float above all the enemies because, you know, Ark doesn't want to work the way it wants to and we just decide to float there in space. They do manage to break some of our armor, however, we still have some extra pieces that are okay. But yeah, we're just, it's kind of annoying because you can't stay on the ground, you'll just get stun locked. If you jump in the sky to do your secondary attack, you just get freaking floated. So it kind of sucks. Let's, let's go. Cheeks, do something. Help me, help me, Cheeks. We're gonna attack, attack back, please. Okay, there goes our armor. We are definitely not able to get off any more monkeys now. Oh, well, that was a whole ordeal. All right, well, yeah, we're not going to be able to really tank any more damage now, uh, which sucks. So after that embarrassing tussle, I found some more drops further in the cave. Nothing really too exciting. A Mastercraft stone pick and a Paki Rhino saddle. I then ventured further in, but my monkeys wouldn't fit, so I had to go on foot. And then I found another one with Journeyman Flak Leggings. Now, this one I was pretty happy about. So we were pretty close to the artifact room from here, I'm pretty sure. We just had to deal with a literal butt ton of spiders. So these bastards just kept coming in, and they weren't the under 150s. They were like high levels. So I found another cave drop, Journeyman Pistol, and a hide shirt. I was actually pretty stoked for the pistol. But uh, nonetheless, I did grab this artifact that we needed to get. I believe it was Artifact of the Clever. And then we found another cave with another artifact that we needed. However, this one, this one was a bit of a maze. We've got this little pocket here that seems to go underneath. Uh, I'm super nervous. We're going to cryo up cheeks here. We're going to go under this. I think this is the way to go. We, I don't see any other way. And I've run around here like 20 billion times looking for freaking something. I think, I mean, I'm going to throw cheeks straight out. Oh, there it is. Okay, sweet. So we got the artifact just in this next room. I don't think there's anything dangerous, but safety precautions. This is a hardcore playthrough. We die, it's over. Cool. All right, sweet. That's the artifact of the hunter done and dusted. Beautiful. After gathering the artifacts, I went back to monkey taming. I found this 145 female Dinopithecus, so we kited her from the Redwoods all the way up there down to our trap, thinking that it would be much easier to tame her down here. There was a Sarko hot on her tail, well, it was either on her tail or our tail, but nonetheless, we managed to get her into the trap. We just had to find some other monkeys to kite into the trap so that we could get her the alpha buff and get her tamed up. So, we found this one monkey over on the beach where all the monkeys just love to freaking spawn in and uh, got him in the trap as well. So now that we had those two in the trap, we could go ahead, kill the beta and get the female all tamed up. So headshots galore. After killing the beta, I then had access to taming up the female. So we went ahead and started taming her up, but we need a bit of the prime meat first. So we got that off the dead sarcos and then we went ahead and started feeding her. However, disaster ensued. 
Seen a macro ups take off. Oh, fuck me dead. That was close. Holy shit. Oh my god. We almost died there. Oh my god. My heart is in my chest. We got trapped in the trap. Our own trap. We got trapped in our own damn trap. So, after suffering that terrible ordeal, we managed to tame up the female Dinopithecus. However, she... She wasn't the greatest. She didn't have the best stats, so she was kind of useless. You can see he, her highest stat was her weight, and like we didn't... Sorry, her oxygen was actually higher. So, after that disappointing find, I decided to go do a metal run, and we took the Diplos out. However, it wasn't such a smooth metal run. We got ambushed by a lot of other monkeys. They're still coming. They're very slow. All right. Spino is attacking. Oh, they are definitely attacking our thingies. All right, we need to get the other one out. Please don't kill my Diplos. I do like them. Yeah, that's it, Diplos. Do what you do best. Annoy them. Push them away from you. We're just going to have to wipe out this whole herd. No! There goes one of our Diplos. They don't have the greatest amount of HP. Because they're low level. I never thought I'd be so heartbroken to see one of my Diplos go. Alright, we're still fighting down here. Stop climbing and do your slam, you dickhead. Okay. Where the hell are the rest of our Diplos? I see one. Where? Don't tell me the others all died. I only saw one death message. After the metal and crystal run, I then had enough resources to go ahead and start building our greenhouse. Now, for the greenhouse, I wanted to have two separate sort of greenhouse zones. So, this was built up on the other rampart on the other side of the bedroom. So, I decided to split it up into two separate sort of greenhouses. So, you can see here, this was going to be the first one. And then there was going to be a small little alcove between this one and the next one. And we were just going to pretty much repeat the same design slash pattern on the other side. And you can see here, we went ahead and built a slanted roof. I'm a sucker for the sloped roofs. I really like them. Especially on like greenhouses and stuff like that. The next day I headed out to try and find the other cave where I needed to get the artifact. And luckily I stumbled across some beaver dams on the way, which is great. You can never go wrong with some beaver dams. So I grabbed the paste out of the dams and there was just more of them. I still couldn't find the beavers for the life of me though. Had no idea where the beavers were. There just were never any. Eventually I did find the artifact cave that we were looking for and made my way inside. Now this cave, very similarly to the other cave, has lots and lots of bugs and creepy crawlers inside of it. However, this one had a sunken ship inside of it, which was awesome. Now, the perks of using the Dinopithecus once again is that nothing really aggroed on us until we either decided to attack them or get off our Dinopithecus. So here I was just trying to navigate the region as best as I could, but at the same time, I really wanted to explore this sunken ship. So I had the smart idea to get off the Dinopithecuses and then I got ambushed by literally everything. You forgot about the aggro? I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. I can't, can you guys attack for me? Please do something. I don't want to get mega rabies. I'm pretty sure we can still get it even though we're riding on our monkey. Okay, we've just gone around and... Ooh, this looks cool. Whoa. Alright, this is... This is dope. This is cool. we got some bright-ass crystals in a pot in front of us. Where... I like the ship at the beginning. Eventually, I did find the artifact room. However, I was a little bit concerned about dying down the bottom here. Luckily, it was just a pool of water. So, that wasn't going to be an issue. However, I wanted to get the artifact without aggroing everything and climbing seemed to be the best thing but you know the monkeys they aren't okay. always the best climbers it did take us quite a few attempts to actually get up to the top where the freaking artifact was let me tell you it was not a fun time especially trying to avoid all the bats because i didn't have a cure for mega rabies if i got mega rabies i was probably gonna die just because of how much damage it does however we did manage to get artifact of the cunning and that completed this cave after the cave, I then decided to go and tame some Maywings. I finally broke, and I was like, well, <sighs> these guys are going to be really good. I was struggling to get crystal for our base. The crystal in the cave behind the waterfall near our base 
Didn't really have all that much crystal, so I figured a May Wing was going to be our best bet. Now, I kind of already broke the no flying challenge at the beginning when I tamed the Cinemacrops, but how could I not tame up a Cinemacrops? So we decided to go for some May Wings as well. We knocked that first one out and then we found another one. And if you guys are ever needing to know how to knock out May Wings or how to trap them, billboards. I can tell you right now, nothing is easier than using billboards to trap a May Wing. You don't need any fancy trap from anyone in particular, but that's all you need. Just a couple of billboards and they'll be trapped. So we got to work. We knocked out three May Wings, I think, in total because we were trying to get a breeding pair of them and we found some high level ones later down the line. And here is the third and final May Wing that we actually knocked out. So like I said, these were high levels. I wanted to get some breeding pairs so I could imprint on it. A, to be faster and B, to have more weight and all that good stuff. And they're super easy to knock out as well. They've got literally like 800 torpor, I think it is. So, knocked those guys out. We found an Ovis wandering around the Highlands. We actually found a couple of them, but I didn't have any sweet veggie cakes to tame it up. So, I got myself some raw mud to feed to the May Wings. Tamed up the uh, level 91 first. It was obviously super easy because they eat everything. And this one was only level 90, so it was relatively easy to get. We then made our way over to the other ones. These guys were really far apart, but we tamed up the 135, and that was successfully tamed up. So... Now that we had a pair of them, we could breed them, but I then went ahead and tamed up the final one, and you can see that one was right here. So the next day, we then decided to go ahead and rebuild our trap in a different section because we still were not happy with our Dinopithecus lines. Still needed some more Dinopithecuses that had decent stats, and this little bastard just would not leave us alone to rebuild this trap. It was super frustrating, I can tell you right now. Granted, having the Maywing probably didn't help considering how much we were flying all over the place, Absolutely, positively, horribly. I don't think it could have... Go oh, fucking hell. I stand corrected. It definitely can go wrong. Even more so. There they are there. There is still an adult one, I think. That's an adult, right? Yeah, cool. Alright, let's go. Come on, you two. Making sure they're following. Maywing can't get over the trap. Alright, we got one in. That's the alpha. After trapping and dealing with the monkeys, we finally started taming up the female Dinopithecus. And boy, oh boy, were we excited for her stats. 6k health, 350 melee damage. This is exactly what we needed to get. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. All right, she's got 38 points in melee damage, 33 points in health. So I was pretty stoked about getting that female Dinopithecus, but I went out and found some more of them, trapped them, set the trap up in a different area, and got to work on killing these ones. Now, I did kill a 135. However, the alpha here was a 150. So we needed to tame that guy up to see how well his stats would come out at. And let me tell you, dealing with these freaking monkeys, we almost lost Mandrill because he's just standing there getting stun locked out of his goddamn brains by a baby monkey and an adult monkey. Absolutely crazy. Nonetheless, we did manage to finally kill the ape when we weren't getting stun locked. Look at this. Like, come on. <laughs> so, killed that, and then the alpha was ready to be tamed up. Alpha, once again, it's a very simple, easy tame once you kill the betas. All you gotta do is stick food up their bum. Tamed up the 150 male, and let's take a look at his stats. Ooh, baby. 39 points in HP. We had our boss Dinopithecuses ready to breed. So, the only logical thing after that was taking them back to base to breed. Now, I threw out a bunch of random Dinopithecuses because I didn't want the offspring of our new tames getting mixed in with these lot, and these ones were pretty pretty much just like scum on the bottom of my boot. They weren't useful for anything. So they had mixed stats from the previous Dinopithecuses that we had bred. I didn't want them inflating our lines with our new line. So I went ahead and finished the greenhouse as well. Putting down the pipes up here, it was a, it was a little bit difficult, but we managed to get it all done. I had the greenhouse crops plots down and ready to go as well. So it was just a matter of getting these stupid pipe work in and getting everything irrigated. Uh, I wasn't the smartest when it came to this because I could have used the flexible pipe. And yeah, I, well, as you can see, I, I definitely didn't do that. I just, I, well, I did, but now I couldn't get it to work for the life of me. So I had to figure out something else in order to get the pipe systems laid down. But honestly, the only reason I wanted to get a greenhouse going for was so that I could make sweet veggie cakes to actually tame up an Amargosaurus and get some kibble as well. That was pretty much it. I didn't really need it for anything else. So I went ahead and finished building the actual rest of the base structure. I was actually really proud of how the greenhouse turned out. It 
probably, I mean, it's not like a fancy build or anything like that by far, but I was pretty, I was pretty pumped. I was pretty chuffed with how it came out. Like, it came out pretty good. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a little bit. We did, we did decorate it up a little bit and all that sort of stuff. And Eco's RP mods, I'll tell you what, they make the biggest bloody difference. Uh, it's just ridiculous how good those mods are for everything. It's crazy. So we just finished placing down the rest of the walls and then we just had to enclose it. So finally, after a long night's of worth of work, we finally managed to complete the greenhouse. Adorned with decorations, lamp posts, a kitchen, as well as that we had the crop plots planted. Well, not all of them, just the ones that we had enough uh, fertilizer for. But with the kitchen in here, it would make getting resources, well, not necessarily resources, it would make getting our kibble and sweet veggie cakes and all that good stuff made up super easy and super quicker. So that's why I put it in there as well. There's a couple of little benches set around the place, but you can see here the crops were growing great considering how soon we, we planted them. The greenhouse boost was really going well. And we had our free range dung beetles out of their cage producing fertilizer for us nonstop. So that was great as well, but that was the greenhouse complete. So I was really proud of how the greenhouse turned out. Like I said, it's not like the fanciest building, but small victories. You got to take them where you can get them. So I was really happy with how the greenhouse turned out. The next day, I went ahead and finally had enough resources to make an industrial forge. So I went ahead and crafted that bad boy up and we got that place down. Oh my god, metal was going to be so much easier now that we had this big boy. We removed all the refining forges and put it pretty much where that was. It is big, I didn't reduce it in the S plus mod, but that's, that's fine. So for the rest of the day, I decided to try and tame an Amargosaurus and boy oh boy, was that <laughs> i cannot begin to explain how much of an ordeal that was you'll just have to you'll just have to watch and suffer alongside with me all right let's let's see how this goes we're gonna hunt with it i mean i've got this simple pistol which honestly destroys as long as i don't hit our own amargosaurus Okay, he got 3% out of that. Ow. This dude's gonna straight up impale us. Oh god. You gotta be like a 150 or something. I've made a terrible decision here. Bro, this thing doesn't die. 145. Thanks for the help, dude. I thought you were trying to hunt with us. What the hell was that? He didn't even get a taming percentage off it. God damn, I saw a tail. Yeah, don't look at me like that. I'm ready to sacrifice you, to be honest. Okay, level 95. Can he kill a level 95 Magmasaur with our help? We're going to float above him. Oh, there's a lot of them in here today. <gasps> Jesus. Alright, Amaga's going in. Oh, shit. He's died. <laughs> He's going to die. He's standing in his own fire. He's hungry. We need to feed him. He's running away. He's shit scared. This was a terrible idea. Okay, we killed the Magmasaur. I wonder if he's going to get taming effectiveness off of that. Hey, little dude. Put taming food. I mean, he got 16%. He took a lot of damage. So, due to the fact that that one took a lot of damage, I came back out here and got this level 15, level 21, and figured, you know what? This should be easier. Oh boy, was I wrong once again. Okay, it's trying to fight something up here. Do I want to go in the fire? Oh, there's an aloe. Oh shit, there's a whole herd of them. I don't want to um shoot our one by accident. Oh, well, our one's back here. Is that? No, that's our one there. It was copping all the damage. Are you good? It needs healing. How much did we get for that? 16%. I mean, eh. Increase our Margosaurus's taming thingy. Well, hopefully more than a little bit. Pretty sure it just act. We're just going to hover above him here. Because it's 100% going to try and, act and fight those.
That was a 150 aloe, damn. That's ours over there. So it just ran across the lava to try and fight this guy. We're going to try and help him out here and hopefully it doesn't die. I thought it would die because it ran into the magma, unless the magma actually doesn't deal damage on this. Okay. You are still on... <gasps> no. You're joking. Well, guys, that is definitely not how I wanted to die. That That is really poo. That is really poo-poo. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know where we go from here. I really don't. That was so shit. Like, no joke. We just died to getting bombed by an Amargosaurus and our Cinemacrops not being able to carry us high enough or it just bumped us straight into the lava and the lava one-shot us. So... That's great. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do now. So, after that harrowing defeat, I had two options. Give up and move on, or admin my things back and continue this playthrough. Now, I might get a lot of hate for this, which is unfortunate because, in hindsight, I did start this as a hardcore series. The death itself, absolutely heartbreaking. I, you know, it was really tough to, to see. Now... Normally, the Lava on Arc isn't one shot, one kill. We did have semi-low health, but I still don't think it should have been enough to kill us in one hit. So, I did pose the question to my community, and a lot of them did say to continue the series. We were pretty much at the end of it. We only needed to really fight the boss. I was doing the Amargosaurus taming purely because of Lost Island. So, I decided to continue. Now, I am hoping that a lot of you do not harbor hate towards me or anything like that but that was our one death and so i decided to rise from the literal ashes of my body and continue this and see it through to the end so after that terrible encounter with the amargosaurus i then decided i was going to need some sweet veggie cakes in order to tame one up so i needed to find some honey now i'm pretty sure that there was some honey near my base i'm pretty sure i'd seen it earlier when we were taming up some dinopithecus or something and there it is in all its glory now, we were going to need a lot more than five honey in order to make all the sweet veggie cakes that were required. Plus, I was thinking of taming some overseas and whatnot as well. So, I decided to go out and try and find myself a dye bear to tame up. They're great at gathering honey and they're immune to the bees stinging you. Luckily, I did find one in the area and we got to work at tranking it out. Luckily, though, I did have this high level long neck rifle that I'd gotten from a drop. So, knocking out the dye bear was relatively easy. Normally you can't actually use crossbows or any other tranking method because the damage is too high for the die bears and they will die before you actually knock them out. So if you are thinking about taming a die bear, make sure that you do utilize a long neck with some darts because your crossbow bows will probably kill it to be honest. But I did forget to pump it full of narcotics so it did wake up and I had to go out and try and tame a new die bear. Luckily for me there was one wandering around on the beach however due to it being on the beach, I was a little bit worried about it going into the water and us knocking it out in there and then drowning it. Now, I am using a crossbow here, but that's because I ran out of darts. I had to be very careful here because normally when it means a when a dino is swimming and you knock it out, it will drown. So I was trying to wait for it to get onto land, but luckily it did make its way up onto this rock here. And you can see that it's currently walking. So I chucked the final arrow into it, went up to its inventory to double check that it wasn't drowning. Thankfully for us, it wasn't drowning though because it was doing that walking animation when we knocked it out. Then I went up to the snow biome to try and tame a snow owl because I was going to use Captain Fat Dog's trap where you get a wild creature in the other side, use the snow owl to heal it up and then get the Amargosaurus's taming bar up like that. So I figured, why not? We had already used the Maywings as flyers. We had already used the Cinemacrops as flyers. I wasn't really going to use the snow owl to get around or anything like that. But I didn't have any trap or anything like that set up for the snow owl, so I had to try and find a low level one. And uh, it, it didn't pan out as smooth as I would have liked. I was just face tanking a level 85 snow owl for ages until it deigned itself worthy enough to fly away from me because its torpor was too high and it was having none of that. But uh, I was should have been smarter about it and built a trap. Luckily for me though, I did venture out after the level 85 and I found a lower level snow owl. 
And then we made our way back to base and I got some honey into the die bear and we tamed up our die bear. Great time all around. So now we had a reliable source of gathering honey, which was going to be wonderful. The next day I headed out to the final artifact cave that I needed to go to to get the artifact for the Gamma Dinopithecus King. I was, uh, I was very nervous about this cave. There were a lot of spider webs. There was a lot of dangerous stuff. I wasn't feeling too confident at this stage. So I decided to make my way through. Luckily, there were only spiders, so they weren't going to aggro on us. But the moment I got off my Dinopithecus, you can bet your sweet cheeks what they did. They decided to aggro on me. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but these spiders weren't exactly pushovers. They were like the strong level 300 spiders. So they actually did quite a lot of damage to us. And as you can see, my monkey didn't actually have a helmet on it. So we had no extra armor from it. Luckily, we did have pretty high melee damage and this one was imprinted. Uh, so we could deal quite a lot of damage, but they were still stun locking us, which knowing my luck was going to be the case that got us killed. So thankfully, I did manage to maneuver myself onto like some stalagmites here. And we were able to slam a jam on the spiders and turn them into pulp from up here with relative safety. Uh, and then this way they couldn't actually stun lock us. However, I wasn't done exploring the cave yet. I did manage to find a cave drop down here. As soon as I finished killing these spiders, that was. I had to, these bastards, they were just everywhere. And you can see here our monkey was taking quite a bit of damage, but I was I was pretty confident that would be okay. So we looked in the drop and we got a saddle and a Mastercraft long neck rifle. And then I found this Alpha Rex that I was going to fight. So I want to try and get it up here. I reckon I can fight it. With our other two... Oh shit, with our other two monkeys, I reckon we can take them the Rex. Okay, maybe I needed a s helmet on our dude. Bro, can I... Let me... Let me give me... Let me... Let me give, give me a second. Just give me a second here. Jokes, our monkeys are getting absolutely stunlocked to high hell. Alright, attack. I don't know if they do bleed to alpha, but we hit for 700 damage. Oofed. Why can I not move? Oh, don't tell me it's done this thing again. We're stuck. This bug happens all the... I don't know what this bug is. But this is a very bad time for it to happen because we're fighting... No, Mandrel! Because we're fighting a Rex here. I'm very stuck. And we can't move. Like, I cannot move. I would wager I'm definitely dead here if I... I can't move. Honestly, it's so annoying. I don't know what bug this is. They need to fix their shit, though. I don't know if I can kill it. I'll definitely be able to kill it if I get off the monkey. Because we've got our... We've got our gunny. We have enough armor to survive. Okay, but we've got no monkeys left. That's super annoying. We would have been able to get away if we had the freaking... If we could move. How much bullets do I have left? I got enough to kill this guy, I reckon. It's a shame about Mandrill. Mandrill was like our OG guy. He was one of the first monkeys we tamed. I don't know what the Rex... I think the Rex is stuck on eating the corpse. I'm pretty sure this is also a bug that happens with Alphas. So you can see there's a very clear indicator that Ark has absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever and the devs really do patch out bugs really quickly. Okay, we got a bunch of items there. I'm not too sure what we did get, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have to go back to base to get a monkey. Bunch of crossbows, alpha T-Rex teeth, the skull. Okay. So after the fight with the Alpha Rex, I decided to go back to base and make my way into another cave because I needed artifact of the Skylord. However, I did find another drop, journeyman simple pistol and a journeyman uh, stone pickaxe. This cave was relatively easy to run through. It was pretty much just a straight line to the artifact, so I didn't really have too many issues here. And I did just try to avoid all the bugs and insects and spiders and scapes and scorpions and everything else that was in here. But we did manage to find the artifact of the Skylord. I'll double check the area, make sure there was nothing that was going to eat me if I jumped off. And we jumped back on our monkey and got the heck out of there. Now began the fun part breeding up our Dinopithecuses. Now, this took a while because I was just constantly trying to get mutations and get the right stats for our monkeys with them all consolidated together. So that took me like a solid, I don't even know, it was just a long time of grinding up the breeding. Luckily, I did have the soul terminals to help, but I went ahead and managed to finally get the stats consolidated. I honestly don't even know how many days it actually took me to do all of that. 
But uh, you can see here, me throwing them all out, they were all coming out at the same level, 228. So that was with the 39 HP and the 38 melee damage. I was super stoked. I did try going for mutations. However, it's just way too difficult to go for mutations without the mutator, in my opinion. Like, it just takes a really long time. And our breeding settings weren't the greatest for this playthrough as well, in comparison to like our hardcore Ragnarok one that we did. So I threw out all the monkeys. They were going to need some levels and they were going to need to be raised. So we let, and imprinted, that's that's the big one as well. So we left them out there to do exactly that. In the meantime, I made my way back up to the greenhouse and decided to start making some broths and brews and stuff like that because I was going to try my luck at taming up another Amargosaurus. So I went ahead and also made some kibble with the veggies, honey, and eggs that I had from our May wings laying them because we did have a couple of extra ordinary eggs and whatnot. I then needed some rare flowers as well. So this little section just outside of the uh, castle wars provided us with a literal shit ton of rare flowers. I've never seen so many rare flowers before in my life. And then we got attacked by some monkeys. Don't you love having guard monkeys patrolling the area? So much for the monkey guards. Where are they? They have one job. One bloody job. You're stand. Oh, that's Poop Jr. He's not a guard. They had one job, Stan. Bastard trying to attack my monkeys? Where do they come from? After protecting our monkeys, I then wanted to test something. I had two different flak helmets that we had received over our time playing. And we had a ramshackle and an apprentice one. Now, obviously, the apprentice one did have higher armor. However, the ramshackle one had higher durability. So I wanted to determine which one was going to be better for us to use for the boss fight. And I ended up going with the ramshackle one as it did have the higher durability. Thankfully, all my monkeys raised successfully. They were also all imprinted successfully and they were pretty beefy. So I then went ahead and started leveling them up by killing all our other Dinopithecus babies. Now, these guys actually didn't give us too many levels. I was really surprised at how many levels these were giving us. They didn't give us a lot. So I was kind of disheartened. So I was like, I'm going to have to do this the good old fashioned way and just grind it up by killing a bunch of dinos. So we went on a bit of a murder spree, killing a bunch of dinos, so that we could get levels into our dinopithecuses to get them ready for the final boss fight. So after making sure our dinopithecuses were leveled and raised, we then went out and tried to tame an Amargosaurus once again. And uh, you can imagine it wasn't a smooth experience. So we did find a 150 Amargosaurus, but not before his friend decided to aggro on us and try to murder us. Right, and uh, this down. was how much fun we had trying to build the trap for the Amargosaurus to get it in there. Okay, four of those. Is he still coming after us? He is. Oh my god, dude. You need to chill the freak out. We need to try and get him to... Alright, he's gone for the Thorny Dragon now. Thank god for that. Alright, let's get these down. Just, I hope that thorny dragon doesn't kill him. We should be okay though, right? Like, I think it'll be alright. I'm hoping it'll be okay. Alright, let's get this trap down. That should be fine. And that should be fine. That's all snapped up. Alright, now we just have to make a second layer here. Oh, come on, dude. Don't do this to me. Well, he killed that thorny dragon. Let's get out of here. We should be able to run away from him if he's stuck down there. We should be good. Alright, Mr. Amaga is still set on absolutely destroying us. But luckily, he seems to be stuck behind some metal rocks. So, we're going to take that as a win. But I need to go ahead and finish building the rest of this trap. I'm hoping he doesn't get free and come out and destroy us. You just sit there, Mr. Amagasaurus. Why is he aggroing on us for? I don't understand. Oh my god. Yeah, aggro on the trap. That's fine. You can aggro on the damn trap. Like, my freaking golly gosh. He just doesn't want to leave us alone. I can just tank this. We just need to build this bloody trap. Bro, can you like just stop for a second? Okay, that's the trap built. Let's run away. And 
an extra wall here and just put that there. Beautiful. All right, and now we just need to put the ramps up and then we can trap the Amargosaurus and we should be good to go. Come on, get out of the way, my friend. I'm really, you're really making it hard for me to want to tame you. I can tell you that right now. Might need another ramp. He should be okay. Okay, I think he's stuck in the trap, actually. I think he's just gone ahead and gotten himself stuck. Are you calm now, big fella? Can I sink my temperature to you? What the fuck, dude? Can you, like, chew your nutsack out? He's, like, super damaged as well. Dude, I can't even sync up with this thing. What? Is it because he's aggroed on our trap? Don't know how I got out of the trap, but I'm going to try and cut... Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, quick. I want to do this before the raptor catches up to us. Come on. Oh man, this isn't working. We're going to have to go get another raptor. I'm hoping that there's more there. This honestly could not have gone worse. Like, actually, and... Oh, God. Fuck's sake, let me out. Like, my God, just... Dude, you have multiple attacks. Use them on it. He's getting destroyed. I'm not trying to attack him. I'm trying to kill you. The raptor. Honestly, I'm, I'm regretting my decision to try and tame one of these things. Is he going to attack us? And this area is goddamn freaking barren. Okay, here we go. I don't know if we went too far from him. I think I did. Oh, he's taming. Oh, come on. Like, bloody, give me a break. <laughs> I'm going to land in this damn trap, aren't I? Okay. Thorny dragon's in. Definitely looks like it. Like, attack back, you ding-dong. Oh, is he attacking? He's attacking back. I think it's because the thorny dragon can hit him. Don't know. This is definitely not working, though. Like, is Okay, now he's... The thorny dragon's in the proper spot. Do you want me to attack with you? Will that help, my friend? Alrighty guys, I accidentally killed the thorny dragon, so this kind of has managed to pop up on the cliff face. I think it fits in. It does fit in, but our Margosaurus is casually dying. I'm trying to... It's killing itself now with its own flame attack. I'm honestly regretting this whole decision to try and tame this thing. Okay. Kano's free of the trap. This is Okay, everything's just free. Everything's dying. This is wonderful. This is exactly how... I wanted today to go. These guys are totally not a pain in the ass to try and tame up whatsoever. Bro, like, hit the fucking Kano. It's not rocket science. I'll stand here and tank for you. Okay, set me on fire. Wonderful. I am burning. I'm burning. I'm burning. Can you kill the damn Kano, you fool? Did he kill it? Okay, he's killing himself now with his own fire attacks. And I don't know what's going on. We're burning. He's going to die because he's standing in his own fire. Are you dumb? Like, do you know how to function as an adult Amargosaurus? Don't run away from me, boy. I'm talking to you. Where are you going? You're setting yourself on fire. He's ho totally dead. Look at that health. You know what? You can just die. I don't even care anymore. So after that whole ordeal of trying to tame an Amargosaurus up, I called it quits and we went and decided to do... The boss fight. We're ready to go. Our 20 Dino Pithecus is all tamed up with their helmets and ready to go. Pain in the ass. So we're going to chill there. We're just going to make sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. Just want to make sure that we got the right keys for everything. All right. Can we wake him up from here? Here we go, guys. This is it. Oh, yeah. He's awake. All right. Here he comes. Okay. We're going to try and cut him over here because I want him to. I want to fight him under here so that the flyers can't get to us. And I'm just hoping that they can take that damage. That's fine. All right. Go get him, fellas. I should probably use the battle cry. Oh, Jesus. There's grenades in here. I am super nervous. I really don't know if we're going to pull this off, but... 
We're gonna we're gonna find out. Our monkeys hit for what? 200 damage each. They're definitely damaging him. It's the grenades that I'm worried about, and our helmets breaking. Because once our helmets break, we're gonna be in big trouble. I know I should probably get in there because I am the alpha, and I will do a lot of damage to him. But like, I'm still super nervous. Oh, he's throwing the grenades at us. Okay, the monkeys have just chased after him. Alright, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Get him, fellas. So, it turns out the bleed effect also doesn't work on the monkey kin. Which could be very disastrous for us. Because I have a sneaking suspicion that we aren't going to be able to kill him. Just a slight suspicion. Alright, let's get in there. We're going to try and deal some damage ourselves. Because I know we hit harder than our monkeys. Bro, come back, you chicken shit. I'm super nervous. I don't know if we can pull this off. I don't know if it's worth me shooting these guys down. No, no, no. Attack him. Attack him. Attack monkey butt. Throwing grenades at us, though. Now is not a good time to shit, my friend. I'm going to have to get involved here. Oh, look at the stun lock, though. Kill him. I'm just going to do this. I cannot see what is going on. Oh, we're in a nice spike. Attack him. Attack him, fellas. Get him. Alright. He's almost at half health. Almost being the keyword. I don't know how many helmets have broken off our monkeys. It's got to be, yeah. Kill him, kill him. Alright, he's half health-ish. We've lost three monkeys. I'm a bit nervous. Okay, we can't really take too many shots. We're getting frozen here. No, stop turning. Okay, gonna try and hit him around the backside here. Right in the butthole. Alright, we're below half health. This is looking okay. He's, he's starting to get a bit bloody. He's circling us. That's good. That's what we want to see. If he's circling, he's not attacking, which is good news for us. Keep attacking him, fellas. You're doing a bang-up job. A lot of damage numbers floating around. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Alright, there goes another Dinopithecus. We're taking fire damage now. I didn't realize his spikes changed. That's actually a really cool mechanic. I had no idea that that was a mechanic, but it's really cool. I don't like it, but it's really cool. All right, I think we've got this. I, I don't want to jinx it or count my chickens yet, but I think we can kill the Dinopithecus King here. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think our Dinopithecuses were up to the task at all. We didn't even really get a chance. We didn't mutate them. Yeah, we had no mutations. Oh, shit. Come here, monkey. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I don't know how I got stunned off there. Keep attacking, fellas. I'm going to hang back here and... Let's go, fellas. Hit him. Kill him. Oh, shit. We're bleeding now. Why the hell does he do bleeding damage for? Since when was that a thing? I had no idea. Kill him. We need to kill him. That bleed is going to destroy us. Yeah, look, you can see that 804 damage. We're taking huge amounts of damage here. Come on, come on, fellas. Keep attacking. You're doing great. All right, he's almost dead. We've got this. Yes, come on. Come on, guys. Keep going. Let's kill the Gamma. Come on. All right, this is it. This is all that remains of the Dinopithecus army. I feel bad for the poor sod that's been left over there. Because I've probably whistled passive. And he's probably just sitting there. Let's go. Let's finish this. Let's go. Come on. Get him, fellas. Headshot. Let's get in here. Come on. Andy's. Come on. He's so close. Come on. Oh, let's go. Hallelujah. We have we have killed the big beefy boy himself. It's from them. 
Oofed. Crystal Isles, a map on Ark that is filled with, you guessed it, crystals. I know, who saw that coming? In today's video, I strove to defeat this map in 100 days by passive taming every creature that I wanted to tame. This allowed me to form a closer bond with them and also incorporate a new mechanic that was a mod. Now, we strove to defeat all three tiers of the Crystal Wyvern Queen as well as the Savage Acro by the end of the 100 days. Will we be able to do it? Stay tuned and watch to find out. And if you find yourself enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below. And so it began like any other day. Waking up on the beach, seeing some fellow herbivores running around on the beach side, we went ahead, started gathering our basic berries and fiber, and stumbled across a rampaging Bronto, which gave us the first death of the map. We went then ahead and crafted up our basic resources, including the taming journal, which will be key to surviving this map. We then went ahead and farmed up a bunch of resources to make our basic tools such as a hatchet and a spear and then killed our first dodo in celebration of our brand new Stone Age tools. Easy. However, things were slightly off because we were on the Lost Island map, which is not what you want for Crystal Isles. We went ahead and got a Sarko to kill us because, well, obviously the wrong map. It's not going to go very smoothly if this is a Crystal Isles playthrough on Lost Island. Nonetheless, Sarko killed us and we spawned in on Crystal Isles and found ourselves in the Isles fighting a turtle for its basic hide. Pretty much had gotten all the tools again up to this point, so we had pretty much continued from that stage. Killed our first turtle, made ourselves a bed, a bow, and a bunch of arrows and some foundations so that we could get started on building up our repertoire of dinosaurs. We made some berry bag baits, which how this mod works is you passive tame pretty much every creature except for large carnivals. So as you can see there, we threw our berry bag baits out and this Triceratops started eating them. Honestly, this mod was a lot of fun because it adds a whole other dimension, although by the end of it, I kind of was sick of passive taming everything. So you essentially feed them these berry bag baits, you can pat them, you can care for them, and they'll eventually present you with gifts. You can see there, we did get the care for and tamed our first trika. We managed to call it Tri. I know, how original. We then went ahead and found a second trike to tame up and started the passive taming progress once again. Just managed to care for it and feed it another berry bag bait and we managed to tame this one up successfully with full taming effectiveness. That's the perk of the passive taming mod. We then called this one Red Riot because of its bright red alpha crest. Real quick guys as well, I just wanted to say take a quick look at my Patreon. This will grant you access to the servers that I play on and record these 100 days on. So if you feel like supporting me a little bit extra, feel free to check out the Patreon. It's there in the link in the description below. Thanks very much guys and let's get on with the video. The next day began and we got lucky by finding a grounded trophy Onathus. Threw out a meat bait and it took it and this was the start of the passive tank. It was only level 30 though, so it wasn't a super impressive level trophy in Athos, but you can see here, it was gonna gift us our first flyer and that would be key to getting around the Crystal Isles. Successfully tamed up our first trophy Onathus, our first flyer That's and called him Turbo. Boy. We then bred up our trikes as well from the day before. Grab some crystals so that we can make an awesome spyglass and set out on our journey with Turbo. Now I had no idea where we were going, but we managed to stumble across a Dano Sukas and we were enthralled by how cool these guys were looking. We were running the Arc Editions mod as well as Kraken's better dinos, hence why we were so excited to find this level 140 unicorn. So I made up the berry bag baits that we needed. I turned them into arrow versions so that we could fire them from a distance and not spook the unicorn in hopes that we could actually tame this guy up. So we went ahead, started firing off some berry bag baits, and you can see there that the unicorn straight ahead reacted to him, went ahead and started trying to make its way towards it to munch on it. Now this would be an everlasting friendship that we would make with the unicorn. So we had successfully fired our first berry bag bait into it. We then went ahead and just spent the rest of the time throwing berry bag baits at it, patting it, and slowly building its taming bar up until it was ready to be tamed. And just like that, we had tamed our first unicorn. Now, I had no idea that Kraken's Better Dinos mod turned this thing into a freaking Pegasus. What? So we grew wings and we could literally fly around with the unicorn, which was absolutely astoundingly amazing. Just, I, I was genuinely gobsmacked at this dude. But nonetheless, we decided to head out and took a little bit of a fall with our trophy Nathus, resulting in it dying to some Titan Maninas. 
Our first team, our first flyer, gone just like that. Turbo was dead. We then teamed up a Dero Yaku, which was part of another Arc Dino mod that we had running, which added a bunch of different names to it as well. Some of which you'll see us team through the video. I then decided to make some soul balls to cryo up our trikes, and we then headed out to try and find our permanent base spot. We did get ambushed by a bunch of raptors, and they almost killed our unicorn. This was our only fly, so we couldn't really lose it, but then we found the perfect base spot in front of a beautiful waterfall, barely any threats around us. However, there was a pond full of silica pearls, otters, and coelacanths. What more could you ask for? But, disaster struck. If anything, I think I'll just... Fudge nuggets. Uh, I don't really want our unicorn dying. And it's dead. Okay, well, Horny just died, god dang it. With the death of Horny, I then went ahead and decided to start building the foundations of our base. Now, I built it up from the ocean floor because I wanted to have a bunch of different platforms branching out from this main platform and with the S Plus mod, it made things a lot easier. We placed our basic structures down for crafting, made our metal tools, took our Dira UQ out to try and farm some metal because it was our only reliable team aside from the trikes and started cooking that metal up. I then decided it would be time to get some new flyers because you know, we can't really get around the map too reliably. So I found this level 60 Tyranodon, started firing meat bait arrows at it and it took its first bite. From here on out, we could pretty much just throw the baits because it was gonna come down and land every now and again and be attracted to them. So the taming progress on this was pretty quickly luckily because it was only a low level, but we did find a 145 not too far away and successfully tamed up the level 60 Tyranodon in the process. Got the saddle on the PT and we now had our first flyer, which was, well, I mean, only flyer at the moment. So I headed back out and tried to track down the other 145 PT that we had found earlier, as this would be a much, much more reliable team to fly around on and it wouldn't be so quick to die if anything happened to it. Chuck some baits on the floor to get it to eat. Uh, it did get a little bit spooked. If you haven't earned the trust of the dinos before you try and pat them, you will spook them and they'll fly off from you. I then found a little Dodicarus wandering around, so I made some berry bag baits up because we were gonna need a crap ton of stone for the base, as that's primarily what the base was gonna be built out of and successfully started the taming of a Dodicarus. So we had all the teams gone. We had a couple of PTs at this stage. You can see there, there was a level 100 PT as well. The level 145 came back from being spooked by us patting it and we were able to continue taming that. We then successfully tamed up the Dodicarus and two extra PTs, which was great. You know, both high levels so that we could breed them and have continuous offspring in case anything bad happened to our other PTs. Once they were tamed up, I decided to do a little bit of exploring and found this Bracky absolutely demolishing oh. everything around it. <laughs> that RG, the Dados, they just got nuked. After questioning my own existence, I then went ahead and started finding more resource dinos to tame up. I stumbled upon a level 50 Anki, which seemed like a pretty good entry point to get our first Anki. There were a couple of high level ones nearby in the area, but I wanted to get that one just to get it quicker. I then also found a level 50 Mammoth and decided taming that up would be a great idea as well. However, things with the Anki were going very slow and tedious, and there was a ravenous pack of direwolves right next door to us. So I did my best to try and tame this guy up before they aggroed on us, and... Oh... We were cutting it super close, and Anki, there was already one fighting, and he actually aggroed on the direwolves, and things were starting to look bleak for our new friend. So, I was hoping that we could get the pad off before we had him bracing for combat, and we managed to tame him up. Because if you fight with the tame dinos as well, like before they're tamed, you have a potential chance to get them tamed up. However, a full pack of direwolves and some Daydons is just not... You, there's just no escaping it for a level 50 Yankee. So unfortunately, we had to say goodbye and sacrifice him. We could not save him and he did die. I was heartbroken. Our brand new friend, when you passive tame them and you patent them and you're caring for them, you get super attached. However, the mammoth was still alive and well. So we went ahead and made our way back over to that guy and started taming that up. I then also found another level 50 Yankee 
in the nearby area and we started trying to tame that one up as well. Got the first berry bag bait and we successfully tamed up the Anki as well. Got it in a soul ball ASAP so that nothing could bloody eat this one. Thankfully, we did manage to get it trapped. There was the mammoth situation as well and he presented us with our first gift of 100 stim berries. Never know when I'm gonna need those stim berries. Managed to tame up the mammoth, got it in the Pokeball, Soul Ball, whatever you want to call them, and got back to base. The next day, I jumped on and found a 145 Dodicarus right outside all of our tame. So I went ahead and started taming that up once again, as well as a Megaloceros with the Berry Bag Bait. And you can see here that we did manage to tame the Megaloceros as the server went down, so that was great. Now, with Kraken's better dinos, you can actually farm them for milk which uh, provides me with a bunch of benefits. I then went ahead and made the Kraken's Better Dinos workbench and finished taming up our Dodicarus, and it came out perfectly. You couldn't ask for a better tame. I then went ahead and started farming up with the Dodicarus, and this guy was nuts. He had a super high amount of melee damage that he came out with, and to try and see how the carnivore taming system worked, I then went ahead and tried to tame my first large carnivore. I found this 140 Kano over near the valley near our base and started lobbing arrows over in its direction. And honestly, it was pretty easy. The larger carnivores, such as the Rexes, the Spinos, the Udis and all that, are the ones where it changes. And essentially what that does is you need to present them with trophy baits, which is made from their own parts. And then you have to beat them in combat and then you bring in this passive taming system. You can also feed the corpses of Dinos to carnivores. You can see me dragging around this saber tooth corpse here. And uh, I actually fed it to our Carno and yeah, he got quite a lot of taming thing from it. So I then fired some final baits down on the ground when I heard a terrible curdling scream. I don't know what made that noise, but I am out of here. No, Rex. <gasps> Oh, we tamed the Kano. With the Kano tamed up, I then went ahead and faced this mighty level 100 Rex to try and take it out, see what kind of damage our new Kano will do. And uh, it was looking all right to start with. We were getting swarmed by a couple of Raptors as well as a Sabertooth, but the Kano was circling around the Rex. It had a super large turning radius due to Kraken's better dinos overhauling the Kano's turn radius. But we were slowly whittling down the Rex. However, our Kano was falling victim to quite a lot of attacks. The Rex was regenerating a lot of health from the corpses around us as well, from the Raptors and the Sabertooths. So I had to pull our Kano out of there because he was going to die. You can see there his health slowly whittling down. So what I had to do was whistle passive and then I kited the Rex away on my PT so that we didn't have to worry about our Kano dying. And essentially all I did was just kited it off the edge away from the Kano so that our Kano was nice and safe and sound. After getting back to base, I then decided to test out some of the Kano's new abilities. Some of them included a very large knockback as well as a larger turning radius. However, he was faster and he did deal slightly more damage to those around him. And the Sixionis picked the wrong neighborhood to steal some berries. You can see here the Kano was able to trample through structures as well. Well, I say structures, I mean the trees. And the charge attack actually does damage. So this was just his standard sprinting ability. And uh, in terms of just pure damage, it was actually pretty decent. If you guys haven't tried out Kraken's Better Dinos mod, I'd heavily recommend checking it out for a new refresh on some of the Dinos of Ark because it really changes quite a lot of different things. For example, this Megaloceros actually makes us bleed, which does a lot of damage. And it was kicking our ass, so I had to kind of get a move on and kill it here. I then decided to call our Kano Tiny as well in honor of Slip Gator. The next day began with me building out the rest of the base, converting all the thatch into stone. Now that I had successfully planned it out, replacing it all with stone so that it didn't get broken in a blink would be key. I also placed the walls around the edges of the ceilings to make sure that we were nice and closed and safe. I then placed our structures, our fabricator, our smithy, our, a bench to stick the taming journal on so that we could view, as well as our two food bait stations and all our mortar and pestles and the upgrade station and Kraken's better dino workbench, as well as the grill, preserving bins, and the generator. So we were set for all our basic structures in the base and I was super happy with how it all went. 
Next day, I wanted to try and tame a Danosuchus. These guys appealed massively to me, you know, being from the land down under. We did manage to find a level 130 male chilling out in the swamps, and the Arkadition's way of taming these guys up is a little bit different. They do have a passive tame where you have to feed them when their mouth is open for their gigabyte chomp attack. However, with the immersive taming mod, it was made quite a lot easier. After making the necessary baits, I then went ahead and started firing them into the pond near the Danosuchus. Didn't manage to get the Danosuchus, but I did get a bunch of piranhas in the process. So I went ahead and fired another arrow out. These were only prime meat baits, so they weren't going to be as effective as mutton, but it did take a bite of its first bait, and we had already gotten about a fourth of the way to taming it. So I fired a bunch more of these baits in there because I really did not want to make this guy angry. Look at the sheer size, ferocity, and terror that is presented. So I went ahead and tried patting it, and this is how you're supposed to passive tame feed it. When it opens its mouth like that, you're supposed to throw meat into it and tame it up like that. But we managed to tame it up successfully with the baits, and oh boy, oh boy, was I pumped to have this guy part of our squad. So after taming him up, I wanted to see just how much damage he would do. Now, obviously, I didn't have a saddle on me at the time. We were going to go back to base, but I was so keen to get in and see what this guy could do. And he started off with his gigabyte attack, dealing 612 damage. Now, that might seem like a lot at the moment. It certainly seemed like a lot to me at this time. But just wait, it gets much better, much stronger. And a dino of this caliber needed a deserving name, so we called him Tarm. We then went ahead and found a level 15 Dano Sukas female, and I tried doing the oh, passive taming no, 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 method. It run. didn't really go Follow too me. well. Oh, no, take off, take off. Okay, uh, I don't know what happened. We're going to leave it. I'm just going to leave. I then got to base, got it saddled up, and started testing out its abilities, which included the tail flick and the gigabyte, which was our big damage dealer. The next day I decided to test out our brand new Tarm by taking out a 145 Rex and we absolutely annihilated it. I then made my way to the bee cave because I needed a bunch of organic polymer and honey and as you can see we got a buttload of it. Now on the way back to base we found a beach too so, so I thought hey what better practice and extra levels that we could possibly get from killing this big sucker so we killed the two so even though it was beached it still managed to oil us which was kind of annoying and then i found this 150 rg and you can guess where this is going we went ahead and tried to tame it up now there wasn't really too many issues with taming the rg up the biggest one was trying to get it to come down from the sky to eat the goddamn bait and to pet it and feed it but other than that, we didn't really have too many issues taming up our brand new 150 RG. Successfully tamed it up. Stat-wise, it was pretty decent. But I went ahead and went and got some red gems as I was going to make some congealed gas ball extractors as I needed them for the S Plus Harvester. I needed the congealed gas balls, which we can get from uh, chucking the gas collectors over in one of the rivers. And then I spent the rest of the night harvesting up a bunch of rare flowers in order to make some giant beehives back at the base with all the honey that we got from gathering the organic polymer. So we were pretty set in terms of resources at this stage and things were looking great. New day, more grinding. I harvested up a bunch of crystal just because I needed a whole heap of it for building extra things. And then I went ahead and started trying to tame some of the coelacanths in the pond. And as you can see, there's a lot of glowing fish in here. As you can see, there was so many coelacanths and I think I ended up only taming two of them. So I then flew out to the desert and lo and behold, I found a 180 tech griffin. Now these are added from Kraken's Better Dinos. So you know what we had to do. We had to go ahead and try and tame this guy up. 180 big boy. There was also a 114 female which meant perfect breeding pair, which meant we could farm them for electronics, scrap metal, element dust, and oil, which was perfect. So I went ahead and made a bunch of raw prime meat baits in order to get this full tamed up, and uh, I got a little bit, I got a little bit zealous. It, uh, it didn't really want to go for the baits. It really just wanted some uh, live, juicy human meat. And decided to come after me after I had eaten a bait. So, you know, that's always a great thing. We then had to de aggro this 180 griffin off us in order to keep feeding the baits. I was a bit confused, to be honest, because, you know, 
it was like, oh yeah, it's not going to perceive us as a threat anymore. And, and you know, I mean, griffins are naturally aggressive. But nonetheless, after that little hiccup, we did manage to tame up the 180 male. And then we tamed up the 114 female. And then we got some dung beetles while we were already out in the desert and finished off this woolly bracky back at base. Since I had seen that it was already low and thought it would give us a decent chunk of XP alongside killing it. However, it was a little bit more difficult than I anticipated because I could not get close enough to finish the bastard off. But we killed him and got a few levels for our Kano. I then went ahead and made ourselves an industrial forge and we were cheering. Got this big boy placed down in the base and the base was starting to look complete now. I got the tech griffins breeding up once we got back to base and they were going to be a great source of electronics plus future breeding down the line for more stronger griffins plus we can imprint on it then i needed some mutton i was feeling the need to do some taming so i found an ovus and got some raw mutton from it now with this raw mutton what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to turn them into baits now these baits will last a long time if we chuck them in the fridge which is exactly what we did and you can see there pretty much all that mutton did get turned into baits i think i cooked a little bit of it as well and then i went ahead and tried to tame a cryolophosaurus now we found a 150 out here however it was under attack by a bunch of direwolves so me being the brave smart talented beautiful bountiful gorgeous hero that i am endeavored to save this cryolophosaurus however it turned against us very quickly and this dire wolf pack, they weren't messing around. That was a 150. It was absolutely kicking our butt and the cryo's butt. And uh, as you can imagine, things went very, very wrong. We were constantly being frozen. We did manage to get the dire wolf's attention off the cryo for a little bit, which was, it was phenomenal. That was great. We we're in a world of cheer. I just needed to get the cryo to eat one of these corpses. However, it was also against us. It killed us. And our Pteranodon also died in the process. So not only did we lose our Pteranodon, we also lost the 150 Cryolophosaurus. So I went ahead and started to find another one and found this level 15. I wanted to make sure that I could immersive tame it, so we fired the mutton bait. And uh, thankfully, you can immersive tame the Cryolophosauruses, and we managed to tame up our first Cryo. Only a level 15, but I mean, I wasn't complaining. It'll, it'll do the job of whatever these guys do, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so we then headed out and found another one and this one was a 145 it was isolated no dire wolf packs anywhere to be seen and you guys know the drill fired up a bunch of baits near it waiting for it to become friendly to us so we could walk up to it and pet it and thankfully that didn't take too long and just like that, we were able to tame up a 145 Cryolophosaurus, let's go! And we named it Cryo, obviously, um, how original of me, I know. I went ahead, tested out its abilities, its torpor inducing attacks, its freeze breath, and honestly, these dudes are awesome. If you guys have access to Ark on a PC, you need to download the Ark Editions mod and get into it. These guys get a buff whenever enemies near them get frozen, or they freeze them, and then you can just absolutely decimate them with the damage that the cryos do. So obviously taming up that level 15 and the 145, we now had a breeding pair of them. So we could go ahead, breed these guys up, try and get some decent stats on them and imprint on the cryolophosauruses. I then installed a new mod called Shiny Dinos and this pretty much caused new dinos to get spawned in the map. And you can see here, there's an Amethyst Tech Rex. So I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and kill them. Now these guys are tameable and they do have unique abilities based on what kind of shiny dino they are. They also give you a random tech blueprint as well as a bunch of random loot when you kill them. Hence why we were going ahead and killing this Amethyst Tech Rex. When in hindsight, I probably should have tamed it considering it was a level 180. But we got it killed, we learned the tech rep, so I was pretty damn stoked about that as well, to be honest. And then I went ahead and tamed an aberrant pullover that we found abandoned and took it for a little bit of a joyride because in this mod, Pullovias are also rideable and they also bury underground with you, which I thought was freaking awesome. It then felt like I should probably finish the base. So we started work on the second floor of the base, just trying to put another floor there. Now you can see here the industrial forge was sticking through like a sore thumb, like, oh my God. But uh, thankfully we were running S plus, so we were able to reduce the size of the indie forge. And you'll see that later on down the line. 
as uh, I just couldn't really be bothered doing it right now. So I slowly started work on doing the ceilings and filling in the walls that we had left over for the base. I opted for a nice wood stone aesthetic just to, you know, make it nice, look at all good, tied all together, having glass walls here as well so that we could view the waterfall behind the base because, you know, it kind of just brings the whole base together and it was pretty much just a slow day of building up the rest of the base so yeah next day began with me checking out some new trophy war mounts from eco's mods highly recommend checking out i also upgraded our Danosuka saddle in the upgrade station i then went back out to the griffin trench because i needed a new female tech griffin our one had died and we needed to do some more breeding in order to get the electronics thankfully i did find this level 18 tech griffin and i went about trying to tame it up not before, however, I got stuck in the literal, like, it's just my luck to get stuck in this singular hole on Crystal Isles and just get stuck there. Luckily, I had my Griffin, so I was able to get out and we were able to complete the taming of the female level 18 tech Griffin by a little bit of a caring pat on it. It was awesome. We could breed them. I then went ahead and tamed up my first shiny Dino, a Tatamodylon Lystrosaurus, which I had no idea what it did, and it pretty much did nothing. I then decided to get into a tussle with an Alpha Megalodon. I thought I would use some of its trophy items for the Crystal Isles Wyvern Queen. Honestly, I couldn't remember if it needed them, but our Danosuchus was more than up to the task of absolutely decimating this 145 Alpha Megalodon. I then retrieved the congealed gas balls from our gas generators because I wanted to make the charge batteries in order to power our S Plus Harvester. This would essentially allow us to harvest up all the stone, silica pearls, and everything located around our little uh, pond area. So I charged up the charge batteries at one of the many charge terminals located on Crystal Isles, got them back to base, and got our S Plus Harvester up and running. Now, I had no idea how to use this thing, to be honest. Like, I'd never used these things before. So we chucked our hatchet in, not realizing that I needed a dermis and to actually equip the hatchet. But you can see here, it started harvesting pretty solid amounts of stone and the rocks were actually breaking off in the background, which was great. So I just had that going on for a while and we actually got quite a lot of resources just from that single one harvesting up the things in our area. So I feel like it was a solid investment. Next day began and after all that building, I found a 145 female Danosuchus. I was super stoked. So I went ahead and started clearing everything in the area because she was aggroed on literally all the Sarkos, all the Capros. Everything was trying to kill her for some unknown reason and we just had to just munch on all of them. So I kited her over to the ocean and started firing in our raw mutton bait arrows into the water near her in hopes that she would go down and get one. And thankfully, she did eat one of the baits. So we had managed to get our first thing started and from there on out, it was pretty much just a pet fest and a feeding fest of the raw mutton bait. And thankfully, we did manage to tame her up and she came out beautifully. With her, we could breed her with Tom and get lots of babies going and get them all imprinted so we could have the beginnings of our army. I went ahead and grabbed the artifact of the pack because we were going to need that obviously for the boss and I found a glow tail in here that was one of the shiny dinos. I opted to kill it. We got tech claws engram as well as a bunch of broths and some extra little goodies as well as you can see there. I went ahead and killed another shiny dino for more tech grams. We got the megalodon tech saddle there as well. After the success of taming up the Danosuchus, I then went ahead and found this big beefy dragon boy, the Armored Dradon. Now, this guy was part of another mod, so I had to tame this one up. Looked absolutely terrifying, and this had a unique taming mechanic as well, but we didn't really want to risk it. Off one of our baits, it only got 5% taming effectiveness, but we did manage to get it tamed up, and this thing was an absolute beast. It had so many cool badass attacks, and I kind of wish we used it more. But uh, I felt like it was too overpowered for the actual mods that we were running. Because we were running a kind of vanilla-ish sort of playthrough this time around. And it had a mortar attack. Look at that mortar attack going off. Absolutely sick. So I decided to test it out on this Midnight Sabertooth. I was actually going to tame this guy up. Because I figured, you know what? Why not? It's another shiny dino. These guys are supposed to be super good. I actually got the first bait off. And then I went up to pat it. And its friend decided to aggro on us. And with that... We had to kill it, unfortunately. But, I mean, it was unfortunate because we wanted to tame it up. But we still got the tech sensor anyway. And then we discovered that the Armored Radon can actually harvest up resources. And it wasn't like a basic bitch and harvested minimal resources. 
it harvested up a crap ton. As well as that, it had a trade mechanic, which allowed us to trade for various resources as well. So we offered it black pearls, and in return, we got element shards. Now, this would be pretty useful later down the line when we needed to farm up element. But nonetheless, I got back to base and decided to test out the rest of the Armored Radon's abilities. It had like a weird wing flappy thrust attack, but this was my favorite. The Flaming Basketball of Death. This thing, you just, it breathes literal fire into its hand and lays it out on the ground. It's such a badass attack. After doing all that taming, I figured it was time to finish off the base. So we wanted to get the second floor done. The first floor was pretty much done. I just wanted to do a little bit of decorating and we had to finish the bridge as well, bridging us to the mainland. But first off, I tamed up this 165 rainbow goat with a couple of berry bag baits. Once again, another shiny dino. Had no idea what it did. I then did a polymer run because we we're obviously going to need to build the base. And here is the second floor complete. Everything you could possibly want in a base. Nice big skylight, nice big double bed, a bathroom with a shower and a bloody bathtub and a toilet included as well. And it was glassed so you could easily hide it all. We had a map of the crystal aisles as well in the centerpiece of the upstairs area. We also had a couch and a fireplace located just over here so you could sit down and warm those tushies on that cold winter's night. Uh, we had the waterfall behind us as well as a balcony peering over the rest of the lake. I thought it was a pretty nice spot and, it, and that was my crotch. And a pretty good build right there. A new day began and we found a 135 Archeleon in the lake near our base. So I opted, you know what, it's pretty easy to tame Biotoxin. It should be easy enough to tame up, right? Well, in theory, yes. However, we'd have to have a surviving Archeleon for that to actually happen and for us to tame it. It got swarmed by a bunch of Megalodons and I possibly also hit it with my Danosuchus. So that wasn't a good time for the poor Archeleon. And then we had some Zippocanthiuses also getting involved and it was just, it wasn't a fun time for the Archeleon. So I decided against taming up that guy and we decided to move on. However, traveling to another part of the map netted us another 135 Archeleon. Only downside was it was once again surrounded by Zippocanthuses. So I decided to go ahead and murder all of the Zippocanthuses in the region just to help us out. However, Megalodons once again did get involved. I don't know what they've got against the turtles. They are the most peaceful thing ever. But uh, had it to kill all of them, and then the Archeleon started making its way on land. And I had no idea that these guys could go on land. I accidentally hit it in the process, and it was coming after us with a vengeance. But I ventured back out into the ocean and found a bunch of high-level Zippocanthiuses in the depths. So I wanted to spend some time trying to tame these guys up. These would be very reliable ocean mounts. Granted, we did already have Tarm. I wanted to make sure that we had some other extra strong ones and time kind of abandoned us here in a dire situation and it thankfully didn't result in our death. I finally got the tame started on the 145 Zippocanthus. It was just a matter of getting the baits close enough for it to eat, but honestly, these guys are absolutely terrifying up close. They are just horrifying. So it was gonna be a tedious tame to get these guys, but thankfully it did want to start getting petted. But look at this dude. Lower your weapon? Yeah? Hi! You were terrifying to look at, but you're kind of cute. Can I...? After running out of baits, I managed to finish off taming it by giving it a couple of pets in the process as well. So I'm hoping... Is that 95? 90... Oh, baby! Okay, that was close. You are... F Excuse my French. Goddamn fucking terrifying. Look at that face! The face only a mother could love. Alright, so 217 Zippocanthias. Then, while looking around for the Archeleon that we found earlier, I spotted another 145 female Danosuchus. And you know, we had to tame this guy up. I just cannot resist the Danosuchuses. They're so badass and terrifying and powerful. After lobbing some baits at it, it finally managed to nab one, and then it was ready to get tamed up and padded. So, there we go, tamed up perfectly. Uh, we wanted to take a look at its stats because we didn't know if it was going to be better than our previous female that we had tamed up. So we brought the Spyglass back out and it came out with 34 points in melee damage, 37 in HP, which is actually god. I, that it doesn't I then made my way else. back out to the Zippocanthiuses to try and get a breeding pair of them. Shit. When uh, we got a little bit hasty ah! <laughs> we got grabbed. It's got me! I'm <laughs> pet it. Let me pet you! <laughs> I'm in trouble here. I'm going to die. Oh shit. Time's in trouble too. Let me go. 
Wait, fucking, you're attacking me, bitch. I'm dead. Like, I can't do anything. I hope Tom survives. Bro, let me go. Tom's just swimming by like, boy, don't try anything, all right? I'll mess you up, fool. Beautiful. 135 male Zippocanthias tamed up. I'm going to cry with him and I'm getting the hell out of here. So after taming up the Zippocanthiuses, we then went ahead and started taming up the Archeleon from before. Now, this guy was going to take a very long time to tame up. So we figured we'd go for a little bit of a ride on his shell because he was just chilling around on land. If he went in water, that'd be a pain in the butt. But thankfully, he didn't. And we were able to tame up our very own Archeleon. And he got his name. And that was Shellshocker. So we took Shellshocker, all our Zippocanthiuses, back to base. And we threw them out in our little uh, pond area that we have out the front. And honestly, the Archeleon, he was super slow. But, like, he's a big-ass turtle. I just really liked the, like, whole aesthetic and vibe that this guy had. He had passenger seats as well. And the Zippocanthius was an absolute savage. So they had an ability which was called Consume. And pretty much they dash and consume a creature in their in their vicinity and they get a bloodlust effect. Plus, they can also go on land. So they just like to flop around on land. Now, you've got about a 20 second timer before you start taking damage. Um, and as long as you've got enough health, you can actually stay on the land and attack with the Zippocanthius on land, which is pretty damn awesome. So I decided to take them out into some combat scenarios because, you know, what's the point of taming them if we're not going to use them to fight anything? And uh, you can see here that we've got the Manta, and we actually just consumed the Manta, sending both our Zippocanthiuses into a blood frenzy. And then we got swarmed by a school of Megalodons and lost our first Zippocanthius that we tamed up. So that was great, but we did breed them before we took them out. However, this was a female again, so we weren't actually able to continue breeding them, which kind of sucked. I then finished the day off by breeding up and hatching some more Danosuchus babies because of the new female that we tamed up. And we got this big boy at 224. The next day, I decided to do a little bit of base work and I actually finished the bridge from land to our base. Now we didn't actually have to swim through the water to get to our base on the other side. I also decorated our base with a bunch of the mounted trophy walls, uh, mounted trophy mounts from Eco's mod. And these things look so cool. This is something that Ark needs in its base game because they look absolutely astounding. And yeah, here's us just finishing off the bridge. We did do a little bit of enhancements, chucked a little fountain in there and put some rails on the side. The next day, I decided to take our brand new imprinted Danosuchus out and take it for a little bit of a test run on some Diewolves. And you can see there, 1,495 damage with the snap was pretty solid amounts of damage. Considering these Diewolves had the alpha buff as well as pack boost and, and mate boosted, we were pretty happy with that. But here we are on testing it on a Woolly Rhino and it did 2,000 damage. Now, we haven't actually put any levels into it. And following that, we then found a massive, massive 206 Tech Anki. So I had to tame this thing up. It was going to be absolutely god tier at getting resources. So the Amazon Tech Anki, we started taming that up. We also tamed up a Strixaurus while we were waiting for the Tech Anki to slowly, slowly make its way to taming completion. And uh, thankfully we did manage to tame it up completely. The shiny Amazon Tech Anki was tamed and it came out at a massive 306. It was awesome. Its melee damage, however, was a little bit lacking. I was kind of disappointed that it didn't have more melee damage, but what can you do? So the rest of the day, I spent killing up this punk Palmio Scorpius. We needed to get some more tech engrams, so I figured why not? And we got tech leggings from killing this punk scorpion in the process. Following that, I then decided to finish work on the bridge. And this is pretty much our completed bridge here. So I decorated a little bit with some beehives, with some crop plots. There's also some taxidermy stands here. And I added like weird staircase things to the top which I didn't end up keeping anyway. The next day I decided to do a little bit of artifact hunting. We were getting close enough to be able to actually take the wyvern queen on so I figured we're gonna need those artifacts at some point right? So we got the artifact of the massive and then we found a bubblegum procoptodon. Obviously we weren't gonna tame this and we, I, could, I was struggling to bloody kill the thing but we managed to get the techie tapihara tech saddle in the process and then we got the artifact of the devious from the wyvern trench. Super easy artifact to get if you can dodge the Wyverns. And then we got into another tussle with another Alpha Megalodon. Thankfully, we did have our Danosuchus alongside with us. And it was able to absolutely terrorize 
this poor Alpha Megalodon. With its Nash ability and able to cause that bleed over time, we were able to kill this guy pretty quickly and easily. And then we got the artifact of the Skylord at a bottom of a waterfall. Fought a bunch of UDs because, well, I mean, why not? And an Alpha Kano. I thought we were going to need those Alpha Kano arms for the boss fights. Honestly, I could not remember off the top of my head. This thing actually chickened out and started running away from us, and we had to chase after it. Worried I was going to die, though, because we did get knocked off. Following that, I found a radioactive X otter up in the floating islands. Now, the way these works is they're kind of like a poor man's tech mutator. By pulsing with these guys, they cause your dinos to have a very small chance of getting a mutation when you breed them. So I was trying to breed our Dinosuchuses, and this was our best bet in order to do so. So we went ahead and tamed the radioactive X otter up, but as you can see, it kind of gave us radiation, radiation poisoning, which, you know, is never a good thing. So it actually ended up killing us, and I was like, all right, maybe if I chuck it on my shoulder, it'll keep us safe. That wasn't the case, however, and it also actually started radiating our dinosaurs. So they were actually taking damage from the otter as well. So I had to try and figure out a way to get this guy far away enough from them and to still breathe them. And it actually killed us on more than one occasion. But thankfully I was able to get the otter close enough and far away enough so that its mutation pulse would hit our Danosuchuses and they could start mutating, hopefully. And as you can see, we didn't get any mutations, so all these babies had to die. We then went ahead and tried to tame up a Cryolophosaurus, the good old fashioned way that our conditions is meant to. And for this, you're supposed to shoot it in its little sack, pouch thing that sits under its chin and pretty much it takes its own cryo damage. However, as you can see, I was totally unsuccessful in that endeavor and it just ended up freezing us completely and we were just stuck there for a very long time. Our poor Griffin, copping the main brunt of the damage, you can see its health is slowly diminishing in the top hand corner there. <laughs> it was not a fun time. And uh, as you can likely imagine, I did not try to tame up a Cryolophosaurus like this again. Although that didn't stop me from giving this one last shot. And uh, you can see here, yeah, you're supposed to shoot it in the pouch there. I think it's better if you use a shotgun and you like trap it. But I, for the life of me, just could not get this bastard to take any torpor damage. And I ended up getting frozen in the process as well. Oh, okay. I had to jinx it. We're going to die here. Come on, come on, unfreeze. I didn't even get to whistle bloody. Now, obviously, I had to mount a rescue mission to save our Griffin. So what better way than Mushui to absolutely nuke this cryo? Now, the next day, I wanted to do some more taming, and I found a 150 concavenator out here in the desert. So we went ahead and started lobbing some baits down at it to try and get it to munch on them. Thankfully, we did. However, there were a bunch of acros that were nearby that wanted a piece of the action. And they were actually trying to fight our concavenator. So, obviously, we were trying to take them away out of the equation so that we didn't have to deal with them while trying to tame a concavenator. Thankfully, we did kill them, and I fired some more blubber baits down at our concavenator buddy. And he, he was slow to take them. She was slow to take them. But thankfully, she did eventually take them after a few pats and caring for them. Uh, we did tame up a low level one as well before going for the 150 just to see if we could actually get them with these baits. Uh, and it tamed up successfully. It was only like a level 15 though, so it wasn't anything amazing. But I just wanted to make sure that I could tame them by using the immersive taming mod. So we got Concavenator tamed up. A beautiful, beautiful 225 beauty just tamed up. And obviously we had to name it. So we called it Grounder. I felt like that was a pretty fitting name. Decided to take Grounder for a uh, little bit of a spin. Now, honestly, these guys and their animations are just so on point. Just so badass. The Concavenators has to be one of my favorite dinos from this Arc Editions mod. Just because of the way it attacks, it does everything. So you can see here, we're testing it out, trying to fight some scorpions and stuff like that. And uh, we were testing out its swim ability through the sand. And as you can see, it is graceful as heck. Uh, you can also attack while doing this jumping out of the sand animation as well. So you could literally just cruise around with these guys in the sand forever. Thankfully though, I did go ahead and find another shiny dino, and that was the Lycan Griffin. So this guy, I wasn't going to bother taming it once again. It was a 155. It didn't have any unique effects. So we got to work on chomping it with Gucci, because that was the name that we had deemed our dino worth having, and we got the Tech Roof. I then found a 140 concavenator and decided to try and tame that up. Unfortunately, though, it was a female, so we couldn't actually breed them if we wanted to. 
Uh, I didn't have any baits left, so I had to feed it Titan of Boa Corpses. Obviously, it totally did not mind, though. So, we were happy with that. I wanted to check its stats as well to see if it was actually better than our other one. And it came out with decent stats. After doing all that taming, I decided, you know what, let's spend a bit more time working on the base. Because I really like having a nice base to spend some time in, obviously, when you're doing these series. Because it just kind of makes you feel a little bit better that you've got a nice home to look at. So, I chucked some more of these uh, headstones, the wall, wall mounts, up on the walls. Because the ones that we chucked up earlier were just to kind of see how they would look. And I wanted to put the scariest ones at the top. And honestly, they look sick. I love them up there. So we went ahead and upstairs, we put some wall planters located around various spots in the house. So in the bathroom, because you know, you get some little plants while you're having a shower, taking a dump, those sort of things. I then put some around the stairwell as well, near the sword and shield banner, just to, you know, look out while we're going down the stairs. You know, nothing helps than just breathing some oxygen as you're going down the stairs. I also put some artifact pedestals out on the balcony because we're going to be getting a lot of the artifacts. So I figured these would look dope out here at nighttime with the torches and everything. Plus we had all the artifacts to hold. I then went ahead and decorated the bridge a little bit more, put in some plants and tree life located all the way down it. Cause you know, I reckon that makes it look pretty damn dope. So all in all, I was pretty happy with how the base was. I then finished the day off by finding a Rockwell Dodo, nuking it in the head and getting the tech sleeping pod engram. So I wanted to get a decent wyvern as well, just as a backup in case something happened to our tech griffin. So we headed back out to the trench and I found a 215 ember crystal wyvern egg, but it spoiled as soon as I grabbed it, which absolutely sucked. But I thought I'd make up for it by taming a Wooly Bracky. So I checked to make sure that they were tameable with the Immersion mod, and thankfully, guess what? They were. So all we had to do was feed it baits, bags, and uh, I pretty much gave it some a Botany Bale baits, which were like honey and vegetables and stuff like that. And uh, that started taming it up. So I was cheering, I was happy, I was ecstatic. We got a 140 Bronto in the process of taming up. It was going to take a very long time. It would only get 5% from each Botany Bale bag, but uh, something bad happened and Scrap died. It got freaking munted on by a bunch of direwolves, and thankfully we had Gucci nearby to actually save us, and we still lost Scrap in the process. So it was heartbreaking, but we were in the process of taming up this big beefy boy at 140, and thankfully we did successfully tame up our Wooly Bracky, and we called him Long beard because the woolly brackies have the massive beard down them and i thought it was super fitting so i went ahead and decided to test this guy out i was super excited and this guy goes ahead and pretty much gathers i'm pretty sure every single resource it has a way that you can toggle which resources you gather uh you can see there we just switched into the wood harvesting and it also has a massive attack which you can do by getting onto its hind legs and then stomping down and you can also walk in this mode as well which i thought was freaking hilarious so i wanted to see how much damage it did and uh we wanted to see how the attack worked and i can tell you right now that attack is nasty so i found this die bear and decided to test it out on it expecting victim let's see how much damage our bracky does with his ground pound i love the animation of it Oh, I felt that in my soul. We just pulverized that freaking die bear back to the Mesoic period. God damn, he got taken apart. He got absolutely destroyed. That was so funny. That was so good. So after doing all the taming that I had done, I figured I would need a breeding area. So I went ahead and started building the foundations for this breeding area, which was going to branch off from the bridge. Now, I wanted a biggish area and I wanted something of a unique design in order to get this area looking, looking good and looking different, you know, because we didn't want just another box because that seems to be my specialty, building sophisticated boxes. So I actually started experimenting with some of the triangle ceiling roofs and uh, we ended up making a kind of curved structure, which I was actually pretty happy with. Uh, it did take a little bit of time and it did take a little bit of moving around and stuff like that, but I eventually did get the base completed. And you can see here that we actually managed to get everything laid out nicely and uh, I thought it looked pretty good. It was even, it was equal in terms of length and size, and it was right in the middle, which is honestly something that is just so good for me. So we raised some more Dano Sucuses and also just finished breeding up the rest of them. I was trying to get some mutations, 
Um, and you can see here that we did get grounder in the breeding area. We had started putting some ceilings in here and stuff like that so that we could keep some of the dinos separated and whatnot. And uh, I was really happy with how the breeding area was looking. So the following day, I decided to go back out into the desert. And today was going to be the day that I tamed myself an Acrocanthro. Now, I found this 135 and a level 85 here. And I went ahead and started trying to tame them. Now, the way I watched these guys get tamed up was uh, the person was using a weapon to actually shoot them and wait for them to get enraged and then do it. Uh, and honestly, it was just sapping a bunch of ammo and it just was not working whatsoever. I did, however, eventually get it to trigger its roar and then we fed it the biotoxin. However, I missed a feed and ended up having to kill it because I couldn't regenerate its health enough. So I was pretty gutted about that. And uh, it was pretty sad that we had to kill it. But I went ahead and started using Gucci to actually do it. And this worked a lot more effectively. We were getting them into their stance modes very easily. However, the only downside was I was using their Gigabyte of our Dano Sukas to actually do it. And uh, that was dealing a lot of damage. So I figured if I stopped using that and just attacked normally, I'd be able to trigger it in three or four hits, which was great. So I eventually, very slowly managed to get our first acro knocked out. Now, this is actually the only dino in the series that I knocked out. Everything else was tamed using the immersive taming mod. It did say these guys could be immersive tamed. However, I could not for the life of me figure it out. But watching this back, I think I actually had to feed it food and the baits instead of actually feeding it the biotoxin to knock it out. And I think that would have progressed the taming bar. However, I did find a one 45 female acro with 26 points in her melee damage and 22 in her health and i was like all right i see you girl this could be pretty good so i eventually it was cutting it close we did manage to get her to do the raw before actually killing her and it was just a matter of feeding her up all the biotoxin until she passed out however it wasn't without its faults i did struggle to get it in her mouth sometimes but majority of the time I didn't really have any issues, and if I did miss a feed, we would just be able to attack with Gucci again and be able to lower her down enough to do the roars. And eventually, she did pass out, and I've got to say, their passing out animation has to be one of the nicest, most, like, chillest passing out animations out of any of the dinos. It was great. But I did manage to tame up the level 85 one first. Took it for a bit of a test run to see its abilities. Love the saddle design. The roar is super badass. And then our 145 female ended up taming up. And we took her for a spin to see how much damage she was doing. Because my plan was to use the Acros and our Dino Sucuses to take on the Crystal Wyvern Queen. And we did manage to enrage our Acro to see what exactly it does. And this increases our movement speed, our bite speed, and our bite damage. We also get access to the triple stomp attack, which as you can see, deals a buttload of damage to everything in a circumference around you. We dealt a ton of damage and this stomp attack is super badass. So when you're not enraged, you only have one stomp, but when you get enraged, you get access to the triple stomp. So I decided to test this out on a Bronto to see what kind of damage we would do. <laughs> Mind you, this Acro had no extra levels put into it at this stage. We hadn't leveled up any extra points into health or melee damage. So all of this was just the base 145's damage on its own, which was pretty phenomenal in my opinion. We were dealing pretty solid amounts of damage. I also, the saddle design just gets me every time it's awesome. So Acro Taming was super successful. Now we just needed to find a male so that we could continue greeting them up. After taming the Acros, I then decided to hatch all the Dano Sucus eggs we had been mutating in hopes to get a mutation. Now, unfortunately, from this huge amount of eggs, none of them actually got any mutations, bar one, I believe. So we did end up getting a mutation, but uh, it wasn't that great. I think it was a food mutation, so we ended up killing that anyway. But I raised up those ones and we built a gravestone for Scrap that died during the Bracky taming. A nice little memorial for him on the bridge. And then I went back out to try and get some Wyvern eggs and I found this big beefy 195 blood crystal Wyvern egg. So we grabbed that. Nice. We got the heck out of there, and then we found another egg and died in the process. So there goes our other tech griffin, which was wonderful. Uh, you love to see it. And then I threw my acro out in hopes that I could actually defeat this wyvern. It was a level 30 tropical crystal wyvern, and it was kicking my ass. So for some reason, it wouldn't equip it, but we got Nasher out and then decided to die 
before we could actually get on Nasha. So that was that was absolutely swell, dying in the process. So we had to get back to Nasha, and we luckily had our PT with us, so we were able to actually fly out. I just cried up Nasha, got on our PT and flew away, and I found a level 75 Tropical Crystal Wyvern Egg, got out of there, got back to base, and started hatching up those Wyvern Eggs. I wanted to see what the 195 Blood Crystal came out with, if it had decent stats and whatnot. I was very excited for our Blood Crystal Wyvern. And there it is in all its glory at 195 coming out like that. It came out with okay stats. The next few days were pretty much filled with breeding and raising baby dinos. So our Blood Crystal Wyvern raised up nicely and then we just went ahead hatching a bunch of Danosuchus eggs. Like I said, we just wanted to try and build up an army in order to take on the Crystal Wyvern Queen as well as the Savage Acro. So that's pretty much what we did for a couple of days. Just hatching a numerous <laughs> amount of Danosuchus eggs. But I believe this is where we actually got the health mutation on our Dano Sucus. So I was pretty happy about that. The fact that we got a health mutation was actually a good sign that the radioactive otter was actually doing its job, which, you know, generally tends to be a good sign of things to come. I went ahead and all the babies that we weren't going to use, I went ahead and killed with our gun on the back of our Blood Crystal Wyvern and started to get the extra XP, which, I mean, that's the best way to go about getting XP nowadays in Ark. You just go ahead, kill a bunch of babies. You can see there are a heap of babies to murder. So we went ahead and started killing all of those. Now, the health mutation Danosuchus was currently raising. However, me being the actual genius that I am, decided, you know what, let's not bother putting any food in this inventory only. whatsoever and letting it die. Why do I have you for? Why are you here? Oh, wait. Oh, shit. No! Oh, no! I forgot to feed the fucking baby! Oh shit, I've just gone ahead and killed literally all its siblings. Gotten so much meat, I forget to feed the damn thing. After letting the Danosuchus die, I then ventured out to try and track down this holographic Equus. Now once again, it was another shiny dino, and I decided that I was going to tame this one up. It was a 175, it seemed like it was a pretty good idea. However, I wasn't entirely sure what extra abilities it had. So we did manage to tame it up. We jumped on it, and lo and behold, there were no extra abilities. I then wanted to see the stomping power of our Acro, so we took it out, we found an Alpha Kano to fight, and we got into a very large tussle. We ended up getting enraged and just absolutely annihilating everything around us. These guys are so awesome, I love them. After going out on a rampage with our Acro, I then went ahead and found two high-level Mantises. Now, there was a 145 male over here, and I'm pretty sure I had found a 145 female as well. Now the reason for taming these two mantises up was because on Crystal Isles you can actually mine element shards over on the uh, the Dark Evil Island. So I wanted to breed a pair of these guys and take them out so that we could actually mine up some element shards. Uh, and that would be a great way for us to go ahead and get element. As well as that, I found a level 140 Blood Crystal Wyvern Egg as well, so we grabbed that and headed home. The next day, I was absolutely raging. So I jumped on and found that a Diplo had moved all our Dano Sucuses. Now, they were all in breeding range of each other. They were all nice and organized underneath the breeding area. And you can see here, they're all super separated. And this bastard had knocked everything away. So it was time for some payback. And I decided to just absolutely wallop this sucker and destroy him in the process. I had had enough of Diplos, they had moved all my shit around this whole series. Next up, we then went ahead, found a level 50 Giga out in the desert, and I figured, you know what? What better time now than to try and fight one of these guys? So, you can guess what we went ahead and did. We took Longbeard out, we got him ready to tussle with the Giga, because Brackies are technically supposed to be able to kill Gigas in this mod. And uh, boy, oh boy, were we ready to fight down. However, this pesky concavenator in front of us decided to aggro on us. And as you can see, our oxygen just started depleting. Now, once our oxygen went, our health just started vanishing. Now, obviously, we're on a big-ass bracky. He's a slow move. The concavenator leaves a dust wherever it walks. And it took half our health off our bracky, just like that in a matter of seconds in a matter of seconds. So instead of using Longbeard, we then went ahead threw Gucci out and brought Gucci out to battle with our Gigabyte and cutting it into the water. It was a very slow and tedious fight. However, we were able to chomp on the Giga and continuously infect it with the, uh, 
the Nash ability, I think that's what it's called, the Nash effect, where it loses its health every time it moves, and slowly but surely, we whittled this guy down till he had barely enough health. Once I was sure Longbeard could handle the Giga, we then brought him back into the fray and we did a bellowing roar to scare it off. That would buy us enough time to do a stomping attack on the Giga. It had 20k health left and wild Gigas are notoriously difficult for being strong to kill. Obviously if you kite them into the water they become a little bit easier, but we hit this big boy for 11k damage. Now, after that, it was just a matter of soaking the damage that the Giga was dealing in order for us to charge up enough of an, another attack so that we could stomp on this sucker and destroy him. But as you can see, our Bracky was very low, and I genuinely thought that we were going to lose him after we killed this Giga due to the Giga's bleed attack. Look at the Bracky's health going down, but thankfully we were able to kill the Giga and we claimed its heart for ourselves in order to tame ourselves, our own Giga, because fate would have it that a 150 giga spawns in the desert just after killing that one now with big carnivores we have to present them with trophies and the trophies are the items that they drop when they die so in order to tame a giga up you need to present it with its giga heart now we've made the bait here and we get ready to fire it in order to actually tame this giga up now in order to tame it we actually have to defeat it once we present it with its heart so you can see there we've just fired the heart at it and it goes ahead and starts eating it. Now, pretty much it says there at the top there, it's ready to prove our worth. So we have to fight this guy and defeat him in order to tame him. So I once again kited it back to the beach, brought Gucci out, good old trustworthy Gucci, ready to deal a ton of damage. We got the gigabytes ready and we set to work on defeating this Giga. Well, I mean, not defeating it, but getting it enough so that we could actually tame it. Now, you can actually see the little bar under its name there. We needed to fill that bar up in order to be able to tame it. So, obviously, cutted it into the ocean, Giga bited it. We tried to bite it every now and again when we could, and we just kept our distance with Gucci so that we wouldn't get damaged by its, uh, by its bleed effect, because that bleed effect is absolutely nasty. So, slowly but surely, we were going ahead and defeating this Giga. And just like that, after this final bite, we had been deemed worthy in order to tame up the Giga. So, we got to work in feeding it all the raw mutton baits that it could possibly want. Oh man, this was, this was quite a thingy. So, surely, slowly but surely, we managed to tame ourselves up a beautiful 150 Giga, and it came out with 100% taming effectiveness at 225. Perfecto. So, the Giga, absolutely king. It only had 26 points in melee damage. It had 38 points in movement speed and 38 points in freaking food. So, it wasn't the greatest in terms of stats, but it'll do. It'll do. I then went ahead and finished off the breeding section of the base. So, all in all, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. It was a little bit funky in terms of design, and some wars were slightly missing and some ceilings, but I figured it still looked pretty damn good, and I was pretty happy with it. So, that was the breeding area complete, and we pretty much had the griffins and the mantises in here breeding so we could get the offspring and imprint on them. I then started gearing up for the Crystal Wyvern Queen by crafting myself a shotgun and upgrading it in our upgrade station. Now, the Crystal Wyvern Queen likes to fly around, so this would be invaluable. I then found a 145 beauty, and once again, this was a trophy taming sort of situation where we had to feed it its own species lungs, and then we had to prove ourselves in combat in order to tame it up. So once again, we managed to defeat it with ease and then we could go ahead and tame it up. Now this UD was going to come with us to the Crystal Wyvern's Queen fight and hopefully courage buff all our dudes. But luck would have it, we found a 150 Scorched Acro in the desert. It was a male, which meant our plans were finally coming to fruition. It meant that we could finally breed up an army of Acros to take with us to the Crystal Wyvern Queen fight. So we got the first feed, knocked it out successfully as you can see here, and went ahead and started taming up this big beefy boy. This was gonna be great for going ahead and breeding up our arm. I then found an Alpha Crystal Wyvern and decided to use Chomp to go ahead and kill this. Purely because we we're gonna need Crystal Wyvern Talons 
sorry, the Alpha Crystal talent from the Alpha Crystal Wyverns in order to get into the boss arena. We're also going to need these Primal Crystals. So I needed to save all of these in order to take to the Wyvern Queen. As well as that, I went ahead and killed a couple of Acros that were in the area. A, to get some more to spawn in, and B, so that we could go ahead and get their Acro Glands in order to summon the Savage Acro later down the line. Chomp once again coming in clutch, going ahead, killing a bunch of Wyverns, because once again we needed all their talents in order to fight the boss of this map. So Chomp was really invaluable. I'm glad we tamed him up. He didn't have the greatest of stats, but it was still well worth it. Nonetheless, the 150 male Acro did tame up with 35 points in melee damage and 35 points in HP. I was absolutely ecstatic with these stats. After teaming the Acro up, I immediately got back to base and started breeding for eggs, and we needed to just hatch as many of these as we could. I wanted to get the stats consolidated from both our female and our male, so thankfully we were able to imprint 100% straight away though, which was great, but what I did was I just cryo them up and took a look at their stats until I got the ones that I wanted. As well as that, we went on a resource run with Mashui getting a ton of resources, two trips, it was just great. I then took our mantises out and we started harvesting up a bunch of the element shards located on the Eldritch Isles. Now, like I said, the mantis was going to be the best way of us getting all of these shards, I figured. So I was like, let's do it. Let's get as many of these as we can. All right, so all up, we got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 52 element. Finally, we had acros coming out of the wazoo ready to go. So we thankfully had pretty much managed to consolidate most of the stats on our acros. Um, you can see those two just there. They were the ones that had the stats that we were after. I'm like 99% sure. Uh, but we've got a bunch of meat now. We actually moved our dudes outside because our breeding slash raising area that we built next to the base wasn't big enough to accommodate all of these guys. So I figured we'll just chuck a trough out here and we'll just raise them outside of the base as that'll be a little bit easier. There's a little bit more space and we'll be able to manage everything. So I crafted up the Acro Saddles and then I went to work upgrading them in our upgrade terminal, turning them into Ramshackle Saddles, which obviously doubled and in some cases even tripled the amount of armor that we were getting on our saddles. But I was super happy that these were getting upgraded like this. And I also went ahead and did the Danosuka saddles shortly as well. Uh, I just had to do a little bit of resource gathering in between. So you can see here, I went ahead and got a shit ton of fiber. So we shouldn't need any more fiber for the rest of this day. And you can see here, we are upgrading the Danosuka saddles to Ramshackle because my plan was to take half Acros, half Danosukuses. Dano Sucuses are going to do their big ass chomp attack. Acros are just going to be straight up damage dealers. So I threw out the rest of our Acros and stat wise, I was pretty happy with how they were coming out. We were coming out with 37 HP, 35 melee damage Acros, which I was super, super happy with. And finally, after all the preparation, we were ready to take on the Gamma Crystal Wyvern Queen. Now, <laughs> our uni didn't even encourage buff. We were too busy stuck inside of our Dano Sucuses to be, even be able to move. Half our dinos were stuck, but we managed to get free and then the carnage really began. We were dealing so much damage with our Dano Sucuses and our Acros. The only unfortunate thing was that the Acros didn't seem to be switching stances to actually get their rage induced mode. So that was unfortunate because I was kind of counting on them to doing that with the flame breath attack. But nonetheless, our Dano Sucuses were just dealing tons of damage, whereas our Acros were just kind of more of the tankers. So it was a very tedious fight. And once it gets up in the air, oh my God, it is so annoying because it just literally one of the most frustrating bosses in all of Ark. There, you have no way to hit it in the sky. I was trying to maneuver my dinosaurs so that we could get them st stuck in a corner and that our Acros and our Dano Sucuses could actually hit it. But the way that this boss mechanic works is you actually have to damage it enough and then it'll eventually come down to land and it'll do this three or four times. Uh, so thankfully we've managed to get it to land once again and then the damage began once again with our Dano Sucuses just absolutely chomping the crap out of it. No, okay. That's all I wanted to see. I should have probably done that at the beginning then. We're definitely going to have to bring flies to the next fight, I think. Because our Acros and Dano Sucuses are just kind of chilling, doing nothing. She's dead here. Come on. Boom! 
Let's freaking go. Let's go. Tech generator, trough, foundation, tech gate, window frame, and gauntlets. Let's freaking go. Did I get the element? Where's the element at? There it is. And Gamma Crystal Wyvern Queen Trophy. After defeating the Queen, I figured I'd reward myself by taming one of her brood. And we found this 145 Blood Crystal Wyvern out in the Bloodhaven area of the Crystal Isles map. So I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and tame this guy up. Once it tames up, it should come out around the 190 mark. Uh, and that'll be perfect to breed with our other female. It was a male, which was the whole reason why I went ahead and found this guy and decided to tame it up. So I was super happy about that. And we thankfully managed to tame ourselves up this beautiful 145. And it came out at 217. So I was going to need to get the rest of the artifacts for the beta and alpha. So I got artifact of the devourer, of the strong, of the clever. Oh man, there are a lot of artifacts we had to get. Artifact of the hunter. However, they're super easy on crystal isles and artifact of the cunning. As well as that, we also had to get the artifact of the depths, which uh, was the hardest one because we died during that one. I then also needed to go ahead and kill a bunch of alpha crystal wyverns because I think I needed three talents for the alpha fight. So I went ahead, went back out to where we tamed up that Blood Crystal Wyvern, and there was this Alpha Blood Crystal Wyvern here. So I did bring Mishui and Chomp with me to help take out this Crystal Wyvern Queen, and thankfully she did manage to get a little bit stuck on us here, and Chomp was able to dish out all the damage. It was a little unfortunate that we couldn't really take Chomp with us to the boss arena, but it is what it is. We did get the Alpha Crystal Talent, as well as a set of very good Valyrian range, which is going to be great for our flyers. I then went ahead and started killing a bunch of acros as well because we were going to need to farm them up for all the adrenal glands that we could possibly need. We needed 50 adrenal glands in order to fight the savage acro. So we took Mishui out and we went on a bit of a killing spree, murdering every single acro that we could find in sight. Luckily in the desert here, there would be about six of them that would spawn in at a time. And I did manage to find another Alpha Blood Crystal Wyvern. However, this one was level 195, so I was a little bit scared. We did leave the cave there, and it did appear to get actually stuck. So we made our way back down in there, and with Mishui's Breath Attack and the Fire Damage, we actually made super quick work of this uh, Alpha. I wasn't expecting it to die so fast, to be honest, which is why I was glad that uh, we had Mishui with us, dealing all that Fire Breath. But we ran out of stamina and had to finish it the good old-fashioned way. It was then time to face the Beta Wyvern Queen. Now, oh, this fight, it was painful. We brought Wyverns along for this fight. As you can see, our Blood Crystal Wyverns are flying around. We did lose all of them. Uh, main reason we bought them were to attack her while she was in the sky. Now, this did not work out how I wanted it to. This has to be one of the most frustrating boss fights ever to exist. As you can see here, we had a minute and a half left to try and kill her. I had run out of shotgun ammo, so we were purely relying on our Acros and our Dano Sucuses to actually try and hit her. She had 61k health left, and I could not, for the life of me, hit her. I had nothing to hit her with. Our Wyverns were dead, no ammo in our shotgun. I was trying to pin her in place. It just wasn't working, and then the unthink. Are you kidding me? Everything f***ing dies as well? What a joke! So, after that fun time, we then went ahead and tackled her again. And boy oh boy, did we make sure we brought enough ammo this time. I can tell you right now, we made sure that we did. And I didn't bring any wyverns this time either, and thankfully, we finally, finally were able to kill the beta. Wyvern Queen. As you can see here, she was she was just refusing to bloody die, but we had to kill her. We were swarmed by Wyverns. She was on 5k health. She just needed to die, but I made sure I brought all the shotgun ammo possibly. Nonetheless, what matters is she's fucking dead. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hello, can I please function as a character of this game and get my hard-earned freaking loot? I swear to God, if I don't get my element... Uh, I'm sorry, what? Did I get it? I haven't gotten the element.
So after that fun time of not receiving our rewards and loot from killing the queen, we then went out and got some black pearls in order to make ourselves a tech replicator so we could go ahead and make all the tech items that we could possibly need. Headed out to the Eldritch Isles and in these bubbles there are tons and tons of black pearls and we made ourselves up the tech replicator. Let's go. Place the tech replicator down in our base ready to go and get to work. I reckon we make one generator. All right, generator's made. After crafting up what tech we had, we then went ahead and went on a massive breeding spree. Breeding, hatching, raising, tons of Dano Sucuses. We were assembling our army for the Savage Acro fight as well as the Alpha Wyvern Queen. And I just love this sound. You've, you've got to listen to it. Dig in, guys. I love this. <laughs> I also went ahead and hatched and started raising a bunch of Acro Canthros as well. Once again, these were going to be damage dealers. I had no idea how they were going to fare against the Savage Acro in a fight. Like, I had no idea. I also tamed up a Lystrosaurus and chucked that in there so that we could try and get the babies extra levels, as that would help us obviously level them up. But I needed a huge army in order to defeat the Savage Acro, and it was looking like this was finally going to be that army. You can see there is a sea of green, a sea of chomping mouths. It was just a chaotic nightmare full of breeding and destruction. So, we still needed to defeat the Alpha Wyvern Queen, but thankfully we already had two sets of armies ready for that. And so the time came to fight the Alpha Crystal Wyvern Queen. Now, strategy, pretty similar to the last couple of fights, if I'm being completely honest. We rushed her with our Acros and our Dano Sucuses using our Dano Sucuses Chomps attacks and then we went ahead and started shotgunning her when she was in the sky. I brought tons. More ammo than I bought for the beta fight, I can tell you that right. I think I brought like 600 rounds or something like that of shotgun rounds to this fight because I was not letting her beat us like she did last time. We had to make sure that she died and she would never be able to spawn little offspring again. So it was a super tedious fight because it was pretty much us just firing into the sky waiting for her to land. Uh, the fight itself didn't actually take us too long. It was more so her just being in the sky. But when she got to that last little tidbit of health, she takes off and then you just have to shotgun her to the rest of her health disappears. I tried to keep her pinned in place for as long as possible with all our dinos but it just didn't really work out that way. We did lose quite a few acros though because of her fire breath attack, but uh, we pretty much just had to shotgun her down for the rest of the way. You can see here she did not land once through this. She was just breathing on us and her little offspring were breathing on us and we did lose. I think I don't think we actually came out of this fight with any acros left. I think the only things that we had left were Dano Sucuses and I purely think that's because of the fact that they were so low to the ground. Thankfully, we were able to wield shotguns and weapons on Dano Sucuses themselves, so that made this fight a lot easier. Alrighty guys, she's very close. I'm a bit concerned because we are getting super focused by our minions. Uh, and obviously, like, our Dano Sucuses can't hit these guys, so, like, we've got no acros left, so... A lot of the wyverns are staying alive, which is really annoying, but she's so close. She's 13.5k. Come on, we just need a killer. Oh, it's Dano Sucus that we're riding on is a bit unhealthy at the moment. I'm a bit worried. I swear to God, thank God we've got this quick spin. We'd be so screwed without it. Come on, hold on there, big guy. Yes, 4.8k. We're so close. Come on. I can't hit her through all these freaking things. All right, you know what? We're going to have to do a chomp. Oh, wait, no, this is it. All right, get in there, fellas. Let's tear him up. All right, there we go. Backup's come. She's so close. I'm going to try and hit her with a chomp attack to kill her. That's a black wyvern. What the hell? That's scary. Uh, I thought it was like a primal fear one. I'm freaking the heck out. Come on. That's it. Let's go. Killed her. Hallelujah. Woo. All right, we only lost all of our acros. <laughs> oh, I don't care. We killed her. Who has the element? Did we get the element or is it in her still? Let's take a look. What do you got for me, lady? Give me all your good stuff. Let's go. Element. How much did we get? 220? Ew. And we got her Wyvern Queen trophy. All that remains are our Taino Sucuses. And finally, it was time to face the Savage Acro. Now, I had brought all of my tames, all bred, as many as I had. We brought everything and we were going to use everything on the Savage Acro. 
But boy, oh boy, was I not prepared for the amount of damage that this guy was going to do. There he is in all his glory. One million health that we had to pummel through. And this thing hits hard. Look at this. Watch this. It just absolutely nuked majority of our dudes off the bat. And as well as that, this guy also has some like unique mechanics in terms of fighting it, which we didn't actually discover till later in the fight. But this was what we had worked towards. All our hard work, all our breeding, all our passive taming, becoming friends with our dinos and then watching them get absolutely mutilated in front of us. It's a very harrowing experience. Luckily, we did have our tech griffin with us so we could throw balls off the back of it and summon in our new dinos ready to go and fight him. But our dudes, they were sitting at about 20k health and they just got absolutely demolished by the savage acro so they weren't having a good time we had everything and we threw everything we had at the savage acro so we were slowly whittling it down 700k health when the big guns decided to come out we brought chomp out and <gasps> let's just let's just take it in and see how quick he just gets absolutely mutilated him alongside mishui just get absolutely destroyed watch this he just does no damage whatsoever. And our tech griffin just got killed. Chomp just goes down. Mashui goes down just like that. 10k damage per stomp attack. And they just got absolutely destroyed. We're running out of dinos here. He's still at about 600k health. And we are just running for our life. Trying to deal damage to this savage acro. We just were not having a good time. However, it was still taking damage. Except the only thing now was... We had gotten down to our Dano Sucuses. Our Dano Sucuses were the last of our Dinos. Granted, we did have about 30 of them. It was just going to be a very slow, tedious time of getting this guy killed. So the Savage Acro was destroying our army, but we were also slowly whittling it down. I had slightly figured out a maneuver in way that we could take it out. And then it got very angry and I got very very scared. I had no idea what was going to come next, and I was not prepared. What's its attack? Oh, shit! It just nuked us. That was scary as. What the hell? It... It roared and killed everything. It looks like it's taking slightly more damage now, though. So I should have probably saved our heavy hitters for this bit. It's adrenaline up for another 30 seconds. Our Dano Sucuses are still attacking. Oh my god, that roar was terrifying. So I'm assuming if it stays in adrenaline mode, it's going to roar again. Right, I'm just going to hang back here. I don't know if it affects us. Yeah, it's going to roar again. Yeah. Alright, I'm running out of Dano Sucuses here. I'm gonna throw a couple more out. It's adrenaline's about to run out by the looks of it. As the fight went on, I kind of figured out a little bit of a way that we could cheese the fight itself. We were still running low on Dano Sucuses, but I had noticed that after doing the dangerous attack, the acro would actually take more damage for a few seconds. So this came to mind and it actually allowed me to formulate a plan. When it said dangerous attack was incoming, we just soul gunned up our Dano Sucuses and got them ready to throw out again. Because we also noticed that this was the attack that was stunning all our dudes earlier. And that's why they weren't able to attack. So by doing this, we were actually able to stagger our Dano Sucuses and they weren't going to die as quickly from the dangerous attack from the Acro. So I figured that this was going to be our one way that we could pull off a win against the Savage Acro. Because I noticed that my shotgun shots were doing less damage after it had done its dangerous attack. And then just like, you know, a few seconds after it just done the attack, it actually started taking a little bit more damage. So we started staggering our Dano Sucuses in order to actually defeat the Savage Acro like this. And uh, lo and behold, it was actually working more effectively than I anticipated. All right, I'm waiting for that dangerous attack message to come up again. Chomp attacks? The chomp attack is what really gets it for us. I kind of wish I had a tech suit. Oh shit, I threw that too early. 
because then we could just jetpack over the top of them and it'd be a lot easier to hit these shotgun shots. Look at that. Come on, guys. Get the chomp off. Oh, big damage from our boys. Look at that. 5.5k health right there. This thing's dying. This thing's going down today, guys. I promise you. We're killing it. It is going down. Uh, that one's still pretty healthy. Like, Chris, I would rather this over the Crystal Wyvern Queen any time of the week. This is an alpha version as well. So, like, if there was a beta and a gamma, that would be so cool. But uh, right now, I'm really enjoying this boss fight. Absolutely killing it. It should be dead this next round. Let's do it. But then again, once, like, like I said, I don't know how this would have fared if I didn't have the Soul Gun. I didn't missile attack. You're not going to do it. I didn't get any shots off in here either. Come on, come on. 10k. 10k, let's go. They're doing damage. 6.5k. We got this. Come on. I'm going to help out. Come on, lads. Let's go. This is it. It's dying. Woo! Savage Acro has been slain by our Dano Sukuses. Whoa, let's go. Give it out for this. Oh my god, saddles. Give it up. For the Dano Sukuses. Would not have pulled it off without these guys. Absolute kings. What a bunch of beastie laddie boys. You love to see it. Let's go. Savage Acro completely dead. And just like that, we managed to survive 100 days on the Crystal Isles, defeating the Savage Acro, as well as all three tiers of the Crystal Wyvern Queen. Nonetheless, Welcome guys, okay. to Ark of Algiro, home of the Manticore, the Dragon, and the Mega Pithecus. A predecessor to Lost Island and Fjorda, this map has everything you could possibly want. From aberration zones, to deep sea biomes, to the white cliffs of Dover, where Deinonychuses spawn in the droves. I set out to defeat this map in 100 days, hardcore utilizing herbivores only now there were a couple of mods included in this 100 days which i have included down below but doing this on a hardcore with herbivores only is much more difficult than you think so without further ado let's jump into it and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you find yourselves enjoying the video and so it began like any other day on earth waking up next to a nice lagoon giving me arm a little bit of a scratch because you know there's a specimen implant in there god knows what it does but hey here we are and we get to work straight away by harvesting up a bunch of berries a bunch of fiber a bunch of thatch and wood crafting our basic tools you know the basic gist of this getting some more basic resources to make more basic tools craft our first spear up and go ahead and slay our first bunny dodo for some reason bunny dodos are here again don't know why but here they are Managed to kill our first dodo successfully, harvest up all the hide, and then we go about looking at some of the new dinos that are in this mod. <gasps> what the stuff in hell are they? Well, great. Alrighty, back to square one we go. <laughs> Now, because this is a hardcore series, when we die, we lose everything. So we went ahead and started taming our first tame because this guy looked relatively easy. It was a passive tame with the Pinacosaurus, and all we had to do was snuggle with it. So we managed to successfully tame up our brand new Pinacosaurus when more disaster struck. Okay, okay. Oh, it's in a fight. It is very bloody. I killed the horse, but... Well, <laughs> and then very bad things happened for quite a few times. So as you can see, great new dinos and, and things in this new modded series, but uh, we died a lot. If we weren't dying to terrifying carnivores, we were dying to swimming monkeys that didn't belong on the map. So after a very rough start of dying constantly to unforeseen threats and getting our feet on the ground, we finally managed to go ahead and find a relatively peaceful area that was filled with small herbivores that we could attempt to tame up. But these guys came at us with an absolute vengeance. Now these Stigmiol locks pretty much have the ability to knock you unconscious. So one hit from them and I would be asleep like a baby and pretty much die. They would just hammer me until I would die. So we found this low level one. I only had a slingshot, however, and I got to work at trying to knock it out. And uh, if you've ever tried to use a slingshot before, it's not fun. They do a lot of damage and it resulted in that Stigmiol lock dying. However, I did manage to knock out its yellow friend and we managed to get that guy knocked out. However, we did stumble across a raptor trying to murder us. It was a 145, so it was relatively strong and I did manage to poke it quite a few times with the spear. However, it did escape from us without dying 
And uh, to say that I was unprepared for it coming back again is an understatement. It ran at us and chaos almost ensued. Oh, oh my God. Oh, we survived. Oh man, that was way too close. Successfully tamed up the Stigmia lock and took it to work and used figuring out how to use it. As this was an extra creature part of the mods that we were using, I didn't exactly know what all of its abilities were. So it had a headbutt attack. Now these attacks also dealt torpor, but I just kind of wanted to see how much damage it would do and if it was capable of knocking things out. So this parasol wasn't the greatest test victim because it did manage to get away from us pretty quickly. I then made a full set of hide armor and we finished taming up our baby Zuni Ceratops. Now this guy, once again, part of the mod pack and we had to wait for it to go to an adult size before we could ride it. Thankfully, we took it to the adult size and took it up against this Raptor. We got a saddle on it and we actually were pretty impressed with how much damage this guy was doing. He was a relatively fast tame and we decided to call him Horny as per usual and our Stigmia lock got called Hammerhead because, well, that's what its head does. I then went ahead and started trying to knock out a Paracer because I wanted to do a nomad style base building where uh, we built on the back of large herbivores and used them to go ahead and wander around the map with our base attached to them. So I went ahead, started knocking it out and killed it. As per usual, my specialty killing things without knocking them out. I then spent the rest of the day trying to tame Lamantrias up, as these were the only herbivorous flyer that we could get on this map. I completely forgot about Lamantrias when I started this and didn't think I'd have access to any flyers, but thankfully I did. However, this bright colored cool looking Lamantria died in the process, but I did find another level 15, trapped it with a tent, and got to work at knocking it out. Now, hopefully I wasn't going to kill this one like I did the last one, and uh, it was only a low level, but I did manage to get it knocked out while also breaking my tent in the process. I took the Lamantra for a little bit of a test run and get, got some metal up here in the Redwoods. And we flew back to base, made ourselves a smithy and a bunch of basic structures. I then found a 145 and trapped that big boy in a tent and got to work knocking that out. Thankfully, knocked it out without any hitches and we managed to successfully tame it up as well without anything damaging it or killing us, which is always a bonus when you're playing these hardcore series. And we decided to call it Bug Eyes. A new day began and I wanted to try and start it off by taming up this big trike dude. However, I got ganged by a Danonicus and had to retreat on top of this cliffside. Otherwise it would have killed us and my Lamantra. So this guy right here was a Nasuto Ceratops. Now this was a low level level 21. And these guys had very similar properties to a trike where their head crest would reduce the amount of damage that they take and obviously reducing the amount of torpor that they would take. Now, as well as that, these guys had an insane, and I mean absolutely colossal amount of torpor. This one was only a level 20 and I fired easily about 200 Trank Arrows into it without it getting knocked out. I managed to kite it into this cliff face here and we continued tranking it. However, I didn't realize they had a trample attack and we took a lot of damage, almost losing Bug Eyes in the process. So I had to play it safe here, and then I started getting trampled in the process as well. This guy was an absolute beast of a machine, and he was terrifying. So I slightly retreated to a better spot when he died to some Danonicus attacks, which, by the way, haven't been attacking him all the whole time. I then found another Nasutoceratops, got it into a trap and got to work at knocking it out. But once again, some lovely Danonicuses decided to join the party and absolutely ruin my day by going ahead and munching on its booty. Cause you know, booty just tastes that good from a big ass herbivore that you just gotta munch on it. It just, that's how it works. So we managed to bowl the Danonicus, but the bleed from the Danonicus still killed the Nasutoceratops. I was not having a good day today with all these Nasutoceratopses dying. So we went ahead and tamed up a Pinkatosaurus to try and salvage the day instead. And this guy was going to be our main metal gatherer for the time being until we found something else. Got a saddle on him and then got to work at harvesting some flint, stone and metal. And this guy was super cute. I, I thought he was a decent little harvester to have with us. A new day began and I found these little Sclidiosauruses on the beach. I ran out of Trank Arrows and crafted up this modded boomerang and this thing was a great knockout tool. This was from one of the mods and it just did so much torpor damage. 
I did manage to tame up a bunch of the Sclidiosauruses, including a 141. So these guys actually provided extra armor to your character, to the player, which ended up being like an extra set of flak for yourself, which in a hardcore series is absolutely perfect for what you want and what you need. Uh, and I spent the rest of the day exploring the area around us and we found a Neovenator and a Carchodontosaurus. And then we found a bright pink 150 Bronto. And I knew then and there that was my wandering base. So I got to work setting up another station of mortar and pestles, smithies, and getting narcotics going in the process when I sported an Alpha Ornithochiris. Left that aside for the time being and got to work knocking out this 164 trike. Now, I was using the boomerang to do so because as you can see here, it did about 400 torpor per throw, which was an insane amount of torpor. However, me choosing to do this in a herd of tech trikes was not the smartest idea. Now, as well as that, if you actually attack any herbivores in the area and there's no pseudoceratops in the area, it will actually go ahead and defend those herbivores, which is exactly what happened here. This level 20 Nasutoceratops ran at me with a freaking vengeance. It was after my ass like no tomorrow. It was terrifying. So I had no choice but to jump into the water to try and lose it in there. And then I went back in and kept working on getting the tech trike knocked out. Thankfully, I did manage to kite the Nasutoceratops quite a bit of a distance away. So I could finish knocking out this tech trike. Now, I was faster than it. As long as I kept my distance and stopped it from using its stun attack on me, then we were A-OK. -okay. It did start running away from us because of its high torpor. And I did miss that most vital boomerang shot. But thankfully, the boomerang did return to me and the trike did get stuck on a rock and I was able to continue knocking it out. However, its friend, the level 24 tech trike, also decided to run at us because its friend was getting attacked. So I had to do a little bit of parkour, a little bit of hit and run, and we didn't manage to get the high level tech trike knocked out. I then went ahead and spent some time going ahead and getting this 150 Bronto knocked out. It was a bright pink one. I could not pass up this opportunity to do so. And I finished knocking it out with my boomerang. Job successful, complete. I then spent a little bit of time helping these herbivores kill this Alpha Anithokyrus. I couldn't tame it and I was most likely not going to be able to use any of the things that it dropped because it would be a saddle required that the Onithokyrus would use and it's obviously a meat eater which is a no-go for this series as we are only taming up herbivores. Managed to tame up the 156 tech trike and we decided to call it Suncrest. I don't know, it just kind of clicked with me. I then went ahead and saved this stego and then got mauled on by a bunch of lions. We got a lion? I'm running, 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 I'm running. I'm pretty sure Elementary is on passive. Lamantria? Laman Lamantria! Alright, dodge and weave, dodge and weave, dodge and weave. Come through the ruins. Get off me, get off me. Have I got a bowler? I don't have a bowler. I have a boomerang. Bro, you wanna go? I'll freaking knock you out in one punch, bro. Bring it. Come on. You think you're tough, mate. Let's go. Oh, there's another one of those flying bastards. After showing the raptor who was its daddy, our Lamantria finally caught up to us from the lion attack. It was pretty low, but we were thankfully still okay with no deaths so far. Our Bronto finally managed to tame up and we decided to call it a lollipop. I feel like that was a super fitting name for a bright orange, pink, yellow Bronto. I then found these Signosauruses, which I thought we could use instead of traditional herbivores. However, I then found out that it was actually an omnivore. And we just spent a bit of time looking at some of the cool dinos that we would never be able to tame in this mod. But I stumbled across a 140 Nasutoceratops and I felt like a king. So I built a trap for it and cutted it up towards the trap in hopes to get it knocked out. Hopefully my luck was going to be a little bit better this time until another Nasutoceratops spawned in literally right alongside the 140. The moment I attack this one, the level 15 is going to aggro on me as well. And somehow it also managed to get stuck in the track, but it did break free and boy oh boy was it a terrifying experience. That female, stay right. I'm gored? I'm gored? I can't move? That was scary, that was scary, that was scary. What does that say? You were unable to recover stamina with staggered. Dude, go away, please. Why? Why? Lamantria, we're staggered. We're gonna die. We're in trouble. Let me go, please, sir. 
Can't move. I'm just going to have to wait for our stamina to come back. While this thing just pummels me. I can't wait. I need to move. I'm stuck. Can't get out. I'm actually I have to dip. I have to dip. I can't. These bastards, I swear to God, and I'm pretty sure they're faster than me as well. I hope Bug Eyes is behind me. I really don't want to jump in the water here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's stuck in a fucking tree. Oh my god! Uh, trike, 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 trike. Where is my trike? Mega Piranhas are coming. Bug Eyes is dead. Get on the trike. We got Mega Piranhas coming after us. What fucking killed us? A lion. A level 20 lion killed Bug Eyes. You bastard. Alright, let's deal with this thing. This guy's pissing me off. You killed Bug Eyes, you bastard. What? Ah! Run. I'm running. I'm running. I'm staggered. I got no freaking stamina. Throw whatever we have out. No, don't, no. Kill it, just kill it, try. Kill it. Kill it. <laughs> this little dude's attacking it. Oh, all right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, Suncrest killed the Nasudoceratops. Suncrest, deal with the lion, please. Holy smoker doodles. Okay, can you move? Suncrest, you're a glorified badass, mate. I don't know where the hell... After all that drama, I finally managed to return to the Nasutoceratops that we were knocking out. And I finally managed to get it knocked out. And then I found this absolutely nightmarish creature that does not belong ever in anything. And this was just terrifying. Now, I went to fight it thinking that Suncrest was going to be up to the task, not realizing that this thing does bleed damage, that stacks, you can see there in the top corner. We've taken 10 seconds worth of the bleed damage every time it attacks us, and it did also replenish its health from a corpse, so that made this fight just all that much more harder. I thought we were going to lose Suncrest. Look at that health. Look at that health ticking down. Oh, it was just too close. It was, oh man, no, I just, I was not able to mentally recover from that. And then a Neovenator spawned pretty much right next to the Nasudoceratops as well. Killed all of that and successfully tamed up the Nasudoceratops. Now this thing was massive. I was really excited for it. We got a saddle on it and you can see next to it is the Zuniceratops. The Nasudoceratops is just an absolute beast. I was testing out its abilities, it had a bit of a roar. It also has a charge attack very similarly to the Rhino and as you can see there that also stacked. Now I did find another tech trike here, a 168 tech trike and I got to work at knocking that out. Now I kind of just sat on the back of an Alden Pseudoceratops uh, but I didn't realize that we were also taking damage when I would return, when the boomerang would return to me. And the Pseudoceratops did take a little bit of damage in the process. But thankfully, I did manage to knock out the Tech Trike. And just like that, we had a pair of Trikes. Now, another Pseudoceratops spawned in the area. And I got to work at knocking that out. Built another trap up. Started firing Trank Arrows into it. Kiting it towards the trap. Now, Bully and this new Pseudoceratops could potentially breed if I did manage to get them tamed up. And that would be great for our army. I then found an Alpha Kano and got to work at trying to fight that when a Stego absolutely nuked my poor Nasudoceratops' ass. Okay, of course I'm the one that gets... What the fuck? Why am I taking so much damage for? After taking a butt ton of damage from the Stego Zimpale attack and losing all my stamina, I had to get the hell out of there. I did not want to lose Bully straight off the bat of just taming him up. It was not worth it. So I did return once the Stego was gone and we got to work at fighting the Alpha Kano. It was only a level 15 and I felt pretty confident that Bully was going to be able to defeat this guy. However, just to be on the safe side of things, I then decided to throw out our Tech Trike just to provide a little bit of assistance because, you know, things were looking a little bit...
bit dangerous. Bully was running very low on stamina and health and I didn't really want to risk losing him. Successfully tamed up the second Nasudo Ceratops as well, and this was perfect. This would mean Bully would have a girlfriend to get jiggy with it and make all the little egg babies that we could possibly want. Now, after teaming up the Nasudo Ceratopses, I had an idea in mind that I was going to go to the cave up north where there's a ton of metal. So I had to make the trek all the way up there on the back of Bully in order to get to the cave system that I wanted to get to. This is the, the cave behind the waterfall. You guys will probably know it very well for those of you that have played Valgiro. So it was just a pretty much a very long journey up to this section of the map. I reached my destination and then went ahead building up refining forges and foundations to hold them. This was going to be great because I could farm all the metal in this cave, get it all refined up, and then I could build everything I needed for my bases. However, while this was happening, I then found some high-level mammoths and got to work knocking them out. A 150 female and a 100 male were going to be perfect breeding pair. I had to do a little bit of parkour alongside our tech trike, but I was thankfully able to dodge most of the mammoth's attacks and fend them off just for enough time to be able to knock them out. So the mammoth level 100 one was going to be obviously the easiest target. It would have the least amount of torpor. And thankfully I was able to outrun both of these mammoths. So it was just a matter of throwing my boomerang enough to knock them out. And we successfully managed to knock out the level 100 first. And then I moved on to the level 150. Once again, a breeding pair going to be perfect for getting some imprinted mammoths, which would be key in holding our bases up on their platform saddles. I then found a Megaloceros 150 and I was like, we need to tame this guy up because obviously it's going to be a great transport uh, tame to get around on. We can move fast with Megaloceroses. Got that knocked out and tamed up and I was super happy with it. However, it didn't last very long. Get out of there. Okay, well, so much for our fucking Megaloceros. Run, just run. Holy shit. I'm running into a fucking... After managing to get away from the horde of die wolves and Daydons, I stumbled upon some beaver dams and some Castoroiduses and figured, you know what? we could probably use some cementing paste and some beavers. These guys would be great for swimming down to the ocean to get some silica pearls. So I knocked out a 135 female Castoroidus and then got to work knocking out a couple of its friends. I then managed to find a female level 85 Megaloceros and I needed something quick to be able to run and do something quick. So I got to work at trying to get that knocked out. However, its boyfriend got angry at us because I was trying to stick a boomerang in its butt and use it for my own purposes. So I found a 135 Castoroiduses as well and thought I'd put my boomerang up its butt as well. Getting that knocked out in the process and taming up the Megaloceros, I then found a Yudi attacking our Castoroiduses. So obviously we had to defend them with literally everything we had because I didn't want the Castoroiduses to take damage and lose effectiveness. Managed to defeat the Yudi and crafted up our first platform saddles for our trikes. Now I managed to get our dinos breeding with the Castoroidus pooping out its first baby, the Nasutoceratopsis producing eggs, and a crafting table getting placed down so that we could start making a couple of structures for our trike platform saddles. My goal here was to use the trikes as portable greenhouses, and boy oh boy was it a challenge. Look at this greenhouse plot placement. It was, this genuinely took me so long to do because I was trying to get it to snap. And building on platforms is probably not my smartest decision to date, to be honest, purely based off how difficult it was. So after doing all of that, I then took Bully out and decided to test its new melee damage out because it had gotten quite a few levels. And you saw there, 1,652 damage on a charge attack and its normal attacks are doing a butt ton of damage as well. So I killed a bunch of things as well. And this guy was great because he would harvest meat and hide as well. Managed to get myself the mammoth platform saddle and get some structures down on that. And I got to work at setting up a very small portable base on the back of the mammoth until I was high enough level for the Bronto platform saddle because I didn't have the level required for the platform saddle yet. So our mammoth was great. He was happy. This was our imprinted one. And we then decided to take the trikes out on a bit of a journey. And this is what I was going for. That bit of nomad lifestyle where we could just wander around on the back of our herbivores, have everything at our disposal and still be able to kill everything and anything. 
Now I got our two Nasuto Ceratopses out and decided to test them out on this Alpha Kano with me constantly charging into it and the other Nasuto Ceratops just face tanking it all because I did level one up in health and one in melee damage to do this exact roll. And uh, the Alpha Kano didn't really stand too much of a chance to be completely honest. It was getting domed pretty damn hard by our mate boosted Nasuto Ceratopses. So, I threw Lollipop out and decided to take Lollipop and we cleared out of the cave and all of our resources. I managed to cook up quite a lot of metal, quite a lot of charcoal and some bending paste and everything like that from the cave. And then I needed some dung beetles for our greenhouse trikes. So, I had to go out to the Wyvern Trench and boy oh boy, was this a harrowing journey. This just did not go well at all for me. I did not think this through very well. Run! Run, Megaloceros! Run! Oh, shit. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. No. It's gonna fall into the lava. I have put myself in a very bad position here. A very bad position. Oh god, what have I done? Okay, there goes our Megaloceros, which is wonderful. So, I had to fight my way out of the Wyvern Trench. Luckily, I had the Nasuto Ceratopses with me, so they were mate boosted, and we got to work at trying to kill these Ice Wyverns. It was a shame we lost our Megaloceros, but in hindsight, I, I, I kind of just yeeted myself into a goddamn Wyvern pit, so I didn't really have much of a choice. But remember, this was all for this singular Dung Beetle. That this is the entire reason why I risked this whole series for a singular dung beetle so that we could get fertilizer for our crop plots. So thankfully I managed to tame the dung beetle and I started making my way out of the wyvern trench. There was this cave that led us up and out of the trench. So thankfully Bully and Horny were there and we had our Zuni Ceratops which I literally had like 30 points in movement speed. Threw it all into movement speed and we used our Zuni Ceratops to get out of there successfully. Stopped by this purple drop to get a journeyman long neck rifle, and then we found a bunch of Kairukus down below here, where we went ahead and harvested them up for a bunch of organic polymer, and that was pretty much gonna be enough organic polymer to get the structures that we needed for our Bronto platform saddle as we successfully hit the level 84 required in the Wyvern Trench, and we were finally able to build on the back of lollipop and build our bay. So I got to work designing the base in my head and the first thing that I wanted to get down was the industrial forge. Obviously this was going to be the largest structure on lollipop and I wanted to make sure it had plenty of space to go down. So we put it at the back of the Bronto and I tried making some walls to try and enclose it. I did want to make this smaller. Due to us using the S plus mod you are able to change the size of the industrial forges when a mammoth just wanted to get some mammoth action and decided to climb on top of our other mammoth in the base section. I don't know what it was doing. Nonetheless, went ahead and put it down at various structures across our Bronto, building up the base slowly, industrial grill, refrigerators, more wars, as well as the smithy and the generator. Now, I kind of liked, I really enjoyed the building this base. Uh, it was a pain in the butt though, because a lot of the snap points are funky because the base is constantly moving because you're building on the back of a goddamn dinosaur. So it made some gaps and stuff like that in various places, but all in all, I was actually super happy with how everything was all coming together. I figured there was more than enough room here for everything that we needed to do. I came up with this design, which I wasn't really happy with, so I changed it around and we gave ourselves a little bit of a uh, sort of observatory room at the top here of our Bronto, which would enable us to look out here. I chucked down a bunch of windows and everything like that and put some more... Uh, double door frames down, and things were looking really good. I was really happy with how this was looking. So you can see there was a trap door there, so we had a second story, and putting down these would enable us to have a third story. And this was what the base looked like by the end of building it up. I was really happy with it. We had a little balcony, we had a little observatory room, uh, which I eventually converted into a breeding area as well, where we could hatch eggs and raise them using the soul terminals that I decided to put in there. And then I finally moved to a new destination where we found a Shantungasaurus. Now, this Shantungasaurus was essentially a gigantic iguanodon in terms of looks. So I built a trap 
for the Shantungasaurus and got to work in trying to get it trapped. However, for the life of me, I could not get this big guy trapped. It just was not working. He was on top of it. He was a big, hefty boy. He was about the size of a Rex, to be completely honest. I think a little bit bigger than the Rex because he was longer. So I expanded the trap, making it longer. And then I decided to try my luck at getting the Shantungasaurus again in the said trap. Using my trusty boomerang still because this thing, it did so much torpor damage. Like it was ridiculous. It would deal more than like Trank Arrows, which was nuts. So I shot the Shantungasaurus, managed to finally get it stuck in the trap. Hallelujah. And then I got to work at getting it knocked out. Oh, oh, I scared. Successfully knocked out and tamed the Shantungasaurus and I got to work using it trying to figure out what it did. Now the reason I tamed up the Shantungasaurus was because it did say in the mod description that it had the ability to buff your herbivores, which I thought would be perfect for the boss fights. As well as that, it pretty much just functioned exactly the same as a giant Iguanodon. New day began and I found a 140 Procoptodon and got to work getting that knocked out and I decided to take Shanty out for a bit of a spin and see how it would face off against a Sucomimus. Needless to say, we had nothing to worry about with Shanty absolutely destroying the Sucomimus. I found a 140 Lamantria because I wanted to breed our Lamantrias up and a Mastercraft Therry Saddle which would be great for fighting bosses. Managed to tame up both Lamantrias and then I found a Platosaurus. I had no idea what this thing did but it was a passive tames that we needed to feed narcotics so I was like why not? Super easy tame to get, we can go ahead and tame it up. And then I called my Procoptodon skip, how fitting I know right? Managed to tame up our first Platosaurus, brought that back to base, and uh, yeah, didn't, didn't go well for the Platosaurus. Earlier that day, I found an Alpha Nasutoceratops and figured it would be a good idea to try and fight it, as the Alphas dropped saddle blueprints for the corresponding dino. Alpha Nasutoceratopses would be great, because I was planning on using the Nasutoceratopses to fight the bosses, because, you know, they do a lot of damage with their charge. They're generally super tanky. So we got to work on taking it out. And I wanted to use this one to charge into it to deal a bunch of extra damage. However, just things were not looking great for me. We did actually get the charge off, but it was kind of useless because all of our other diners had already done a bunch of damage to it. We didn't get any saddles for it. We got an Ascendant one, actually, and it was no way we were going to be able to make that Ascendant saddle whatsoever. Managed to tame up the final Platiosaurus, and this was the 131 that we were actually going to use. Made a magical alchemy table, which enabled us to make our very own Revel Destroyer. Now, these were the horses that would kill us at the beginning of the series. And these guys were super strong. They had a bunch of health, they had a bunch of melee damage, and they came built with automatic saddles, which provided them a butt-ton of armor. As well as that, their attacks function very similarly to the Equuses, which enabled them to knock out and deal a ton of torpor damage to whatever it is that they decided to fight. So I was super happy with our Revel Destroyer, and it would come in handy quite a bit later through the 100 Days series. I then found another player's base, as this was played on my server, and he had a Revel Destroyer as well. Except he had the ice version, and the ice version slowly chunked my health out. As you can see, it was dropping, and I was completely unaware that my health was plummeting. Now, this player also had some Nasutoceratopsis breeding, and I figured I'd help myself to one of the eggs as it was just going to spoil. I chucked some air conditioners down and started hatching up that Nasutoceratops egg that I had found, and it hatched with great stats. With 42 melee damage, this guy was going to be great for our boss Nasutoceratopsis. Now, I left the rest of the eggs to hatch when I found this Baylor, which was also a herbivorous, like, raptor-like creature. Got to work in trying to tame that up. However, it managed to get itself in a very, very precarious spot for someone playing on a hardcore series that takes a lot of damage from fall damage. So, I sat on this cliff face, slowly, slowly trying to tame up this Baylor in the way that would not result in me dying. Tamed up the Baylor and tamed up the Europosaurus that was also alongside of Baylor and got these guys back to base to test out exactly how well they work. Back at base, the Nasutoceratopses had hatched and I got to work crying them up. A lot of these guys were going to be used for the boss fight, but a lot of them were also going to be killed. I wanted to test exactly what the Baylor could do and it pretty much mimicked a raptor's core. So it could actually blend in with raptors and I wanted to test if this would work with Deinonychus's. So what I want to know 
is whether or not they'll attack us with this guy. Yep, yep, that's a hard, yep, yep, they definitely want to attack us. Yep, okay, well, we know the answer to that question now. I then wanted to test out the U Parasaurus, and it was kind of just like a smaller version of a Bronto and Diplo. It wasn't anything amazing. A lot of the extra herbivores were sauropods in this mod. I then spent the next day hunting down Theries for the boss army as I was going to use Theries as well as our Nasudoceratopses to defeat these guys. I found another 140 Baylor as well in the process and pretty much I just kept finding Theries. And you know, you guys know how this goes, find the Theries, go ahead, knock them out, tame them up. That was pretty much all there was to it for these Theries. I'd managed to find quite a few stat-wise that were decent, and then I found this ugly bastard. <gasps> run, 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 run. Okay, I didn't realize it was going to be hostile. Holy smokes, that was terrifying. Oh my god. It's fast too, the bastard. Run, just run, just run, just run. That scared the shit out of me. It electrocuted us. After escaping with my life, I then went back to hunting down Theries to tame up, and I found a 145 with 33 points in its melee damage. So this was going to be a great Therry. Got to work knocking it out using my long neck and a bunch of darts. Eventually ran out of darts, and the boomerang just was not proving to be very effective against getting this guy knocked out. So I had the wise decision to bring a tame that we got earlier into the mix to try and help us out because I didn't really want to risk going it on foot and dying, so our Revel Destroyer came in and absolutely knocked the block off this Therry, just like that, dealing a ton of damage and knocking it out. Our first Therry tamed up, it was a male, and it came out with super good stats. 39 points in melee damage, which is perfect, and then I found a 150 Therry after all of this, taming all these damn Therries. Skipped out on taming that one up, though, because it didn't have very good base stats to look at. And the rest of the Therries came out with great stats. 41 melee damage on the final Therry. So I was going to have to do quite a lot of breeding to get the necessary stats that I wanted to across into the offspring. And the rest of the time was pretty much spent breeding up the Therries and the Nasudoceratopses. We bred like crazy. I also destroyed most of the babies as well to get extra XP and levels because I wanted to make this workstation which would enable us to make some extra strong modded equipment such as the M95A shotgun I believe it's called or something like that. It was a super fancy shotgun. So I went ahead and started making up the transposition anvil which would enable us to make this shotgun as well as the ammo, but we needed steel ingots and polymo and we just got the head and made all of that. I also then spent the rest of the time farming up Alpha Nasudoceratopses in hopes that I could find a decent saddle blueprint for our Nasudoceratopses because like I said earlier, my idea was to bring half Nasudoceratopses, half Theries, plus the Shantungasaurus because the Nasudoceratopses were going to be ridden on to uh, use the charge attack and deal a butt ton of extra damage to the bosses. So I needed a decent saddle for Anasudoceratopses because they were also going to be mainly our tanks, whereas the Theries were going to be DPS dealers because they had much more damage. Well, they didn't have much more damage, but the Anasudoceratopses just had much higher HP as well, just purely because of their tankiness. And then I had to go fight the Broodmother for the artifacts located in her cave. There were three artifacts that I was going to need in there, and thankfully I only brought a couple of Theries and Nasudoceratopses, and majority of our dudes survived. We didn't actually lose any of our teams to the Broodmother fight. Now I know she's not the full strength Broodmother, but I was still pretty impressed with how our dudes were handling her, and Shanty was being ridden to provide the buff to our Theries in the process as well. Defeated the Broodmother, and then I ventured into her cave full of freaking bugs. Oh my god, never seen so many damn bugs before in my life. And I went ahead and gathered the necessary artifacts I needed to fight the bosses of Valgiro. Now, I was originally going to do the Alpha Boss fight, but I actually got the artifacts for the Alpha Boss fight as well. Um, and I opted to just do the Gamma. And you'll see why later on through the 100 day series, but it just kind of, it, it took a little bit of a turn for the worse. Nonetheless, I did manage to get the rest of the artifacts, starting with the artifact of the pact, 
the artifact of the immune and the artifact of the strong. However, they were well defended by a bunch of Mega Neuros and I did successfully fend all of them off, gathering my much needed prize. Unfortunately, I couldn't put any of the extra artifacts in our Sclidiosaurus, but I only needed the basics and then I had to make a leg for it and dodge the Broodmother in the process. I didn't really want to fight her with our Procopter and I didn't really want to bother throwing everything out again to fight her. So I was hoping that Skip could just get us the hell out of here. And uh, thankfully we were able to dodge all of her little minions and the bats and spiders and everything and just leg it out of there and out of the Redwoods to finally get ready and collect the last artifacts that we needed to fight the bosses. So I had to descend into this cave. I sent my Therry in first to try and distract all the eels. And then I figured, oh, well, I'm going to need to go down there and save its ass, otherwise it's just going to die to getting electrocuted by all the eels. And we made our way down there, finishing them off and saving our Therry in the process. I got Artifact of the Devourer as well. So we got that ready to go for the boss fight. And then I got the final Artifact that was located in this cave, the Artifact of the Brute. Oh man, this is... <gasps> Oh, I thought I pressed the button to land and I thought he was going to land in the freaking lava. All right, can we land back? Here? God damn, that was terrifying. That lava would have instantly killed us, I reckon. I mean, we'll take the Scorched Torch skip. And there is the Artifact of the Destroyer. So we needed this for the Gamma and I'm considering whether or not we want to just try and tackle the Gamma. After collecting the necessary artifacts, I then went ahead and went on a breeding spree. I was trying to go for mutations, obviously mutations would make this fight a lot easier and I was purely trying to mutate the Therys and the Nasudoceratopses. My method was to throw out a bunch of eggs, hatch them and then soul gun all of the tames looking out for those that had the extra two levels as I had successfully managed to get the wanted stats onto the two Therys that I wanted through obviously selective breeding which took a butt ton of time. I had a ton of Therry eggs that I needed to hatch, a ton of Therys that I needed to raise just to get prepared for the boss fight. I did eventually get a mutation, but I had one more stop to go to. The final artifact, the artifact of the Skylord, located in at the Wyvern Trench. I was shitting myself because all I had to defend myself was my poor little Lamantria. And this artifact is located right in the middle of the lava pits in a wyvern infested area that could very easily nuke us. Thankfully I did get the artifact of the Skylord and I got the hell out of there as fast as I freaking could. I was not hanging around to try and find out what would happen. And just like that I needed the final trophy items and we could finally fight the Gamma bosses. So I went ahead and started farming up some more Alpha Nasudoceratopses in hopes to get a saddle and lo and behold this time we would get lucky and actually finally get a decent saddle that we could use and craft to outfit our Nasudoceratopses for the final boss fight. I just had to find it in our bunch of fairies and there it is there a Mastercraft Nasudoceratops saddle with 97 armor and it was super cheap to make. So I went ahead getting the rest of the trophy items I needed with the Sarko skins as well as the Titan of Boa Venom and the Aloe Brains. Also continuing the hatching, breeding, raising process in hopes to get more mutations and at last we were finally ready to fight the Gamma bosses on Valgiro. I'm hoping that we can pull this off. I really am. Uh, Alright, so let's get the tributes in. Boom. Alright. Here we go. Let's do it. I'm very nervous. Let's make sure everything is in. Oh no. Our Shantungasaurus didn't come with us. That's bullshit. As if he doesn't come with us. That's trash. That's so... Why am I zooming me in? Stop zooming in. That's so... I don't want to have to deal with him and the, man and the Megapithecus at the same time. Alright, let's get him, lads. So, we're going to charge in with our Nasudo. Oh, shit. We are dealing damage. Okay. This is going better than I anticipated. We're doing quite a bit of damage. Our Rage Attacks are doing decent amounts. Wow. Okay. We are absolutely chunking the dragon. I was not <laughs> expecting this. I can tell you that much. All right. Well, I mean, we're not getting hopeful yet because we've still got to deal with the Megapithecus. I think the dragon is the weakest of the three of them. Purely, it has... All right. Gamma Dragon's defeated. Alright, here we go. We're going to get a full charge attack off on the Megapithecus. Let's see how much damage we do. 
jokes the fucking castle wall is going to stop us. Yeah, see, he's pretty tanky. But if we do the charge attack here that we're doing, we are doing quite a bit of extra damage to him. I kind of want to turn and face the Manticore, to be honest. Stop. Yeah, I kind of want to turn and face the Manticore, just because we can... He's fighting. We can fight him on the ground while he's here. Shit, out there he's a super bloody already. I'm keeping an eye out on our hull. Ouch. Are we hitting the Manticore? Man, he's taken little amounts of damage. How damaged are our dudes here? Shit, they took must have taken a lot of damage from the dragon's breath. Alright, I'm hoping they're hitting it. It looks like they are. I don't want to get in that cloud. The rest of our dudes are looking okay-ish. The Megapithecus is kind of bugging out, but we're damaging him, which is what matters. He's in a really awkward spot here. I don't think everything's hitting him. I, it really sucks that our Shantungasaurus didn't come along. Because our Therese would be doing quite a bit more damage if that were the case. Oh shit, that was a big hit. They're the dangerous attacks. Come on, lads. Hit him. I think we just need to focus on one. Except the fucking problem is we're super locked off here. Alright, there goes our first Pseudoceratops. That's not a good sign. Can't see what's going on here. Alright, just keep hitting him, fellas. You're doing great. I don't know what... Oh, there he is. Alright, Megapithecus is... Megapithecus is dead. Megapithecus is dead, I repeat. Get the fucking Manticore. Let's go, fellas. I am super stuck here. Fuck off. I don't care. Am I... Do I want to try and do this on foot? Oh, shit. This shotgun. It does damage. Actually, I didn't even try the bullets on it. Hold on. Let's try these. Get in there, fellas. All right, this is going pretty good. We lost one Masuda. I wonder why we lost one. Come on, reload. Okay, it doesn't look like it sets it on fire. I mean, I, I'm not surprised. I'm just going to use the normal bullets. But it looks like our dinos are doing a decent job. There is no way we would have been able to do this on Alpha. No way we would have done this on Alpha. Can I... Fire bullets. Oh shit, these guys are freaking low. Guys, move over there, please. Go. Get off me. Crap. Crap. I can't fucking move, guys. You're killing me here. Alright, looks like I might come down for a landing again. Yeah, our dudes are very weak. Wow, okay. Here he comes. Get him, fellas. Lads, get him. We're going to help out how we can. Shit. I really shouldn't be running around on foot doing this. Come here, you. A fully charged attack on this guy. I just got to watch out for all the rocks and shit, because that messes up our charge. I don't think I got it. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. We're just going to nail him as much as we can. Our dudes are super low. Honestly, I was not expecting them to be this low from this fight. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Done. Let's fucking go. woo -hoo -hoo! And just like that, I survived 100 days hardcore on Valgiro using herbivores only. Thank I you very much. 100 for days to defeat Ark's hardest map, Ark Fjorda. Now, this involves killing the Alpha Broodmother, the Alpha Megapithecus, the Alpha Dragon, as well as Alpha Fenra and all the world bosses. Will I be able to pull it off? Let's find out. And so it began like any other time. Waking up on the beach, except instead of this time looking at our implant, we woke up punching. We were raring to go and getting ready to absolutely dominate this map. But first we had to begin by dominating this Dodo and showing it exactly Help who was me. boss. So I set Help out on trying me. to knock this out. And eventually it fell to my clumsy punches and we had successfully oh no. knocked out our first dino. I went ahead and gathered some basic resources so that I could make myself a basic pickaxe. After that, I went ahead and killed the unconscious dodo because it's vulnerable to my attacks, it can't fight back. I then went ahead, harvested a few extra ingredients that I was going to need and the basic hides. And I learned a bunch of engrams in the process as well. 
I then went ahead, harvested up some flint and a small amount of metal so that I could make myself a basic hatchet. I then took a second to admire my beautiful, bountiful what body. What is that? After admiring my body, some Microraptors also decided to admire it by biting into my butt cheeks while I ran down the cliffside. Eventually, ultimately, killing me in the process. I killed myself in order to escape the cold because I had the bright idea of to travel to Asgard to try and stave off the cold. And well, you can see how well that went. Before they decide to eat me. Hello there. Oh God, no! Fucking bastard. We were so close. So after finally finding a relatively peaceful spot on Asgard, I found a Moe's Chops and thankfully we actually had a rare mushroom available to us to feed the Moe's Chops and that pretty much sent it the rest of the way and then requested a Mijo Berry which we once again had and we got ourselves our first tank. A wonderful, beautiful, bountiful Moe's Chops. Now with this guy we could go ahead and harvest as many berries as we wanted and we decided to come up with a very fitting name for it, Toes. Give it a Come on, Toes. <laughs> when daytime came around, I decided to make my way to the beach to harvest up some of these wooden boxes as they actually gave us metal tools. So we got ourselves a metal hatchet, pickaxe, and a crossbow from them. I then got to work at building myself a basic shelter. Pretty much so that I could survive a night on the normal Fjorda map instead of traveling to Asgard. And it was just made out of thatch. I did put a storage box and a bed down so we could respawn here. And then I got to work on getting some tames. And I managed to find this beautiful 150 Andrew Sarkis. So I got to work on trying to tame this big Chungus boy up. All you had to do was chuck some honey and follow the on-screen prompts in the direction in order to tame up this big hefty boy. Now, things were going great so far with our 150. We weren't having any issues in terms of taming it up, and it also had amazing stats. That was until <sighs> this bastard of a seagull appeared. So the seagull again. had attacked it and reset it back to zero, so I got to work on finishing it, well, restarting the tame and trying to tame it again. However, this time, there were some challenges. Uh, it was not happy with me trying to tame it, as you can see. Here we go again. Ooh! So, it killed us multiple times, but thankfully we were able Here we go to again. finally get this guy tamed up. Uh, hey, let's go! Got our first Andrew Sarkis. Woo! I then went ahead and gave it a name as our first Andrew Sarkis needed something super, super basic because that's the kind of pleb that we are and we decided to call it Andrew. How boring, I know. I then took a look at its stats and was kind of blown away. An insane amount of health, an insane amount of melee damage for our first Andrew Sarkis. I then went on a spree taming up a bunch of different low level females because they would be able to breed with our new male. I then went ahead and named our two new female Androsarkuses, and that was Pork and Loin. Now, I feel like these were super fitting names, and then I went ahead and started building a more permanent sort of base that we could actually use, and something that wouldn't get destroyed at a dodo sneezing at. So, after slowly building up the wood base, I managed to chuck a mortar and pestle in and get some narcotics brewing when an unwanted guest arrived. Shit. I'm just trying to... No! No! Oh shit, the baby! The baby! The baby! Let's get it. We might lose a female here. Oh, where's my saw balls? So much me! Give me a ball! I'm stuck. What the? Oh, are you serious? Get him, fellas. I can't see what's going on. Someone killed the damn thing. Bro, why is my whistle not working? What is going on? All right, we need a ball. No, why are you, stop. Yo, what the heck? <laughs> Can we please kill it? Okay, Woo, that was close. After that kerfuffle, I went ahead and tamed up another higher level female. All of the other ones were lower levels. I think they were like level 20s. This was a level 50. And then I went ahead and started expanding the wooden base adding some extra walls, making it too high, and then putting the ceilings on it as well. 
I also went ahead and put down some refining forges as I needed to cook metal, and then I found a metal note and went and harvested up a bunch of that. I brought the metal back to base to get it cooking up, and then I decided to take our Andrew Sarkis out for a bit of a test run in the fields to see how much damage it would do and see how it would hold up against fighting other Andrew Sarkis. I was pleasantly surprised at how much damage we were doing and at the beefiness and tankiness of these big piggy boys. They were dealing a decent amount of damage and they also had quite a large amount of health. I then went ahead and found an Alpha Raptor and thought I'd give that a go when a Stego decided to absolutely nuke me and my Andrew Sarkis, pulling me off my Andrew Sarkis and just absolutely wailing into them. Now, mind you, this Stego, it just had to be a 150 and it had to have a bunch of friends around it to help it out. This guy was one of the tankiest bloody Stegos I had ever fought. And it was buffed by the Alpha Raptor as well, for some reason, because, you know, it's an Alpha Raptor getting buffed by a Stego, which makes total sense. So after lo almost losing our Andrew Sarkis, I decided to get the hell out of there as fast as I could, but not before the Stego almost freaking murdered me. I did pass out, however, and then something else decided to come along and finish the job. So that was a super fun experience with Stegos. To coming back to life, I continued breeding my Andrew Sarkis, trying to get the stats that I wanted for uh, the first 150 into a new offspring so that I could imprint on it. It was a slow and tedious process, however, and I wasn't having too much luck at the base when I spotted something in the distance. <gasps> Um, um, I don't know if you guys saw that. That's a freaking Giga right there. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, um, um, yep. So I wasn't returning there for a while. So I set up a little one by one stone shack on the beach. So I've come to exchange words. So? I mean, Karen, ma'am, Mrs., M Miss, I've come to exchange words and fisticuffs. I challenge you to a duel. I bet you I can get a punch on. Oh, let's fucking go. Whoa. <laughs> Not going to lie. I wasn't expecting to get that many hits in, if I'm being completely honest. The next day, I went ahead and started taming up some more Andrew Sarkis, starting with this level 15 female. She did get uh, tamed right in front of an aloe, so that could have been dangerous, but we did manage to get away successfully. And then I found another Andrew Sarkis to tame up. I wanted to get a bunch of females so that I could breed them all with my 150 tamed male as I was trying to get the offspring of my dreams and desires. And unfortunately, this first one wasn't what I was looking for. It did have the melee damage and the health, but not the stamina, whereas this one right here had exactly what we wanted. So I went ahead and killed all the offspring that didn't meet my expectations. I know, I'm such a wonderful, inspiring parent. You can thank me later. So we went ahead continuing to kill them all. They did give us a decent chunk of XP, but I obviously had to cull some more of the failing offspring. They just once again did not meet my expectations and I managed to get a very good Andrew Sarkis with the stats that I needed. I then journeyed out to a separate part of the map in hopes to try and tame a Fjordhawk. Now these guys were going to be great for really anything that I wanted to do as when you die they bring your body bag back over to you. However in order to tame them you need to feed them corpses and they can be rather annoying and the taming progress takes absolutely forever. So this one Fjordorc that I had my eye on was slowly getting tamed up with the various corpses that I brought it, and then I brought a bunch of friends along to eat the corpses alongside it, which isn't the most ideal thing. Now, due to the cold, I did die before getting a sleeping bag down, which sucks. However, I was able to respawn, and I did find this Bracky here. So I got to work trying to take it on. Now, Brackies are part of the Arc Conditions mod, which we were running on the server. So I figured, you know what, let's do it. And then it did its stomp attack and absolutely nuked me and the Fjordhawks that were around it. So I ended up losing all the progress on that Fjordhawk that I had spent feeding the corpses, which is absolutely wonderful. After force feeding my Andrew Sarkis, I returned back to the Brachio in order to fell it like the great big beast that it is. And I successfully killed it 
Now, after killing it, I had a couple of field hawks that were on the tracking bar and they started feasting on the Brachy. And just like that, we had managed to tame our first Fjord Orc. There was also a 140 that managed to get halfway, but I was just ecstatic that I managed to get one Fjord Hawk. So I found another Brachy and decided to kill this one as well in the process. However, this one was much further away from the 140 and I had to bring it over. And there were also a bunch of dangers in the area. Raptor was also trying to harvest it for itself and me in the process and I almost died. Thankfully, however, the Fjordhawk did eventually come over and start feasting on the Brachy and I did manage to tame up a 140 female. With that, I had successfully tamed up a breeding pair of Fjordhawks and I thought I'd grab an extra one just while we had the Brachy corpse hanging in the area. And just like that, I had tamed three Brachys, which was incredible. I then decided to kill myself, get back to base and test out the Fjordhawks travel capacity. The next day began with me doing a medal run with our brand new Fjordhawk and I died allowing myself to transfer the medal back to my base and getting it into my refining forges. Now, the wood base was successfully safe once again due to the fact that the Giga was gone, so I did return here in order to utilize the forges. And the Fjordhawk was amazing. I decided to test my luck and try and get a Rock Drake egg with the Fjordhawk. However, the radiation damage killed me before I could grab the egg. So I returned and this time I was successful at grabbing myself a Rock Drake egg. I managed to get the Rock Drake egg and then the Rock Drakes came along. I wasn't going to make it out of there alive due to the radiation damage. So the Rock Drakes went ahead and killed me and my Fjordhawk brought me my egg. Just like that, we had gotten ourselves a Rock Drake egg super easily. I was ecstatic. Now, I returned back to the base. However, mistakes were made at which base it was. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. No! Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. He got roasted. He got roasted, the poor little dude. I feel so bad for him. I'm sorry, little guy. I didn't even think about the forges killing you. So after already losing my first Fjordhawk, I decided to breed the last two that I had, which was the level 20 male and the 140 female. And we got this little offspring at 155. The cutest little bastard you ever did see. So I mainly focused on making sure that this Fjordhawk was going to raise up. I also kept breeding our Andrew Sarkis's for more offspring so that we could keep fueling our Andrew Sarkis army. Now I put a smithy down in our temporary wood hut over there and made myself a bunch of flak armor so that I had something a little bit more sturdier to protect myself from the elements of Ark. Now I went ahead and took on some alpha raptors because I was just farming up some rune stones and testing out the capacity of our Andrew Sarkis a little bit more. And the Andrew Sarkis actually has a slight knockback attack, which made defeating these Raptors uh, easier because our Andrew Sarkis had taken quite a few hits and uh, it was precariously low when we killed this 150 Alpha Raptor. I did find a Yellow Drop managing to get a Stego Saddle as well as an Anki Saddle. So I was pretty happy about that. And I went ahead and farmed up some of the Beaver Dans for the cementing pace. With the Andrew Sarkis being a great swimmer, this made it super easy to get to the dams and get away with the payload of cementing paste. So things were looking pretty well at this stage, managing to get quite a few of the beaver dams in the process. I then finished the day off by trying to get some decent Deinonychus eggs and didn't have too much luck in that regard. The next day, we ventured out into the swamp to gather some organic polymer. I did need some of it to make the Andrew Sarkis saddle, which is the main reason why we were out here. And it was just a super easy way to go about getting a bunch of organic polymer in the process. I stopped by on the way back to the base, getting a nice red drop with some saddles in it. And then we finally made our Andrew Sarkis saddle. I was super happy about that. Now I did also go ahead and mine some obsidian up as I was gonna need that to make the harpoon launcher and to make some nets because I had the plan to try and tame our first flyer. And uh, it was it was gonna be something challenging, but hopefully I could get it done. And the Andrew Sarkis saddle was made up and I love this thing. So I then went ahead and went to get my first flyer tamed up and I had found this 150 Snow Owl. Now I had spent some time knocking it out before launching the net gun with it because I didn't want it to wake up out of the net and actually fly off and then us not be able to trank it. So I got it halfway and then finished the tranking and tamed it up. 
beautiful 224 Snow Owl. It was amazing. I then went ahead and took on these Alpha Lead Scythicuses because they are one of the best sources for rune stones in my opinion. You normally get about 20 from killing an Alpha Lead Scythicus. So there were two in the vicinity. So I managed to kill the first one and a horde of Megalodons and Mantis were coming at me. And our Androsarchus also slingshotted to the top of the ocean and left me stranded where I died to a bunch of Megalodons. Now, obviously with me dying in the process, you can imagine how well it fared for my Androsarchus being out there by itself. Lechonk, had met its demise. I was not happy. I don't know where all these Megalodons are. Their aggro range was just ridiculous. Same with the Mantas. So I ventured out to get my body and try and get Lechonk's saddle back. And you can imagine how well that went. Like, why are they aggroing on me for? I fucking did nothing. The next day, I needed to get revenge once again on some sea creatures for what they had done to me and Lechonk previously. So first off, I started by getting a bunch of oil as I was planning on making a fabricator today and trying to find a more permanent base spot. And then the carnage began. I was ready to absolutely murder every living bloody thing in the ocean at this stage. These guys had caused me so much pain and so much grief. Lechonk was our OG bred baby that had both the stats of the father put into it. So the strong health and the strong melee damage. Luckily, we did have multiples of that. So we did have an Androsarchus to replace Lechonk with. But that's not the point. Lechonk still died because we got swarmed by a bunch of Megalodons and Mantis for no reasons whatsoever. They were not involved in the Alpha Lead Scythicus fight. So I don't know why they did. Nonetheless, we made the Fabricator and we were good to go. I was planning on moving base today. So I did make a bunch of Smithies and an extra Fabricator as well as some electronics so that I could make a generator. I then went out and found a 140 Deinonychus egg as I did want to use Deinonychus's for the Dragon Boss. I then went ahead and helped a player with an Alpha Raptor on the server. And then I found another player's base. And I wanted to take a quick look at because these servers are public so you guys can join. And you can also sign up to the Patreon as well if you are keen on joining the servers. I was real quick guys as well. I just wanted to say take a quick look at my Patreon. This will grant you access to the servers that I play on and record these 100 days on. So if you feel like supporting me a little bit extra, feel free to check out the Patreon. It's there in the link in the description below. Thanks very much, guys, and let's get on with the video. Really blown away by how amazing the stables was, and I was like, I'm going to use that for later. I then found my base spot located in Asgard. This was the, uh, like the head hall, I guess you could call it, located near the obelisk. The next day was moving day, so I wanted to make sure I had everything ready for our new base spot. I had fridges and everything that we could possibly need. I then found a 150 Anki that I wanted to knock out and start taming while we were setting up the base. That way, by the time we had finished setting up the base, the Anki would be ready to tame up. We could do a metal run and call it quits for the day. So the 150 Anki went down really easily. Obviously, you can just outrun these guys. They're not really too much of an issue. And then I found myself a level 55 Dodicarus and got to work on knocking that out. Same principle here. We get it knocked out. We come back when the base is all done and we'll have a tamed Dodic that we can use to gather resources. Beautiful. I then got to work on the base. Now, I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to use foundations for the inside of this. Getting foundations snapped in on this building was a pain in the butt. I managed to put some down and tamed up the Dodicarus as well. I then teleported back to the mainland and got jumped by an Alpha Kano. Thankfully, I was able to make it away with our Snow Owl, but that, that could have been very dangerous. Returning back to Asgard, I did find a 140 Mammoth, and obviously you can see where this is going. We went ahead and started knocking out the 140 Mammoth. Netted it, knocked it out. We were super happy about that. We had our resource gatherers, and we had a vault in our base, which meant we could store everything. Anki had successfully tamed up as well, and I took it on a metal run. I was very happy with how everything was going. I continued setting up the new base by putting down some refining forges, a smithy, some doors, as well as setting up a small breeding pen in the back for our Andrew Sarkis's and Fjord Hawks. There was a trough here as well as a soul terminal, so we had plenty of space to do a little bit of breeding with the tames that we currently had. I was also working on a second floor as I did plan to put an industrial forge up here as well. So I finished placing down the rest of the items that I needed, such as a fridge and two preserving bins so that we would have obviously storage for our food items, as well as the generator and air cons so that we could hatch any eggs that were collected by the salt terminals. 
I also wanted to test to see if we could incubate the rock drake egg that we got earlier and successfully we were. I then returned back to the rock drake trench to try and get myself another egg as we had set up successfully. Had my fjord hawk when I was struggling to get up here and died tragically in the process. After incubating my eggs, I threw out the new 140 Deinonychus and the 95 Rock Drake that we had gotten earlier, and the Rock Drake came out yellow and purple. It looked absolutely awesome. I was super happy with the colors on the Rock Drake. I also threw out a couple of extra Deinonychus eggs that I had uh, received and decided to try and raise those guys up. The next day was Desmodus Taming Day. So I made my way out to the cave where they're located and I found myself a 150 Desmodus. Now, I was severely underprepared for the process of taming a Desmodus. I can tell you that much right now. I died a lot and I also failed to set up sleeping bags many, many times. So I got to work trying to kill some of the local wildlife and literally the first time I get hit by an Onik is the one time I contract Mega Rabies. So I also had brought Toes along as I was going to sacrifice Toes in order to get a higher effective Bat Tame. And then I realized that you literally get like 0.1 of a percent every second and it just really was not worth it. So I went ahead and sacrificed myself with my blood packs in order to try and tame up some Desmoduses. And it resulted in me dying quite a lot in trying to tame them. Obviously being in the sky, I was hoping that our snow owl would be able to catch us and I could fly on it and not plummet to my death every single time I was trying to tame one of these guys up. But obviously, as you can tell, that was definitely not the case and it resulted in me dying like 10 times, 10 times. I did learn after the first time, however, to set up some sleeping bags, but I did successfully manage to tame up my first Desmodus bat. And honestly, it was absolutely worth it because the stats that it got was absolutely incredible. 44 health and 36 melee damage. I then tamed up another Desmodus, so we now successfully had a breeding pair. There was another 145, went ahead, tamed that one up as well. I was slowly accumulating my army of bats to take over the server. But I was super happy with the stats that we got on our Desmoduses, and then I realized that we could hang them upside down in our base, and I also called them Vlad and Isabella. I went ahead, took them for a bit of a test run to see how much damage we could do. This was with the one that had the 36 points in melee damage and the 44 health. And I was pleasantly surprised at how much damage it was doing to the Daedon. As well as that, we were also getting the blood packs and healing ourselves in the process. These guys were amazing. The next day, I had a goal in mind. To tame a Giga. So to do that, I had to go ahead and prepare a bunch of resources. So I did multiple resource runs with my Mammoth, my Anki, and that was pretty much, and the Dodic. I did do a little bit of gathering with the Dodic, but mainly with the Anki on Metal, Flint, Stone, obviously the Narco Berries, and with the Fjordhawk, we were able to travel back to base quite easily, I would say. We did lose a couple of stacks of Metal in the process, but it wasn't really too big of a deal. And I also made myself a Chem Bench so that we could place that down and get some of the uh, Narcotics crafted up quite quickly because we only had two mortar and pestles and it really wasn't cut out for the job. So I placed my chem bench down and then I headed out to try and tame the Giga. Now it was only a level 90 female Giga and I genuinely thought you could net them. Turns out you can't net Gigas. I, I, I didn't have a clue about that. So after that embarrassing experience, I went back to the standard way of trapping it with some bear traps and then putting the gateways around it. And, uh, well, that, that also didn't pan out how well I uh, wanted it. Luckily, my old base was just up the beachway here, so we didn't really have far to run when the Giga killed us. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, that went well. Luckily, our Fjordhawk was able to gather our body, so we didn't really lose it. But we did lose our Desmodus, unfortunately, because we were flying on it and it got killed. And then for the life of me, this, this Giga just did not want to cooperate whatsoever. It would just not get in the trap. It was so frustrating. But thankfully, I did finally manage to get it trapped and knocked out as well. And then began the process of taming it. And just like that, with a Sanguine Alexa and some Prime Meat, we had tamed ourselves our first uh, Giga. Now, there was only one downside of this. I wasn't high enough level to craft its saddle. So thankfully, a uh, pal on the server did make us a saddle so we could ride around on our newly named Chompet Giga. And then I took it out on a bit of a test run to see just how strong she was. And I was very impressed with the numbers 
that she was hitting for. We did put a few levels into her melee damage, but she was hitting for 600 damage. The next day, I made some very, very poor decisions. I thought I could take on Baylor with Chompette, a level 90 tamed Giga, and, uh, well, Chompette and some bullets was my goal here, and Chompette had already taken a huge amount of damage from the Dire Bears in the cave. Nonetheless, that did not stop us from attempting to take on Baylor with Chompette and our Andrew Sarkis, and as you can see, it, uh... It wasn't looking too well. Trumpet was struggling to get some hits in, and I was just standing there in the corner being absolutely useless. We did manage to do a decent amount of damage to it, but I didn't want to risk losing Chompet, so I, I had to make the decision to soul gun up Chompet. I also threw out my snow out to try and help as well, because I figured, you know what, that might also do some extra damage. Chompet was struggling to hit, obviously, because we're not even riding on Chompet as well. That was another bad decision on my part. And our snow owl was... It was, it was trying to help. I ended up kiting Baylor out of the cave bit. And we did end up resetting her health as well. Now, once I headed back to base, I got breeding some more because I was figured, you know what, we could probably get away with using an Andrew Sarkis army to take on Baylor as well as some of the other world bosses. We did get some purple mutations in our Andrew Sarkises as well. And I also threw out the Desmodus babies that we had from breeding our Desmoduses up from uh, taming them the other day. Uh, safe to say we had quite a menagerie of cute little dudes here in front of us. They were all super adorable. I love their little baby forms. They look so cute. So I had to get those guys bred up and raised. And while that happened, I went to the Rock Drake Trench to f try and find a decent Rock Drake egg. Man, I, I struggled so long trying to find a decent Rock Drake egg. Luckily, we did have the awesome Spyglass mod so we could actually see what level the eggs were before actually needing to like get off and, and check the eggs like that the old-fashioned way. Because obviously, the radiation would have killed us. Now, our Andrew Sarkis here was the goat at going around and checking all the Rock Drake eggs because we were able to outrun the Drakes, which meant we could check out the eggs and, and whatnot. So that made things a little bit easier, but I did find a 175 wild drake and on the way out I did get caught up on a drake And you can imagine what happened next Lechonk mate, it was a pleasure You've served us well. Yeah, he's dead. Damn. I Didn't want Lechonk to die After having no luck with the rock drake eggs I thought I'd try and my luck with some shadow main So I got to work setting up some traps trapping some fish with the cage method where you put the cage over the fish and then you stick the trap next to them. I've got quite a lot of fish tamed up. Yeah, because you, you, you do tame them when they get in the fish basket. Because you can put them out and they've got the little green lights. So I went ahead, tamed up a bunch of saber tooth salmon and started feeding a level 95 female shadow mane. Now the reason I tamed up this level 95 female was because we had found the 150 male. But I wanted a breeding pair. So I needed to female for that, obviously, and this is why we went ahead and tamed up this female in the process. And just like that, she was tamed. Now, I couldn't find the 150 male that we had found earlier, but I did find this 145 male and successfully tamed him up. I genuinely hate trying to tame up Shadow Manes. They are such a pain in the ass, and I'm pretty sure they're still bugged where you have to feed the multiple fish for them to actually count towards their taming bar. Nonetheless, though, this male Shadow Mane was still partially decent. It had decent stats. It wasn't anything mind-blowingly amazing. But I got them back to base and started breeding them. The next day, I had managed to breed up a mutated Shadow Mane with a sick color. So I wanted to take a look at that. And then it was time for the battle against Baylor. Now, I had brought the extra Desmoduses and the extra Andrusarkuses that I had raised up. As well as Chompet once again to try and take out Baylor. Man, ah, uh, just, uh, I, I severely underprepared for this multiple times, and each time, you think I would have learned my lesson. You think I would have learned my lesson. Now, after losing all those initial teams, there was still hope with Chompette and my Andrew Sarkis alive until it died, and until I died. And just like that, we had lost again to Baylor and lost Chompet in the process. Now, I went back to base and built a little area for our Shadow Mains so that they had a little pen in order to breed on. And that pretty much wrapped up that little <laughs> journey. You'd think I would have learned the first time I fought Baylor, but nope, definitely didn't. I also placed down our Industrial Forge. 
The morning of the next day I spent going around gathering a bunch of Deinonychus eggs. I was hoping to find a high level one, but unfortunately didn't really find anything too interesting. There was a couple of level 50s, a couple of level 20s, but nothing incredible. Because, you know, I wanted to be able to breed some Deinonychuses in order to take on the dragon. You know, the Deinonychus are one of the best dinos for the dragon. But I also accidentally, well I didn't accidentally, I killed this 150 Rex that had god tier stats. And while traveling along, thinking I'd be safe jumping into this pond of water, I ended up killing nice. my Andrew Sarkis, which is absolutely bloody wonderful from fall damage. I then spent the rest of the afternoon watching a poor player on my server try and take on Haiti and Skjol, and well, it's uh, it's safe to say they did manage to take out one of them. However, the other one just proved to be too difficult, and they were unable to kill both of them. They still got the loot from the other one, though, which is good. The next night, I went ahead and started breeding up some more Androsarchuses as my stock was getting slightly lower from them, constantly dying. And then I tried my luck at getting some Lightning Wyvern eggs. I wasn't having any luck getting Rock Drake eggs, so I figured, what the hell? Let's try and get a Lightning Wyvern egg. They're right in the vicinity. Should be A-OK, -okay, right? We've got a Snow Owl. We can dive bomb. We can should be able to outfly them all. We should be A-OK, -okay, right? No. I was very wrong. As you can see here, our Snow Owl almost died, literally sitting on like 20 health before the turrets managed to shoot our uh, the Wyvern down, which is great. And then it was just a, it was just a constant stream of death, destruction, and decay. It wasn't it wasn't a good time. It wasn't a good time. We did bring a couple of other people on the server to help us out, but <laughs> this Wyvern's still shooting at me as it's dying, which is always a great sign. So I. Purely just kept trying to kite them back towards the turrets. I didn't actually know how many bullets were in the turrets, to be honest. But there was a 175 Lightning Wyvern here that I was really keen on trying to find an egg for. Was really keen on trying to find that egg. If only it wasn't going to be so damn difficult to do so. My PT's so fucking dead. <laughs> no! I think my turrets... Oh, fuck off. I think, oh man, this is great. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Can something just go right? I just want a fucking egg. <laughs> After losing some flies, I decided to bring my snow oil back out as it had healed and take it straight into the trench. <sighs> Bro, there's no eggs in here. 25, are you kidding me? We got level 180 wyverns in here and shit and there's no freaking eggs. Like, bro, what the hell? That's so dumb. Fuck it hell. I can't believe there's no eggs. The next day, I had stumbled across a female 150 giga, and I got to work and knocking that thing out ASAP. Now, another person on the server, Red Eye, did have a male giga as well. That was a 150. So the plan was to tame up this one and breed the two gigas together and get our line of gigas established from those two gigas. This was a bit of a tedious process getting the Giga knocked out, but nonetheless, you've seen a Giga get knocked out before, you know how it goes. So, we managed to get the Giga knocked out and tamed up as well. Now, once we had seen the Giga's stats, we actually got really lucky. It came out with 36 HP, and the male that we were breeding it with actually had 35 melee damage. So we got the two best stats that you could possibly get on a Giga, and that was the best part about this. So, we got to work and bred the two Gigas up together. After taming up the Giga, we called it Magmet, and we decided to test its battle capacity by taking it up against a level 90 Alpha T-Rex. Now, this one hadn't been imprinted or anything, this was our pure wild one, and uh, I, I figured it would be a decent challenge for it to take on the Alpha Rex. We did a very solid amount of damage considering how much health the Rex had, but in the end, we did manage to defeat the Rex. Although, like I said, it did cost us quite a bit of our health, but it was well worth it for the runestones that we got from the Alpha T-Rex, as well as the XP. Then spend the rest of the afternoon obviously going around killing a bunch of things with our brand new Giga, because who doesn't love to do that? I then spent some time in the Redwoods Cave hitting up some of the loot drops for some decent loot, but this is where the loot really came out to shine. I found an Ascendant Rex saddle in a red drop, and this Rex saddle was awesome. Now, obviously it was Ascendant, but it had a heap of armor with it, and it was relatively cheap considering it was Ascendant, but it didn't end there. I then found a blueprint for an Ascendant long neck rifle as well. 
it was awesome. I was super glad with that cave. The next day was jammed packed with taming as there was an event going on and I wanted to try and get some event colored dinos. But first off, I found this 150 aloe that had a bunch of HP in it and a bunch of melee damage in it. So I got to work knocking that out with my Desmodus, me flying around on it using the weapon on the back of it. Thankfully, the Desmodus has allowed that. And I began the very tedious process of trying to chase a fleeing aloe down so that I could trink it. Eventually, it did get knocked out, and then I found a level 60 alpha T-Rex and figured, you know what, we can take this with Lechonk and our Desmodus. So I got to work taking out this alpha T-Rex, eventually defeating it, but our uh, Andrew Sarkis had taken quite a bit of damage in the process, but it was well worth it for the extra rune stones. I then found an Alpha Kino and showed it who was the boss by killing that as well. I then made my way to the Desmodus cave because I wanted a bunch of fancy colored bats to fly around on because, you know, they're not supposed to be camouflaged or anything like that. So I went ahead trying to tame up a couple of low level ones. There wasn't anything amazing. There was a 145, but I wanted the lower level ones because they had the cool colors. So I tamed myself a mint green level 20 Desmodus, and then we tamed up the other 145 Desmodus as well. I figured I'd take a look at their stats as well because you never know, we might find ones that are better. And this one actually had 36 melee damage, which was great. I then went ahead and tamed up another lime green Desmodus at level 20. So I had to try and consolidate all those together and there was a purple Desmodus here that I also wanted. But it also wanted my booty and decided to eat me. Thankfully I did have some sleeping bags in the area for once. I know it's a goddamn miracle. It only happens literally once every lifetime. So I got back to work trying to tame up the Desmoduses. I was hoping that this one was going to catch me midair. Instead it just broke my flak armor and caused me to die again. I did lose my Desmodus in the process, and with that, I didn't have a sleeping bag in the cave, so I had to get back there on foot with our Andrew Sarkis, but I was thankfully able to die once again to this Desmodus. Lots of dying when it comes to Desmoduses. I just haven't nailed that, and it wow. caught me mid-air to finish off the tame in one of the most stylish tames I think I've ever done, where I've been dropped and then caught mid-air. And then it was a battle to try and get out of there without dying, which obviously that's not going to happen. It's me we're talking about here. I did manage to tame up another Desmodus, and with that, I was very happy with my Desmodus tames. I returned back to the aloe, chucked a bunch of prime meat into it, and then went ahead and tamed that 150 aloe up as well. And it had great melee damage. To finish up the day, I found some Andrew Sarkises that I wanted to tame up that had some sick looking colors on them, and I thought I could introduce them into my lines because I already had really good stats. So I managed to tame up this blue and red one, but I got jumped on by goddamn Terrabo. These bastards came out of nowhere. Now I was worried here that I was going to kill my own Andrew Sarkis if I decided to run around trying to stab the big bird with a bloody stick, but thankfully we were able to kill the Terror Bird with minimal casualties. Now I also tamed up this yellow, purple and red Andrew Sarkis, which I thought looked sick as well. The next day I returned to my favorite place ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not true. The Rock Drake Trench. I really wanted a goddamn decent Rock Drake, right? Like, I don't know why it was so difficult. We had 170s, 180s, but no eggs. It was so gut-wrenchingly annoying. And look at the cool colors on them. Just pure, unadulterated frustration. It was just so annoying. I just could not find a decent rock drake egg. They were high level rock drakes, but no decent eggs. So I gave up on that adventure and went back to the lightning wyverns. Now me being the absolute genius, bright, dumbass that I am, did not think to take the Desmodus the first time around with his cloaking ability. No, I didn't think that far ahead. This time, however, I was two steps ahead of myself and I brought my Desmodus. So I used my Desmodus to scout out the lightning wyvern trench and unfortunately found nothing. I also did the same thing with the Poison Wyvern Trench. Mind you, once again, there were also very high level Wyverns, but no eggs. So severely disappointed at the prospect of trying to obtain an egg for myself. Super annoying, super frustrating, nothing bloody happened. I didn't get any eggs anywhere. It was really annoying. I then returned to the Rock Drake Trench to try and clear out some of the Rock Drakes so we could get high level ones in. And Magnet made an absolute slurry of their insides right on the field in front of us. So that was great. Having Magnet along for the journey definitely made things a lot easier in the process. Because I wanted to clear out the nest to get some more eggs brought in. The next day continued with more taming, except this time it was for Maywings. Now I did bring out the Harpoon Launcher and the Net Gun in order to get some of these guys. 
And uh, you can see here this level 61 with the blight blue wings, blighted wings. That doesn't make sense. With the blue wings, only took two darts before I got knocked out with our uh, with our very strong long neck rifle that we had. And then we tamed up our milk maker, ready to go. I then found a 135 May wing and got that netted as well. Now, this one was a much more difficult one than the last one. For some reason, it just did not want to get trained. Where are you going, mate? <laughs> cool. Two darts gone and none hit. There we go. About bloody time. I don't... Do they take headshots multiplies? I don't remember. <laughs> you actually have to be able to hit the head for that to happen. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's wonderful. It's going to wake up before I can freaking knock it out. It's going to get out of the damn net. All right. And then I found my golden goose, a 150R Thylacolio. And you guys know, I just had to tame myself up one of these Aussie animals. I just needed to. Luckily, the trees were holding it back. It, I was just too much of an intimidating threat for it to actually break through the trees. It was too scared of me. And that's why I just hung back there getting trained out. I had to find some ovus in order to get some mudden to cook up the mudden in order to tame up the thyla. I grabbed myself an ovus, harvested it up, took it back to base to cook up, and then returned to the thyla in order to tame it up. Now, because it was an R thyla, we were going to need to find another R um, thyla male. We couldn't just use a normal thyla. And these guys take forever to tame up and their taming effectiveness drops so much. And I also forgot to use a Sanguine Alexa, by the way, which would have actually saved us quite a bit of taming effectiveness, so that's annoying. But it did tame up nonetheless, and uh, I'm not going to lie, it had pretty disappointing stats. <laughs> I was expecting some great stats on it, and it, it didn't have the greatest of stats. 32 melee damage and 24 health. Not the greatest, but I decided to test it out anyway. And what better thing to test it out on than a goddamn Giga? That's right, I'm just that brave, heroic, charming, daring, beautiful, you might even say. I might be pushing it now. Nonetheless, we did start doing laps around this Giga in order to try and defeat it. Due to the Thyla's unique ability to bleed its victims based on their health, I figured the Thyla's bleed attack would be a worthy competitor to the Giga's damage and health. Thankfully for me though, the Giga was unable to uh, complete the loop-de-loop -loop properly, so we could just kept doing laps around it, and it was actually unable to hit us, which obviously is a great advantage for us when we're trying to kill this monstrous thing that could kill me in a couple of hits. Massively, but like, doesn't matter, it's dying. I could tame it up and use it to breed our females and, and we could imprint on it, but I want a high level one. I'm being greedy here. Our Thyla is looking solid as. Half health. We keep this Nash effect up and we're fine. It can't hit us. <laughs> I love this. This is so good. <laughs> oh man, this is why you don't underestimate dinos with the bleed effect. So I'm, I'm going to try and probably use some Thylas on bosses, I reckon. I just can't remember off the top of my head if bosses take... Ooh, I'm to be a bit careful. I don't remember if they're immune to the bleed effect or not. Where is it going? Is it running away from us? Because it can't hit us. I think so. It's going to attack our base. Alright, this thing's almost dead. It didn't enrage. I, is that still in effect? Like, I haven't seen a Giga enrage in so long. Did they get rid of that? Oh, shit. We're bleeding now. Woo! It's dead. We killed it. We didn't get the kill, though. The next morning began with me taking on an Afrikano and the Afrikano absolutely kicking my ass in the process. The bleed damage that the Kano was doing was absolutely nuking me. I, I thought the, the roles were going to be reversed after the Giga fight, but nope. Uh, it turns out I was getting my butt beat up by this Afrikano, almost losing the Thylacoli in the process. Nonetheless, today I wanted to try and get a Rex army started as they were going to be the main fighters for our bosses. So I had to go out and find some Rexes, but I found a 145 Allo first. And I wanted to get this tamed up as it had super, super high melee damage off the bat. Without even being tamed up, it had an absurd amount. So I needed to get this Allo tamed up and then we'd be sweet for Allos and we could breed an absolute army of them. So first off, I started by deleting its squad and then an acro decided to get involved as well. This is just, this is just lovely. I was also damaging the 145 Allo, but uh, I figured it would eat the body of its comrade once I had defeated it and the acro. So it was just pretty much an all out brawl until I could 
defeat the uh, aloe thing. And then luckily it did actually eat the corpse of its brethren. And then an Argy got involved. I managed to kill the Acro, kill the Argy as well. So finally, I could actually get to work on trying to tame up the aloe. Psych! Haha! <laughs> Joke's on me. There's a freaking Alpha Raptor now. And then a Brachio got involved and, well, it didn't end well. You watch this aloe get nuked. Oh, no! And our Desmodus! Oh, Fudge Knuckles. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to kill our Desmodus. I didn't think I was close enough. So after the Brachio single-handedly destroying my hopes and dreams, I decided to try and take on the Alpha Raptor that had caused me so many issues, with that almost killing me as well. So I climbed the nearest mountainside I could and cried it up. I then found the 150 Rex I had sought and decided to net gun it. Realizing that didn't work, I actually built a trap for it and kited it towards the trap. Now while kiting it towards the trap, I did slowly trank it up so by the time that it would get to the trap, it would hopefully have taken a little bit of torpor damage. Now this trap was only made out of wooden billboards. Obviously I didn't have any metal on me, but I figured by the time it was close to destroying the wooden billboards, I would have knocked it out. So I managed to get the back one on there eventually after taking quite a few hits in the process and thankfully the wreck's actually not even escaping. I then got to work on tranking it out and it actually just stood there not even attacking the billboards. So it went down within the billboards and just like that we had knocked out our first Giga. I then found another 140 aloe and thought I could tame that up. All I had to do was kill its friends, right? Well, I brought out Magmet and she bit off more than, well, she, she, she chewed through a lot more than she could chew. So she accidentally killed both of them and that was a dream quickly <laughs> dismissed. I then found a female Rex and got to work on trying to trank her up. Once again, utilizing the same trap on the male Rex, I built a wooden billboard trap and slowly tried to kite her towards it. Obviously with their large turning radius and their dumb brain AI, they decided not to get involved in the trap, but killed me in the process. And just like that, we managed to get killed by a Rex from glitches and bugs. Wonderful. Nonetheless, I was able to return to her and did complete knocking her out. It was, it was a tedious journey, but just like that, I had managed to knock out two Rexes that would hopefully be the start of my boss army, and hopefully they came out with decent stats. But for that to happen, we obviously had to tame them first, which was going to be another hurdle because we needed some mutton. But I did manage to tame them with the male Rex being first, and he came out with absolutely great stats. 41 HP and 36 melee damage. I was super happy with that. So I tested him out by getting him to attack some Androsarcuses and off base rate, he hit for 232. The female tamed up, she came out okay. Not as great as compared to the Rex, but that was fine. We had a, a way to breed them now. So we just needed the male's stats into a baby. The next day I had a plan to try and take down Baylor. Now, I decided to get my tribe mate involved with this as well, and we got up to quite a bit of shenanigans. But the main goal for this was to tame up some Megatherium so that we could use them to help defeat the Baylor alongside our Giga and the Rexes that we had tamed up. So we got to work knocking out the Megatheriums and taming some up. I had a bunch of honey. He would go around knocking majority of them out for me. And just like that, we would get ourselves a Megatherium army. So this one here was a 145, which we successfully tamed up without any issues. Now I also had to track down an Ovis because we had found another Thylacolio to tame up. So this would well, enable us to actually breed to our, our Thylas, which is perfect. But for that, obviously I needed some cooked no. mutton. So I got the cooked mutton, Those found the Thylacolio, and, and then I fed the Thylacolio and like chaos so? ensued between me and my yeah. tribe mate. You wanna pop it? Do you just put it in the inventory? You, no, no, you put it in, okay, I'll do it. You put it in your inventory and you just use it in yours. Did it? Oh, no, it didn't work. Oh, you already used one? Yeah. Sweet. All right, sweet. Oh, you. I saw you running around with that goddamn net gun. And I knew you were going to. Come back and get the Thyla. Uh, Goes me. Come back and get the Thyla. There you go. Come back here. No, I know what you want. You didn't think I would use the soul gun. Go sleep, come. You thought, gonna, come. you thought I was gonna be a novice and let you back <laughs> in. <laughs> Bye. Come back here, I swear to God, don't make me get the Giga out. I can't fucking do anything. Don't 
for the help. <laughs> oh no, Gallimimus! Oh, it's a Gallimimus, it's fine. Ugh. How did that not hit? I'm invisible. You don't know where I am. Looks like you need a dip in the ocean to cool off. Get him. Get him, sharks. Get him. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> what are you going to do now, goats? You're a bit stuck. I'm very stuck. What? What is going on? Are you just, like, floating there? I got hit out. It... I don't it's, know, it's, it's weird. It's, it's not carrying saying I'm netted. You. It's, it's not saying I'm netted either. It's carrying you, but I didn't I didn't hit you with anything. It's it's like carrying you. Like it picked it picked you. Oh, well, that's what I was gonna do. No! <laughs> Damn it, he didn't die. <laughs> Goes me. Goes me. Did that hit you? No. It did, because I saw the blood him. splatter. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of goddamn nets! Goes me, come here. Goes me. Oh, for fuck's sake, you got the rock, that's bullshit. I can't move, goddammit! Goes me. Goes me, come back here. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm fucking gonna get you. Goes me. Goes me. Goes me. Stop this right now. Goes me. <laughs> no. God damn it! I'm so close. <laughs> now how do I get rid of it? Put it in again. Oi! Oi! You're gonna fucking behave now, boy! After messing around for a bit, I made my way back to the Wyvern Trench and found a 170 Lightning Wyvern Egg. Now, this was such a dumb decision by me, I honestly don't know why. I was gonna teleport, grab the egg as the teleport was about to end, and get out of there with the egg. But obviously, that didn't work because the Wyvern decided to come in and end my life and everything part of it. So, that went swimmingly. Now, by the end of this, we then made our way back into Baylor's cave, ready to fight her with our Rex and Megatherium army. And this time, I was riding on Magmet, ready to absolutely decimate Baylor. And slowly but surely, after losing a couple of Megatheriums in the process, Baylor finally fell to our combined might. It only took me three attempts to kill one of the easiest bosses, one of the easiest world bosses anyway, on Fiorda. Next up was Haiti and Skill, as well as Steinbjorn. Now, the next few days were spent breeding up quite a large variety of dinos. We had managed to get a good line of Gigas going with Red Eyes Giga that we used earlier. We had managed to finally hatch the eggs and raise up some imprinted Gigas, as well as some Techstogos, more Androsarcuses, and Desmoduses. So I wanted to get some more Gigas raising and I actually did manage to get a nearly damage mutation on one of the baby Gigas, which was absolutely awesome. That's exactly the mutation you want to get on a Giga. So we did get those guys out and started raising them up as best as we could, hopefully not allowing them to die as well in the process. And the tech Stegos were going to be for some PvP action if we did eventually get around to it. But I also went ahead and built a greenhouse down in my village. So the village had quite a lot of areas around it and I decided to use the bottom area as a greenhouse. So you can see the main base was just up there and the greenhouse was down here. I did need some vegetables and stuff like that as I wanted to get some beehives going and just to have veggies to make kibble. It would make our life easier. I also went ahead and tamed up a bunch of dung beetles for the greenhouse. Obviously, they're going to produce fertilizer for us. But for that to happen, I needed poo. So I had to throw everything out as I didn't have enough poo and hopefully get some from them. But I tamed up my first one, my second one, and my third dung beetle. And then the fourth one because it had super cool coloring and it was a really high level. 
Got those guys in the greenhouse producing fertilizer and we were set for the greenhouse. The next day, it was finally time to take on our next world boss, Haiti and Skill. Now, I had a bunch of Yigas and actually, no, we only had Magmet and a bunch of Rexes, a bunch of our rock boss Rexes that we were going to use for the battle. But I was smart about how we would go about doing this. I did get the Rexes and Magmet targeting, I believe it's Haiti that does the flame attack. Um, and with Haiti getting majority of the damage dealt to first, we we're able to defeat, no, sorry, my apologies, Skjol is the one that does the fire damage, Haiti is the one that does the moonlight damage. Skjol is the bigger threat, because obviously that does percentage health damage, but I was able to defeat Skjol first, and then I successfully managed to defeat Haiti as well. So I was super happy about that, we got some decent loot here from both of them. The main thing that we wanted was obviously their relics, as this would be the best thing. But we also got a Journeyman Rex saddle the first time around. And this had 70 armor and was much cheaper to make than our Ascendant Rex saddle blueprint that we had gotten earlier. So I was super happy about getting that Rex saddle from one of the Fenra twins. Now, I then built an industrial cooker in the house next to the greenhouse so that we could have somewhere to build, well, not build, but cook all of our kibble. I then went ahead and decided to take on Vela one more time. This time, however, I had brought some more Gigas with me. I made boosted pair, so we were able to absolutely nuke the crap out of Vela real quick. At this stage, I was just kind of farming for some loot here and there. Uh, I wasn't strong enough to take on Steinbjorn just yet. Didn't have enough Gigas for that. But Vela, she was definitely a worthy contender for second place. So I killed Vela, searched her body for loot. We didn't really find anything too amazing, unfortunately wasn't anything really good like we found an ascendant spino saddle blueprint but i'm not really gonna use that am i now the next few days were spent getting ready for the boss fights i wanted a bunch of metal for some wreck saddles so i started raising up all of these tech parasaurs for slaughter and then i went ahead and did haiti and skiol again this time with the extra giga and our rexes we made very quick work of them at this stage they were super easy to do and i was pretty much just doing them for their rune stones and to get loot really that was pretty much it i just didn't really have much else to do other than breeding and taking on the world bosses for extra stuff and it helped that i had a heap of rune stones anyway alongside of it i did make sure to keep 30 though because i was going to try and take on steinbjorn at some point the next day i finally decided to get my lazy butt into gear and actually breed those desmodices and andrusarcuses that i had tamed up all that time ago and get those guys incorporated into my lines. So I threw out the Andrew Sarkises, I threw out the Desmoduses and started trying to pair them up with which colors I would like into the line, as well as with the Andrew Sarkises, because, you know, obviously I wanted the colors to be on our high stat ones instead of our low stat ones. So I got them all breeding up, set up some soul terminals alongside of them in one of the cabins located in our village. I also added some chests and storage and fridges and preserving bins to the kitchen area next to the greenhouse so that we had a storage area for all the food that we were going to be cooking. Now I also built a little bit of an outside area for um, people coming by the village. A little bit of RP so that we had a bartender there serving us some drinks as well. Now there was a bit of time in between the last day and this day in terms of real life. I think it was I was gone for about a week due to uh, some issues. But thankfully someone did leave me a heavily mutated Desmodus and I decided to call it Bubblegum. As well as that I went out and decided to tame up some Deinotheriums as these guys are great creatures to bring with you to boss fights. They're able to buff all your dudes with in terms of health and defense. But first off, I had to eliminate the weaklings. There was a 150 up here that I wanted to tame, but obviously I had to dispose of the 130 and the other lower level. Once they were disposed of, I then got to work at trying to tame this up alongside someone else on the server, who thankfully I was very grateful for because they constantly saved me from getting stampeded on by the Danotherium. But slowly but surely, as I was figuring out the Danotherium's taming mechanics, as these guys had just come out, I was able to tame up my very own 150 male Danotherium without really any issues in the process to be honest. It was, a, it was a pretty easy tame once I figured out the animations. Now obviously there were quite a few times where I failed with the animations and it stampeded after me, but thankfully I did have some help. 
And just like that, the Deinotherium was tamed up, and then I tamed up the female as well. So we had a breeding pair with very solid stats as well. They were also glitched at this moment where the moment that I would get on them, the game would crash. So I wanted to test them out for a little bit and I sent them on a stampede across some Androsarchuses just to see how much damage they would do. And I was very impressed and very happy to see these guys dealing damage and just being absolute monsters that they are. New day, new world boss fight again. Once again, Hades and Skull going down to our Gigas and Rexes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Wasn't really too much noticeable loot, to be honest. Bunch of blueprints, the relics, nothing too crazy, and the element that we got as well. Finally, I had found myself a goddamn rock drake egg, though. A 180 thing of beauty. It had only taken me a shit ton amount of time to do so. I died because the rock drake followed me outside of the cave, but thankfully our field hawk did bring the egg alongside with me, and we were able to start incubating it. I got all of the tech parasaurs that we had, threw them out because I needed more metal, and I also brought out some more of the gigas because I was going to do some more breeding for some more mutations. Hopefully getting more mutations in the process. I also went ahead and found myself a high level shadow main to tame up because the female that we had tamed up was low level. So I figured a high level female with hopefully better stats would be the best thing going forward. Sorry, it was a male, not a female. So hopefully this guy would come out with better stats and we did get it in a trap and fed it the fish baskets just like this. It was quite a tedious process, but I did manage to eventually get some more fish. <laughs> Psych, I got you there. And then I also had some sanguine Alexas alongside of it to use. Uh, but these things were bugged. I just could not get them to work for some reason when the Shadow Mane was sleeping. You could see there it grayed out and then came back into full color. I just, for some reason, could not get these to work. So I kept button spamming it until it did decide to work because this was literally the final thing that I needed to tame up the Shadow Mane. I really didn't want to go catching any more fish. They're a pain in the ass to catch. So I had no idea why the Sanguine Alexa wasn't working. I tried to get a little bit closer to it, but I obviously didn't want to wake it up as well. You can see here it was completely grayed out. Nonetheless, I put it in my hotbar, spammed it, and we did manage to tame ourselves up a Shadow Main. And it was a thing of beauty. 36 melee damage. Let's go, fellas. Let's do it. So I was pretty happy about that. We took it for a bit of a test run here, killing some packy rhinos. Nothing too crazy that we couldn't handle. And then I brought it back to base in order to breed it up with the females that we had at base. It hit... Pretty damn hard if I say so for myself. I also found this Alpha Raptor that I thought we could test it out on. Obviously the health and the melee damage and the natural armor of the Shadow Mains make them great tames for, well, anything really. Even boss fights, they're great for boss fights as well. But I had already dedicated quite a bit of time to my Rex army, so I didn't think I was really going to use these guys for boss fights, mainly just as a travel mount, I would say, to get around for. Because yeah, I don't think there was really too much of a point in starting a shadow main line for the bosses at this stage that didn't stop me from breeding them though and hopefully bringing some with us alongside to the boss fight we could always use the rexes as uh tanks and use the shadow mains as damage dealers as well finally got our rock drake hatched and it was this little cutie right here look at how adorable it is so damn cute cryo it up and i went to work at harvesting up all of the tech parasols also causing my computer to crash because when the tech parasols get harvested or killed sometimes, their bodies glitch out and it can be a very fun experience for all those involved. Bunch of scrap metal though and got that cooking in the industrial forge. A new day, another Haiti and Skiol boss fight. It's great having them as neighbors. I can farm up a bunch of loot. Also ventured out into the ocean for some Alpha Lead Scythicuses, needed more rune stones, managed to kill two of those and then I wanted to get some Ammonite Bile so that I could try and tame up a helicopterin. Now I brought the shadow mains with me obviously because they would help a lot down here in the ocean depths and uh, we got swarmed by a bunch of eels and freaking jellyfish. Wonderful. So we got paralyzed. We did manage to kill the Nidarias and slowly escape our watery prison. However, one of our shadow mains was not so lucky and it ended up dying to an Electrophorus. And uh, yeah, that was the chaos that we managed to get out of. Not going back in there for the other shadow main, that's for sure. I then found an Alpha 2, so Toothless. Whoo! Let's go, boys! And uh, begin to try and chomp on it with our Andrew Sarkis. It just wasn't attacking us for some reason. Don't know why. It wasn't complaining. Uh, but a couple of the other guys on this server as well came along to help because I did need the Alpha 2, so I. 
So we got to work try, slowly killing it. And then I brought Mag Med out to deal some serious damage. Now, obviously Giggers aren't designed for the ocean as you can no doubt imagine, but that did not stop me from bringing Magmed out for a little bit of ocean play here and uh, also just killing her in the process. Almost killing her being the, being the key word here, but there was an Alpha Megalodon that I wanted to kill and mainly just to test sort of the uh, aquatic capacity of Magmed and whether or not she was up to the task of defeating the Alpha Tuso. So we got to work and found the Alpha Tuso again and I swam down with Magmed. She was on a mission and we were absolutely ready to chomp the Alpha Tuso to bits. We were dealing 2,000 damage a bite and the Alpha Tuso was just getting melted like butter. Ooh, yeah, love me some juicy Alpha Tuso bits. Managed to kill the Alpha Tuso and then I came back up to the surface with Magmet surviving in the process. Now, I had found myself a 150 Helicopterin as well and I was ready to go. I had made the little ratfish treats up, which is what we needed the ammonite bile for, and I decided to feed it to uh, the helicopterin to see how it went. Now, unbeknownst to me, when you feed the helicopterin every time, it actually spawns in a swarm of megalodons. Now, I had no idea of this at the time. You also get the rage buff, so anything in the vicinity will aggro on you, including all of those spawned in megalodons that the helicopterin seems to spawn in. Nonetheless, I did manage to get the first feed onto the helicopterin, and then I continued by feeding it some more, with more megalodons coming in in the process. Now, this is where we brought out Magmet for some help. I just realized our Giga is drowning. Holy smokes. I don't know if you guys saw that. He was on 1k. After feeding the helicopter in a few more times, I found myself stuck in between some jellyfish and some sharks, which isn't a very nice combination if you're in Ark at the moment. And uh, as you can see, I was pretty much stunlocked here. Our Andrew Sarkis was getting absolutely shredded by these Nidarias. I was trying to attack with every chance that I could get, but obviously with like 10 Nidarias stunning me, it was very hard. But I slowly managed to kill them and we did get some hits in managing to damage the Nidarias and eventually I did break our Andrew Sarkis free and we managed to get back onto the ice just in time. However, not before some issues arose from that as well because I for some reason could not get onto the goddamn ice with all these sharks around us and thankfully I still managed to get onto the ice and let our Andrew Sarkis heal. So I had to go it alone now to finish taming up the helicopter and it needed one more treat. But of course, you know what has to happen. We feed it, it spawns in all the megalodons and then we run for our life. I threw out bubble gum to try and use bubble gum to save me from the water. However, that didn't work out in my favor. With bubble gum being so close to the water, we got kicked off straight away and we got aggroed on by the sharks once again. I did manage to cryo bubble gum up before dying in the process. Finally, the last time to feed it. I managed to feed it its final ratfish treat, but I did die in the process. And I tried making it back there, and the helicopter and died. The next few days were spent with lots and lots of breeding. We had about six soul terminals that are absolutely filled to the brim with dinos. So it's just a matter of getting all of those guys raised up and breeding the selected stats that we wanted. However, I did want to breed up some Shadow Mane, so I got them breeding as well to try and get their stats consolidated, because I was planning on using some Shadow Mains for the boss fight. And I also threw out our Rexes to get them breeding as I had consolidated our boss stats. Now, I did also want to raise the Danotheriums as well. We had bred some Danotheriums with Reds, Danotheriums, uh, and that had resulted in some very high level Danotheriums. And I also teamed up a lower level helicopter to actually take a look at what it did. Now, I believe this one was only a level 20 tame, uh, and it took like two ratfish treats and it was done. And I wanted to see what it could do. So it was a pretty impressive tame. It had quite a few attacks. It wasn't really that strong, but the jump out of the water was really what sold me on it, to be honest. <laughs> Not even the fact that it grinds up items into uh, blueprints. The fact that it could jump out of the water is what absolutely sold it for me. So we decided to test out its grinding feature by chucking in a uh, Fiomia saddle to see if it would manage to convert it into a saddle blueprint. Uh, and it's such a cool animation where it grinds it up with its jaw. Now this was an actual prehistoric shark as well, by the way, just in case you weren't aware. That jaw that they had is pretty damn accurate. So yeah, uh, unfortunately the Fiomia saddle didn't make it, but we figured out what to do. So the rest of the days was spent breeding up Gigas 
breeding up the Danotheriums, breeding up Shadow Mains, Rexes. We were slowly assembling our army and imprinting on it as well. And then it was finally time to face Steinbjorn. Now, Steinbjorn was the only world boss that I hadn't defeated, and the reason for that was because I just kind of wanted to use Gigas on him, to be honest. Uh, Gigas would be the best way to defeat him. They bypass his natural rock armor that he's got. So I brought along three Gigas in hopes that we could defeat Steinbjorn, as well as a Danotherium to actually buff our Gigas as well. Uh, and the Danotherium was just chilling at the back there. However, it did want to try and get involved in the fight, and I really didn't want it to get involved in the fight. But uh, we were pretty much shredding Steinbjorn. With our buff from our Dano Theorem, we were managing to do an extra like 300 damage across the board on each Giga, which was great. However, our Dano Theorem was in the middle of the little freaking fight trying to do its best to help out. And with that, Steinbjorn was defeated. We had finally defeated our final world boss and received its relic. And we also got a glider suit in the process. Uh, so I was pretty happy about that and a little bit of element, gacha saddle, and I believe a magma saw saddle. He has a lot. That is a lot of Danotheriums. They, our ones are still raising up and it's been like a very long time. They, they're definitely on par with Gigas. Holy smack it. The next day I handpicked a stat that I wanted from some Danotheriums and this Danotherium had a crap ton of health and I wanted to get it into my lines. So we bred it up with Red's Danotherium and we had our own lines. And then it was time to start gathering the artifacts. So we headed out into the cave gathering the artifact of the immune and the artifact of the pack as well as the artifact of the clever and that was three of our artifacts down. I then went ahead and took a little bit of a tour of uh, Red Eye's base as we had seen it progress over the time and it looked absolutely awesome at this stage. They had really done it up a lot better. Uh, well, not a lot better, but a lot more nicer with more features and stuff and it looked awesome. So we took our time just scoping out their base, taking a look at Some it, acros and, and just enjoying the scenery like around that. it. Look at those. Those guys look dope. And then the Shadow Mane's up here. It looks cool. I like how it's uh, half on the ground, half on foundations. That's, that's dope. What is that thing in the middle? Now on my quest for the artifacts, we stumbled across a great loot crate. Holy sm- Oh my god, are you kidding me? What the shit? Bro, get down. I need to get this before we fucking die. I really wish there was a separate button for landing and latching. Stop latching to the fucking roof. Bro, this is... Oh, hallelujah. Alright, that is an Ascendant Giga Saddle. Not a blueprint. Holy sh... 123 armor. Give me that. After claiming the Giga Saddle, I then went ahead and claimed the artifact of the Skylord and made my way back to base to continue up with some breeding. We got twin Danotheriums with the health mutation, not the health mutation, the health stat that we wanted, so I was cheering about that. Now, the next few days, well, I mean, the rest of the time was pretty much spent farming up the tribute items that we needed. We also tamed up some aquatic creatures as I needed them to get into the cave. Uh, that was underwater with the last artifact that we needed. However, I seem to have lost that footage, so I do apologize for that. But we also tamed up some Megalodons as well to farm up some of the tribute items that we needed. And it was pretty much chilling until day 100, essentially. So yeah, just breeding, lots of breeding, lots of raising, and murdering of lots of little babies. Now, finally, the time had come to fight the Alpha Bosses. First up was the Alpha Broodmother. Now, we also brought along all the other people on the server to do this. We had gathered the artifacts and everything, and we were ready to absolutely decimate the Broodmother. Now, you can see here, it got absolutely nuked with our Danosuchuses and the Rexes that we had brought to the fight. And it was a straight-up bloodbath for the poor Broodmother. She really did not last all that long with our Udis buffing our Rexes and our Dano Sukuses. I had taken some time off because I did get quite sick, so the community was able to progress with their tames and hence why we went ahead and defeated the bosses as well. So that was the Alpha Broodmother taken down. All we needed to defeat now was the Megapithecus and the Dragon. So we teleported into the Megapithecus arena once again with some Rexes, a Shadow Mains, and some Dano Sukuses ready to absolutely shred the Megapithecus. And if you thought the Broodmother went down quickly, well then you'd be in for one hell of a shock because the Megapithecus goes down even quicker.
Hey. Next up was the dragon. Now, the dragon, everyone knows how to defeat it nowadays. Deinonychuses are the way to go. So everyone hopped on a Deinonychus and we got to work at absolutely shredding up the dragon with our bleed damage. Honestly, this was obviously the hardest boss. We didn't have any wyvern milk popped at the moment, but uh, we ran in there straight away and we were like, you know what, we can do this with our Deinonychuses and we should be okay. So away we went doing the bleed damage to the dragon. While it was aggroed on a Rex, we were able to get in there pretty easily and just absolutely nuke the alpha dragon. Once you realize how to do it with the Deinonychus, it's really not too much of a threat. Like you could easily do this solo and I have done this solo as well. So it was pretty quick work for the alpha dragon going down pretty quickly. Look, you can see the tick damage there doing six and a half thousand damage each tick. Absolutely crazy. So alpha dragon was going down pretty damn quickly. Next up was alpha Fenra. It was then time to face Fenra. Now, I brought my Danotheriums alongside the Udis and the Rexes so that we could buff everything up altogether. As obviously, Fenra is probably the most dangerous of the bunch of them as he does have the ability to freeze you off your mount, and that can result in you dying, which results in all of your dinosaurs dying in the process. But other than that, we didn't really have too many issues. We kind of just hung back, let the Rex do their AI thing, and we just hung back buffing them with the Dano Theorems. I really didn't want to risk going in there and uh, getting myself killed in the process, because obviously that would be a terrible way to go out. And I also brought some Shadow Mains along as well. And slowly but surely, we whittled down Alpha Fenra until he was at about half health, and... Things just went pretty smoothly from there on out, which honestly is a godsend because normally whenever I do boss fights, everything just goes to absolute crap. So this was a very nice welcome change to see that we could actually finally do something. Now I did decide to get here into the mix of things as well, bring my Dano Theorem in to do a little bit of battling. I know I said I shouldn't, but hey, I figured why not? Alpha Fenra was going down slowly. I shouldn't die in the time it takes to kill him. And we can get into a little bit of combat with the Dano Theorems. These guys just genuinely blow me away at their size. Like, look at us towering over all the Rexes and even Fenrir himself. I absolutely love the Dano Theorems. It's a shame they're not part of the official arc. But just like that, Fenrir went down and we got ourselves a Cryopodded Fenrir and the Tech Sword and Grant. And just like that, guys, I had survived 100 days with my community on Fiorda. So, Welcome hope to Arc Hybrids, a mod that creates spliced up dinos made from two, three, or sometimes even four different dinos. I'll have 100 days to defeat this mod while completing four goals in the process. Now, these goals include beating all the Alpha Fjorda bosses, create a hybrid of each class, beat all hybrid bosses, and use hybrids to defeat the bosses. Will I be able to achieve this in 100 days? Let's find out. But if you find yourselves enjoying this video as well, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. And so it began. Day one, waking up beachside on an unknown land, giving our arm a bit of a scratch. It was a little bit itchy with the implant in there. And then we got to work gathering our resources. Gathered some bunch of stone as well as harvesting up the tree here for some thatch and wood. You guys generally know how this goes. Made ourselves a pickaxe, got some more thatch and wood as well as flint so that I could make myself a hatchet. And then I went ahead and found this corpse of a Zippocanthus. Harvested that up for our basic meats, made myself a hatchet, and then went to work at getting some steel tools. That's right, already getting metal tools. So I managed to get myself a pickaxe, a hatchet, as well as a crossbow and a pike. Super happy about that. I then took a look at the DNA that I was going to need to make the hybrids and I went ahead and farmed up some honey. Now, my first tame was going to be an Andrew Sarkis when I spotted these guys in the oh, highlands. Oh my god, there's two gigas. Okay, there's probably no Andrew Sarkis's out here because they're getting munched on by some gigas. Nonetheless, I managed to find an Andrew Sarkis. No idea what level it was. It didn't have a spyglass on me, but I threw it some honey, approached it and went ahead to try and tame this big beefy boy. I figured we could get this guy and it'd be a great starter tame. Unfortunately, I decided to get attacked by a snow owl in the process. After that horrible failure, I found another Andrew Sarkis. However, this one had a Giga in the background, and obviously I was super worried that it was going to run straight for the Giga. <sighs> and I hate to tell you that I was correct, <laughs> but the Giga killed me in the process. Thankfully, I did find another one at level 50 Andrew Sarkis. I tamed that up and went ahead and gave him a name, and we decided to call him... Wait for it. Oinka. 
I figured that was fitting. I then went ahead, got myself a rune stone so I could get some extra levels to learn the hybrid stuff. And this is the hybrid stuff here. So this is like the trophy items that you get from the dinos. You actually extract the DNA from this and then the dinos that utilize that DNA, you need that. So I went ahead and learned a bunch of the DNA. Well, I learned all of it because it only cost one. So yeah, you pretty much convert the trophy items into uh, like synthetic stuff, purified versions, and then break that down. And then that's how you get the DNA for the relevant dino. I then also learned the cloning machine and the DNA refiner as these were going to be, well, we needed these to make the hybrids. I also learned the small synthetic eggs, the synthetic eggs and the large synthetic egg. I then went ahead, grabbed a bunch of resources as well when I was ambushed. Well, Oinka is dead and we are also dead. These Rexes are very, very fast. <laughs> That's a 150. After that tussle, I set up in a nearby cave, setting up refining forges and mortar and pestles. I also found a 150 Pteranodon. I only had one Trank Arrow, so I had to use that Trank Arrow and then switch to a club to attempt to knock it out, and luck was not on my side as it flew away. I then found this weird purple glowing raptor. I had no idea what it was, but I thought I'd try and bowler it, and, uh, well, the bowler didn't work. Whoa, Rogue Terror Raptor. Okay. At least we know it's a hybrid. After dying to the rogue hybrid, I tamed up another Andrusarchus, made my way to the swamp, got a bunch of organic polymer, and I made myself the cloning chamber so that I could now make some hybrids. This was going to use a lot of polymer. I also got lucky and found myself a Gallimimus egg, which is actually super helpful because it allowed me to get my first hybrid, the Bella Colostal. I don't know if I said that right, but it was a Gallimimus hybrid, and I was actually pretty impressed with how this guy looked. So I decided to take it for a bit of a test run, and it was actually super fast, just like a Gallimimus, who'd have thunk it? As well as that, it had the ability to jump, it did have a basic attack as well, and that was pretty much it. The basic attack did hit decently for like a level 1, now all hybrids do spawn in at level 1, um, and like each tier has different stat types. So obviously the S tier hybrids are the highest tier of hybrid that you can craft in the uh, cloning chamber and then your type 4s which is what this Gallimimus hybrid was was the weakest one of the lot. And I successfully managed to kill this raptor so I was pretty impressed. I then spent the morning uh, farming a bunch of organic polymer and leech blood and then I got ambushed. Again. And it's all thanks to this fucking RG. Wonderful! Alright, well... Bro, I can't even move. <laughs> After that embarrassing performance, I then decided to take my first hybrid out and try and take down the Rex. And, uh, on, well, we actually survived that against me. it and actually killed it. I was pretty impressed. I then had the great idea to take it into the Aberration Cave full of Ravages, where their attack slowed me down. I didn't have any stamina. I was trying to hop out of there. Their bloodlust attack did slow me down, but I was able to run out, and then, well, you know what happens when you're into a cave in Ark? You lag the crap out. Unluckily enough, the dinosaurs themselves don't actually lag out, so all the wild ravagers were still able to ravage my poor hybrid and myself while I got out of the cave. Saying goodbye to my first hybrid. It was a very short-lived hybrid, and I feel terrible about it. So I went to work on taming up a Parasaur, as well as some other tames, just to get um, our groundings, and I needed berries, as well as, as a Dodo, as I was going to need a Dodo Egg for one of the hybrids that I wanted to make. I then also successfully tamed up two Raptors, as well as a Pteranodon, and then I made myself the Dodo Infernum, the Dodo Hybrid, as well as the 3D Printer. Boom, baby. What do you got for me? Wow. Oh, I was like, ah, uh, there's supposed to be something here, right? I then took it for a bit of a test drive, seeing what it could do. Now, it had the ability to glide like the Terror Birds. It was a Dodo hybrid, so it did kind of make sense. And it hit decently, not as strong as our first hybrid, but our first hybrid was dead. So it was something. I then also went ahead and made an Arthro fly. These guys were super easy to make. And this guy was actually pretty cool. So this guy, you could wield him as a backpack. He was like kind of like a shoulder mount slash backpack. And you could actually fly around on him as well. Now, he didn't really provide anything while you're on your back. But you could throw him off and then jump on him and fly with him like this. Now, he also had a spitting attack, which was actually pretty damn strong. So I was able to take out quite a few 
creatures with the spit attack of the Arthro fly. Only downside, obviously, is that it uh, did sap quite a bit of stamina. I then also made myself a Plocty, which was a Trilobite cross Coelacanth hybrid. <laughs> And these guys were about as useful as you'd imagine. They didn't really have anything going for him. He was decently good on uh, land, and then in the water he did get a little bit faster, but they didn't really have any other abilities aside from that, unfortunately. The next day began, and I had the perfect combo. The Dono Infernum and the Arthro Fly on my back. The Dono Infernum was starting to deal a little bit more damage and was even able to take out this Parasaur. I also found a 150 Deinonychus Egg, and then I got to work at harvesting up some Keratin, raw meat, as well as some raw fish meat. I was going to need this for some hybrids as well, so I needed to make sure I got as much of it as I possibly could. Now, I also tamed up a Tech Parasaur here, as you can see, and I also went ahead and knocked out two Raptors for taming as well, as I was going to need their egg for the next hybrid that I was going to make. That hybrid was the Terror Raptor. Now, this guy was a mixture of the Terror Bird and obviously a Raptor, and this was also the hybrid that killed us near the beginning of the video. This guy was terrifying. However, me being the idiot that I was, decided to get into this group of Raptors and attack, not realizing there was an Alpha in here as well. And well, you can obviously guess how well that went because we then got knocked into a Rex and had both of these guys chasing after me. Plus, this is bad. We're going to lose our brand new thingy. Yo, that thing is speeding. All right, we need to try and lose this alpha. Hopefully, you can get it down to you. Ugh. Aggro on the trikes, aggro on... Oh, fuck. Are we going to lose this? Bro, go away! <laughs> Alright! Well... <laughs> Far out. And that was a personal record for the fastest lost hybrid so far. That was... That was super fast. I then spent the rest of the day looking for a suitable base spot on the back of my Arthro fly, and I found Gold Mountain, and I figured, you know what? This was a pretty nice flat looking area. I reckon we could build a pretty decent sized base up here. I then went ahead and tamed up the newest hybrid that I had, an Equus Cross Hyena Dog. Now, this had the knocking out power of an Equus, but the face and tail of a Hyena Dog, as well as the feet, I think. I don't know, it was a weird hybrid. Now, this guy was pretty cool. I don't think I really used him all that much, however, because I didn't think he was that useful. Now, throughout the night, I incubated my 185 Deinonychus said that I had picked up, and I got freaking twins from it. I was super happy about getting twins from the egg. The next day, I wanted to tame an Argy so that I could move to the new base spot, as this guy was going to obviously allow me to ferry everything heavy, because, well, I didn't really have a tame that would carry everything that we had. So I found this high level one floating in the sky, trying my best to get it. Obviously, I wasn't really, I didn't build a trap or anything for it. I was super underprepared. Kind of just went out here with my crossbow and my Deinonychus and hoped for the best here. But uh, I did manage to hit it quite enough to make it fly away from Torpor. So I jumped on my Deinonychus and it was slightly bugged. Okay. Our Deinonychus just took off into the stratosphere. Wonderful. I then tracked down the same Argy after my death, and after a few arrows, it finally got knocked out. Perfect. I now had access to an Argy. Also, I thought, it ended up dying, and I had to go ahead and knock out another Argy. Now, this one was only level 20, but it would do the trick. Just kidding, it's dead again. Once again, murdered right under my nose. How freaking annoying. By Hyena Dons, nonetheless. So, I got to work at trying to trank out another RG once again. This time, I babysit this bastard until it was fully tamed up because I was not letting anything get it. Managed to tame it up, and then I found a Rex, and I decided to go ahead and kill it. I probably shouldn't have in hindsight because it was a 145. However, I did want the T-Rex arms that it was going to drop, which is the main reason why I killed it. After that, it was time to load everyone up with all the materials and items that we were going to need for the new base. So, Argy got the main bulk of it, and then we made our little convoy and went on our way. I started setting up the new base with all the basic structures I was going to need, the fabricator and smithy, and then I went ahead and threw out a new hybrid, the Critopeltosaurus. Now, this guy was an aquatic hybrid, so our first aquatic hybrid, and I took him out for a bit of a spin. Didn't have a saddle for him, so I kind of just whistled him, and he was pretty powerful. I actually just really liked the way he looked. He was a Nicti cross Dunkey hybrid, 
and I just thought he looked dope. So he also did a butt ton of damage in the ocean as well. He was our hardest hitting hybrid that we had so far. Next day, I needed to tame a metal gatherer. So I found this tech Anki and successfully knocked it out. I also wanted to start working on the main base, but our Anki teamed up. So I did a metal run with it and then I continued working on the base. Now the base was gonna be massive. And you can see here the foundations for majority of it were laid out. I did this all by hand and I regret my decision massively. It took me a couple of days to get all this done because I just didn't tame up a Dodicarus. And I successfully managed to lay out the base foundations as well as where the main actual base will be. Everything else will kind of be like a holding pen. I then made another hybrid, the Haplo Scarab. And this guy, honestly, my absolute favorite hybrid ever. A Dung Beetle cross a Fiomia. Now, I also had an Ascendant Saddle that I had found in the Aberration Zone earlier with the Gallimimus hybrid. So I chucked this on this guy and he literally spits out shit. That is one of his special abilities. He will shit out shit. It is great to watch. And then I found a group of Terror Birds out the front of the base and we got to work on trying to defeat these guys. Now, obviously he didn't hit really hard, but he did have some extra perks. And one of those was that he produced a special type of feces that acted like fertilizer. So he didn't actually need to process any feces or anything like that. He just produced nutrient rich feces, which acted exactly the same as fertilizer, which was freaking great. He was then also named Beetlejuice. He was very fitting and deserving of his name. And we also named our Deinonychus Talon. The next morning, I spent some time knocking out and taming up some extra creatures as I was gonna need some of their eggs for the hybrids. So I tamed up a pair of Carbonemuses as well as a Dillo so that I could get their eggs and make the new hybrids. I also went ahead and farmed up some drops that were located in the cave across the way from me and they had some really decent saddles in here as well as a super freaking good pickaxe. I was super happy about that. I then went ahead, tamed up a Dodicarus as well at 140 because I was gonna need a heap of stone to finish off the base and I wasn't gonna be gathering it all by hand. Thankfully, this Dodicarus did go down uh, pretty easily. We did drop it around in the confines of our base area and it finally went out and went to sleep. I then went ahead and tamed up two new hybrids, an Akatina Mimus which was an Akatina cross Carbonemus. This is what I needed the Carbonemus eggs for. It was awesome. A snail cross turtle. I love this guy. Now these guys would passively produce cementing paste for me, which is awesome. That's the main reason why I decided to get these guys because the cementing paste was gonna be awesome for everything that we needed. Now I also tamed slash created a peep, which was a Kairuku cross Ovis hybrid. Now these guys would passively produce polymer organic polymer sorry uh over time and they were actually they didn't really produce all that much polymer if i remember correctly they didn't really produce much of anything really so you could potentially farm them and kill them for organic polymer and meat off their corpses but i didn't really kill them i then spent the morning of the next day farming up a bunch of resources with my anki a bunch of crystal metal obsidian anything i could get my anki's tail on and then I made my way back to base and got swarmed by a bunch of Danotheriums and a freaking Microraptor managed to knock me off. Thankfully, they kind of all just beelined for my Danonychus and completely forgot about me. However, I was still worried that my Danonychus wasn't going to make it in the process. So I grabbed my soul gun out and I literally whistled follow and passive and I was just trying to spray the bullets with this gun so that I could hopefully get it in its soul ball and save it. And thankfully I did. I then just had to outrun the Dano Theorems, which I did. I then found this Diplo egg, which I grabbed because you never know when you're gonna need a Diplo egg, especially for these hybrids. And I also killed the Therry for its claws for the trophy items, as well as some Alpha Raptors. Now there was an Alpha T-Rex here as well and it was already pretty much aggroed on the Dano Theorems. Because I had the Danonychus, I was gonna do a butt ton of damage with the bleed effect. So I just simply stood there and attacked the Alpha T-Rex until it got whittled down enough. Thankfully it was attacking the Dano Theorems, so it wasn't gonna aggro on me. I finally killed the Alpha T-Rex with literally taking no damage and I really didn't get anything. Nonetheless, I went back to base and finished building the main center of the base. Now, this was going to house all my equipment, all of my structures. You can see here all the refining forges, 
all the tech generator. So that was actually a tech generator from Eco's Mods. Shout out to Eco's Mods for making such mind-blowingly amazing mods. Had the cooking area on this side with a couple of fridges and all my resources inside of there that needed to be stored in a fridge. And I also, through there, had the hybrid creating chamber which had access to two cloning chambers i had a water pipe here some storage boxes on this side as well as some salt terminals just here i was eventually going to make another section to the base going out through that doorway there however i wasn't sure what i was going to do but my fabricator was located just there as well and next to the fabricator was my two smithies so i was pretty happy with how the base was looking and i really enjoyed it now, like I said, there was an upstairs area as well, and I wasn't really sure what I was going to use this area for as of yet. And through this pathway here was our hybrid area. So the two cloning machines and all the other structures that I needed to make my hybrids. I then also tamed a new hybrid, which was the Nano Griffiths. Now, I believe this was an Archaeopteryx cross Microraptor hybrid. Uh, and it was a flyer, so that was the main reason why I wanted it for, because it could fly, and this would be slightly better than the Arthro fly to get around. The next day, I'd finally grinded enough resources in order to make the industrial forge, so I made that, and I placed that down in the base where our old refining forges went. Oh, this is going to make life so much easier. Now, I then went ahead and spent some time killing some Alpha Raptors, as well as farming up some resources. So this Alpha Raptor was actually bothering another player on my server, which you guys can join. The link to the Discord is down below, and from there you can actually find out all the information you need for the servers that I host. As well as that, Patreon also gives you extra rewards on the servers as well. I then journeyed out back into the ocean with a Critopeltosaurus because I needed fish meat for some more DNA. The amount of meat you need to make DNA is absolutely bonkers, but that's how you go about getting your hybrids. I then found another rogue Terraraptor, and this time it was time for revenge. So I went ahead and started fighting it, and you can see here it wasn't really dealing too much damage to me. This is one of the weaker rogue hybrids, but nonetheless, I eventually killed it, and it dropped a butt ton of DNA, which was absolutely awesome. I love that it gave us so much DNA. I then went ahead back to the swamp and killed this low-level Spino because the Spino sails, we were going to make some Spino Rex hybrids, and I needed a shit ton of Rex and Spino DNA. So this was going to be a good start to getting the DNA, but I'm talking like heaps and heaps. It was nuts. I then also knocked out a pair of Sarko so that I could get some Sarko eggs from them eventually down the line. This will allow me to obviously get the hybrids that require the Sarko eggs. So a lot of hybrids did require standard dinosaur eggs as well, which is why I would go out and tame these. I also found a female Capro out here in Vanaheim, which I then decided to knock out as well in exchange for its eggs obviously being used up. I then got to work on knocking out a 150x Liopleurodon, which I had found on the swamp. Now, because of Kraken's better dinos, these guys are permanent tames. So I got that knocked out, got it tamed up, and as soon as it finished taming up, it was swarmed by a bunch of Megalodons and attacked. So I had to cryo it up to get it out of there. And this guy was going to be a great tame to have. I did have the Critopeltosaurus, but there was a couple of problems where it wouldn't be able to attack properly just because of its hitbox. So the Liopleurodon was going to be a great underwater mount to use in order to get a bunch of fish meat. Because like I said, the amount of DNA and the amount of resources you need in order to make the DNA is absolutely nuts. Majority of this 100 days was actually spent harvesting up raw meat and raw fish meat. It's absolutely crazy. Nonetheless, 150x Liopleurodon was tamed up. It didn't really have any super unique abilities, but it was very powerful and good at harvesting up meat. The next day, there was another rogue hybrid just down the way from my base. Now, this guy was terrifying. He had a lot of health. He was much stronger than the rogue Terraraptor, and his attacks dealt bleed damage to us as well. I did have my Deinonychus, however, so I was hoping I could pull off a kill on this guy. However, he did manage to hit me a couple of times while I was on his side, and I also ran out of stamina pretty quickly. So I was in a bit of a pickle here when I did get kicked off of his side and he was able to attack me and I was not able to run away because I had no stamina and his attacks did the bleed effect to me which also slowed me down. I tried to climb up this mountain side with the Danglonicus' special ability but that wasn't working either. So I decided to just go all out and try and fight back. And well you can see how well that went for me. Talon's dead, that's not good. We are almost dead. I can't, I can't get away. I hope it's not a good swimmer. 
I'm praying it's not a good swimmer. After the loss of Talon and managing to escape into the water, I threw out my new Lyo Pluridon and decided to try and use that instead. But this guy was still absolutely chunking me and my Lyo Pluridon was so close to dying. I was able to kind of back it up into the water and then it would kind of run away from me. And you can see here, we almost managed to kill it. 520 health, 312 health, it turns around, bites me, kills my Lyo Pluridon and me in the process and you know what the best part about this was it also managed to regain all of its health from consuming my corpse absolutely wonderful so i decided to take my anki and my rg to try and finish it off because i'm like well it only had 300 health left surely i should be able to kill it right well i didn't realize that it had been fully healed and well my anki died and then it decided to aggro on a danotherium it just was not my day. My RG was on the smallest amount of health, and I did manage to get my body back, but I was killed once again. <laughs> this guy was a massive pain in the ass. My RG also died here as well. So I have brought out the Equus Cross Hyenodon hybrid, because this was literally like my last dino I had alive. I didn't have anything else alive. Managed to get my body bag back, thankfully. I don't think I really even had anything too crazy on me and then it aggroed on me once again killed me and it killed my equi equi crit i think that's what it was called hybrid now i dropped some deinonychus eggs that i had gathered from some nests including talon's twin and i got those hatched and i started to raise them up as well the only way i could see myself killing this thing was with a deinonychus and their bleed effect so i had a plan attack it on its side where it's unable to hit me, jump off the moment before I run out of stamina so that I'm still able to escape and rinse and repeat until it died. Oh man, if only that worked as smoothly as I had planned it in my brain. I did still take a bunch of damage and I did eventually return with another Deinonychus and I managed to get it pinned in this cliff face side and I was able to chomp on it. Now I did still take the occasional hit here and there but eventually with some high protein meat and my Deinonychus attacking and retreating, I was finally able to kill this rogue Dracoviaranus. Ooh, I absolutely butchered that name. But you know what the best part about this was? I got absolutely nothing for killing it. The next day it was finally time to make a decent hybrid, the Canis Infernum. Now I was super excited for making these guys, so I didn't hesitate. Thankfully I had been grinding enough DNA in order to do so, and it was time to summon it in. And just like that, the Canis Infernum was born. A Ravager cross Magmasaur hybrid, this guy was absolutely awesome. I was in love at first sight and I was super excited to have a decent team that would deal some solid damage. So out I went, deciding to test it out. Now its base hit was 134, which I thought was relatively weak at the time because we did have our aquatic mount that was hitting for 200. But this guy also had a speed boost ability where it boosted his speed for five seconds. And then I used its secondary attack, which actually sets the target on fire. Now, at first glance, this didn't really do too much damage. I figured it kind of scaled probably with the amount of health that the dino had. Um, so it didn't really do a crazy amount of damage. It was called a Volcanic Nash, which I thought was pretty damn badass. But he also had the ability to jump. All in all, I was pretty happy with this Canis Inferno. I then spawned in another one in hopes that I could get a breeding pair. And lo and behold, perfection, a breeding pair. So now I could breed these guys. Now with hybrids, they have a lower chance to produce offspring because they're hybrids and they're stronger. And thankfully, I was able to get a baby and imprint on it. The next day, I was a bit low on metal and I also wanted to get some extra experience for my Canis Infernums. So I went ahead and killed a bunch of tech parasaurs that I had bred and raised so that I could obviously harvest them with the chainsaw for copious amounts of metal. Obviously, these guys give a butt ton of metal and the best way to go about harvesting them is with a chainsaw. So I successfully harvested them all and look at all the resources that I got from the parasaurs. I then went ahead and made a bunch of gunpowder up as well because I was trying to make some trank darts as I had found some rexes that I wanted to tame up. Now, I also went ahead and tested the leveled up Canis Infernum that also had been imprinted on a rex and we were hitting pretty hard, 254 damage. I thought that was pretty impressive, to be honest. I thought that was pretty good. I was glad to see that the hybrids were finally starting to get a little bit more decent. Now, like I mentioned, these are the two Rexes that I found earlier, and I wanted to team them up. Both 140s, and I thought it would be a great idea 
to level up future hybrids because they all spawn in at level one. We can kill the babies of the offsprings and that'll provide us with a huge amount of experience points and allow us to level up our hybrids super quickly. So I did start knocking them out when I eventually got knocked off the cliff side by another Rex and killed. However, I returned pretty quickly and managed to knock out the 140 female that I wanted to get with the highest stats and I just left the other one. I returned back to base and quickly hit up the loot cave for some more loot and I found an ascendant long neck rifle in one of the drops as well as a mastercraft shotgun. I was so ready to use this long neck, that was awesome to find. The first female Rex tamed up and she came out with 42 health which was absolutely awesome. She also had 24 melee damage, which was okay, but the health was awesome. I then made my way to the volcanic island to tame up a new Anki as I did lose my tech Anki against that rogue Dracovan Varanus. So I went ahead and found a 140, and then there was a 150 female Giga in the background as well, which I didn't bother taming, but I did go on a murder spree of Rexes because I did need their arms for more DNA. And obviously collecting the DNA with our Canis Infernums was a good way for us to get a bunch of XP. And these guys were also pretty strong as it was. So you can see here we were hitting for 330 damage against a Magmasaur. Which one, we are kind of, uh, we were mate boosted and I believe these guys also have an alpha boost. So the damage was scaling a little bit better due to that fact, but I don't think it was a bad idea using the Canis Infernums. I was super happy with how they were coming out and the fact that they were dealing so much damage also made it awesome. I did get into a little bit of a pickly where I wasn't running my Canis Infernum and I got swarmed by a bunch of Rexes. Thankfully, they were more than up to the task of defeating these guys and protecting me in the process. I then returned back to base and converted all of the Rex arms into that juicy, juicy DNA. Now I continued the killing spree into the next day, finding this Alpha T-Rex on my hunt for Spinos as well as other Dinos to tame and kill for their trophy items, when I sent my Canis Infernums in to attack him as well. Now the uh, Volcanic Nash, I feel like did more damage to the Alpha T-Rex due to the fact that it did have more HP. It seemed like it was getting melted a lot quicker. It could also be the fact that I attacked it with about four different Canis Infernums as well. Killed it successfully, knocked out a female level 50 Spino as well because I wanted to tame this obviously for the ability to be able to make eggs. Got the last shot in and knocked it out. Went back and tamed up the X Anki as well. And by that stage, the Spino had also tamed up. I then made my way back to base and made a new hybrid. Now on the way to test the new hybrid, I found a level 150 male Rex and this guy actually had quite decent stats as well. So obviously I had to go ahead and get this guy knocked out. He didn't have amazing stats, but they were decent and he was a high level, which would mean that our offspring would come out at like 224, I think it is or something like along those lines, which would equate in quite a lot of experience. He was stuck on a corpse, so I kind of just barraged him with arrows. Now with the Rex knocked out, I could make my way to the ocean to show off the new hybrid, a Centro Dinosaur. Now this guy was a Plesiosaur and Anglerfish hybrid, just in case you couldn't tell from its terrifying face and its horrifying eyes. This guy was once again, another aquatic tame. I feel like the aquatic tames they're, they're good, but their hitboxes are really wacky. They've got really dodgy hitboxes, which they kind of suffer from because they can't really hit much, and it kind of sucks. So here was the uh, the sort of hitbox. I don't know, it's, it's a bit funky. I did try hitting some larger, faster moving targets, and I struggled a bit, but it did hit with pretty decent damage, 134 damage. Our Critopeltosaurus actually hit for more though, so... From what uh, I'm pretty sure this guy was just sidelined to be honest because he just kind of underperformed for most things. He was a pretty good swimmer like in terms of speed but in terms of damage and like getting the hitbox out, 201 was how much it was hitting for and like I said our Critopeltosaurus hit for 207 straight off the bat so this guy was a bit of a disappointment. I managed to tame the male Rex up and he came out with okay stats, 34 points into melee damage which isn't too bad, it's definitely usable, 31 in HP. So worst case, if I didn't use the hybrids for bosses, I had a line of Rexes that I could rely on to get the job done. I then went ahead and decided to tame up a pair of Kentrosauruses. Once again, their eggs were going to be useful for a hybrid that I was eventually going to try and get. Between the eggs and the meat, man, there was just a lot of grinding. But it was good because it gave me a reason to tame up some of these other dinos. So these guys have a butt ton of torpor, but I did manage to knock out a female and a male. 
I successfully tamed up both of the Kentros and I also figured out I could use shell fragments as keratin. Now I was a few DNA short of the next hybrid I wanted to make and for that hybrid I needed Rex DNA. So more Rex arm farming. This continued into the next day where I also harvested up more Spino sails because they were also required for the hybrid I was making. If you couldn't tell, I was trying to make a Spino Rex hybrid and they required a crap ton of DNA. I returned back to base and started processing all the DNA I had acquired and finally it was time to make the new hybrid. And here it was in all its glory, the Kaiser Spino Tyrannus. An amalgamation of the Rex and the Spino, this guy cost a shit ton of DNA and it was going to be a very long time before I got another one. I did go ahead and name it Sails because this guy was going to be our main getting around mount and damage mount for a very long time. Sails I felt like was a fitting name and I went ahead and tested out its abilities. Now, unfortunately it didn't really have anything <laughs> anything uh, really all that new. It had a bite attack and it also received the Spino's buffs in the water, as well as the Rex rule. Other than that, it didn't really have any other abilities. I did, however, go ahead and test out how much damage it could do at the base level one that it was spawned in at. It dealt 257 damage, which is some pretty damn solid damage considering it's only at level one. So I went ahead and took out this Bronto for some easy XP. I then took it out to a water source to see how much extra damage it would deal in water and see how effective it was. Now, as you can see, we did get the hydration buff. We did also get an explorer note, so we were earning double XP for this big boy. And I went ahead and just started attacking all of the ocean tames in hopes to get a meat as well and all the extra experience. I did also take it underwater with our Crudipeltosaurus to try and take it down some Mega Chelons for more shell fragments as well as multitudes of meat. And I would say it was pretty successful. We didn't get as much as we possibly could have, but I was happy with how much we did get. So I did go on a bit of a killing spree with the Mega Chelons with our Crudipeltosaurus because this guy had so much weight due to the fact that it was half donkey. I did spend quite a bit of time underwater farming up the Mega Chelons for shell fragments as well as more of their meat as keratin was going to be a main source of extra DNA that you needed. I believe the, I just think the standard DNA, the common dinosaur DNA actually required keratin as well as the excellent dinosaur DNA. So I made sure to farm a bunch of that. Uh, my Canis Infernums were also breeding pretty well as well. I was trying to breed them for mutations and I had gotten a couple here and there, but nothing really all that crazy. I did also make a Mantamite, which is half man to half Ammonite. This thing was terrifying and it was somehow a flyer. Don't ask me how, I don't have an answer for you. It was just terrifying to look at. Um, it was a pretty decent flyer though. It kind of just <laughs> flapped its wings and did its thing. So I had a backup flyer in case anything happened, I suppose. I'm pretty sure I completely forgot about it after this point, but hey, it's there. I then went ahead and tamed up a female Anki for egg production as well as to breed with owls and then I went on a killing spree with sails in order to get a bunch of different trophy items from the dinos for extra dinosaur DNA. There is aloes all fell to my might. Now I went ahead and tamed up this female theory as well. It was a low level and it was going to be required for a hybrid later down the line. I also found a 145 RG that I wanted to knock out once again for dual purposes, having it as a flyer as well as having access to its eggs. I then found a male low level Spino to knock out and tame for my female Spino, tamed up the RG, tamed up the Spino, tamed up the Therry, and made my way back to base. Now the two Rexes that I had tamed up were breeding and producing a butt ton of eggs, and I got to work on trying to finish the base off. I had done, like I said, the basic foundations, but I did want to build all the wars and I successfully built all the freaking wars. This took me so long to do. Like I genuinely have no idea what possessed me to think of such a obscure base design, not even obscure, just such a large base design. But I did have all this extra space in the inside of the base for any future hybrids that were massive that would need a lot of space for breeding and everything like that. As the days progressed, my Canis Infernums became more and more numberable, and they were starting to get their good mutations. I got some decent coloured cool ones as well as solid mutations, and took sails out to go kill some alphas. 
killed the raptor, also went ahead and harvested up a bunch of fish meat in the lake nearby, and then it was time to take on Bela. Now, for Bela, I used a bunch of Canis Infernums as well as Sails. I was hoping that I could be up to the task of defeating her. Our Canis Infernums were taking a little bit of damage here and there, but Sails was going to be the real goat in defeating her. And thankfully, Sails pulled through in the end, and after a very long and tedious fight of getting stuck in a corner and not being able to move, Bela was finally defeated. Now, I did also get knocked out just a second before she got defeated, but Sales was able to pull through and kill her for me. Nothing too impressive loot-wise, but still solid element and a Daemonicus saddle. I then made my way to Haiti and Skjol in order to fight them. I had a bunch of Canis Infernums lined up. They were all leveled up with about 4.5k health, 6k, and then the rest dumped into melee damage. Summoned Haiti and Skjol. I also brought my Daenonychus along for some reason. I don't know why or what possessed me to bring my Daenonychus. I figured the bleed would be able to deal some decent damage. I did have Sails cryoed up in my inventory though, and you can see here, our Canis Infernum's dead quite a lot of damage straight out of the gate like look at bloody skill's health just get absolutely evaporated although the uh, tidings were a little bit worrisome i did manage to defeat skill but at the same time my canis infernums were starting to fall haiti was also taking a toll on all my canis infernums when it was finally time to throw out sales and get sales involved in hindsight i probably should have thrown sales out first but i did have quite a few canis infernums that needed culling so Sales just provided that extra backup that I needed and we went ahead and defeated Haiti and Skjol as well. I was feeling pretty good about myself right now. In terms of loot, nothing really too amazing. I then went ahead and knocked out two high level Maywings, both 145s. I figured their eggs would be useful as well as I didn't have a decent herbivore. I also knocked out some Dimetrodons as well, once again a pair so that I could use their eggs for some hybrids that I needed because I needed this hybrid to actually progress to another hybrid. And for that first hybrid, I needed the eggs. As well as that, I also knocked out two Microraptors as well because once again, in this situation, I needed their eggs for some hybrids. Maywing tamed up successfully. The Microraptors also tamed up successfully. And you bet your sweet cheeks, those Dimetrodons tamed up successfully as well. I then spent some time in the bee cave farming some drops with my Canis Infernum when uh, I decided to get off my PT for a second and get absolutely destroyed by 280 Meganuras. So that was fun. I thankfully was able to return back to my body with my Canis Infernum and retrieve all of the good stuff in the process as well. I then also found this 150 Pteranodon. It was a cool looking orange color. So I was like, yeah, why not? Let's tame it up. I also found this 150 Andrew Sarkis, and you know me, I'm a sucker for any dinos level 150. Tamed that up, went back to base, and then made my newest hybrid. I was super excited for this guy. I also made a breeding pen for my Canis Infernum so that I could store them in there while they bred. And then it was time to release the Sarko Chellis. Now, this was a Mosasaur cross Carbonemus hybrid, and this dude was awesome. Now, through the series, I had managed to find an Ascendant Mosasaur saddle, which was absolutely perfect for this guy. He was going to be the king of the depths that I needed to use. However, I needed to get him in the water first. So, I got him in the water, and his damage output was relatively decent for a level 1, 243 damage. And then I just started taking him up against the big boys. We found this two so toothless. I went ahead and started attacking that and we just absolutely obliterated it in moments. I was super excited for this guy that I even gave him a name. I felt like it was a fitting name, Shell Shocker. This guy gathered a bunch of fish meat and he was gonna be great for making more DNA later down the line as well. The next day, I created a new Haploscarab as I think my first one died somewhere. I think I forgot to feed it and it starved to death as per usual of Fiomias. But I wanted to make a greenhouse. And I also had discovered that there was a hidden workbench where you could actually make different types of seeds, which actually provided berries with different effects. But for that to happen, you actually had to have various seeds first. So I took my wing out gathering those seeds 
and I went ahead and tamed an Iguanodod to seed all the fruit that I had gathered with my Maywing. Thankfully, the Iguanodon was able to seed it all quite quickly. You can see there, boom, just like that. And we had a bunch of seeds in our inventory ready to go. Here was the workbench and inside of it was all of the hidden seeds and berries that we could actually make. Now, I was going to use this for a greenhouse. You can see there, there is a huge amount of them. And each of these berries had a different effect. Some providing health, some providing torpor, some providing aggro effects, like from the rare flowers and everything. So I made all of those. Now, inside of this bench as well was a hidden boss. But I would get to that later. First off, I had to finish off my greenhouse and I was pretty happy with how it looked. It did kind of line up with the base perfectly. We kind of had like this spaceship looking base and I was happy with it. Now here is the hidden boss. And then I received a Canis Infernum with a dope mutation. It was bright green and it looked awesome. Its stats were pretty dismal, but it looked absolutely badass. I then also received a pink one. So both of these guys didn't have really good stats and I'm pretty sure the mutations are in like oxygen or something. But I went ahead and made up a new hybrid and this one honestly was probably one of my favorites. The Sicilian Later. I'm pretty sure I absolutely butchered that name. This was a Lamantria cross Ovis cross Otter hybrid and honestly... It was totally worth making. This guy looked sick. So he had quite a few abilities. He had the ability to fly, obviously, giant moth. He also had the ability to glide like a griffin. Now, alongside that ability, it was able to harvest up fiber really well, as well as thatch and wood. It didn't really do that much damage, but it was great for getting around. And that's all I needed. It was quite a large flying tame and I was super happy with how well it could fly and get around everywhere. Now my Canis Infernums were breeding really well. They were developing a lot of offspring. I did have quite a few females out. I think there was only one male and then the rest were all females. They were getting mutations as well. However, they were getting pretty dodgy ones. I wasn't really having too much luck with getting decent mutations on them, but they weren't my number one concern. My number one concern was getting more Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses. For that, I needed more DNA. More Spino DNA, more Rex DNA. So I tried out an idea that I had which was knocking out a Spino to see if it had the trophy item in its inventory, because I think you can do that with Megalanias. Unfortunately, that didn't work, so I killed the Spino. I then took Sails out and killed this rogue Terror Raptor that was out here. Now, unfortunately, this Terror Raptor didn't really give us any uh, decent loot from killing it, unlike that first one that we killed. So we moved on to converting some more trophy items into DNA. I had gone on a bit of a spree killing Rexes, Spinos, and Brontos, as well as Aloes, for the extra DNA. There's a lot of grinding in the hybrids mod, a lot. So I wanted to see how much I needed. I still needed more T-Rex DNA, more Spino DNA, and my Canis Infernums did get a melee damage mutation. So I had successfully managed to get four points into the melee damage. And then it was time to bring in a new hybrid. Now, this has to be one of the coolest hybrids I had seen in the entire series. I was not ready for it. This was the Reaper. Thorax. A Reaper crossed Thorny Dragon. Look at this monstrosity. Absolutely terrifying. Now the Reaper Thorax did have quite a few abilities. It obviously had a primary attack, but it also had the ability to fire spores from its tail, as well as an acid breath that would neutralize armor on the target. This guy was very terrifying and he was very cool. I then also created some Dimetrosaurus hybrids as I did need their eggs in order to make one of the highest slash strongest hybrids that you could make in the game. However, I was unlucky in receiving a male and a female. I unfortunately did get two females, but that would still mean they'd produce the eggs. I just have to keep them out so that they, they could be gathered. The next day, I then received a Carchodontosaurus from some more people that played on the server, as well as a Unicorn, which was great. The Karcha was, <laughs> Karcha was super strong. It was stronger than any of my bloody hybrids, that's for sure. So it dealt a lot of damage. Now, I went ahead and grabbed this Runestone so that I could actually level up my Moth a little bit and also level up myself because I had stored pretty much all the Canis Infernums from breeding that I didn't want anymore inside of this soul terminal and my plan was to absolutely annihilate all of them 
for some juicy XP. Now, one thing I didn't think about, however, was that these were all level 1 dinos, so I got absolutely abysmal XP. So I decided to hatch all of the Rex eggs I had been saving up from the two Rexes that I tamed, and I was like, you know what, let's use these guys instead. And they were coming out at 240 to 209. So I went ahead, killed all of them with the double XP buff from a note, and that gave me five levels. I was super happy with the extra five levels I got from that. That was awesome. Now, the reason I needed those extra levels was to make the boss platform. Now, the boss platform was how you fought the hybrid bosses, and they needed a lot of resources, a lot of trophies, a lot of element, and a lot of artifacts. So I had my work cut out for me. You can see there we needed about 2,500 element to fight them all. Absolutely crazy. So I took my psyllium later out on a resource run, gathering a bunch of different meat, as well as organic polymer and anything else I could carry back. This guy had absurd amounts of weight because he was a flyer and I leveled it all up in weight. Chucked it all in, made a bunch of extra DNA. You can see here, I just had so much DNA coming out of the waterworks because I was trying to save up to make another Kaiser Spino Tyrannus. I did, however, decide to do an artifact run in the process as well, grabbing a couple artifacts here and there so that I could prepare for the eventual fight of the bosses. There we go. Easy. Had it memorized. All right, let's keep going in here. Hopefully there's no more of these. Oh, we've got a rune and something. Oh, we got the artifact. Artifact of the massive. That's what we needed. Now, the next day, I had gone out on another resource run with my Cecilia Mater. Obviously, as much meat and raw fish meat as I could get meant more DNA. Needed more DNA for the Kaiser Spino Tyrannus hybrid that I wanted to make. I took a quick check to see how much I needed, and I was still shy on getting the Kaiser Spino Tyrannus Mater. I still needed a little bit more Tyrannosaurus Rex DNA, 60 of it to be exact, so I needed to go out and find some more T-Rex arms. I managed to get them, come back, and turn them into the specific thing that I needed, and then I made the Kaiser Spino Tyrannus hybrid. However, I made the mistake of turning off my cloning thing by accident because I was trying to access it. So I had used all of the resources up and destroyed the hybrid that it was making in the process. So I was really annoyed at myself and frustrated, but I spawned one of the spawners in. Because I did make it technically, and I spawned it in, and it was a freaking female. Hallelujah! I had a breeding pair of the Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses. It was amazing. So she got titled Sales Misses, and they produced their first egg. I was super excited to get my hands on this and imprint on the baby to see how much damage that this baby would do. Because I took a look at the drag weight, and these guys had the same drag weight as Rex's, so I was hoping to use these to fight the bosses, because I had given myself the challenge of using hybrids to defeat the bosses. I went ahead and made some beer barrels for my greenhouse, because I did want to tame up some Deinotheriums as well to bring to the boss fights, and then I went ahead and fought Haiti and Skiol again for some extra loot as well. This time I did bring along some extra boss rexes, some Candace Infernums, as well as my Reaper Thorax and my Carchodontosaurus. Skiol was defeated first. Obviously he's the biggest threat and then it was time to work on Haiti. However, I did have to cry out my Reaper Thorax because he was getting his ass absolutely handed to him. Thankfully, my Karcha was able to finish the job of killing Haiti and we successfully survived and got two more of the relics in the process. Loot itself wasn't too bad, it wasn't really worth showing, and my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses had been busy mating and breeding up babies, and I had received two more eggs. The next day, it was back to breeding the Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses. I needed an army of them, and I was trying to breed for mutations as well, because mutations is how I was gonna make these guys at their base level stronger. They were already pretty beefy, but obviously mutations would make them even stronger. They were popping at 15 and a half K health on their base level one stats, and we had already received a melee damage mutation on our offspring. Then it was time for a new hybrid. This guy was a woolly rhino cross Daedon hybrid, and he was an absolute beast. Now, this guy did have the ability to heal at a nine times radius in comparison to the standard Daedon, and he was called the Lurdewops. And he looked absolutely terrifying, but awesome at the same time. You definitely wouldn't want to get charged by this guy. 
So I put a saddle on him and I wanted to test out his healing radius because I was going to also use this guy for the boss fights and all he really had was a basic primary attack and then his healing range was absolutely massive. Look at how far it went, crazy. I then wanted to test out his damage on this Micro Raptor, but the bastard was just too fast for me and I couldn't freaking catch him. It's just taunting me. But he was hitting for 146, which was decent. Then it was time for my first boss fight. My first real boss fight. I had brought some Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses with me. I might have been a little bit hasty. These guys were only level 9 to 10 slash 11. They weren't really all that leveled up. They had 25k HP and that was pretty much it. They didn't have any extra points in melee damage and I decided to take on the Beta Broodmother. Now I did have the Lurdo Ops with me as well trying to heal, but I just was not prepared for the damage output that the Broodmother did. Most of these guys did have saddles as well and she just absolutely annihilated me and my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses. I definitely went into this underprepared, which is normally my downfall with anything. Underprepared. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna run. The reason I'm jumping on him is because uh, obviously the imprint bonus, I'm pretty sure we get extra damage when we attack her. I've still got a couple of Kaisers. I feel like I could probably pull this out. Spoilers, I didn't pull it out. I didn't win at all. I got annihilated. Back to the drawing board. So after the harrowing defeat, I decided to tame up some Deinotheriums. These guys were gonna be good for bosses because they can buff our hybrids with extra melee damage and extra armor. So I found this 150 male and he had a whopping 33 points in his HP. An absolute monstrosity of a Dano Theorem. So I got to work at trying to tame these guys up. They're a pretty easy tame once you know how to do it and I pretty much knew how to tame these guys very well at this stage. So I pretty much tamed it up super quickly. Now he ended up coming out with 47 points in HP, 21.8k health, and we called him Stomper. With Stomper saddled up and ready to go, all I had to do was get a female. But first, more Kaiser Spino Tyrannus breeding. Now these guys were going into the same bin as the Canis Infernums, and once again breeding for mutations. The Rex eggs were doing great, I had plenty of those available, so I decided to throw those out so that I could have them ready in preparation for boss fights in case the Kaiser Spinos failed. I wasn't 100% confident in the Kaisers being able to pull out a win, hence why I had the Rexes as backup. But I had these melee damage mutation stats into the line, so things were popping out at level three now. Through the night, I was able to get a level five Kaiser Spino Tyrannus, and this one actually got super lucky again, and I managed to get another melee damage mutation. So I had four extra points of melee damage in the Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses. Super happy about that. I then put all of the baby Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses that I wasn't going to use inside of a Soul Terminal alongside the Canis Infernums. These guys were going to get killed later on. However, I first needed a Giga Heart in preparation to fight the Alpha Dragon, or the Beta Dragon, I believe. So I got to work at trying to kill this level 140 Giga. In hindsight, I probably should have tamed it, but it was quite a grueling fight with my Karcher, but obviously the Karcher being the superior being, we were able to kill this Giga relatively easy. I then made myself a new hybrid, a Dimetrodon cross Dillo cross Anki, as this guy was said to be an awesome harvester. And he also buffed your dinos, but he was hella ugly to look at. The super large head of a Dillo, the long body of a Dimetrodon, and the armored carapace of an Anki. Now, this guy did harvest up metal, but he did it pretty poorly. You can see there, he had the same animation as the Anki as well. But he did have a buffering roll, which he could use on your tames, which actually gave them extra damage as well as stamina region. Like I said, gathering rates weren't that great. Our standard X Anki was actually gathering more than this guy. However, I didn't really level him up in melee damage all that much. I then found a female Deinotherium and got her tamed up so that I could breed my Deinotheriums and get imprinted babies. I then went for another artifact run because I'd lost the artifacts from fighting the Broodmother. <sighs> and things didn't go very well. Some bad things happened for Mothra, unfortunately. I was killed by an Onik at level 290 and then Mothra died, which is absolutely not what you want to see. I then went ahead and went and tackled Baylor again with a bunch of Kaiser Spina Tyrannuses and absolutely annihilated her for her relic. We also got a Giga Saddle Blueprint, which I probably wasn't going to use 
and I then left and did some more artifact runs. It was then time for my rematch against the beta broodmother. I had leveled up my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses to 27 to 30, and I had also brought my Deinotheriums alongside with me. Surely this time around with the extra buffs and everything, I could kill the beta broodmother. Some of these guys were at level 54 as well, as I had spent time riding around on them and using them to get around the map and just deal damage. Come on, come on fellas, let's go. Our female Deinotherium is still surviving. I don't really care if she dies. The two babies that we bred are females. That damage boost is coming in clutch. Yeah, see, there's a little bit of water there. Doesn't matter though, I don't think we'll need it. I just hope we can kill it before the female Deinotherium dies. I don't really care, like I said, but I wouldn't like to do this with a clean run. Beautiful! Beautiful! You love to see it! Let's go! That was amazing! After defeating the Broodmother, I made my way back to base for a new hybrid. A Magnosaur cross RG cross Phoenix. I also dropped a bunch of fertilized Deinonychus eggs that I had bred up because I was going to use these guys to take out the dragon, hopefully. Fingers crossed that it would work out that way. If not, I was going to grind myself to sleep. I tested out the new hybrid and I was blown away by how cool it looks. The Magmasaur hybrids are just so badass and I don't know why. I guess it's because they've got like flowing lava through them. So this guy looked sick and he just took off straight away and I was like, damn, that's, that's pretty sick. So I strapped a saddle onto it and took it for a bit of a test run. Now it had a couple of cool abilities. It could fire a fireball that literally exploded into a just burning amount of damage. However, it was actually pretty weak. It only had about two and a half thousand HP and its damage output wasn't really that high. Now granted, yes, it was only level one, but it was just like a super so slow flyer as well. Now you couldn't harvest metal with it either, but you were able to cook metal in its inventory and you could also cook meat, but I didn't really have a use for it at that stage. After the success of defeating the Broodmother, I figured it was time to take on Steinbjorn. Now this guy is the most pain in the ass world boss ever. Unless you've got a good army of Gigas, or in my case, I actually had some Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses do this fight with me, you're in for a very long fight with this guy. I did bring my Deinotheriums alongside with me in hopes to buff my other dinos, but these guys just weren't buffing for some reason. I was having a lot of trouble getting them to buff my other dinos. Thankfully, with the help of my Karcher almost dying, I was successfully able to defeat Steinbjorn. It was a hell of a slog though. I did end up just cryoing up my Dano Theorem because they weren't really doing much and I had to fight at a distance with my Karcher in order to defeat Steinbjorn and obtain the relic that I needed. I also obtained an Ascendant Chainsaw, which is gonna be great. I then had to fly through the Swamp Cave in order to get the artifact. Now, I didn't have any scuba gear with me, so my health was slowly draining. Thankfully, I did manage to get the artifact of the Brute, and I was able to get out of that cave just barely with some of my health still intact and without dying or losing my PT. So I was happy about that, but there were Desmoduses after my ass like no tomorrow. It was then time to face the Alpha Megapithecus, no! and something very annoying happened. You're freaking kidding me! Are you joking right now? No. Oh, that's fucked. I'm not even going to make it into the terminal. Yo, that's ridiculous. Get out of here. I guess we're going to have to do it with what we've got. This, that was, that's bullshit. That is so infuriating. And to top it all off, my Deinotheriums were not roaring whatsoever for some reason. I just had no idea why they weren't roaring for. I couldn't get a single roar off for the entire fight. Super aggravating. I just, they would not roar for me and I don't know why. Thankfully, however, I was able to pull through the fight with rather success. I did only lose one of my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses, but... I managed to beat the Alpha Megapithecus. Awesome, let's move on to the dragon. Alpha Megapithecus trophy, done and dusted. I did, however, have to do some extra things before facing the dragon, so I got the extra artifacts. I then also went ahead and mined a bunch of obsidian and metal as well for tech. I then went ahead and fought Haiti and Skiol. Didn't really get anything amazing, but it was some decent loot and my Dano Theorem's got plenty of levels. I also needed to get some UD lungs for a hybrid I was working on and some Giga Hearts in order to face the Alpha Dragon. Got all of that and the artifact of the cunning, the final artifact that I needed 
for the dragon and I was good to go. It was then time to face the alpha dragon. My plan was to go in with a bunch of Deinonychuses as well as a Kaiser Spino Tyrannus to tank. So I cried up all the, the Deinonychuses. I went out to a fire wyvern trench and got some wyvern milk so I would be immune to the dragon's breath attack. And then I made my way to the dragon. Just in case any of it breaks from the Deinonychuses or the PTs, but uh, here we go. I shouldn't have done that. We're going to lag out now. Okay. Okay. Let's go, lads. Alright, good job, fellas. Nice job dodging the fireball attack. Well done. Oh, God, there's another one. We're just going to whistle and attack here. We're going to attack this... Oh, he took off straight away. What the hell? We're going to attack this back foot here. And we're going to pray. We're going to... Jesus Christ. That's not a good sign. <laughs> That's not a great sign. We're just gonna hug his foot here. I'm not moving from this damn foot. I don't know why he's... his foot. They're chunking us really bad. Yo, I'm super nervous. Come on. Okay. He's he's got none left. That's it. All right. Oh, we did it! We killed him! I didn't even notice. Let's go! After that success, I needed metal for tech. So, you know what I did? Killed more babies. Got a bunch of metal. I also set up the trophy for our bosses upstairs just to take a little bit of a look at them. And then I went ahead and murdered all of the parasaurs and chainsawed their bodies up. Now, this was going to provide us with enough metal to hopefully get everything I needed for tech because I now had access to the replicator as well as the mutator from defeating the alpha dragon. This meant that my hybrids could get extra mutations, which would increase their melee damage and their HP. I also got the final component I needed for the hidden boss with the odd Cecilia Mater fibers. It was then time to face the Alpha Broodmother, the final boss that I had left to defeat aside from Fenra and the hybrid bosses. And I came into this with my four Danotheriums to provide heaps of defense buffs to my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses, and then obviously all my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses. Now some of these guys didn't have saddles, that was probably a downfall on my part. But the Broodmother absolutely freaking bodied us. <laughs> we got absolutely destroyed by her. Our Kaiser Spinos were just dropping like flies. I genuinely was expecting them to survive a lot longer considering we had used them for the Megapithecus and everything like that. But we just got absolutely annihilated by her, unfortunately. So uh, it's looking like we're going to have to come back to the Broodmother fight at some point. So that was a wonderful failure on my part. I then went ahead and made a new hybrid and pretty much the rest of the 100 days was spent grinding up resources to make new hybrids, including like farming fish meat and everything like that. And uh, breeding my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses so that they were worthy of defeating Fenra and the hybrid bosses. Uh, obviously I took Shellshocker out to farm for fish meat, our greatest source, and we also hunted Carcanosses for extra chitin and organic polymer as well. And I had set up tech so that every time we would harvest fish meat it would get taken out of Shellshocker's inventory and sent back to the base. Meaning we could essentially farm infinitely in the ocean with Shellshocker, as long as I kept my oxygen filled up. It was then time for the new hybrid, an Allosaurus cross Daedon the Trichodosaura. Now, this guy had the healing ability of a data, but also the ferocity and size of an aloe. Although it didn't really look all that ferocious, kind of looked a lot cuter. But uh, it still had that passive healing that the Daedon could do, so I was sure I could use it for the boss fights later on. I then went ahead and finally made the Calio Rex. This guy required all the UD DNA, and the reason why I needed to make one of these was to get a female so that I could get eggs and produce one of the super strong hybrids. Now I also got a mutator, and then the fun really began. I also got an egg incubator so I could see if I had mutations, and it was finally time to get our Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses breeding so that I could farm, well not farm, but obtain all the mutations on these guys. Also popped the Calio Rex, which was an Anki Cross UD. Yeah, yep, I'll let, I'll let it how it looks speak for itself. This guy didn't really do much. He did provide a passive buff to our dinos, but it kind of, it got overridden by our previous dino. So I then set our Kaiser Spinos to breeding, set up mutation pulses, and it was a very long, tedious project of getting mutations on our Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses. But it was well worth it. 
And straight away, I managed to get two sets of mutations in the stats that I wanted, and this was gonna be our new breeder. It got four extra points in HP and four extra points in melee damage. This led to a Kaiser with eight points in health and eight points in melee damage. 44,000 HP without any extra levels. Eventually, after all that mutating, I settled on 16 extra points into HP and 12 extra points into melee damage. These guys were gonna pop at 60k HP. Alrighty guys, we've got our uh, melee damage boosted Rex here ready to go. I want to see how much damage he hits for now. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be around the 17,000 mark. Uh, 1,700? How much? 1,800. I was pretty on point. That is crazy. It was then time to assemble the army. All of these fertilized Kaiser eggs were from our mutated line. So they were going to pop with all the extra HP and all the extra melee damage. With the help of the mutator, I managed to raise these guys up and get them imprinted and they came out with 70,000 HP after their imprint. Their melee damage also was absolutely crazy. So these guys were going to make up the bulk of the army. I just needed to breed more of them so that we had more available for the hybrid bosses. They also needed levels, so this is where all those baby Rexes that I bred up came in handy. These guys were popping at 230, so they were going to provide our Kaiser Spinos with tons of levels. I had heaps of these baby Rexes around. This was a super tedious part of the process, as well as waiting for them to heal. It took so long for them to heal up. I didn't really want to pump them too much more HP though. I felt like they probably didn't need it, because if they came up against like any fire breathing hybrid bosses, they'd get absolutely melted. So I settled on 80k HP and put the rest into melee damage. And I had to repeat this about 20 times. It was then time for revenge against the Broodmother. The Alpha Broodmother, might I add. She definitely had this coming to her. I brought the Danotheriums again, I got them a melee damage boost because somehow it worked this time. And they absolutely tore into her. It was super satisfying to watch after all the grief she had freaking given us. Not a single Kaiser Spino was lost that day and we absolutely obliterated her. As well. Done! Easy peasy lemon squeeze. <laughs> it was then time to face Fenra. After defeating the Alpha Broodmother, I was pretty confident in my skills to defeat Fenra. However, my Danotherium did uh, accidentally get whistled into there, so she died. But other than that, there were literally no other casualties. And just like that, Fenra, Alpha Fenra, was killed. I did receive my own Fenra. The reason we had to kill Fenra, I had killed all the other Alpha bosses, so I thought, why the hell not? And I uh, also needed their Alpha trophies for the hybrid bosses anyway. So we killed him successfully, added his trophy to the trophy room, and then it, we threw out the Fenra to take a look at the stats. Not bad for a Fenra, 225, but it had 49 oxygen. Don't know what the hell it's gonna do with 49 oxygen. It was then finally time for the Operation Hybrid. Now these guys are the strongest hybrids that you can make and I had decided on making Operation Banshee. I really hope it was worth it. A Supra Perilio Titan. This guy looked absolutely terrifying. Stat wise, he was pretty decent. He had 25k health, his melee damage was okay. He didn't really hit too hard but he did provide a buff to our other dinos as well which was going to be useful when we eventually took him up against the hybrid bosses now he had actually two buffs one where he would buff your attack one where he would buff your defense and his attacks were uh were pretty unique you can see there he had like a bit of a tail swipe a stomp attack as well so he was pretty cool now like i said his attack wasn't really super impressive he was hitting for 300 Obviously, if you went ahead and bred this guy like I did with the Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses, he'd be bloody unstoppable. But these guys were super expensive to make. They needed 900 UD DNA, and that was such a slog to get through. It was then time to fight our first hybrid boss. Now, I did have to grind through some of the Alpha bosses as well to get some extra element. I mainly just did the Alpha Megapithecus, and I also did the Alpha Dragon again with my single Deinonychus, as that was the easiest. Now, this is the rally buff on our dinos, so I wanted to take a look at how it worked, but they actually cancelled each other out, so my buffing dinos didn't actually coincide together, which was annoying. So we went ahead and did the first hybrid boss, and it was the Cyber Macro Krakono Draco. I don't know, he was like a Giga Cross Stego tech hybrid. 
and he had the same attack as the Stego, and I'm pretty sure that just absolutely obliterated most of our dinos. As well as that, he also had a huge electric barrage attack, but I was too busy trying to buff my dinos to actually stay close enough to the fight, because my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses were knocking him back. It was crazy, I was just struggling to keep up with the fight. I was also trying to buff the dinos as well to help fight, because I obviously had no idea how strong this boss was. But I was getting caught up on everything, so I missed most of the action, which was super annoying. And obviously this fight cost a lot of elements, so I wasn't really planning on doing it twice. But he was about half health here, where I was able to get another buff off onto my dinos. The dino theorems were just so big, and I got blasted by a freaking electric blast, which absolutely nuked me. As well as one of my Kaiser Spino Tyrannuses. Okay, they're still fighting it, and it's taken damage. It is taking a lot of damage. I think we're going to kill it. I'm going to hang back here a bit, because we just got absolutely mutilated. And they, they are killing it. It's going to die here. Okay. We killed him. Oh, we lost two Kaisers. At the end there. Three. Here we go, guys. It should be spawning in any second now. I've got our dinos in position. Uh, Kaiser Spino. Oh, my God. Wayward Zeus Petitan. Has been summoned. No, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, shit. I think I've just killed my bloody Dano Theoriums. I didn't realize their passive reset would get reset. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What is going on? There is a lot of damage. This guy's actually weaker than the, the last boss we fight, so we should be okay on this guy. I mean, he does hit a much bigger circumference of damage. Oh, my God. That hurts. All right. We're going to have to get in here a little bit. I'm going to have to... I mean, they're all our trash Kaiser Spino Tyrannus is getting killed, so that's not really too much of an issue. We're actually nuking him pretty good, I reckon. Yo, this guy's actually hitting harder than the last boss. Whoa! God, their Meteor's getting rained down from above. Come on, come on, come on, kill him. Okay, this could be bad. I've got extras here. Our Dano Theriums are dying. I don't want them to die, though. They're our bosses. All right, it should be dead here. It should be dead. All right, down it goes. Wayward Zeus Petitan has been defeated. Oh, man. He took a huge chunk of our dudes. After that boss fight, I had to raise some more Spy Kaiser Spinos, and I found this guy. Now, this guy had a different color palette to the rest of them, but was exactly the same in terms of stats, so I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it looked absolutely dope, and this was going to be my Kaiser to ride around on. I needed to do another Alpha Dragon boss fight in order to get enough element to summon in the final hybrids bosses. Now, this fight was actually super close. The Dimorphodons and Tyranodons did break my armor and I didn't have any extra sets or medbrews, but I managed to kill the dragon with my single day Nonicus and get the element I required to summon in the final boss. Oh, I'm super nervous. Here we go. We've got 60 seconds till the boss comes in and I'm hoping we can defeat it. I've got enough things here, I reckon. It's just a matter of keeping these Rexes alive. Uh oh, Jesus. Okay, go get it. What is the boss? It's like... What the hell? Oh my God, look at it. That is gnarly. We are actually chunking that pretty strong. I'm just going to hang back here. What is that attack? Oh my god, at least it's clearing all the terrain for us. There goes the Lurd Ops. This, this Fjord Hawk is off our dudes as best as we can. It summons in Bloodstalkers. Alright, here we go. Here we go. The boss is defeated. Wow, that was actually super easy. That was like, wait, what? It's not over. Something is forming inside of the abomination. What do you mean something is forming inside of the abomination? What is going on? Yo, what the hell is that? Last manifestation. Okay. We got some hardcore heavy metal music going on right now. I don't know how strong this guy is, but it looks like we're chunking him pretty quickly. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down, big fella. Oh, this doesn't look good. It looks like he's charging something up. All right, I think, I think he's dead. I think we've killed him. 
And that is it. The last manifestation has been defeated. That was kind of scary, not gonna lie. I got a little bit nervous when it said there was it's not over. Oh, here we go. We did get something from killing it. What did we get? Stormen's Maj summon. What the hell is a Stormen's Age? And we got a bunch of excellent ding. You have tamed a Stormen Stormen's Yo. Whoa. What the hell? It's like a dragon, an RG, and a... Hello? 239 damage. I'm assuming you can breed these guys, right? Oh, right, boom. Oh, boom. Cacumula anomaly has been summoned. Oh, it's above us. How the hell am I supposed to get that? Oh, here we go. Get it, fellas. Get it? I don't know how much health this thing has. I didn't actually see. Four hits. It should die now. It's in the main center of it. Boom. Killed. We got Cecilia Mieda Anomaly costume. Okay, so we just got a bunch of costumes, really, from killing the bosses. Kind of sad. Nonetheless, guys, we have managed to survive. Oh, hold on. What did we get from this? Some DNA. How disappointing. Well, guys, we have survived 100 days Arc Hybrids. Welcome to Primal Fear, one of Arc's hardest mods. In this mod, I'll have 100 days to go ahead and work my way up the ranks of the various tiers of bosses and defeat them all in hopes that I can make it to Picon's Revenge within the 100 days. I'll have to defeat giant space black hole dispensing eels, terrifying dodo reapers that shoot plasma balls out of their bum and create giant plasma fields, as well as giant colossus beings that have elemental powers and can vomit up spit, fire, electricity, and ice only to make it to the end and face Picon's Revenge himself. Will I be able to defeat Picon's Revenge in this 100 days? It's time to find out. If you find yourselves enjoying the video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel, but let's get into it. Day one began with me creating my character. Now, I had some hella fine butt cheeks behind me, so I decided to name my character Cheeks. If my scary ass dinos weren't gonna scare them, my scary ass cheeks definitely were. I started the morning by finding a dark parrot. Now, I'd never seen this guy before, so I wanted to give it the good old walk up to it and see if it was friendly approach. Thankfully, it didn't want to try and murder me and it just flew off into the distance. I then went ahead and started knocking out my first dodo. This was going to be my first tame on Primal Fear and I needed to get some egg production going. Thankfully, it tamed up successfully and I also tamed up another one and got them breeding. I also learned some engrams and knocked out a dillo. Enjoy it. Cause you're not getting me. Why does this look so intimidating? Oh, that's intimidating. And this is where the fun is going to begin. Dying to raptors. These guys aren't even the primal fear raptors. They're just normal, good old, plain fashion raptors. And I'm already dying to them. So, oh no. you can imagine how well this mod is going to go. Thankfully, however, I was able to knock one of them out with a Primal Fear Spear. It did, however, come at a cost. These raptors are haunting me. I also killed the PT for some hide. I needed it to pair off some basic stuff. And I also tamed up another dodo right next to our raptor. These were the teams we had going, and it was a pretty successful day one. Day two began, I had successfully tamed up the Adillo. However, it had been sitting here for a little bit, and in doing so, had actually got some loot from something. I'm assuming an Alpha Dodo, because it wasn't really crazy OP. And then I went for a little bit of an exploration trip. Okay, not gonna go that way. That was an Origin Spino. So, it looks like Crystal's off the menu for a little bit. I'm not dealing with that. There's a Daemoni Kainodon down there as well. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna go back to where we came. I think that's the smartest option. With my two mate boosted raptors, I figured it was time to head out and do a little bit of exploration. So I saddled them up and decided to make my way down the beach side of Viking Bay. Lo and behold, there was a lot more dangerous stuff down here. Will you please don't kill me? Oh, I'm scared. So far, so good. I think we're in the clear. I also grabbed some metal on the way. I had no idea where I was going though. And then I found myself in the swamp. Oh god, that thing hurt. Run. Oh god, Apex Fjord Hawk. What is that doing there? <laughs> Day three began and I decided to spawn in at the Highlands. I was sick of Viking Bay and I wasn't having any luck. 
I spotted this Pegasus wandering around, however, and I figured I would try and tame it, but I couldn't. So that kind of sucked. I started gathering some metal to set up a basic forge, and I found a tech raptor. But it was a primal tech raptor, so it murdered me. I also knocked out a most chops in order to harvest it up for some hide, as once again I was going to need hide in order to get some basic stuff going, such as a refining forge and a mortar and pestle. And then I settled on a base spot. Up here, just a little bit down from where all the crops grow in the farmland area, I figured this would be a great place as a lot of the kibble and latest stuff in the game required crops. So Savaroot Root and Rock Carrot was here and it would be great. So I got to work at placing my foundation, my forge, more foundations, a bed, some walls so I could be protected, a preserving bin so I could get the jerky going, and a mortar and pestle. I also found a unicorn and decided to try and tame that up. It was only a level 20 however, so it was going to be a super, super weak unicorn. However, one unicorn was better than no unicorn, so I settled on the level 20 unicorn. Day 4 began by me getting some crystal. I needed some crystal in order to make an awesome spyglass. I then made my way to the beach and knocked out and killed my first toxic creature, a toxic dodo. Now yes, it was a weak ass toxic dodo, but I'll take what I can get, giving myself some toxic hide. Now I also went ahead and tried to knock out one of these Elder Mose chops, not knowing how much torpor it had. I also tamed up two dodos, a male and a female, so that I could begin my egg production. I also killed a Pteranodon in order to get some more hide, as these guys were the easiest thing I could kill. Made my spyglass up and I could see how much torpor the Elder Most Chops was had. And then my nemesis returned. Okay, this is just absolutely swell. I now have to deal with an Origin Raptor right outside my door. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, it's already his. Okay, this is gonna go well. Oh, it can't actually break through stone. It's a 150. Never mind. This Alpha Raptor can. I'm legging it. I'm legging it. I'm gonna die. Cool. We're off to a banger of a start. The next day, I returned onto the server, which you guys can also join. The link is in the Discord, so feel free to check it out. And I went ahead to try and tame myself up a new unicorn. A 140 fate would have it, and this one wanted to take me everywhere. Thankfully, I was able to tame it up down on the beach side, and then I also harvested up some Bacillosaurus blubber when I spotted my nemesis again. Not going that way. Nope. No, 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 no. Definitely not going that way. Fjord hawks are the bane of my existence at the moment. With my new and improved unicorn, I also managed to knock out one raptor and then two raptors. So I finally had something a little bit meatier to go around. I also made myself up a smithy and made myself some metal tools. Never mind. Not going to get crystal. There's a fjord hawk. Day six came around and I knocked out another raptor. I gave it some meat as well as all of the other raptors that needed meat. Not my meat. That was just that's just wrong. So I gave them the meat to tame up, tamed up the raptors successfully, and I called them the butt because they were pains in the butt to tame. Also grabbed some more crystals so that I could go ahead and make the primal smithy, which I did, and then I placed the primal smithy down in my little shack. Spotted some Indominus Rexes off in the distance, and I shat my pants a little bit, and so did my unicorn. Now, I also went down to the beach to tame up two new dodos. So now is a good time to talk to you guys about how Primal Fear's tier system works. In order to get stronger dinos, you have to tame the previous tier. So basic dinos are the first tier, toxics are the second tier, alphas are the third tier, and so on and so forth. In order to do that, you need to make sure that you have the previous tier's eggs, which is why I'm taming up these dodos. Oh god, there's more of them. Why did I think the Highlands was going to be safe for? Oh, it's terrifying. Alright, here we go. Finally, some organic polymer. So we can build some soul terminals and some other stuff. Just got to feed these two guys. I feel like they're going to be super strong too. They deal a lot of damage. I'm secretly hoping I can knock one of them out and then just get the hell out of here. Okay. Oh shit. After taking a bunch of damage from the Mantis, I popped some healing stews to heal up my unicorn to prevent it from dying. I didn't want it dying. And then the Mantis caught up to us and it was a fight to the death or unconsciousness depending on if you're the mantis or not thankfully i did get its torpor high enough and got it to run away from me and i was able to knock it out and harvest it for its organic polymer 
The next day I was able to make my soul terminal. This was going to be great for getting extra eggs from dinos as you could set them to produce eggs inside of the soul terminal, essentially allowing you to just stick some dinos in there and get as many eggs as you wanted. I also went ahead and knocked out a PT. This was going to be my first flyer and obviously I was struggling to get around the map at the moment due to everything killing me. So with our primal sphere spear, I went ahead and knocked it out successfully. I went ahead and also knocked out and killed another raptor down here on the beach. It was only level 20, so I didn't think it was worth taking back. Made some more narcotics. Spotted demonic overs in the Highlands. I don't know why I thought the Highlands would be safe for. There's been so much terrifying stuff out here. I also tamed up a parrot. No idea what they do, but I figured why the hell not. And then I spent the rest of the afternoon trying to run away from this primal raptor before it had the chance to kill me. Thankfully, with my smarts, I was able to out-navigate it up this cliff face and prevented it from murdering me. I managed to get my first few dodo eggs from the dodos I had tamed up and I was able to make my first toxic kibble. Now I could use this to go ahead and tame up some toxic dodos in order to get them to produce some toxic eggs. Successfully tamed up my first toxic dodo. Luckily these guys only needed one kibble. And then I found another toxic dodo that was a female and successfully knocked her out as well. I was pretty happy about this. This would mean I would have a bunch of toxic eggs coming in soon enough. I then went ahead and also knocked out an alpha dodo. Don't, don't ask me why. It was just trying to attack me. So it just, it deserved it. It deserved it. I didn't have the means to make the kibble for it. Nonetheless, I took the dodos back to base, got them breeding, and I also got an egg from them as well. <laughs> The morning of day 9 was spent harvesting up a bunch of resources. I started with metal and then I went around getting some wood, some stone, as well as some thatch. I was planning on starting to build the base and I wanted to do it out of stone first before I committed to metal. I wanted to build it out of metal just to make sure I was safe from everything. I also placed down a water well. I have no idea why I don't need a water well for. And I also went ahead and started placing some crop plots as I was going to need some crops for all the future kibble that I needed to make. However, idiot me wasn't the smartest about this and I constantly tried to plant the crop seeds into it. And I was like, why is this not working? Why won't these crops take the seeds for? I thought it was because I built the basic non S plus crop plots. So I took all my poo out, built a converter and put the crop plots into that to convert them into S plus. And lo and behold, they still didn't want to work. I had no idea what was going on. I genuinely thought the game was broken and it was being bugged. And then I had a realization. It doesn't go into small crop plots. It doesn't work like that. So I built a medium crop plot and that fixed my issues. But for a seasoned arc person to have made that mistake for so long and not realize, like I literally tabbed out and everything to try and find a solution. And it was just the wrong crop plot size. Day 10 came around and I decided to wander around and try and find a decent toxic tame that I could use. I had made up some kibble the day before and I had found this level 15 toxic parasaur. It only needed one kibble and I knocked it out with my unicorn. Successfully tamed it up and I had no idea what I was going to do with this guy to be completely honest. I also went ahead and tamed up some more toxic dodo so that I could get egg production increased and get more toxic eggs in the process. I also laid down some compost bins so that I could go ahead and get some compost for our crop plots. The next day I found a toxic raptor to try and tame up and well that went great for me okay yep didn't see that coming that's for sure I didn't realize I had a pounce ability cool ah uh, hopefully our equus doesn't die I couldn't really care much about the parrot I'm pretty sure my unicorns on passive let's go let's go let's go let's get back out there hopefully we can save it it is taking a bunch of damage Beat it up, horny. Oh god. This is gonna be close. No! We were so close. <sighs> well, there goes horny again. Horny 2. Now we need to find horny 3. I returned to try and get my revenge on the raptor and knock it out, as I did need a stronger toxic tame. However, fate had other ideas in mind. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. 
I did thankfully find another one. This one was slightly stronger as well. So it did have more torpor, but with my pike, I was able to knock it out successfully and tame it up. And I also gave it a fitting name of Barney. As, well, you can obviously see from its color, it very much looks like Barney the Dinosaur. I wanted to take it for a test run, but I didn't have the means to make it saddle, so I sent it after a Raptor on its own, and it was hitting for 104 damage. Pretty decent considering it was our next tank. I then went ahead and used it to take out an Alpha Dodo, which, well, I mean, that went pretty well. I managed to kill it without any losses, and I also went and killed some more Raptors after making a saddle for it. Took on some more Alpha Dodos and some other Raptors as well. Now, because it was a Toxic Raptor, it did also have the ability to deal Torpor damage, which was great. And then I tried to bowler an Alpha Pteranodon to knock out, but that didn't work out very well for me because the Alpha PTs aren't bowlerable. I then headed into the Redwoods to try and find something stronger to tame. And I successfully found a level 55 Alpha Basilisk. However, I was able to knock it out and it did need a little bit of Alpha Kibble. I just, for some reason, could not put that Alpha Kibble into it. It buried underground after getting attacked by a beaver and I could nope. not interact with it whatsoever. It wasn't on my taming bar, so I had no idea what was going on with it. So I abandoned that goal and decided to kill a bunch of Alpha Castoroiduses instead, getting some Alpha Hide and Alpha Blood. However, a terror bird decided to attack me while I was leveling up and things descended into chaos rather quickly from this point. Just gonna pretend that doesn't exist and we'll turn... Bye. Never mind. I made up my first Alpha Kibble and then headed out to try and find an Alpha PT. Instead, I found an Apex Basilisk. I then went ahead and just knocked out a basic Pteranodon. The next morning was spent harvesting up a bunch of stone from these stone piles located around the farm. I also wanted to clear them so that I could have some more space to build the base, as these were kind of just dotted everywhere around it. I also spent some time gathering by hand a bunch of berries, because I needed narco berry seeds and tinto berry seeds in order to make the next tier of narcotics. I did, however, manage to get a couple of potent narcotics, and with those I could then make my upgraded pike, which dealt the tour 4 damage. I headed back out to the Redwoods, found a Toxic Ravager at level 95, bowled it, and got to work at knocking it out with my upgraded pike. Oh, let's go. All right. I then continued flying through the Redwoods when- Oh no. Oh. I think I just knocked my own freaking Pteranodon out instead. Oh my God, the photo came out of nowhere. I didn't even see it. It was only level 15. Oh, uh, when will this end? The next day, I tamed up my Toxic Ravager. And then he died. And then I died. And then I died again. And then I returned to my Dodo and my Dillo. Just so they could die. And then I died again. And again. And then I found a Strichosaurus near my base, so I built a trap in order to get it in there. I needed a herbivore to gather some berries. Thankfully, it went in there without me dying, which was the first time for anything. I successfully tamed up the Stricker and I was able to harvest some berries now. The next day I tried taking the other Strichosaurus that was up here and getting that into the trap to knock out as well. They were a pair so I could breed them for future eggs. While that was knocked out, I then found this standing stone structure which I'd never seen before and pondered life's questions. Then the Strichosaurus was tamed up so I grabbed that and the female and I got them breeding so that I could get an egg. Never know when these guys were going to die, so I wanted to make sure I had a backup available. I then got to work at harvesting a bunch of berries. Now, like I said earlier, I did need narco berry seeds and tinto berry seeds in order to make the next tier of narcotics. And with that, I had managed to get a bunch of seeds, which was great. I then spotted two alpha dodos on the beach, a male and a female, and I needed these guys in my life so that I could get all of the alpha eggs I would possibly need. So I headed back to base. Made some alpha kibble up. They only needed one each, which means I only needed two kibble, which was perfect. And I also bowled this alpha equus that Are I found sure while that? running around. However, I can't believe I missed that bowler shot point blank range. Tamed up the alpha equus, and then I also tamed up the two alpha dodos as well. Got them back to base and in the soul terminal. I put my meat into the preserving bin with some, no, not that kind of meat, to make some jerky, thank you very much. I then used the Alpha Equus to go ahead and get some more berries, as this was going to be much better than our Strichosauruses, and we could get a bunch of seeds like this using the Alpha Equus. Look at all those beautiful seeds. Mmm, yummy. I also got some wood and stone, because the Alpha Equus does have boosted stats. It's about five times better than the standard Tames. They have boosted weight. So our Alpha Equus, even though it was a low level, could hold quite a lot. 
I then also got started on assembling the foundations of my base. I was trying to go for a Nordic sort of longhouse that I was trying to build. It kind of worked out, but I only laid the foundations. Also made myself some basic armor, and then I went ahead and took the Equus out for a bit of a test run when I spotted a ramshackle wandering loot boss. Don't like that guy being here. We're gonna have to try and avoid him because I'm pretty sure he makes everything in the area aggro on you. So we gotta stay well away from him. We are definitely not ready to deal with him. Although, judging by that sound, it doesn't sound like we've got much of a choice. Tell me he's not after me. <gasps> he's definitely after me. I really hope he's not close to our base. Pretty sure his rockets demolish everything. Oh, he's right over there. Oh, I think our base is gonna go bye-bye. There is no way that this bastard has survived for so long out here by himself at level 65 with all of these monstrosities around him. You're telling me this guy has survived out here all this time. Get stuffed. <laughs> I wish I had this Pteranodon's luck. So after finding that Pteranodon untouched in the redwoods, I then proceeded to stop by the ice biome in a little pond to try and tame my order. I figured it would help with the hypothermia. And then that Pteranodon died. I, it's me, I'm the bad luck. I managed to tame up the otter, however, so that there was a positive out of that, I, I, I guess. On the way back to base as well, I was attacked by a primal tech Quetzal. This thing would one-shot me, so I needed to outfly it. However, this bastard was fast. Thankfully, I was able to see spin out of his attacks and he did aggro onto something else. I then went ahead and used my Alpha Equus to try and kill an Apex Dillo. Now, this was going pretty good. The Dillo wasn't really able to get too many shots in. When it did, it hit freaking hard, however. But in the end, I was able to kill it. I then went ahead and knocked out my first Alpha PT, only level 45. And then I decided to tussle with an Alpha Enforcer, leaving me with 103 health. After healing up, an old nemesis returned to face me. So I'm just going to jump in the water and pray that he doesn't come after us. Yo, oh fuck, that's so annoying. How the hell... Am I supposed to get away from this guy? Oh, we somehow lost him. I have no idea how. I am not complaining. That is for sure. Holy smackadoodles. The next morning, I found a 150 Alpha Pteranodon and successfully managed to deal quite a lot of torpor damage to it. However, it decided to fly over where the ramshackle wandering loot boss was. So I kind of had to disengage and forget about it for the time being. I did, however, return to my level 45 Pteranodon that I knocked out and successfully tamed that up in the process. However, on returning to try and find the 150 PT, everything in the area aggroed on me, including this ice parrot and the ramshackle wandering loot boss himself. So me and my Equus had to swim away to get away from these two bloody murderers in hopes that I could survive another day. <gasps> oh no, I hit it! Oh! oh, buddy, I'm so sorry. I love this dude. I did manage to tame up the Alpha PT. However, the Ice Parrot was still in the area, so I had to get it to follow me from a safe distance. And then I was able to cryo it up and get it back to base. I did manage to find another Alpha PT and I was able to shoot it with an arrow and pike it till it was knocked out. Due to the fact that Crimson Streak was now gone, I had to do things the old fashioned way. But I tamed it up and got them back to base and I was able to breed them successfully together. I then went ahead and found an Alpha Raptor. It was only level 60. I wanted to knock it out so that I could kill it in order to get some hide for a PT saddle. And then it pounced on me and apparently it can still use its pounce ability while it's bold. So that's always fun. Thankfully, I was able to get out of it due to my armor saving me, and I was able to knock it out, kill it for its hide. 23 hide short. My god, that's annoying. Looks like you're gonna be dying, little one. What the fuck? Oh, this guy's gonna be so hard to kill. I don't know if I can do it. He's literally like, exactly like the dad. I'm gonna have to keep him. I finally managed to get some more alpha hide in order to make the saddle and I had just the right amount. I then decided to take our strongest one for a bit of a test run. Now its basic attacks hit for 277 but its C-spin hit for 1100 damage. Now this guy also hadn't been leveled up just yet so I was pretty happy about that. I then went ahead and knocked out a normal 145 Dodicarus. I regret this decision greatly. And then I made my way down to the desert, found a 140 Alpha Iguanodon, bowled it, and knocked that out as well. 
I then also found an Alpha Anki in the area. Only level 85, but I would take it. Now, thankfully, it just didn't want to attack me at a certain range, so I got to work at knocking it out. However, there was a Rock Drake nearby that had other things to say about the matter. An Apex one at that as well. So unfortunately, I didn't finish knocking the Anki out. It was literally like one more strike till it got knocked out. But I returned, knocked it out, and then legged it back to my PT in order to get back to base to make up the Alpha Kibble. Made the Alpha Kibble, tamed up the Alpha Iguanodon first, and decided to call him Strider. I feel like that was a fitting name, and he would replace Crimson Streak. The next morning, I returned back to the first Dodicarus that I had knocked out to give it some crops. Now, this is where things started to go very bad. There was a Primal Carno nearby, and, well, it one-shot my PT and then one-shot me. No, don't take him in circles. Tell me that Corrupted Reaper King isn't after me. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, man. Oh, there's the other one up there. Must have Something must have got its attention. Give me that. Give me that. Oh, man. I wish I could come back for all of this. So after getting most of my gear back to base, I then went ahead and took Strider out on a berry run to get a bunch of seeds, as well as rare flowers as they were gonna be required for the next tier of narcotics alongside rare mushrooms. And then I did some metal farming. Oh God. Literally right now. Are you kidding me after all this time? <laughs> well, that's annoying. So after watching the Alpha Anki died, I then took Strider out to the Swamp Biome to get some more rare mushrooms because I wanted to do a massive farm of them so that I had the ability to make narcotics. I then found another Alpha Anki at level 90 and I thought it would be smart of me to stand there and smack him with my pike, not expecting any repercussions. Thankfully I was able to get back to him rather quickly as we were near a spawn point, but I did the same thing again and died again. Thankfully this time I used some arrows and got him high on Torpor and then knocked him out. I took my PT with Strider back to the swamp near the castle and grabbed some rare flowers from the plants near here as well. I then returned to the Alpha Anki the next day to give it some Alpha Kibble, tamed it up and called him Spike. I then decided to take on my first fabled creature, a fabled Strigosaurus, and boy oh boy I got a lot of loot from that. And from that point on I decided I was going to need to kill a lot more fabled creatures. I chucked the rare flowers, the rare mushrooms, and the eggplant seeds into the preserving bin and mined up a bunch of metal with our new Anki. With that, I then went ahead and tried to tame up a, an Alpha Gacha. Ah, but Idiot Me decided not to split the stacks of Alpha Kibble and throw a stack of three Alpha Kibble straight into the Gacha's mouth. And, well, I don't think you're supposed to do that. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to feed it individually. So I gave up on that prospect of taming an Alpha Gacha. So guys, I've just been out here in the Redwoods killing a bunch of fabled creatures. I just finished killing a Castoroidus and a fabled Featherlight. And got some killer blueprints. Also received an Ascendant Shotgun, a Mastcraft Long Neck Rifle, which is perfect for our dart situation. So we can go ahead and start using that to tame up elementals. There we go. Another fabled creature down. After hunting down some fabled creatures, I then went ahead and tried to tame up an Alpha Castoroidus. But I love it when my darts get to hit. So thankfully after a few Trank Arrows and a couple of Pikes to uh, the face, this Alpha Castoroidus finally went down and I could chuck some Kibble in it in order to tame it up. I then went back to base and started placing down some Metal Foundations for my main base as I was going to need to get this up and running ASAP because I was running out of space in my little tiny shack. I spent some time mining in order to get a bunch of metal so I could make an industrial forge and headed back out to tame our Castoroidus. However, an Alupex defense unit was guarding it and I was unable to tame it because it died. The next day, I headed back out to the desert, found a spirit manticore. That's a lot of damage. And got absolutely obliterated by it. Well, that looks uncomfortable. So after that harrowing experience, I returned back out to the desert in order to tame up an Alpha Dodicarus. Thankfully, I found this 141 and it fell pretty easily to my tranks and my darts due to them being slow. I also found an electric Archaeopteryx and tried to build the trap in order to trap it. However, the trap obviously didn't work as intended, but it did stop it from getting to us and I was able to knock out my first elemental creature. This was the next tier after Alpha. 
Tamed up the electric Archaeopteryx, and because it was a female, it would produce eggs for us. I did also try knocking out this ice feather light, even though my arrows were hidden, but not hidden, because you love that game called Ark, and tried to bring it into the trap. Now, this one actually went a lot smoother. However, I made the trap too big, and, well, it kind of just phased through the doors. So, I retreated back to base, fed my Archaeopteryx some healing stew, and it pooped out a bunch of eggs. Had no idea this would be the case, but I'll take the eggs that I can get. I then went back out to the Redwoods in order to tame up an Alpha Castoroidus. With this guy getting tamed up, that would mean that I have all my resource gathering creatures that I could possibly need. Now, the Alpha Dodicarus also tamed up and I was set. I returned back to the desert to try and find a male electric Archaeopteryx. Thankfully, I did find one. However, getting it knocked out proved to be a bloody mission. It kept flying away from me. It was super fast. And I also managed to knock out that Ice Feather Light as well and tame it from the day before. As for the electric Archaeopteryx, I returned to him and knocked him out and tamed him up. I got back to base and started working on putting everything else down as well. The next day I headed down the beach to discover what was down there when I got attacked by an ice parrot. Now I flew into the water thinking I could lose it down there, but instead of that I just ended up losing my Archaeopteryx and my life. Thankfully I had bred them before taking it out and I did manage to hatch the egg and thankfully it was a female. Oh thank god it's a female. We can mate it with daddy. Huh? I then worked on the base a little bit more. Now, with the new Alpha Tames tamed up, I then went and did a resource run with both of them, gathering a bunch of wood and a bunch of stone with each of them, respectively. I transferred the resources into my base and then went ahead and grabbed a bunch of cementing paste from some beaver dams and destroyed their dams so that you guys don't chastise me for not dropping everything out of them. The next day, I managed to find myself a level 20 Apex Raptor, only needing one Apex Kibble in order to tame. So, I mounted my electric Archaeopteryx, popped the bullet straight in its snout and knocked it out. It only needed one kibble, it was easy enough to come by, so I managed to get that tamed up, and then I found a female Apex Raptor over here as well. This was perfect because it meant that we would get an abundance of eggs in the Soul Terminal, which means we can move on to the next stage of kibble once these guys started producing it. All I had to do was knock this Raptor out and tame it in the process as well. Thankfully, it wasn't too much of a challenge, and I also killed this fabled Strikosaurus, with my electric Archaeopteryx, getting a massive, massive item. That is gonna help us knock out creatures exponentially due to its damage. Apex Raptor, tamed up. I finally managed to finish my base with the chem bench and a second floor. Well, I mean, I managed to finish the first floor. Second floor, not so much. I then made my way back out to the desert where I lost my electric Archaeopteryx to an alpha defense unit and my life. Well, that could have gone better. I didn't realize my- Thankfully, I was able to knock out and tame another fire mega raptor. However, I didn't make it on top of it in time because the dark Archaeopteryx decided to end my life prematurely again. Managed to grab my stuff back as well as the fire mega raptor. Thankfully, it wasn't dead. However, I died once again. This is a running thing. Now, with the Fire Mega Raptor Tame, I could dish out a lot of damage over time. So that's exactly what I did by taking it up against a dragon boss. And you can see the inflamed effect was able to cook this dragon and kill him eventually. I then took him for a bit of a speed run. As it's a Mega Raptor, Micro Raptors actually have the fastest base I'm movement fast speed fuck, in the boy. game. So uh, you can imagine how fast these guys are when they run. I then decided to also take out the Titanosaur because why the hell not? It was near my base and I just wanted to murder it a little bit. I was hoping to get some XP from it, but my fire killed it, so I don't think I got any. The next day was more boss killing. I took out a Dodo Wyvern with my fire breath attack and the flaming burning damage over time. Now you can imagine that I was able to take out bosses successfully, so I would be killing them every time I spotted them with the chances I could get. Got him. I then found my first Celestial Ferox. This guy lobbed bombs that split up like a cluster mortar. It was absolutely insane. I was just going to fly under here for safety. I then also knocked out a fabled Argy. I didn't exactly have the kibble on hand at the moment, but I was pretty close to getting it. And then I decided to be an idiot and try using my fire attack on an Origin Argy. These are the technically the second tiers of bosses. So uh, you can imagine what happened to me after I tried to melt it with my flame breath. It one shot my fire mega raptor. Thankfully, I was able to get away on foot only to die to it later in the pond. 
Day 36 came around and I teamed up another Fire Mega Raptor, so I could now breed my two Mega Raptors together. I managed to grab my body bag back as well as my Mega Raptors body back. And then I also teamed up a Light Feather Light at 145. Now these guys are the next tier up of the Elementals. These are advanced elemental creatures. So they come in light and dark form. So hopefully this guy was going to be strong. Spoilers, it was a, a very strong team to have. We absolutely nuked most things that we fought. As well as that, it also dealt damage over time. I then went and knocked out two Omega Rexes, both females. One was a level 95 and one was a lower level. These guys were going to be needed for the kibble as well. So I needed to get some egg production online and up and running. I then returned to the Fabled Argy that I had knocked out and tamed that up. And I also tamed up the first Amiga Rex. Now, this was the lower level one that only needed two Hello Amiga there. Kibble. And when I got out to the other one, there was actually a male off in the distance, which would be amazing for our egg production. So I got that male Amiga Rex knocked out and used the Kibble to tame that up instead of the other female. The following day, I found some Indominus Rexes and managed to get the female low enough for her to drop an egg. So I'd received my first Indominus Rex egg. I then found some Omega Indominus Rexes on the way back to base. Whew, I was really excited for these guys. I was like, let's go ahead. I'm going to get myself one of those Amiga eggs. We're going to have an Amiga Rex and we're just going to absolutely dominate everything across the arc. But I killed the female and she didn't drop an egg. So I think I actually had to use Amiga Kibble to tame these guys up. And yeah, well, I didn't do that. So made my way back to base, bred the Omega Rexes, hatched the Indom egg, and I had myself a baby Indominus Rex. The next day, I also found another pair of Indominus Rexes. This time, however, they're Apex ones. Wait, what? Did she just drop the egg? Uh... Um... Don't mind if I do. After obtaining the egg, I make my way back to base, killing everything on my way, when a final tech raptor manages to grab me off my featherlight and murder me. Thankfully, I'm able to get back to my body and get the rest of my goods back to base and hatch the Apex Indominus Rex egg. Now I've got two Indominus Rexes raising up outside of the base, each of them requiring their corresponding kibble so that they don't starve to death. So I had to keep a close eye on these guys to make sure that they didn't die, which gave me enough time to finish the second floor of my base. And this is what I was left with. Now, I wasn't exactly happy with the roof. It was a pain in the ass to put on there, but it looked okay. I then spent the next few days just babysitting these guys and sprucing up the base a bit with some of Eco's mods. And I think the front of the base looked really nice now. It looked a lot better than what it did before. I also made a little alcove here for mushrooms. While still waiting for the Indoms to raise, I figured I'd tame up some dumb beetles to really up my crop production. So I tamed up three of these little cute bastards, named my featherlight Glisten, and also tamed up some fabled pteranodons. These guys were going to be our egg producers for the fabled eggs, as they were very easy to tame and only required one kibble to tame up. There was also an abundance of them. When I found the Celestial Indominus Rex Emperor, it was a little scary, not going to lie. I figured I'd take my Indominus Rexes out now that they were raised for a little bit of a test run and I took it up against this Apex Broodmother. Now, this Apex Broodmother, she wasn't really all that scary to be completely honest. We had a lot of health on our Indominuses and they obviously did very hard, being the hardest hitting creatures that we could use at this moment. Now, this was the Apex Indominus Rex as well. So this one is slightly stronger than the Alpha and I just wanted to also test out its ability. So it had two different roars and a bite attack. Now, one of those roars also summoned Raptors, which you can see around here. Uh, they didn't really do too much damage, but the Indominus Rex itself did a whole heap. So I fought another brood mother, and then I had the smart genius decision to try and fight some of the dragons. Yep, didn't work in my favor. <laughs> Bro, do you want to stop roaring for like a second and actually fight this guy? I might be in trouble here. Well, that was a very short-lived Indominus Rex. The next day, I decided to take my Alpha Indominus Rex out and try and fight a primal creature. Now, these guys technically are the first tier of bosses, and this guy took me literally half the day to kill. But I was able to successfully kill it, and I needed its primal blood and its hide in order to get to, to the next tier of boss summoners, which were the origin creatures. I also needed its potions that it dropped because they would heal us up to full health. 
I then killed a primal Allosaurus as well, and literally these two primal creatures took me the entire day to kill with my Alpha Ingo. I spent another half a day killing a primal Kentro for its blood, and then I went and tamed up the fabled PT that I had knocked out. So that was two female PTs that I had tamed up, and I also knocked out and tamed up two Apex Rexes of a breeding pair. I don't know why I tamed these guys up for, to be honest. I think I was just going to use them to try and fight the primals, but I don't think I ever used them for anything, to be honest. Now that I had fabled eggs and omega eggs, I could finally tame my first celestial or demonic by taming celestial ferox. Oh my god! Oh god! Oh, come on. Now, thankfully this time I was a little bit smarter about it and set up a sleeping bag with a bunch of elemental creatures in it so that I could fly to my body if I needed to, which obviously came in handy. After successfully knocking it out, I needed to go back to base in order to make the kibble. However, this demonic hyenodon had other plans for it and decided to absolutely melt the poor celestial ferox that I had just spent the entire day trying to knock out. Nice. So in order to enact revenge, I decided to team up the Hyenadon that killed the Ferox. Successfully knocking it out, it was only level 85, but I did make the Demonic Kibble for it, returned, and tamed it up. I also gave it a name, Cerberus. Obviously, it's not a three-headed dog, but it was close enough. I then decided to take it head-to-head -head against a Demonic Thorny Dragon, just to see how much damage we could do. When lo and behold, the Demonic Thorny Dragon was absolutely kicking my ass. I needed to get out of there, otherwise it was going to absolutely melt me. You can see the amount of damage that I was taking from fighting this thorny dragon. It had absolutely obliterated my health, while it still had about half of its left. So I obviously had to pop a potion on Cerberus, otherwise he was going to die. And this was also a weak thorny dragon. It was only level 35, and I was getting my ass absolutely handed to me. So I thought to myself, I'm going to need one of these. I then went and took out a Celestial Griffin, however, and this thing was just as bad as the Bloody Thorny Dragon, leaving a whole layer of cocooning stuff on the floor for me to walk through and deal damage over time, but thankfully I was able to nuke that a lot easier than the Thorny Dragon. I then took it up against a Primal Kano, and this literally took me longer than the Indominus Rex to kill it, to be honest. It was so long to kill this damn thing. The next day, I returned back out to the desert to find a female demonic hyenodon, as you can breed these guys. I managed to get her knocked out and tamed up. She was a lot stronger than the male one that we had tamed up, but she was also deserving of a name, so I called her Cerberi. Now, with these two demonic hyenodons, I then went ahead and tackled Artifacto the Great. Now, Artifacto, when you kill him, drops artifacts which is great for the bosses as pretty much all the summoners require one artifact in order to use them. Eventually killing Artifacto, I got a couple of artifacts and then I went for round two against a demonic thorny dragon. Two against one, surely this will be better, right? Yeah, you'd be slightly correct, I guess. I was still taking a lot of damage from its tail spike attack, however. Day 50, the halfway point of our adventure and I spent it trying to tame up a demonic thorny dragon. A 150 nonetheless, and I successfully tamed it up. Now it was finally time to see if we could hit for just as hard as the wild ones do. And lo and behold, we absolutely clapped cheeks with our spike attack. We did a lot of damage. Obviously more damage than we did with the wild ones because I wasn't expecting that to be honest. And we went ahead and decided to use it up against a primal. This Primal Kentro got absolutely nuked with this flame attack. It was great. Finally, we were getting somewhere. Now that we had a powerhouse tame, it was finally time to start dealing some damage to things. Starting off with this Forest Titan. Now, these guys have 400,000 health. Obviously, they don't have as much as the Primals, but it was still a, an achievement to absolutely kill this guy. You can see he's losing his arms and everything in the process. And this would actually give us our first tech grams, which is exactly what I needed. After killing the Forest Titan, I then went ahead and decided to kill some more Primals, starting with this Primal Kano. Now, while I was in this area, so, there was an Origin Spino ooh, Surfing. Second, why the hell not? Doing some damage to it. 40k is all it's hitting us for. We have potions in our inventory. My Spine Burn effect is just absolutely nuking it by the looks of things. I am definitely not complaining about that. Look at that. Get absolutely shredded. Demonic Thorny Dragon is definitely the way to go. Holy smokes. I remember back in the day, it used to be Demonic Parasaurs. 
I'm not entirely sure if they're uh, still as crazy strong as they were back then. Bro, that's cheating. I can't hit you in the water. Get out of there. First origin going down. Let's do it. Oh my god, look at its health get absolutely shredded. And just like that, we have defeated our first origin boss. The origin Spino has been defeated and we are finally getting access to Tech Engrams. Hallelujah, how I have longed for you. I then also went ahead and killed an origin raptor that was spawned up here on the cliffs. Now that I had the capacity to kill the origins and primals, I'll probably stop showing most of the kills on screen, except for the big fights that I did with them. I spent the next morning going on a boss killing spree, starting off with an origin raptor that I had found wandering around, and then I went into a primal Kentrosaurus. Once again, needing these guys for everything, I then took the thorny dragon out to get some rare mushrooms and some wood, and went on a resource gathering quest with my Anki Spike in order to get some crystal. I then also went ahead and started breeding up my demonic hyenodons to try and get some offspring going. Now, with my Thorny Dragon, I went out to the desert once again, and I decided to fight the Desert Titan. Look at this big dumbass just floating here like a bloody useless sack of potatoes. Except sack of potatoes don't float. He kind of just did nothing and accepted his death. It was great. I loved it. It was so smooth. I then went ahead and started trying to take down some Demonics as well as another Origin Argy, because why the hell not? I had access to it. I knew I could take them. And then I went face to face with an Apex Megapithecus. Once again, absolutely nuking these guys thanks to the Demonic Thorny Dragon's attacks. Then it was time to fight the Ice Titan. Why not? He was spawned in and he was killed really easily. I kind of wanted to get all the trophies so that I could display them around the base, uh, but unfortunately this Ice Titan didn't actually drop his trophy when I murdered him. Once again, I was taking out more bosses. Another Origin Argy was defeated, and I also tamed up a female demonic thorny dragon who I called Heldari. I also got my first demonic Hyenodon offspring. The next day, I finally had enough resources to make the tech replicator. So I built an extension on the base, chucked down the tech replicator, and then went ahead and killed a bunch of Origins that I hadn't killed yet. I killed these guys by making the summoners in the base, and that unlocked most of the tech grants for me. I then built the tech transmitter in order to track down dinosaurs. However, I didn't realize that I need more than one to do a dino scan. I then went ahead and also killed a primal brood mother boss. Now that I had killed a bunch of origins, I was able to make their origin trank arrow, which essentially is a one shot full trank thing. So you fire this into the tame, their torpor goes full, and they also get extra attack damage and movement speed. So I used my first one on this celestial spino, which I tamed up. And then I went ahead and knocked out this fabled Anki before a Primal Kano decided to come along and eat it on me. Thank you very much for that, Primal Kano. Got back to base and tested out the brand new Celestial Spino and its attacks. And this thing was terrifying. Although I feel like it wasn't as powerful as the Celestial Ferox, it still definitely packed a punch with its attacks. I then also incubated some of the Demonic Thorny Dragon Eggs that I had so I could get some offspring. Now on my transmitter, I'd spotted another demonic thorny dragon. So I made my way back out to the desert to try and knock this guy out. I took an origin arrow with me, plonked it straight into the demonic thorny dragon, flew away and tamed it up. Now this guy did have stronger melee damage than my male. So I had to incorporate it into the lines. It was then time for the next tier of bosses. The Celestial Indominus Rex Emperor. Now, my plan was simple. I had leveled up these demonic thorny dragons in the front, purely in HP. I had pumped them with a primal health potion so they would get health regen for the next 60 seconds. Yeah, they would tank and I would go ahead and use the DPS and try to kill the Celestial Indominus Rex Emperor while they tanked the damage. In theory, it sounded great. In action, yeah, it kind of worked. You can see he were dealing de damage to the Indom. However, it wasn't as much as I was expecting, to be honest. However, the Demonic Thorny Dragons definitely could have used their Tail Spike attacks, but they just didn't. And unfortunately, they both went down. So it was then a game of cat and mouse trying to dodge the Celestial Indom's power-up blocker. But I was finally able to defeat it with minimal casualties, only losing those two demonic thorny dragons at the beginning of the fight. Oh, oh, oh my God, my heart stopped. I thought she was gonna kill us because we got the power up blocked. Oh, and she's dead, let's go. Now with the tameable spawner that she drops, I went ahead and tamed up a version of her as well. And she was terrifying to use. Look at that damage. 
The spine attack is just awesome. Day 64 saw me raising some more thorny dragons as well as taking on some more origins, starting with the Kairuka origin, the Wyvern origin, the Rex origin, as well as getting ready to face these demonic Reaper Emperors. I also went ahead and tamed up a 175 <laughs> Celestial Rock Drake. Now I couldn't make the saddle for this guy as I needed red gems and had no way of getting them. Day 66 was spent harvesting up a bunch of resources. I needed a butt ton of crystal and a butt ton of metal. So that's exactly what I did with my Alpha Anki and Fabled Argy. The following morning was spent knocking out and taming a manticore. Now the bosses produce eggs which you can use to tame higher tier of bosses such as alpha apexes and spirits. So I wanted to get a start on that. I did leave it a bit later than I would have liked to. However, it should be fine. I then went ahead and also built the primal industrial forge and tamed up another manticore. Day 69 and you know what time it is? Breeding time. So I bred my manticores and got twin manticore babies. Obviously that's a sign, perfect timing of the days. Now day 70 came around and it was time to fight the demonic reaper empress. Now this is the counterpart to the celestial indominus and unfortunately Glisten was the first victim to fall to the reaper empress, getting absolutely nuked by her attack. Now the reaper empress also kept digging underground which was super annoying, we had to constantly be in range of her in order to fight her. Uh, so I did lose quite a few of my demonic thorny dragons fighting her, as well as the celestial indom that I had tamed up earlier. But thankfully with my spikes I was able to defeat her in the end, even though she came very close to killing me as well at the same time in the process. It was a, uh, it was a very big ordeal. So I went ahead and spawned in her spawnable summoner thing that you can use, popped an origin arrow with my demonic hyena don, tried to get the hell out of there but ended up not escaping in time and I got cooked in the process of trying to tame her. Now of course she doesn't decide to dig underground but when I'm fighting her she does. Nonetheless though I still managed to tame her up with some demonic kibble and she was very terrifying. These things are absolutely horrifying to use like they're so loud, their abilities are so crazy, and we also got really good armor saddles from killing the boss version of her, so she was super tanky as well. It was then time to get a female for my male Celestial Spino. So I found this guy on, well this lady I should say, on the Dino Transmitter. I tamed her up and got her back to base. Now I could breed my Celestial Spinos together. I then also found a wild Celestial Rex Emperor, just, you know, chilling in the wild as they do. I did, this was the second one. And unfortunately, my Fire Mega Raptor did also die in the process, but I was able to kill the Celestial Indominus. It was then time to take on the Spirit Guardian. In my opinion, one of the hardest bosses in all of Primal Fear, as they have the ability to fly and fire massive spirit orbs. So you're probably wondering, CJ, how did you defeat this thing? Well, I built a very rudimentary trap for it. You can see here it was lined with behemoth gates, some walls up the side, and this enabled me to sort of trap it in between the two behemoth gate frames and absolutely pepper the crap out of it with my demonic thorny dragon. However, it was able to fly out of it occasionally, which definitely sucked. Thankfully though, I did have my fabled PT on me, which was leveled exclusively in movement speed. And so I just kept having to kite it back into the trap like this. However, it did get my fabled Tyranodon in the process. Let's fucking go! <laughs> oh my god, that took so long and that was my heart, my head, oh my god, it was all gonna bloody burst. Oh, that was the most tedious boss and the biggest pain in the ass, but we got there in the end with one casualty. I think we lost our fabled PT. Oh man, I'm so glad that's dead. I am so glad that that is dead. Spirit Orb, finally. Now we can tame some spirit dinos. Let's go. The next day I tamed up an alpha manticore with the basic boss eggs that I had and I also went ahead and tamed up my first spirit dino, a spirit thylacolio who I named Translucent. It was then time to take Translucent for a test run on some origin Kairukus and well you can see the amount of damage that Translucent was dishing out. I didn't stop at Translucent however. Bruh! That hit, what do you mean? I didn't bring spares. Okay, we hit it. Get the hell out of here. I think I hit it. Ah! 
running. I'm just running. I'm just running. Hide in a rock. Hide in a rock. Hide somewhere. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. We got it teamed up. Can I ride it? Oh, let's go. We can ride it. Woo! All right. That spino is right on my ass. Holy smackadoodles. Is that close? There is a chaos one right there, too. Let's just bag up here. Okay. Woo, I can breathe now. So taming that was definitely an ordeal, but I decided to go ahead and test out its damage capabilities on this primal spino below us. And uh, well, it definitely did a lot of damage. Plus it had the added bonus of being a flyer, so things hitting it were very unlikely. You can see here this poor superior broodmother just got absolutely nuked into next week. It was great. Now, unfortunately, I did find an origin Kairuku out here in the ice cave on Ragnarok, and I did take Translucent with me in order to defeat this origin Kairuku up here, as I'm pretty sure that Translucent actually dealt more damage than our Spirit Wyvern, plus it was in a cave. So we couldn't exactly fly in here with our Spirit Wyvern. Now, once defeating uh, the origin Kairuku, I decided to hop off Translucent in order to loot the corpse. Unbeknownst to me, however, there was an origin Dybear right behind me, which one shot me. Now, for some reason, the spirit dinos don't really use their AI-powered special attacks, so Translucent ended up dying to the Origin Die Bear. I did manage to get my buddy back as well as Translucent's things, and then I nuked the Origin Die Bear with Hellscream, my Demon Lord Dragon. Day 78 meant it was time to take on the Chaos Guardian, the counterpart of the Spirit Guardian, who in my opinion is slightly easier than the Spirit Guardian due to it not being able to fire the balls like the spirits do. So I once again trapped him and unloaded everything all over him with my spirit wife and when I got one shot by him, which was absolutely freaking fantastic. That went well, we're on a roll today, bloody hell. So I pulled out Hellscream and ended up finishing off the Chaos Guardian with Hellscream. It only cost me my spirit wife and my sanity, but we did it. <laughs> oh, let's go. Now that I had defeated the Chaos Guardian, I could tame up Chaos Creatures. Now, they exude this aura that pretty much nukes things around them, which is why my fabled Pteranodon died in the process of getting this guy shot with one of the Origin Arrows. Thankfully, I had Hellscream on hand ready to go, and I managed to knock out the Chaos Wyvern after a little bit of time. Boom, baby! Let's go! Okay, let's just get Hellscream cried up. I don't want to lose Hellscream. Hellscream has been clutched this entire series. It was then time to test its abilities. Now, it had similar attacks to Spirit Tames. However, instead of expanding orbs that launched around the area, it was kind of just like Chaos Globules that like set an area on fire. It was a lot smaller than the Spirit Creatures attacks. However, it was still useful. Not as powerful though. Day 80 came around and I celebrated it by taming a 145 Spirit Griffin. Now, this guy was going to be just as good as any other spirit dino, but I also tamed up a spirit wyvern just in case I needed an extra one. These guys were also going to be super powerful. So I tested out the spirit griffin on an origin die bear out here in the snow area, and we were doing decent damage with the griffin. The griffin's orbs kind of came out of its butt, but it was actually its mouth where they came out of. So I feel like you had more control over the spirit griffin. Now that I had a couple spirit and chaos creatures to my name, I got them imprinted to me by using the S plus mutator. This enabled them to get extra health and damage. And then it was time to go ahead and kill a bunch of origin dinos for the next tier of bosses. So I also killed a demonic reaper empress as well. And this allowed me to craft the Nova, the destroyer boss summoner. And then it was time to fight Nova, the destroyer, a tier five boss. Now this guy dealt a shit ton of damage if you came into contact with him. Hence why I brought the Griffin for as I felt like I had the most amount of control over this guy. And it was a pretty easy fight. There were a couple of times where I did take some damage from his attacks, about 2 million from one damage. Thankfully my Griffin did have the health to tank it and I had potions, but I pretty much stayed up in the air dropping bombs on it the entire time. Woo! All right. Oh, Nova the Destroyer has been eliminated. My golly gosh, that would have been such an easy fight for Nova if, I, if it stopped moving. Honestly, there was no way I was going to be able to kill Nova if it just stopped moving. Oh, I'm so glad that's done. What did we get? Demonic Descension item. We've got Destroyer Soul as well. What are these? Destroyer Nuke? That seems very crazy. Uh, that was, that was, that was something. That was an intense, that was an intense process. And we got an egg. Wonderful. 
Uh, use the multi-tool wheel to descend and let's descend our hell scream into something even more terrifying. Let's do it. I'm hoping she comes out stronger. Oh, shit. I don't know if she came out stronger, but she looks cooler nonetheless. 321, 52, 50. I feel like she came out stronger. Ah, oh, damn. Only one. I'll take it. Did that say 1 million damage? Did we just hit for 1 million damage? Now that I had defeated Nova, it was then time to pretty much refarm all of the items I'd used to summon it so that I could summon in Picon the Creator. Now, this was the other T5 summon, and in order to summon it, I needed a bunch of artifacts, a bunch of Origins tribute items as well. So I headed out, defeated a bunch of artifactos, I defeated a bunch of Origin creatures, and then I went back to base and made a bunch of Origin summoners with the artifacts that I had gotten. I was going to need a bunch as well because I would need to defeat the Picon and Nova four more times in order to get the necessary items in order to defeat the final boss, or at least get a chance of facing the final boss. So you can see me here summoning in a bunch of the Origin creatures. I did defeat all of these guys. It just didn't really take me long at all with the Spirit Tames. Like, look at this. They just got all got absolutely nuked. So it was just a matter of farming all those guys for the tributes. Now, for extra artifacts, I also use this strategy. The Redwoods near my base, just north of the Highlands, actually had the artifact of the Brute here. So I teamed up an Elder Otter and actually packed it to the brim full of artifacts every time I flew past the area. And because it was on a server, not single player, they respawned pretty quickly. So I was able to pretty much get a bunch of artifacts in my Otter, get them back to base, and use those as the artifacts that I needed for everything. I also found a Spirit Manticore and a Spirit Broodmother, but I did not have enough kibble. I didn't think I'd be able to make enough kibble to tame the Manticore, so I settled on the level 100 Broodmother instead. Got my Origin Arrow, chucked it into her, got the hell out of there before she had a chance to retaliate, and I chucked some of the Spirit Boss kibble into the Broodmother. This would be our strongest dino that we could get. It was then time to take Webs out for a test run. Now, she actually didn't really hit all that hard in comparison to some of my other spirit dinos, which was kind of sad. She did have a butt ton of health though, so that kind of made up for it. Now, I needed a bunch more Celestial Indominus Emperor Summoners, all the little spawn tokens that they give us when they die so that I could fight the higher tier of bosses. So I used webs to try and face them. Now I did spawn in multiple of them at the same time and thankfully she was able to defeat them with her high health pool and her high damage. So I had managed to also kill the demonic reaper empress with her as well. It was then time to face pick on the creator. Now this alongside the guardians has to have been the most annoying boss to fight. The guardians were just like hard Pick on the creator is just genuinely a nuisance. Like, it is so annoying. I tried using the Spirit Broodmother. I tried using Nuke, our Spirit Griffin. I just could not connect any sort of damage with Pick on the creator. So I switched over to my Chaos Wyvern and I found the secret source. This was how I was going to defeat Pick on the creator. By getting stuck inside of her and nailing her with my Magma Balls of Death and Destruction. As you can see here, she started taking a bunch of damage but so did I. So I had to constantly monitor my health as well as my Chaos Wyvern's health to ensure that we weren't going to die to pick on the creator. Eventually though, after a hell of a slog, I did finally manage to defeat her. You can see here, even now, it just took so much damage. She had so much health, 1.1 billion health, highest health boss we had faced so far, but it was only gonna get worse from here. Thankfully, I was able to defeat her. Pick on the creator has been defeated. Took us bloody long enough. 1.1 billion health. I'm pretty sure that's the amount of health the final boss has. So that's kind of crazy. I also found her egg that she drops. After defeating Pickon, I now had everything I needed to fight my first Colossus. Now I started with the Fire Colossus and I started using my Spirit Wyvern as I believe it was my hardest hitting Spirit Tame and I figured this would be the best way to dodge its attacks as I had the ability to fly. Little did I know that the Fire Colossus also has an extra ability that I wasn't aware of, where it roars and it is able to stop you from flying. And that's exactly what happened to me while I was flying over some water. 
Thankfully, I was able to get out of that situation. However, my situation didn't improve. I got caught once again from the raw while flying over the water. So instead of getting dismounted myself, I cryoed up my spirit wyvern, fell into the water, and ended up getting stomped on by the fire colossus. Now, I did leave all my other important teams back at the base in one of my teams so that I could grab webs and come back out here to face the fire colossus. However, I got absolutely nuked by a fire attack, lagged out, couldn't pop a health potion, lost webs and my life once again. This was not the fight that I wanted. So I took Nuke out this time, and once again, Nuke got hit with the roar that stuns you, prevents you from flying. I got one shot by an Archaeopteryx minion, and I took Hellscream out there. Thankfully, Nuke was still alive. I don't know how. I whistled passive. I managed to get Nuke to eventually be able to follow me. She was still going at it. Look, she was still dropping her spirit bombs trying to defeat this bloody bastard. Thankfully, I was able to whistle her and get her attention, and I could take her back to the beach, where I was able to remount her and continue the fight against the Fire Colossus. But I got hit once again by the Fire Colossus's uh, roar, and this time I was unable to save Nuke in the process. But I did bring out my Chaos Wyvern and managed to kill the Fire Colossus. I was just disheartened because I had lost Nuke and Webs. It was then time to farm the Celestial Indominus Rex Empress and the Demonic Reaper Empress in order to get their summoners so that I could fight the other Colossuses. Thankfully, they were all able to fall pretty easily to my tames, and I didn't lose any tames in the process either. It was then time to face the pick on the Creator. Now, I built a trap for it. It didn't work, obviously, the first time around, as you can see, but that didn't stop me from beating its ass. So, enjoy this little uh, relaxing tune of me killing Pick on the Creators. I then also had to repeat this process with Nova the Destroyer. I then faced my second Colossus, and if I had learned anything from fighting the Fire Colossus, it was that I needed to stay high and avoid all of its attacks, while raining spirit bombs from above. So that is exactly what I did against the Caustic Colossus. Killing it in the process with all my spirit orb power, I was able to finally defeat the second Colossus. Let's go! Another Colossus defeated. Oh, go down, big fella. Holy freaking Luya. These guys just take so long to kill. Here we go, another Colossus is about to get defeated. Let's go. The electric one is finally dead. Oh man, these guys are just such a slog. Come on, so close. Let's get this bastard. 21 million HP. I'm just going to do a couple of laps here. Come on. Come on. Oh, let's go. Bite him. Let's go. After defeating the Colossuses, I spent some time raising my pick on and Nova the Destroyer eggs. And then it was day 100 and it was time to face Picon's revenge. I had brought all my tames with me in order to feed him. I had set up a little outpost with some extra tames and a bed and sleeping bag so that I could respawn in the case of whether or not he would kill me. And then it was time to fight him. Now we get the hell out of here. Wait, they're all my tames. What the hell? Okay. Ooh. What the... What the hell just happened? Guys, get in there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bro, what just happened? I would genuinely love it if my other modus decided to join in on this fight. Oh god. 
Oh god, get out of me. I can't move. Now I'm not too sure why my other teams weren't attacking for. It was really annoying. I don't know if it's because they were stunned. He doesn't do any stun attacks though as far as I'm aware. But I did manage to do quite a bit of damage to him before I lost pretty much all my games. He did manage to kill me off here. And unfortunately, this pick on that I was riding on was my last team that was alive. And unfortunately, he did kill me. A level 190 pick on's revenge. And with that, this 100 days was complete. Welcome to Archimega, a massive mod that adds over 300,000 different dinos to tame and over thousands of bosses to defeat. There are dinos made from wood and dinos that can create black holes, plus so many more. I have 100 days to complete Archimega. Can I do it? Let's find out. And so it began like any other day. Waking up, scratching my arm at the implant and wondering where the hell I am. However, this time it was slightly different. I didn't have to worry about getting my first basic tools as I had already been provided them thanks to the Amiga mod. So I went ahead and started harvesting up some basic resources around me just to have them on me in case something happens. I then spotted my nope. first modded creature, a self-destructive Megaloceros. I didn't want to tussle with that guy. I then found a Resilient Triceratops and I needed some hide. I couldn't find hide anywhere and all of these dinos were modded. So thankfully I was able to knock it out with my stronger club that we got provided and I got to work at hacking at it when a Soul Essence Terror Bird jumped off the cliff near me. I started hacking at it but unfortunately I was not able to harvest it resulting in my death to the Soul Terror Bird. I then tried to get my body back and once again died to the random Terror Bird nearby. I then found another trike Surprise, and this was a companion trike and apparently it summons in little bats to attack you. I had no idea so I thought I'd just continue trying to club it when well this bat was packing a punch. It definitely hurt me and I had to run away to get escape. I then found my first dodo on the beach side. Finally I could knock something out and get it for hide oh, no. when I accidentally hit an ice triceratops. This guy fires ice blocks at you. I had no idea. I don't even know how I angered it. And I was already low from the bats. But thankfully, it spared my life and just de-aggroed on me. I have no idea why, but I will take it. I don't even want to know why it aggroed on me in the first place. However, I was super low due to its attack. So I kind of just had to hobble around everywhere while still trying to get a dodo knocked out so I could get some basic hide. Because, you know, I, I still didn't have any hide to make anything. I was finally able to make an awesome spyglass and I went ahead building a basic base with some stone walls and the Amiga table and taking a look at what we could make. Day four began by me bowling my first Dillo. Now this was a siren Dillo and essentially it would send out a song that would stun you and drag you towards it. However, because I bowled it, I was able to shank it multiple times until it died and I successfully killed my first modded Ark Amiga Dino. I picked up the charm, dropped the bed so I could respawn at my base and made myself the kibble machine. This would allow me to make the kibble in order to tame up the subsequent Amiga dinos. I also knocked out a dodo and just for fun killed an ichthyonis because these bastards just haunt me in my dreams. I then continued knocking out some more dodos when a beta wood raptor decided to murder me. I then found a comet tyrannodon and thought I could try and tame it. Why not, right? What's the worst that can happen? He kills us? Ha! <laughs> I'll take those odds. Oh, Jesus! All right, it rains comets from above upon us. That's, uh, yep, that seems cool. I then continued my day by grabbing all the dodos that I'd tamed, as well as trying to tame up more of the dodos, as these guys would be paramount to getting our first dinosaur eggs in order to tame up the dinos. I managed to kill the beta necromancer dodo when it dropped a unique saddle token as well. Sometimes when you kill the dinos, you get their specific unique saddle token. Cried up the last of my dodos and then went ahead with a pack of compies and well, you can see how well that went for me. Grabbed a couple of extra dodos and found a gravity defying dimensional Dilophosaurus when I tried to lob spears at it to try and get it out of the sky and to try and kill it. The next day arrived and it started by me killing this cloner Overraptor. I needed the souls and it was stuck so it made for an easy victim. I also killed the Ichthyornis because every chance I get I want to kill these bastards, they're just so annoying. I also placed some structures around the base to get those up and running, including a smithy. And then I got a visitor from a Beta Detonate Rex and a Bronto going at each other. So I had to try and survive this onslaught with the Bronto constantly swinging its tail, the Rex going after the Bronto, and my little tiny stone base without a roof complete. So at any time, they could just come in and absolutely attack the base and damage it. Oh my god, I'm gonna just hide. 
I then found a beta loot dodo chilling on a mountain side, so I thought I'd give it a shot and try to kill this thing. Not realizing that everything in the vicinity would aggro on me and that these guys had increased stats. They were a lot stronger than the standard dodos, and it also wasn't bowlerable. So I pulled out my newly crafted Hades torch and got to work at trying to punch this guy to death when I got one shot by an uncontrollable raptor. I don't know if it's going to take extra damage from the torch. Heck, I don't even... Yep, okay, it's not bowlerable! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The next day I went on a bit of a killing spree in the morning with my new torch. I was able to kill most of the surrounding dinos around me, gathering their souls in the process when I found a trike. Now, I started killing this trike because I figured, you know what, I'll be able to kill it. It's by itself, it's a low level. Little did I realize there was an entire herd of them. So, that was a quick death. I was able to kill a Pearl Compi as well as a Spiritual Parasaur and a Volatile Raptor as well. As a Zombie Ferox, I was just going on a bit of a killing spree, trying to get as many souls as I possibly could so that I could upgrade some of my basic armor. I then found some tech boots, which uh, I couldn't wear, obviously, because I had no access to 10 grams, and I went ahead and died to an ultimate stalker pteranodon that came out of absolutely nowhere while I was trying to kill a Carbonemus. The next day, I finally had made my egg collector machine, and I threw my dodos out to get absorbed by it. Essentially, how this works is you choose the female dinos you want it to absorb, and it will absorb them, killing them permanently, but allowing them to still produce eggs. I also imbued my flak armor with the basic essence that I had so that I could be slightly stronger when it came to fighting these very, very strong tiers of dinos. I then tried to kill this soul terror bird from earlier. Well, oh god, everything's enraged on me. Oh! <laughs> god damn! Well, that was a big mistake. After retrieving my body, I was able to make my first kibble and I killed a feather light as well as a beta spiritual dodo for their essence and souls and a wind parasaur as well. I then found a lightning pteranodon which was hopefully going to be my first tame. This was the elemental kibble that I had made up earlier. All I needed to do was knock it out hopefully and I would be able to tame it up with the elemental kibble that I had made earlier. A single headshot to the head and I was able to knock it out thankfully and I fed it the elemental kibble and it was able to get tamed up. My first tame and my first fly. I mean, technically my first usable tame. However, Bolt would not make it through the night. We just lost Bolt and my life to an ultimate zombie tech raptor. Day sinks would bring more pain. A Gorgon Rex spawned outside of our base, but I was able to get away from it. However, an Alpha Earthquake Rex decided to appear and I got sucked into a black hole where I was killed by the Earthquake Rex. This was going to be fun. I then respawned to try and get my body back when Mr. Alpha Earthquake Rex decided to reappear twice and killed me again. Thankfully it wasn't all bad news and I was able to go ahead and knock out this wood triceratops and successfully tame it up. So I had my first herbivore and I was able to use this to gather some berries. The next day began with me absorbing the wood triceratops into my egg machine. Like I said, once you absorb the female versions of the tame, they will continuously produce eggs, you just lose access to them. I then found a windstorm, pteranodon, bowled it and then went ahead, backed out of its storm with a sliver of health left and tried to knock it out. Thankfully, a couple of headshots to the head and it was sleepy time for our pteranodon friend. I then found a volatile pteranodon, got that knocked out as well, before I was absolutely murdered by a crystal feral. After successfully taming up the first pteranodon, I managed to get it cried up, back to base and saddled up, when a prime siren rock drake decided to pay me a visit and stun me, unfortunately. Well, you can guess what happened next. Are you kidding me? Take off pteranodon. <laughs> Brand new Pteranodon just died. <laughs> the suffering didn't end there, however, with the Rock Drake also killing me again and destroying all the structures in my base. Thankfully, I still had the Windstorm Pteranodon so I could fly around on that and use that to get around. The beginning of day 9 meant base building time. I had decided to settle on a mountain's edge just up from the starting point of that beach when a Rock Elemental just spawned in the middle of nowhere in front of my base. So... Instead of trying to tease it, I just decided to walk it off the edge and then I continued building up my base. Now, I was going for a very basic design here. This was the beginnings of it and uh, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking to be completely honest when designing this base. It's uh, very questionable. I was kind of going for like a, I don't know, like a V shape, a wedge shape. Nonetheless, that was what I had to work with for the time being. 
The following day began by me taming up a zombie parasaur. I then went back to base and decided to place all my various workstations such as my Amiga workbench, the kibble machine, a bunch of refining forges, mortar and pestle as well as my simple bed. When I ventured out to try and knock out some more pteranodons. I did manage to knock out two pteranodons and I placed my egg collector, returned back to those pteranodons to tame them up. Thankfully they did tame up, however these guys were going to just be absorbed by my egg collecting machine so that we could continue producing eggs. The next morning began and I started it by knocking out some more wild dinos. I was going to need a lot of egg production in order to progress through Amiga's tier system. Now let me quickly explain how Amiga's tier system works. There are 12 tameable variants, each with their own abilities and stat multipliers. Some being stronger than others and some having more utility than the others. Now there are also 6 different tiers which also boost stats depending on the tier you tame. However, you need to have the variant eggs from the previous tier before you can tame the next tier. So I needed to basically tame all of the basic variants in order to get to the next tier, which was the beta, then alpha, then prime, then ultimate, then omega. So I continued on my rampage of taming up any dinos that I didn't have, any of the variants that I didn't have, when I had knocked out a whole bunch and they all vanished. Something had managed to kill them all. So all I was left with was a single knocked out trike and I had about five different dinos knocked out. Thankfully the farming trike did tame up and I was able to get that back to my egg machine as well. The next day I had a track of Pomeo Scorpius outside of my base so I had to kill it when I conveniently decided to walk off the edge for some reason. I couldn't stop this, it just happened and I just walked off the edge. None of the keys were pressed down so I don't know why. But on my way back to the base, I found a couple of friends on the way. Only difference being these friends wanted to murder me. Not once, but twice. I then took my farming Triceratops out for some berries, went ahead and knocked out a shield Triceratops, and then decided to get sucked into a Singularity Vortex, losing my new Pteranodon and my life. After that fun experience, I had nothing on me but a parachute, so I had to secret agent it back down to my body in order to retrieve my corpse so that I could get my items back. I then successfully huh? tamed up the shield triceratops from earlier, and then I managed to find a blizzard pteranodon that I also was able to knock out, as well as a meteor anki. However, I was only able to tame up the pteranodon and get it in a soul ball before I died to an alpha detonate raptor. Wonderful. The next day consisted of more knocking out and more taming, mainly of pteranodons and I also found a packy as well that I could knock out. Main reason I was doing pteranodons because they only needed one kibble so they were our best bet in order to tame up, they required the least amount of resources. So I was able to get a bunch of different tames tamed up today and I was really happy about that. I then managed to find an uncontrollable parasaur and I had no idea what it did but it seemed very strong so I got to work at knocking it out, ran out of arrows however so I had to club it till it submitted to my brute power and thankfully I was able to tame it up as well. However I couldn't get a saddle on it, I couldn't ride it and then it finally occurred to me it's an uncontrollable parasaur, that makes sense now. I made some more narcotics as well as figuring out that you could actually imbue saddles with the essence increasing their armour. I threw out the uncontrollable parasaur with a saddle and tried to ride it and it just booted me off, instead deciding to go on a rampage to anything and everything around it in the vicinity. It did have a very high stats however, it just was not going to work for me. I then wanted to test the strength of one of my new flyers, the explosive pteranodon, and he hit for 900 damage. This guy is one of our strongest tames. I then finished up the day by screwing up a knockout by shooting a collective pteranodon in the body instead of the head and it managed to fly away from me. Oh god, it's swimming for me. Creepy ass damn piranha. After dealing with the dimensional piranha, I then decided to get yeeted off my pteranodon by my favourite teams in all of art, the micro raptors. And well, yeah, I got one shot by a beta earth rubble golem. I also imbued my Pteranodon saddle and it got a massive increase in armor which is going to be awesome for us. And thankfully my Pteranodon after flying out there was still alive, only barely. I now needed to try and get my body back. Thankfully I was able to rush down there, dodge the elemental and get my body and then fly out of there without any casualties happening. I then managed to knock out and tame a wood Pteranodon to add to my collection. I wrapped up the day by trying to kill a loot pteranodon when a mech appeared out of freaking nowhere trying to murder me. Fudge knuckles? 
Where the hell did he come from? The next day involved lots more tranking and lots more taming, starting with a brutal Dodicarus, and then I decided to just purvey the damage that a meteor strike would do from the heavens above. Thankfully it didn't affect me, but I managed to find a Phoenix Anki and knock that out as well. And then I found a Brutal Pteranodon, which I also knocked out. These guys were just falling like dominoes to me, as well as an Overlord Pteranodon. Now these dinos were males, but they were going to be flies that I could use to get around on. With my new Dodic, I was then able to go ahead and farm up a bunch of stones so that I could complete my base into the design that I wanted. More or less so, I suppose. The next day was spent farming up resources and getting more of the base ready. I needed a bunch of metal, a bunch of berries so that I could make some more narcotics, which would allow me to make the Amiga narcotics. And then I found a trucker blood crystal wyvern and managed to knock that out. I managed to successfully tame up the brand new blood crystal wyvern, chucked it in a soul ball, flew out of there before anything could kill it. Now, this guy didn't actually work how I expected it to. Here's an overview of how the tracker variant works. I thought we were going to be able to see a bunch of different dinos on the map and be able to see what they are, but it didn't really work like that, unfortunately, when a Microraptor managed to knock me off my Pteranodon and kill me. Absolutely destroyed by a goddamn fucking Microraptor. I hate those bastards. They need to be purged in the fires of hell. After returning back to my body, I found a Beta Psychosis Rex that I wanted to try and tame. However, it was losing a fight to a Cinemacrops and a, a Diplo. So that's wonderful for me. Bro, he murdered it. What the hell? Hope wasn't completely lost, however, as I did manage to find a Beta Warp Shadow Mane. After tranking it multiple times and it running away from me, I was able to knock it out. I tamed it up the next morning and this was my first beta T creature that I had gotten. So I decided to test it out on this Parasaur here, just to see how much damage it would do. It was pretty solid, 2300 damage is quite a lot of damage. After venturing around with it a little bit, I decided to try and fight this collective gas bag, not realizing that there was an Amiga Zombie Triceratops next to me, and I accidentally hit it with my warp attack, nuking me and the Shadow Mane in the process. However, it got so much better than that. After returning to the location where I died, my body was gone. I lost two tames in that. I then decided to spectate a fight between a beta self-destructive Rex and an Amiga Wind gas bag thinking I could tame the Beta Rex if it decided to kill the gas bag. However, it died to the gas bag, and me not realizing self-destructive meant blew me up and my bird in the process. Thankfully, I still had my Blood Crystal Wyvern. However, I got freaking launched into the stratosphere when jumping off it. No idea why that happened for, but it got so much better than this. On returning to my body to try and retrieve it, I got attacked by an Alpha Earthquake Sabertooth. I then managed to find a beta fire tech rex that looked real juicy and something that I could actually use to damage stuff and kill things. You already know how my luck is going to pan out though, don't you? Don't you? We couldn't tame it because it got absolutely murdered by something nearby. However, it looked at my luck was finally starting to turn around. I had found a 119 supernova rex wandering around down near the beach and I had to go for it. However, on wandering down the beach, I attacked a random Dilophosaur and it spawned in a goddamn dragon. I then knocked out a Beta Astral Dodo so that I could add it to my egg machine and I tamed up the Supernova Rex. Cried it and got it back to base so I could saddle it up and test out its abilities. I managed to imbue its saddle as well, increasing everything about it and making it even tankier. Now, I decided to test it out by attacking a wood stego. Obviously not my best decision as they do take reduced damage. However, up against these Sabertooth and other dinos, it was doing a lot of damage and I finally had a reliable damage dealer that I could use to kill things and collect souls. Oh no, we killed some stuff. Yo. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? We're doing damage, it's nuts. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go! I returned to base and found all my walls damaged for some reason. I have no idea what did it, but there was nothing here when I got back. Thankfully, all my structures were still standing and I was able to make the kibble. I did, however, also lose my crop plots, which once again wasn't that big of a deal. 
I managed to tame up the Beta Astral Dodo, and I also knocked out a Beta Wind Dilophosaur and a resilient Tyranid. I also found a Beta Fairy Tyranid on just chilling on the side of a cliff. One headshot, boom bada boom, got that knocked out. Cried up my Wyvern because I was getting attacked by a prime random Sabretooth and just died to it so that I could save my Wyvern. Managed to tame up the Fairy PT as well as taking out my Singularity Rex and trying to fight a Soul Parasol. Thankfully, I killed the Soul Parasol, gathering a bunch of souls in the process. However, this Amiga Gacha had something to say about that. I just saw that. That was an Amiga Tsunami Gacha. Holy shizes, mother freakers. I then tamed up a Resilient Trike and a Wind Trike and found myself on the receiving end of a Singularity Vortex. I then spent the rest of the day farming up materials. The next day, I found the perfect mount, a Tsunami Pteranodon. However, it killed me as I bowled it and I proceeded to have a mental breakdown. But it killed me... Oh man, this mod is absolutely murdering me. I was able to tame up the Tsunami Pteranodon in the end anyway though. 150 and it came out at 224, I was pretty happy. I then found a Supernova Pteranodon and I had to tame. The Cosmic Dinos in this mod are super strong and they have really good abilities. I also found a Beta Necromancer Listro that I had to get knocked out and tamed up as well. It was a female, super easy tame to get. And then I found some more dinos to knock out and try and tame, including a Dodo, a Spectral Dillo, and then another Beta Controller Listro. I also found a Beta Stone Dodo, which I knocked out. The next morning, I made myself the net gun and headed out to tame up the dinos that I knocked out earlier. It was then time to test out the new net gun. Now, this kind of had the same similarities as the uh, the net launcher, I think it's called, but uh, it's not as strong. So this essentially allows you to bowl a creature's 25% larger, I believe. That's what the that's what the terminology is. So you can pretty much use it on like parasols and stuff like that. So I managed to use it on some PTs, which I knocked out. A beta farming Jabol, which is going to help me out greatly. It's going to pretty much deal with all the farming side of things back at the base. As well as a beta brutal Jaboa so that I could get the egg tea. Now, even though these guys are mammals, they are still able to produce eggs in this mod. The same applies to like Fenris and stuff like that. Where they aren't technically able to reproduce as uh, eggs, but they do produce eggs. Nonetheless, I was flying back at the night time and I got hit by a Prime Thunderstorm Rock Elemental out of nowhere. Just absolutely obliterated me. I returned the next day to team up all the creatures that I had knocked out the previous night as well as to retrieve my body. I also knocked out an Obsidian Ovis and tamed that up. These guys will passively produce Obsidian over time. And then I found an Explosive Raptor, net gunned it, tranked it and was able to get that knocked out. I then found a beta stone jug bug. I thought this guy could be useful for obviously producing stone, so I went ahead and tried to knock it out. Successfully managed to knock it out in the process, however, and decided to take it for a bit of a test run once it was tamed. On returning to base, I threw out all of my new teams that I had just gotten, separating the ones that I wanted to keep from the ones that were going to get absorbed from the egg collector. And just like that, they were all gone. Aside from the farming Jaboa and the Obsidian Ovis, the rest were going bye-bye. I then decided to take my harvesting to round it on out for a bit of a test run. These guys had the special ability where you pressed X and they would harvest resources from everywhere around them in the vicinity. Now, they also had increased weight, which would help drastically with this. And you can see here we were getting a crap ton of materials in the process. However, one thing I did notice was that it wasn't the greatest at gathering metal, however, so I would still probably have to gather that myself. The next day was filled with absolute pain. And more pain. And more pain. And another mental breakdown. I love getting killed by ultimate bugs. It's my favorite pastime. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I was waiting for that. The next morning, I found a big old scary Amiga Rex. I followed this guy around in order to get all the essence and souls that I could get from him. I also got my first Amiga soul. Then I decided to test the net gun out on Akano to see if we could strip it down. That worked out perfectly for me, ending up killing me and my Pteranodon in uh, the process. Another I mental breakdown, here I come. Seriously. <laughs> I then went ahead and tried to add more flies to my repertoire by knocking out a Plague Pteranodon and then trying to knock out this Lightning Storm Dodo. However, this Gamma Ray Zombie Dodo had other plans and decided to Gamma Ray my Pteranodon into Oblivion. 
So not only did I lose a Pteranodon, I then also lost this Dota that I was trying to knock out. However, I did knock out an explosive Pteranodon to round up the day. I then knocked out a Beta Wind Pteranodon. However, I did get chased by a Raptor and changed its mind at the last minute, but I got killed by explosive ants instead. This mod is so much fun. I did manage to tame up the Plague Pteranodon from the day before, so I could fly again. And I also tamed up that Dodo that also was the cause of losing my other Pteranodon. As you can see, so much taming was going on here because I was constantly trying to get the other tiers so we could level up and get stronger dinos. And then I wanted to get a beaver dam cementing pace, but uh, obviously the beavers have incredible powers, so I had to be careful and make sure I dodged all of their extra abilities. And then I found it. A beta brutal Pteranodon at 147. This guy was going to be super strong. I then spent the rest of the afternoon knocking out various teams located across the beach. There were quite a few beta versions of these dinos. So if I could get those guys knocked out and tamed up, I'd be able to put them in the egg collector. After returning back to the server for a few days, I was camped by a beta Gamma Ray Mantis. So I threw out some teams that I thought could handle it, but this guy was just absolutely relentless. He did so much damage to us. I almost lost so many teams because of him. I was trying to take him off the edge of the cliff. I was trying to do everything in my power to get this guy away from my base. He would just kill me again and again and again. I spent the entirety of day 32 just trying to get out of my base and trying to evade this mantis. So after brutally dying to it over and over again, I thought, what better revenge than to tame this sucker up and make it my undying slave? So that's exactly what I went ahead to try and do. Net gunned it and kept pumping it full of trank arrows. And of course, a Kano had to get involved in the process. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, I'm going insane! Bro, that's cheating! You fucking bastard! After taming up the Gamma Ray Mantis, I then threw out all of the tames that I had tamed up while being out, so the Dodos and the Pteranodon to get them absorbed into the Egg Machine, and then it was time to use the Mantis to see how much damage he would do. And I was getting absolutely obliterated by an Alpha Stone Sabertooth. However, I changed to my club and I was able to kill this guy with ease. I then continued back to my base from my spot when some scorpions decided to ambush me and, well, guess what decided to happen. This brand new mantis that had been causing me so much grief died. So after the mantis debacle, I then went ahead and lined the outside of the base with some dinosaur gates as well as some metal spike walls. Hopefully to deter any tames or wild dinos that were going to come up to my base and attack me. So it was looking like it was going to be pretty solid base defense and prevent any dinos from getting in. There was this side that I hadn't really covered, but I think it'd be all right. I then decided to place down the soul furnace, which would use souls to power itself. And it would act essentially two times as faster as a preserving bin and a industrial forge. I didn't really like the idea of using my souls to power it. However, as I was kind of limited on the amount of souls I had. I then also planted my crop plots to get those going for the future tiers of kibble. The next day was spent organizing my base and placing all of my structures that I needed to continue through this series. I also expanded the top half of my base by introducing more crop plots as well as a sort of area where I could walk up to and go onto the roof. I chucked some metal railings down so I could hopefully protect my crops and crop plots from breaking from anything trying to destroy our base but I don't really know what I decided to use that top area for. It was then time to try and tame my first alpha creature. Thankfully, I did find this alpha Waterstorm Dodicarus that I managed to knock out, and this was hopefully going to be my first alpha. Built some spike walls to try and protect it, and then I found an alpha fire Pteranodon. I then ventured a little further out and found an explosive parasol which I knocked out, as well as an alpha fairy Pteranodon. I was starting to get into the alpha tier of things, and I was really excited. I also tried to net an Alpha Banshee Parasaur, but it killed me, as well as a Beta Blizzard Featherlight. Thankfully, I returned and was able to knock both of these guys out, as well as an extra Pteranodon, and the Banshee Parasaur was giving me so much grief. Look at this. <laughs> oh, stubborn bastard. Eventually, I did manage to get him knocked out, however, and I had a whole list of dinos ready to get tamed up. 
The next day I returned to my Alpha Waterstorm Dodicarus and successfully tamed it up. I also made myself a Soul Gun so it was going to be much easier to cryo up all the tames that I had managed to get. And you can see here I did get quite a few of them if not all of the ones that we had on the taming list. And these were all going to go towards the Egg Collector. I then decided to jump off after finding a Comet Packy but I got killed by an Alpha Water Raptor. Thankfully I was able to return with one of the new Pteranodons that I had and I was able to just save my beta brutal pteranodon. This is why I don't name them for, because I don't get a chance to get attached to them. I found knocked out and tamed an alpha psychosis pteranodon. I also tamed up the previous tames as well that I had knocked out. So they were pretty easy to get once I was able to get the kibble into them and they were actually asleep so they couldn't use their special abilities. But I was out of soul balls so I had to make a dino train back to base and I actually managed to tame up the Paki Rhinosaurus as well. So after all my hard labor trying to tame these guys up, it was finally time to sacrifice them to the egg collector. All me beautiful dinos that were so painstakingly tamed, gone. Just like that. But it was for a good cause. We now had multiple tiers of eggs so we could finally move up and start getting more of the tiers. You can see here we were now able to get some prime tier dinos which is exactly what I set out to do. Not before I tamed up another beta harvesting pteranodon though and also took out my new Alpha Waterstorm Dodicarus for a test run just to see what kind of damage it could do since it is now our strongest tame that we own. So it was a bit of a tough one, but I mean, its ability was on a very long cooldown, but when I finally did get the chance to use it on this Kentroki, it actually did quite a lot of damage. Obviously, this is a terrible subject to test this on because the spectral Kentro just went invisible, but it was still dealing a thousand damage per tick, so we just had to find something that didn't turn invulnerable from us. The next day while out, I found an alpha lethal dillo that I knocked out, as well as my first quest scroll. Now, unfortunately, this quest scroll was useless to kill like 400 compies, I think it was. 1,000 wild dinos while riding a compie, actually, that's so much worse. I then took my beta brutal pteranodon out and just killed a bunch of stuff over here in the uh, white cliffs. Just so that I could get a bunch of souls as well, because I was struggling to get souls in essence. And this guy was our strongest guy. Now, I then also found an Amiga Astral Jaboa, which I wanted to kill. Because when you kill your first Amiga tier dino, you get the Amiga Beacon, which is something that we'll need later. These are amount of souls that I got from farming for the day. A decent haul, but we could definitely do better. The following day, we found a female Beta Brutal Pteranodon. This meant that I could tame it and breed it up with my male counterpart for an offspring and imprint on the offspring. I was able to knock it out and dodge the killer compies while in the process, which was awesome. We then found an element parasaur, which we harvested up for a butt ton of element. You can see all the element here. And then we found an alpha siren aloe. Now we really wanted to tame this up. However, the beta brutal anki or alpha brutal anki had other plans in mind and killed it. We returned the next day to tame up the beta brutal pteranodon and then we got them breeding. I needed that offspring egg and I finally got it. We found an Amiga Soul on the way back to base and we took out a colossal Triceratops as well. I did this just for shits and giggles, it was a huge Triceratops so I figured we could kill it easily. Then the unthinkable happened. My Pteranodon died to an uncontrollable familiar. This was the aftermath and this is why once again I must reiterate why we don't name our team so far. <laughs> because they just get one shot by absolutely everything in this. Which really sucks but nonetheless it is what happens. We then made the Amiga Beacon as well to test out what exactly this did because I figured we'd need it for something later on. So we took a read of what exactly the Amiga Beacon does and essentially it's a summoner for bosses and potential wild tames. We then spotted a Prime Fairy Rex and well that died to a Amargosaurus. So once again another tame down the drain that we could have tamed. We began the day by increasing the armor of a PT saddle and then we took our harvesting PT out to gather metal and resources. Now I wasn't really good at gathering metal, unfortunately you can see he was mainly just getting stone, but we did manage to get some wooden thatch. However an Amiga Psychosis RG had other plans and decided to murder my PT in the process. So me being who I am accepted my fate and died to the RG as well. We then wanted to test the Amiga beacon, so we chucked in 10 elemental souls into an Amiga soul to see what we would get. So this should be a collective creature. A basic collective oil jug bug has been summoned. Well, that's super fucking disappointing. There it is there. <laughs> we then knocked out and tamed a beta taming scorpion. 
So guys, I journeyed out to the Valkyro cave just located near our base, down near uh, 3451. It's just really close. It's the artifact of the Crag Cave, and we actually got a blueprint for a Mastercraft compound bow. We got a bunch of other stuff as well. We got uh, some saddles from flying around, hitting up drops as well. We got some chitin, some chainsaws, some carbonemus, and dodicarus. Just a bunch of random uh, extra. There was an alpha meteor saver that we wanted to tame up and had built a trap for. So we carded it into the trap, but we were stuck and couldn't get out, and it killed us. Wonderful. So we brought out our tame and scorpion to try and knock it out and well that was a massive mistake as this meteor destroyed the stone trap I was not expecting that but it also destroyed our scorpion and our scorpion did absolutely no torpor damage whatsoever It then went ahead and destroyed our base as well in the process Here's me thinking we're nice and safe in our nice little stone base and it absolutely gets decimated by this guy So we gave up on trying to tame the meteor saber tooth we then found a loot pteranodon and killed it for heaps of loot. However, the loot was super disappointing. Not really anything that we could use in a bunch of primitive stuff, so I was a bit disheartened by that, but nonetheless we had to move on. It was then time to take our lethal dillo out for a test run, and it absolutely decimated all of these beavers around us. Now the main reason we did this was because there was a loot beaver that we wanted to kill, and I didn't want these guys aggroing on us while we were trying to fight the beaver. So we successfully managed to kill the beaver and the loot that we got from it was okay-ish. We were honestly more excited for the crops and jerky. On day 45 I was able to make the Mastercraft compound bow and just in time because we had found this prime colossus Andrew Sarkis. So I got to work at firing tranks into it but I had my hardships losing my beta brutal pteranodon in the process and my life twice as well. I only had an egg left of those pteranodons but it didn't really matter anymore because we had the Prime Colossal Andrew Sarkis successfully knocked out. All we needed to do now was feed it the necessary kibble. We made the kibble back at base and dumped it in the Andrew Sarkis, taming it up in the process. We then brought the big boy back to base and imbued his saddle to take him for a test run. That's so scary. I don't want to lose this guy already. Oh yeah, forgot about that attack. I don't know what the hell happened there. Yo, we killing things now. Let's go. The next day was literally just spent slaughtering countless amounts of dinos. We also killed a couple of megas here and there, but it was mainly just slaughtering as many dinos as we possibly could. I just needed to farm as many souls and essence as I could. We finally had a decent team that could actually deal some damage and kill things now and not get one shot itself. Although we did kill our first Paragon Wolf as well and got our first Paragon Soul. However, I got booted off for some reason and was murdered by a Prime Wind Perlovia. Thankfully, we were able to return back there and he had pretty much decimated everything in the area once again. We really love this guy. He's great. I, some weird glitch happened here. I have no idea what it was. But we finally decided to give him a name. Hulk. With Hulk in tow, we found an ultimate loot Brontosaurus at 146. It had a huge amount of health at 1.2 million. Unfortunately, I did get killed by it. I, for some reason, whenever we jumped like that or whenever Hulk was on a weird angle, we got booted off the saddle and killed. So it happened a couple of times, but we threw out our Alpha Lethal Dillo as well to try and help us out here. And we spent the entire day trying to kill this loot Bronto for some loot. And you know what the worst part is? The loot was pretty dog shit. I don't think it was worth us killing it. Ooh, baby. Look at all those juicy souls. Heaps of Amigas too, which is great. Look at all of that. Mmm, damn. The next few days were pretty much spent just murdering anything we could find, really. We were super happy that we now had Hulk and we could actually deal damage to stuff. We were killing Paragons and everything. But we almost lost Hulk due to fall damage. Look at this damage come in. Look at that. Our entire health bar just absolutely depleted. We found a couple of more Paragon Souls from killing some Paragon creatures. So I wasn't actually aware of how the Paragon Souls worked. And you'll see that come into play later on in the video when I should have been spending more time doing that instead of what I was actually doing. 
But nonetheless, I still managed to knock out an Alpha Teleporter Dodo. We killed Bolt. I don't know who that was. And knocked out a Prime Resilient Pteranodon. And we killed another Paragon. Also knocked out another Prime Psychosis Parasaur. And we killed an Alpha Loot Deinonychus for some more loot. Not really anything crazy here once again. I, it wasn't really... It was mainly just for the grinder. We also tried to knock out this Alpha Dimensional Parasaur, but killed it instead. We then found and killed our first soul dino, getting a bunch of souls in the process. We then returned to tame up the Pteranodon, the Dodo, and the Parasaur from the previous day. We then thought, why not give the beacon one more try? This time it summoned in an Alpha Brutal Basilisk. Now, the Brutals have the ability to cause bleed damage, so we were considering taming it, but in the end we decided to just murder it. Day 51, and we spotted an ultimate lethal Rex. Now, these guys are absolute beasts. The lethal variant allows the dino's attacks to apply a stacking effect, causing them to deal more damage after more successive bites. They'll also receive a heal for a percentage of their max health when they proc this. You'll see this come into play when we get against the bosses. So we were able to successfully knock it out. We then instantly ran back to base, chucked the kibble into him and got him tamed up. We also made a saddle and imbued it for him as well. And the saddle that we got for him was really well. Then the rest of the afternoon was spent murdering everything in sight. You can see the stacking effect there. We were hitting for 30,000 then it jumped to 27,000. And you can see there on the mammoth the same situation. So this was going to be great for the boss fights when we got to them. We then figured it was time to take our big boy up against something else. An Amiga Brutal Alpha Carnotaurus. Now, yes, I probably could have knocked this out and attempted to tame it. But eh, we didn't have the necessary tier of kibble just yet. But you can see here that we were starting to deal a butt ton of damage. And the damage jumped from 48,000 to 144,000 to 1.3 million damage. So I figured we'd try and test this guy on one of the bosses. So we summoned in a basic pygmy broodmother with 10 million health. Now, the fight itself was grueling. We did take a little bit of damage here and there from the pygmy broodmother, but I did bring health potions with me. And you can see here that the damage did start to stack up. And when we propped our lethality effect, we started getting health regen. And just like that, we had killed our first boss in the Amiga series. Only day 52 it took us to get here. But we also came up with a name for our Rex, Fatality. We then decided to go ahead and try and take on another boss. This time it was a Dimensional Broodmother. Honestly, this fight was just super annoying more than anything and tedious because the bloody bastard kept spinning us around so that we were facing our backs to it. But nonetheless, with the lethality effect of Fatality, we were able to absolutely murder the Broodmother in the process. The next day, we went up against one of the elemental bosses. Now, very similar to the tiers of tames you can get, the bosses also have stat changes. So, for example, the resilient bosses that we were fighting the day before, they only have a two times stat multiplier, I believe. The water elementals and the other guys have a six times. So, we jumped off Fatality before he could die, cryoed him up, and just ran away from this Water Megapithecus, accepting my fate to die in the process, but saving Fatality from a murder. So, on returning back to base, we made up the Soul Grinder, which we could use to grind boss souls into shards, and that would allow us to essentially upgrade our dinos more, as well as some of our structures. So, I thought I could upgrade my Rex by using a Paragon Soul and some Amiga Essence, Turns out you can only actually upgrade the creature whose Paragon Soul you have. So in this example, I used a Titanium and Neonodrome. Turns out I can only upgrade a Titanium and Neonodrome to the Amiga stage, not an actual Rex. So I needed a Rex Paragon Soul to actually be able to do that. The next day was spent murdering more Amigas and more loot dinos for more juicy loot. We actually got some decent loot from this Alpha Tech Raptor that you can see here. It was, it was okay, we were going to grind most of it anyway, but did more killing, but we also knocked out a Prime Spectral Dimorphodon as well. We also managed to knock out a Beta Ice Giant Queen Bee so we could get some more honey, and I found this Mud Cake Slice somewhere, I don't know how I got it, but we ate that, and for some reason we were full of crap for 5 minutes. I, I had no idea what this was at the time, whatsoever. You guys are going to love what happens, but I had no idea. We then took out our new Boomstick weapon on some test runs against some fish. <laughs> Guys, 
<laughs> I'm so sad that I just missed this. I wasn't recording. It was, it was, I was about to start the new day recording and I ate that mud cake slice and I just gave birth to a baby ultimate psychosis craptor. I, I, <laughs> I was literally like putting some stuff away in the fridge and this dude just burst from my asshole. After that riveting experience, we returned to tame up the previous dinos from the previous day. Yo, I feel sorry for the poor bee. Poor little thing. It's getting squashed by my big rump. Day 58 was spent imprinting our craptor. It wanted a berry for some reason. We also spawned in a ultimate controller Perlovia that we spent the rest of the afternoon trying to tame up. Luckily, it was aggroed on our Rex and just completely forgot about me existing. Not that I'm complaining. And we successfully managed to knock out a the Polovia as well. Well, this was the effort of our hard work. Of giving birth to a poo dinosaur. Our ultimate psychosis craptor. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Pretty solid amount of damage to do straight off the bat. I'll take it. It is also imprinted, I believe. Yeah. So we've got some extra stats here. I also imp uh, imbued its uh, saddle as well, so that's good. We also built a giant beehive as well with the honey from our queen bee being produced. This is going to make it easier for us to get the veggie cakes. And we tamed up the ultimate controller Pelovia as well, which meant we can now get Omega tier guardian tamed. We also tamed up a metal hyena don that would passively produce metal and I took stock of our Omega souls as well. We had quite a lot throughout the Polovia so that we could absorb it into the egg collector so that would uh, produce the ultimate tier of guardian eggs which meant we could get Omega. You can see there we now have guardian and we summoned in a basic crafting Megapithecus. However there was a slight situation with this. We couldn't actually damage it. So with the utility tames, you essentially had to use a utility tame to damage them. They took no damage from any other variant. We then received a quest from killing a wild dino. I don't remember which one exactly it was, but we picked up the quest and it was to kill 4,000 dinos while riding a Rex. This would give us four Rex Paragon Souls, which is something that we needed in order to upgrade our ultimate Rex into an Amiga. So I spent the rest of the day going ahead and killing more bosses. This time we fought a lightning manticore and we actually felt up to the task of defeating this one unlike the water megapithecus that we tried fighting earlier. And we eventually killed him gaining access to a whole bunch of new tech engrams as well. I also went ahead and killed a fairy dodo rex as well. These guys are from the mythical tier, so I believe they had a four times multiplier. So they weren't as hard as the elementals, but they still were a decent fight. The next few days were also just spent trying to get this quest progress. We needed to kill 4,000 dinos. So we figured we might as well kill some Amiga dinos while we were there and stock up on Amiga souls. We got quite a lot of Amiga souls from doing this. And at the end of the first day, we had killed 142 dinos. We then also managed to knock out an Alpha Comet Allo, which was the next tier in the Cosmic tier of Dinos. I went to grab some cement and paste and got absolutely obliterated by a Firestorm Castoroidus and all his friends. Thankfully, Fatality was still alive and well, and we managed to kill an Ultimate Essence Allosaurus as well, getting a bunch of Essence to do whatever with we wanted to. However, there are actually chests in this mod. We'll get to those in a little bit, but first off, we killed the Broodmother. My thinking was, if we head to this cave, there's a ton of insects in here. We should be able to get quite a lot of kills in a relatively short amount of time here and hopefully get slightly closer to that goal. Headed into the cave and we just tried to decimate everything we could. And at the end of the day, we had successfully gotten up to 490 kills. After killing the Broodmother, we hung around in the Redwoods for a little bit, killing everything we saw. And this also netted us an actual Paragon Soul from a Terror Bird, which we would probably never use. We also got a Tech Rex saddle from killing the Broodmother, so we imbued that with some Amiga Essence as well and chucked that onto Fatality instead of his regular Rex saddle. We then went ahead and killed another Beta Soul combi before summoning in a Beta Cursed Morelotops. However, we attacked it too soon and it despawned. Now these are the chests I was talking about earlier. They're essentially powered up loot drops and give us extra good loot, but we need to pay Essence in order to open them. The next day we made the industrial cooker so that we could make up all the sweet veggie cakes with ease instead of using a cooking pot. 
We needed the sweet veggie cakes in order to make the final tier of kibble. We also installed a dino tracker mod so that I could now track down dinos and find particular ones. I feel like we had gone through Amiga without using this for long enough, but now it was getting to the end game side of things that we were going to start to need to find specific dinos. So we managed to knock out and tame this ultimate psychosis Tyranodon, and we also knocked out this prime medial Dimorphodon, which we tamed as well. This Dino Tracker mod was great. We were able to find whatever we wanted and we found this Amiga Essence Shinehorn, this Amiga Loot Terror Bird. We got a bunch of loot, a bunch of essences, and then we also found a Loot Trudon. Look at all this Ascendant tier loot and all this essence that we had managed to get. Majority of the loot would get grinded up, but there were some replacements. With the essence we found, we were able to open up some chests as well, which granted us these soul shards in the top left hand corner, which we could use to upgrade our equipment back at the base. We then also found another prime soldier boa, and right next to that we also had a treasure ovus. This would highlight treasure chests in the area for us, which enabled us to unlock even more treasure chests to get even more loot. This Dino Tracker mod is really good, however I wouldn't recommend using it until you're sort of halfway through, maybe a th like three quarters of the way through the mod, which is where I figured we were up to at this stage, because it does kind of ruin it for you when you can track down every dino that you possibly need. But I feel like I definitely completed most of it without it. Day 69 was spent nice. opening more loot chests for more loot. I had just the treasure hunter buff, so I figured we could go ahead and hunt more of these down. Found a chest wanting 1600 meager essence. That was a butt ton that I didn't have. Then we found the water crystal wyvern queen just hovering about in the open world. There was one downside to this, however. She could only be damaged by players. So we had to actually fight her on foot. So we didn't even bother with that. On returning to the base, the soul shards that I had gathered were used to craft the egg upgrade for the egg collector. This would increase the production rate of eggs, and then I chucked all the loot that I didn't want into our dimensional grinder, so that I could break all of this down into useful resources, because I wasn't going to use any of this. We got a butt ton of resources, as well as souls from grinding down the Amiga weapons. Day 71 and we had found a beta element Trudon. This time, however, I wasn't going to kill it. So I got to work at net gunning it and then knocking it out with my club and we had successfully knocked it out, cheering. Then I checked the Dino Searcher and we had found a Paragon Rex. It was only level 5 so that made our job so much easier. However, it was down in the Chalk Hills so we had to make our way down there in order to kill it. Now, the reason we wanted to kill this Paragon Rex was because it would allow us to upgrade Fatality from an Ultimate Lethal Rex to an Amiga Lethal Rex. So we took Hulk out to kill the Paragon Rex just because he's so much faster than getting around and then Fatality, and we successfully managed to kill the Paragon Rex, grabbing its soul in the process. But we also managed to grab a Deinonychus Paragon Soul as well. So we made the upgrade item for our Rex, chucked it in there, and just like that, Fatality went from an ultimate lethal Rex to an Amiga lethal Rex, doubling his stats in the process. Now, a little bit of a mistake on my part is this is where you use Paragon Souls. Paragon Souls increase the stats of your dinos by double each time, and you can use a maximum of 10 Paragon Souls. However, I was not aware of this and didn't even think about that or find out about this until about day 90. So we'll get into that more on later but you can see here we were going to try and track down a Amiga Comet Fenra. We had found one of these guys in the snow biome and they were 147 which meant we didn't need to worry about having to try and upgrade it with a Paragon Soul. So I got to work at trying to knock it out. It was a very tedious project but we ended up knocking it out successfully and taming it up. We also called the Fenra Lee Reed due to a guy that we know. So shout out to Lee Reed for watching this video. Here's your Fenra. We then tested out the Fenra and seeing its capabilities. Now this guy was actually kind of good because his frozen attack would freeze the enemies and then it would rain down the meteors upon them and they would take the burn damage. The next day we managed to find a female Prime Comet Fenra. Now yes it was a tier below our, it was two tiers below our Omega tiered Fenra, however we could still breed them as they were the same variants. We also found an Amiga Reflective Rex and it was in the name. I knocked myself out with my own Trank Arrow and the Rex just wandered around. Thankfully it didn't actually come over and kill me, so it just continued fighting that Bronto, but we were able to successfully knock out the Amiga Reflective Rex as well. 
We teamed up the Prime Comet Fenra as well and got her back to base as well as the Amiga Reflective Rex. On returning to base, we bred up our two Fenras, producing an egg in the process, and then we spent the rest of the day using our brand new Amiga Rex to kill as many bosses as we possibly could. The next day was once again spent killing bosses. However, I took a bit of time in between killing bosses to tame up a prime Firestorm Pteranodon when I decided to go up against a Meteor Dodo Wyvern. Thinking everything was okay, look at the damage we were doing, it wasn't really doing anything dangerous to us. Yo! Well, that's fucked. We are fucked now. Holy shit, that thing just wiped out our Rex like it was nothing. Uh, and I didn't have any backups. That was our only lethality Rex. Well, uh, this is going to be a challenge. So for the time being, I focused on my Fenris. With only 25 days left to go, I had to come up with a plan. Thankfully, I did find an Amiga Singularity Yeti out here, and it had a 2.7 million health, which seemed like a very large amount of health to me. So we went ahead and knocked it out and tried to tame it up. Thankfully, we were able to knock it out successfully. And then we returned the next day to finish taming it up. This guy was an absolute beast. That's kind of crazy. The next day, we had found an Amiga Absorbent Tropical Crystal Wyvern. These guys were able to generate a force field around themselves that would allow them to absorb any damage dealt to anything in the vicinity. So I figured it would be a very good boss tame dino to get. So with our Yeti, we pursued it and we were able to actually sit on the back of our Yeti and fire our bow off it. However, I do love hit registration in this game. It's super fun when it wants to work. We successfully managed to knock out the Amiga Absorbent Triple Crystal Wyvern. That's a goddamn mouth. We'll try saying that time five times faster. We returned and successfully tamed up the Crystal Wyvern, and it came out with 6.6 .6 million health. I was really happy about that. I then also found an Ultimate Waterstorm Kairuku, which I didn't actually have this tier yet, so I went ahead and knocked it out. This would enable us to get Omega Tier Elementals. The next day, the breeding continued. Now, these guys were on quite a long timer for breeding due to the way Ark Amiga works. However, me being the idiot did not realize this, however. So, breeding isn't actually the way you're supposed to play Amiga. You're supposed to not bother breeding an armor. You're supposed to just have one or two main dinosaurs from each variant. I didn't realize that, but nonetheless, we then went ahead and found an Amiga Gamma Ray Deinonychus. I figured Deinonychuses would be useful against the bosses because of their bleed effect, and we had seen what Gamma Ray Dinos had done to us in the past. However, it was stuck on this corpse, so I tried to clear it, but it got me instead. I don't know how it got unstuck, but it did. So we returned to it, firing more Trank Arrows into it, and it got us once again. Third time is a charm, right? You would be correct in saying that. Third time we returned to it, managed to net it, but not before our bow decided to glitch out and just have issues with it. So we had to keep reloading until it decided to work. We successfully managed to knock it out and tame it, and so we headed back to base. The next day we returned back to the White Cliffs and gathered a really good set of Ascendant Leggings, which is awesome. We could really use those, we didn't have good leggings. We also managed to kill an Amiga Essence Anki and tame up a Beta Explosive Dodicarus, as well as a Beta Breeding Triceratops, and we killed an Ultimate Soul Bronto after a huge slog of time. That took us so long. We also tamed up a Meltdown Carbonemus and killed an Amiga Soul Jaboa. We were just farming up resources at this stage, but we got absolutely murdered by an Amiga Familiar Titan Menina. There was an Essence Titan Menina here that I wanted to kill for all the Essence, so we flew back out there and got absolutely obliterated by minions. Thankfully, we had Big Boy on hand and we pretty much just used Big Boy to kill the Essence Titan Menina, but not before an Amiga Meltdown Dimorphodon killed me again. And then the trouble started. Lee had disappeared. He was the Fenra that we were riding into the Redwoods with, and he was gone. 
I could not find him anywhere. I could not find a body bag anywhere. There was no thingy of him in the tribe log, no death, nothing. He just vanished. The next day we returned back to breeding up our Fenris when I realized I had a Fenra Paragon song. Now I could actually use this to upgrade one of the ultimate Fenris into an Amiga so that we could just breed the Amigas together and have Amiga Fenris pumping out from the offspring. Fed it to the ultimate Fenra and we now had the two Amiga Fenris. I was super happy about that. I also tamed up a Raptor. I don't even remember what this Raptor was for, but it must have been something important. So day 83 bought me testing out our brand new Fenra pack against the bosses. However, I got super unlucky and had to fight this goddamn teleporter Megapithecus. It was a super annoying fight, but we managed to kill it in the end without losing anything. And then we summoned in a basic Spectral Broodmother to fight with our Fenris and our Deinonychus and our Reflective Rex. We were able to pretty much effectively nuke this Broodmother. Our Deinonychus, I think, was doing the most work with the Gamma Ray and its bleed, but we were able to kill it pretty effectively. So I figured these guys would make decent boss fighting dinos till the end. Well, I would hope so anyway, because I didn't know what actually awaited us. Took a quick look in my Trudon's inventory for the amount of element, and yeah, that speaks for itself. We then managed to tame up an ultimate Comet Deinonychus as well, so we could now breed our two Deinonychus together. Granted, they are different variants, but I had to upgrade this one first to an Amiga tier so that I would just get Amiga Deinonychuses. But it would be Amiga Comets and Amiga... We then also tracked down an Amiga Supernova Fenra, which we could throw into our mix of Fenras and use them to breed up. So I shot my first train tower and had built a trap for it, and you're not going to believe my luck. Watch this. Right before the damn trap, it decides to turn away and walk away. So you can obviously guess what's going to happen. You can definitely see that this guy is not going to end up going into the trap whatsoever. Nonetheless, I was able to successfully knock out the Supernova Fenra as well as tame it up. Day 86 arrived and we had tamed up an Amiga Controller Dodo. You're probably wondering, well, what do we need that for? Turns out you can actually make hybrids in Amiga and I only realized now. So all we needed to do was tame up two dinos of the same tier, which happened to be an Amiga Rex and an Amiga Dodo, bred them and we got a hybrid dino. <laughs> With a big ass head. Look at the size of that head. An Amiga Reflective Rex Dodo. So this is what we ended up getting. I'm a bit sad I only found out about the splicer now, but uh, this is our Rex Dodo. The next few days were spent breeding and hatching up more Fenra eggs as well as Deinonychus eggs. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this isn't really the proper way you're supposed to progress through Amiga. And I only discovered this after day 90, essentially, which is the next day coming up. But uh, I was kicking myself a little bit for this because I didn't realize that that's not how you're supposed to play Amiga. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. I mean, I guess you could play however you want to by building an army up or whatever. But I found that uh, I found out that you're better off essentially using multiple single dinos that have been tiered up utilizing Paragon Souls. Now, I wasn't aware of this earlier, so unfortunately, I did have to rush to get some Paragon Souls for a team, but you'll see that up and coming. So at the moment, we were just letting rip all of our babies, and I'd essentially assembled an army of Cosmic Deinonychus and Cosmic Fenris. So I took them all out, and we decided to test them out on some bosses, and here we have the Beta Ship Manticore. Thankfully, I also had my Absorbent Wyvern, which we could use to absorb all the damage from our teams around us by using health potions as well as stamina potions. We were able to kill the beta shield manticore with rather ease, I would say. So we went to the next step above, the alpha broodmother. All of these guys tear up in order for us to fight the next tier of bosses, which are the gods. And essentially, once you get to the prime tier of bosses, of these bosses here that you can see here, which is what we're fighting here, you are capable of taking on the gods. So we wanted to test ourselves by killing this prime collective manticore and we succeeded. So I figured we were ready for the god bosses. I even managed to kill an ultimate. We did also kill another Paragon Fenra and, and a Paragon Tropical Crystal Wyvern, which we fed to Big Boy and that doubled their stats to 51 million HP. And I also fed the Paragon Soul to another Fenra as well. 
Now it was go time and the realization of using Paragon Souls to rank up my dinos was what I should have been focusing on the entire time dawned on me. So I set out to try and tame a unique dire wolf called Frostbite. Now unique dinos are also increased in stats and everything and they also have two unique abilities. So I knocked out two different dire wolves and I accidentally killed Frostbite thinking it was the other one. I was kicking myself for this and I aided myself as well. I figured dire wolves would be a good source of paragon souls because they spawned in so many packs and whenever I looked on the dino finder there was always a ton of paragon dire wolves. So that's exactly what I spent the next few days doing. Farming up Paragon Direwolf Souls. There were tons of these guys and I needed as many as I could get because this was going to be my main dino that we were going to ride on for the bosses. So I went ahead and killed every single Paragon Direwolf that I could find in the area. Thankfully the dino tracker made it a lot easier but like I mentioned earlier, these guys would just spawn in on the droves. So we continued killing them well into day 97. And then we had found the perfect direwolf, an Amiga Gamma Ray direwolf at level 148. I was trying to munch on this corpse, but thankfully I did have my net gun on hand and my very strong bow as well as a bunch of Amiga knockout arrows. So I got to work at trying to knock out this Amiga direwolf, and this was the selected chosen direwolf that we were going to use to pump full of Paragon Souls. Wonderful for it, and us hopefully. After teaming up the Dire Wolf, we decided to call it Bark as well, and then it was time to give it all the Paragon Souls. So we got all these Paragon Souls. Got all these Paragon Souls that we've been getting from Dire Wolves, because Dire Wolves, Paragons just spawn in like crazy, because there's so many Dire Wolves on the map, and they all spawn in. So we're going to feed all these Paragon Souls to our boy. We're going to see what he comes out in. He's got no extra levels at the moment because we haven't obviously leveled him up. 10 million health, 1.2 million damage. His health and his melee damage are actually his highest stats, which is great. Let's test him out on this Anki over here. Wait till we get some stamina. Hold on, let's chuck one of these into him. You know what, I'll probably chuck a health potion into him as well. Let's see what we do. 400k. Now that's with the Gamma Ray, I know it scales off their health, but let's come over here and attack this Zombie Anki. 400k damage. Alright, we need to test this guy up against a boss. However, before a boss fight, it needed a saddle armor. So we crafted up a Journeyman saddle armor and imbued it with boss essence to give it as much protection as possible. And then it was time to kill a boss. We nuked the Absorbent Dodo Wyvern in seconds and then figured it was time to take on the Absorbent God. Essentially, this is what you needed to do. Craft the god egg, chuck the soul of the god that you wanted to fight into the egg, and then it summons in the god. Once you kill the god, you then can feed that to your tanks to make it a god, once again doubling its stats. So my plan here was to feed the god soul to my absorbent wyvern in hopes that we could then go ahead and kill the absorbent group god, which is an even higher tier of boss. I don't even think they're the final bosses. So, luckily for us, our first god was a giant snail that it didn't even bother attacking us back. Nonetheless, it had a crap ton of health, so I had to go back to base, grab myself the Deinonychus, and use that with its bleed effect and gamma ray to kill the absorbent god. I collected its soul and went ahead and fed it to Big Boy, doubling Big Boy's stats in the process up to 100 million HP as well. I was super happy about this and Big Boy was going to be an absolute beast when it came to tanking all of the damage from any other boss. So with the Absorbent God defeated, it was then time to try and get the Gamma Ray God defeated. My planning here was obviously to feed Bark so that he would become even stronger as well. First off, I had to make sure that I could actually defeat the God, so I went ahead and tried to fight the Prime Supernova Megapithecus. Now, I don't know what the hell collected us up in this tornado, but I tell you what, 
It is super annoying and we actually ended up losing a tame because of this. Our Amiga Gamma Ray Deinonychus that had been imbued with a Paragon Soul was killed. Thankfully, I was able to defeat the Prime Supernova Mega Picatus. However, heralding the fact that I could now go ahead and defeat the Lord Potential. So, once again, we defeated... So it was then time for the Gamma Ray God, and this was a giant Uranio that was able to summon down Gamma Ray Beams. Thankfully, my absorbent Wyvern was just an absolute beast at absorbing all this damage. The only downside, obviously, I had to keep a very close eye on its HP and its stamina to ensure that we didn't die. The moment we died, everything else would be wiped out, and obviously, we didn't want that. So I kept a very close eye on the health and stamina, and by the time I went to close the inventory screen, it was gone. It was dead. Just like that, we had killed the Gamma Ray God. So I fed the Gamma Ray God Soul into Bark to make him even stronger. Here we go, Gamma Ray God Soul. Let's jump off. Let's do it. I'm hope. Oh, 28.1 million health. It was then time to face the next god on the list, the Comet God. Now, this was the same variant that absolutely nuked Fatality earlier, and I was actually very dangerous here because I forgot to put up the shield just in time as it spawned in, and it actually managed to get a couple of hits off on our tanks. Thankfully, nothing died, however, and we were able to make very quick work of the Comet God. He went down super quickly, even faster than the Gamma Ray and the Absorbent God. And just like that, we had defeated the Comet God. So I fed the Comet Soul into our Deinonychus to make that even stronger. And then I went and fought the Comet God again and fed it to our Comet Fenra to make him even stronger. Then it was time to farm up the God Souls so that we could fight the Absorbent, oh sorry, the Guardian group God. This involved us killing all of the other tiers of God, such as the Shield God, the Reflective God, the Absorbent God, the Collective God, and the Controller God. Alrighty guys, here we go. I am praying that we can f f freaking do this. We got our three guys. They are upgraded as much as I could within the time limit. We've got no more Paragon Souls. I may have left the Paragon Soul upgrading a little bit too late without realizing that that was gonna be the way that we moved forward. But this is it. We've got the Amiga Altar. We're gonna try and summon the Guardian God. We've got our Absorbent uh, Wyvern back here and I'm praying that she's gonna be able to... I just realized it's a female and we called her Big Boy. I am so dumb. I'm praying, hold on, how long's the cooldown timer? I don't know. I'm praying that we can survive this. We've got 15 seconds. We're just gonna pop everything. Let me get behind my dudes here real quick. Oh shit, oh shit, no, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Right, don't stress, don't stress. All right, here we go, four, we're just gonna do that. Yo, what, is, it's a rock elemental. 7.5 billion HP. He's throwing boulders. Bro, we can't even hit him. Why can't I hit him? I also can't use potions. Why can I not use any potions? Oh, now we're hitting him. Yo, go. Go, fellas. Deal some damage. Bro, he's got 7.5 billion health. What do I do here? I'm actually gonna jump off and I think I'll do it now here. This is scary jumping off, tell you what. Oh, that was close. I don't know if you guys just saw there, our stamina was just practically non-existent because we jumped off. Okay, we're just gonna fly away here. Yeah, I'm not sure if that extra Deinonychus is actually doing extra damage or not. Part of me is hoping that it is. Alrighty guys, we did just lose one of our Deinonychuses. Uh, I must have just wandered outside of the freaking range. Annoying, but there it is there. You can see there, just dying. We are slowly, whoa, paying attention here. Gotta pay attention. What's going on? We having some technical difficulties? That was scary, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what just happened there. But I pooed my pants a little bit.
Did I throw the Fender out? What is going on? Where did my Fender go? I don't know where my Fenra went. Okay, apparently my Fenra has just fucking vanished because that's its saddlebag right there. That is bullshit. My Fenra is just gone. It's just gone. What the fuck? Here we go, guys. This is it. He's gonna die. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. That took so freaking long. Oh my god. Bro, I'm so annoyed about our dinos disappearing. Like, straight up, we lost freaking Fenra and one of our Deinonychuses as well that we brought. Granted, it's like only one of those Deinonychuses. We didn't really need it all that much. Let's do it. Feed it to it. Boom. Oh, shit. It's got that look on it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We're well past the 100 days. Welcome to Ark's Vidalheim, a modded map that features elements of every map on Ark. It is an awesome looking map, heavily inspired by dwarves and Lord of the Rings. So we have 100 days to go ahead and conquer this map and defeat its bosses and the dwarven denizens that occupy the area. By utilizing the S variants that are found throughout the map, can we do it? Well, let's find out. And so it began like many other adventures before it, gathering our basic resources beachside so that we can make our basic tools such as the stone pickaxe. With the stone pickaxe, obviously grabbed some basic flint, crafted up a spear, and got our first kill on this unsuspecting dodo victim. Once again, the dodo falls prey to my hubris. We then went ahead and decided to kill a level 30 Dillo. Now, I did have a slight heart attack thinking this thing was a super high level. Thankfully, it wasn't, however, and I was able to get some basic hides. Found myself a Pigo Mastix, and, well, I thought we could try and make some friends instead of enemies, but he decided to take my Mijo Berries and get the hell out of here and Please. never return. Yo! Oh, well. <laughs> uh, this is going to end very badly for me. Goodbye, sweet world. I, can I make it onto this? What are they? I'm dead here anyway. Yep. Cool. Saw that coming. Well, bruh. You know what I don't miss? This. This is what I don't miss. So after dying a bunch of times, I managed to get a mortar and pestle up and run in on a little tiny foundation. Now, on the beach side, obviously nice and safe, I then found this level 102 Parasaur, who appeared to be pretty stuck in the rocks. So, with those new narcotics that had made up, I decided to make some Trank Arrows and start trying to Trank this Parasaur out. Perfecto. While that was taming up, I then found some pure Gold Ore, which I mined, and I had never seen this before. Thankfully, the Parasaur did tame up successfully, and we now had our first tame, who we decided to call Duckbill. Later that night, I ventured out into the jungle surrounding the beach, and I found this Volonosaur. Now, I obviously wanted to try and tame it, so I tried throwing some bowlers at it to see if I could bowler it. It had been a very long time since I had tamed the Volonosaur. Don't judge me. I tried lobbing some Trank Arrows into it and found out it was a level 168. So I got to work taming up some Stigmia Locks to help me knock out the Volonosaur, and I successfully tamed up Headbutt. Now with Headbutt in tow, Duckbill, and some Trank Arrows and a Crossbow, I got to work on trying to knock out this Volonosaur. Alongside Headbutt almost killing the Volonosaur, I was successfully able to chase after it while it was running away due to the high torpor, and managed to knock it out. 168 Volonosaur knocked out. Headbutt, you're an actual machine, little dude. It was then time to gather some prime meat for the Volonosaur, so I found a stego and kited it around into some lava so that I could harvest it and kill it nice and easy. Thankfully, I was able to get a couple of pieces of prime meat from harvesting up this stego, and I took it straight back to the Volonosaur, managing to tame it up and it coming out at level 250. Now, I was actually super disappointed with the Volonosaur because I feel like they had nerfed it into the ground and it had been a very long time since I had tamed up a Volonosaur. But nonetheless, it was still our strongest team that we had, so I got to work at firing a barrage of spines into everything and anything surrounding us, giving us a chance to try it out. We also tried out its shotgun attack, and like I said, I'm pretty sure they've absolutely nerfed this guy into the ground. I do remember people complaining they were OP for PvP, but I was still sad. 
I found these loot crates as well, and I got some Mastercraft Gilly and an Ascendant Anki saddle, just up from where we tamed the Volonosaur. So I got some pretty good loot from these little spots here, and I was excited to come back. I then decided to try and fight the Stego and a bunch of Stigmiolocks the next day, and I found a couple of caves, where I entered and I found that the bats were ridiculously high level and I had to get the hell out of there ASAP. I then found myself in a bit of predicament, up against a level 222 Deinonychus with no stamina and a bunch of bleed happening. So I decided to yeet myself off a couple of cliffs hoping to lose the Deinonychus along the way and not lose barrage in the process. However, I managed to somehow pick up two extra raptors along the way. I tried to make the jump across the gap and failed miserably. Was this going to be the end of barrage? I was really hoping it wasn't. We had raptors on my ass trying to munch it away and I just needed to get away from these guys. So in one final last ditch attempt, I decided to turn on them and try and fight them with no stamina and a tiny amount of health remaining. Thankfully, I was able to kill them. Where the Deinonychus went, I don't know. I then found the Blue Orb. However, I did not know that this was the Blue Orb at the time. It was a really cool little spot. I also found a Dwarven Forge. I then got into an altercation with a Pomeo Scorpius that I was trying to kill, and I got knocked out by it. I tried to get Barrage to come and help kill it, but literally, it was just useless. Barrage was just doing no damage, and the Scorpion killed me. So I made my way back to my little smithy, made a bit of flak armor so that I could hopefully survive the journey back to Barrage and reclaim my body. Thankfully, I was able to make it back there and Barrage was still alive, only just killing the scorpion when I got back there. How terrible. They really nerfed Volonosaurs into the ground. Like, it's really sad. And then disaster struck. So I'm going to try and figure out what this next question mark is. Hopefully it's something exciting. Well, fudge knuckles. I am an idiot. I couldn't see the floor where the ground was and Barrage is now dead. Ah, that's bloody wonderful. So after the fall of Barrage, it was time for Duck Build to shine and I found this weird teleporter, which actually took me up onto a floating island located throughout Svartalheim, which was absolutely awesome. So I did set up a little bit of a base there, just a foundation and a storage box, and I found this next location full of skulls and a bridge. Essentially what I was doing was traveling around the map looking at all the question marks trying to see what they were when I wandered into a cave and got trapped by a bunch of hyenodons. Unfortunately, Duck Bill was now dead as well. With Headbutt in tow, I found the Golden Mines of Moria. I think that's what it's called? The Golden Mines? No, no Mines of Moria? The, the mountain. Can't remember what the mountain is called. The Kingdom Under the Mountain, something like that from The Hobbit with small rests. So we jumped down there to take a look at all the gold and see what was down here. And I was hoping we could open the chests, but alas, we couldn't. The king, king under the mountain, that's what he's called. I can't remember off the top of my head. So I explored that for a little bit and then journeyed back outside and found a little bit of a farmstead with a little house here. So at least I knew I could get some crops from this location. I'm pretty sure it had all four different crops here. So that made things a little bit easier if we wanted to try and tame any herbivores later down the line. We could simply come out to this farm and grab the crops that we needed. I also found another Dwarven Forge in a little bit of a settlement. However, it was heavily guarded by a Serratosaurus, so I didn't really want to go down there. I found a 174 Iguanodon and knocked that out as well in the process and fed a Mejo Berry to a Mose Chops, taming that up as well. Then, as the Iguanodon was about to tame up, a Kano decided to come along and absolutely freaking tear it a new asshole. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, this is the typical CJ lock. So after that setback, I decided to head up to the floating isle and build a little bit of a base there. When I came back down, however, there was a Serratosaurus trying to kill me once again. I just, you just can't escape it. So my plan here was to try and get it off the edge of the cliff. So hopefully I would be left in peace. Thankfully that plan worked absolutely perfectly. That couldn't have gone any better. I then found a level 66 raptor, bowled it, and got to work at tranking that out. Now, it did have some friends in the area as well that I wanted to go ahead and try and knock out as well. So I found a level 21 tech raptor, which I also knocked out because I needed my own raptor pack, and then a 187 tech raptor. Tamed all these raptors up and got them into some cryopods, and then I also found a 162, and I tamed up another stigmiolock. 
as I just could not find headbutt for me. I think we died while I was offline from the server and it just disappeared. The 162 Raptor came back and I finished knocking that out, making it our second strongest Raptor. We had the Tech Raptor, which was slightly stronger. So I had successfully tamed up my own Raptor pack and I was ready to dominate Svartalheim with them. Or so I thought. Until I found a level 18 Berserk Raptor and thought, you know what, screw it. Let's send in the Raptor squad and see how we go against this Berserk Raptor. We hadn't faced one of the Berserk Raptors before and it absolutely annihilated our poor Raptors. Our 105 went down just like that. I don't think our even, our, even our level 21 Raptor actually made it to this fight. It died before we even got into the fight. The Berserk Raptor though was slowly going down 1.5k health and then our other Raptor died as well. So it was just me, my Tech Raptor and the Berserk Raptor. I decided to leg it to try and get out of there, but I just not fast enough and it causes you to glitch out and get stuck inside of it. So just like that, my dominating Raptor squad was killed by a level 18 Berserk Raptor alongside myself. So I put killing the Berserk Raptor on hold for the time being and found my base spot. I built a ramp and everything so I could get to the base spot and this is where I was going to build for the 100 days. Up here in this waterfall. I felt like this was very dwarven like building into the mountainside with the water running down. And you can see where I'd set my foundations up. Pretty much that entire section was going to be my base. So I placed my smithy, my refining forge and then I got to work at finishing off the berserk raptor. With a carefully placed headshot I was able to finally kill it and loot it where I got some diamonds which I hadn't seen before, some obsidian flux as well, and some energy crystals. Now all of this will be used for the boss fights. I then tried taming up some Andrew Sarkis's, however, literally everything in the vicinity had something to say about it. I only managed to get this level 18 one through sheer luck and because it was so le low level, that allowed me to tame it up. This 162 got bitten in the ass by a Kano. It did chase after it for a while and it chased after me first before actually getting eaten by the Kano but the taming progress still reset. So with my level 18 Andrew Sarkis, I managed to do a metal run and get some metal into my refining forge back at the base. I then headed out and knocked out this 174 Scorpion as I wanted something that can knock stuff out. And I also knocked out this level 24 Raptor. I mean, it wasn't anything super interesting. And then I found this big boy. A Paleo Arc Parasaur. I was trying to rebuild my teams after losing them all the last few days so I figured this was going to be a good start and this level 66 paleo arc parasaur looked dope and f I felt like it was a good start to rebuilding everything and just like that we managed to knock it out I then went toe to toe with a level 18 ceratosaurus with this ascendant pike that I had found and thankfully I was actually able to kill it due to the fact that I had flak armor and it did so much damage it was then time to test out my new scorpion the 174 tamed up and he was great. We managed to kill the level 24 trike. I'm not going to say with ease because we did take a little bit of damage. I also knocked out a 174 raptor close to the base. However, it was just on the edge of the water. So it drowned, which is exactly what you want to see. That low level raptor then died to a Smilodon, but I was able to kill it with my... And Stinger was very low on health after all these tussles. And I didn't realize that the Paleo Arc Parasaurs actually fought back, as the one I had knocked out earlier got killed by a Smilodon again. So I had tried to get this 168 hopefully knocked out, because these guys also aren't bowlerable, because they're much bigger. And they also attack you back, because they're obviously part of mod. So thankfully I was able to knock out this 168 Parasaur, but it once again cost me everything. Because a Paleo Arc Andrew Sarkis decided to aggro on me nearby and Stinger unfortunately fell victim to the damage of the Andrew Sarkis. But wait for it, watch this. This, this is where things get really great. I think I'm dead. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No Stinger mate. Oh, this dude was one shot. Are you fucking kidding me? The point percentage changed it. Oh no, Stinger! <laughs> and our Parasaur is under attack by something as well. Wonderful. Back to square one it is. Oh man, I can't believe it. Oh, I can because it's typical of me. No! Get off me damn Parasaur. Bro, I can't hit it. 
Come on, man. I just need a goddamn herbivore. Oh, let's go. Oh, you are beautiful. I will so after taming up the Parasaur, I then went on a rampage gathering as many Narco Berries as I could so that I could venture out and get to work on trying to knock out a Paleo Arc Carnotaurus. This plan did not go out very effectively. I was trying to climb up this ridge so that I could hopefully dodge its attacks when, well, obviously these guys are much faster than their standard Carnotaurus cousins. So I was definitely not able to outrun these guys. However, I did have the idea of actually going inside the house as they wouldn't be able to get me. But I died before that happened. Thankfully, I respawned near my base and ran back here, grabbed my body, and I was able to get inside the house and continue tranking out of the Carno. It was a mission and a half, and obviously because of the AI, it did decide to run away from me. And it kind of just got stuck up in this corner of the fort, which I obviously wasn't complaining about because it allowed me to shoot tranks straight into its butthole. Unfortunately, however, it did manage to get away from me and I lost track of it. And it also had a friend nearby in the area, a 156 Carno. So after dying to that multiple times and not being able to track down my 162, I did successfully manage to find it and its torpor was pretty high. At this stage though, however, I couldn't get the shots into it because I was just getting camped by its other friend. Look, and so, <laughs> it's just a cluster of dying. So eventually I did manage to get the Smilodon and the other Kano inside of that cave to some lava where they fell into the pit, I know how sad for them, and died. Thankfully, I was able to find my 162 Kano that I was in the process of knocking out and one final arrow was able to put it to sleep. Finally, after all that time. I then found an Ovis, killed it for some mudden, and died to an Alpha Raptor while trying to get the mudden into the Kano. Multiple times. It's, it's never easy. Never easy. When someone else on the server decided to come and save me with their Thyla, and don't forget guys, you can join in on these playthroughs. My servers are completely free to join, and I do have a Patreon if you are after extra rewards. Thankfully, I was able to tame up my new Kano, and I called it Hornster. This guy was going to be great to get around. But first I had to die some more. I then took him out for a bit of a test run after crafting his saddle in the smith and hit for about 130 damage. He also applied a bleeding effect to dinos as well which dealt percentage health and damage. So after taming up a couple of dudes I then went onto my most shops and did a berry run as I had lost my parasaurs and I managed to find these guys. Now these guys were a modded creature as well and they are the Plateosauruses. These guys are once again another type of herbivore however they have a really cool ability that allows you to tame herbivores easier. So essentially what you do is you put narco berries into their inventory and they ferment them allowing you to make two extra new items. And so I wanted to get a bunch of these guys going as each of them will be able to fertilize the narco berries. And I just wanted to kind of take him for a bit of a test run. So we knocked out that first one and then we knocked out this level 60. All right, our first one is just about to tame up. These guys, oh, that was sick. Okay, well, our Plediosaurus is dead. I uh, didn't realize it was following me and it went off the edge into a Rex and now it's gone. <laughs> God damn it. After falling off the ravine, I also tamed up an order who we called Neck Cushion. Neck Cushion was going to come in clutch when we eventually did our artifact runs for the artifacts. Now here are the new items that the Plateosaurus can make. So Narco Berry Jam, which allows you to tame herbivores quicker and golden at Narco Berry Jam. Great items to have when you need to tame up a bunch of herbivores. So I also tamed up an Iguanodon here as well to help me get around. Well, that could have been disastrous. Wait, is, is it walking on the bridge? Yo, this dude's a freaking spider, man. Look at this. What is going on? What a legend. I then had the aggro of a level 54 Berserk Raptor and I didn't feel ready to try and fight one of these guys with Hornster. Didn't really want to lose him as we were still kind of just setting up, like we had so many setbacks. I didn't want to lose Hornster. So I headed to the bridge to try and get the Berserk Raptor to fall down and thankfully it did and I didn't have to deal with it today. Hallelujah, Hornster was going to live another day. I then decided to take him out for a bit of a test run just to get some more levels and to deal some damage so that we could 
just use him for some stuff, get some hide, get some meat, and just get some levels with him so that we could start taking on all the Berserk dinos that were located on the Survival Pine map. I also found a 156 Dodicarus that I got to work on knocking out and successfully knocked out as I was going to need a resource gatherer for stone if I was going to build the Dwarven Settlements. Now I also found a 156 Platyosaurus which I knocked out as well as a 162 which I also knocked out as well. I was trying to get as many of these guys as I could so I could get as many fermented narco berries. However the 156 did fall to an aloe and carno pack which just kind of fell off the mountainside which is always great when you're trying to do some taming. And dinos fall from the sky to kill your ones that you've knocked out. Thankfully the 162 did tame up alongside another low level one so that I could get these guys back to base and get them breeding and get them producing all the fermented narco berries I could possibly want. It also helped that they had quite a lot of weight so that I could actually do metal runs with them while we waited till we got an Anki, as that weight was going to be invaluable for transporting metal back to base, as there are no flyers on this map. Now, thankfully, I did find an S Anki at 124. Now, the S Ankies are Svartalheim's variants for the map, and they take massive amounts of reduced damage. So it takes so much more to knock them out. And I obviously didn't want to utilize all my Trank Arrows straight away, so I actually butted it with clubs, my crossbow, and then I accidentally hit the Stego in the process, resulting in, well, you guessed it, my death occurring. Upon returning to the Anki, I continued clubbing it. I did have a couple of Trank Arrows, but the Anki was in the process of running away from me because it couldn't catch me, so I wanted to save those for later. Thankfully, I did make a bunch of clubs so I could slowly club this guy out and we successfully knocked him out. It just took so long to get him knocked out. I successfully made up some Narco Berry Jam, so I wanted to test out how much taming effectiveness it gave. And it gave about 8% to the level 156 Dodiculus, which is okay, but it didn't really feel like it was worth the effort as you do need a bunch of other resources in order to make them. So it was a good kickstart for the tame, but I just decided to tame up the Dodicarus with Nijo Berries. Thankfully, the Dodicarus was tamed up and it came out really well. And we also tamed up the Anki as well. The Anki took freaking forever to tame up. So many days. But thankfully, it was tamed up. We now had our basic resource dinos so that we could gather all our resources that we needed. On the way back home, there was a Berserk Raptor blocking the path, so it was now time for Hornster to shine. However, I wanted him to have a little bit of a backup while we did this. So I threw out Sonic, and with Sonic and Hornster, I was hoping that that was going to be enough to be able to kill the Berserk Raptor, because Sonic had 6.5k health, which was much more than my Kano. So we got to work at attacking it, and now these guys are also immune to the bleed effect, so they don't actually take that percentage-based health damage. And it was a slow and tedious process, but I think Hornster was definitely up to the task of defeating the Berserk Raptor. Let's go! Now Svartalheim also has an aberration area, and I spent a few days trying to actually find the area to access this, as I had no idea, and I kind of wanted to go into Svartalheim blind. So eventually I did find this place that opens up and it actually takes you to the Aberrant Zone. After you make your way through all the mines and everything like that, you do find yourself in the Aberrant Zone. Now you're probably wondering, well CJ, why did you want to go to the Aberrant Zone? And the answer to that question is Maywings. Down below here there are Maywings that you can tame up and obviously due to the fact that there are no flies on this map, Maywings are the best way to get around. Now, I had successfully found my first Maywings, however, it said they needed Extraordinary Gibble. And I, I was like, surely that's not the case, right? Maywings don't need that sort of thing when you want to tame them. They just need the basic berries or meat or whatever. So I ignored that fact for the now, thinking that the Spyglass was bugged. Cleared the area of the S Baryonyxes around us. These guys look sick as well, because I really wanted to tame that 174 Maywing up, as obviously it was a super high level, almost max level, because 180 was the max level. So I got to work killing all these guys so that I could get to work on taming up some Maywings around us. 
After successfully trapping the Maywing, I went ahead and got it knocked out. It only taking 14 damage meant it just absolutely churned through my train guard. So uh, it looks like we can't, these S Maywings must only require extraordinary kibble, which obviously we don't have any extraordinary kibble. So we're going to have to rethink our strategy because... We ain't taming a Maywing, that's for sure. I don't know if there are normal Maywings on the map, but the S ones are definitely out of question at the moment. So after the realization that I wasn't gonna be able to tame any Maywings up, I then decided to explore the area and found that there is actually another zone here. The radiation zone from Aberration is also present on Svartalheim. This map is absolutely massive. We then found the normal sort of Aberration zone. However, I didn't actually venture too far into it as there was an S Ravager guarding the entrance and Hornster was also very low on HP so I didn't really want to risk it. It was then time for a resource run. So we took Bolt our Anki out on a metal run just above our base which made things a lot easier as I could simply just fall from above, jump off Bolt at the last second and get the metal into the refining forge just like that. In this case it didn't actually work too well because obviously we hit the cliff above my base but we just whistled Bolt to follow us and just like that we were able to get metal in there. So we also took Sonic out for a bunch of stone as well. With those resources gathered I was finally able to start making some of the Dwarven structures. Now these Dwarven structures required uncooked metal, stone and wood. So I made a bunch of the foundations and started placing them around where I wanted them to go. I didn't really have a particular design in mind for this base. I just kind of wanted to make it and see where it took me. So I obviously used some window walls and normal walls just to give it a bit of depth and detail so that it wasn't all the same sort of structure and just kind of got boring. So you can see that I had a bunch of resources, but I still needed more. So I took Sonic out for another stone run and I took Bolt out for another metal run. With those extra resources, I was now able to finish the main shell of the base. So this is the shell of the base. Now it's not completely finished. I do want to get some more torches down on these pillars and on the outside just here on these pillars. But uh, yeah, this is the shell of the base. I also went ahead and crafted up myself a journeyman long neck rifle as well as a bunch of ammunition from the blueprint that I found at the beginning of those drops. And then I found a 156S Thylacolio out in the Redwoods. So I built a trap and decided to try and kite it towards the trap. Obviously with my crossbow because, well, I wasn't going to waste my darts missing all my shots trying to get it in here. Eventually, however, it did get in the trap. It did maul me quite a little bit. Net Cushion had something to say about that. And then I got to work tranking it out with my brand new long neck rifle. My god, this thing just absolutely absorbed all of the darts. However, eventually I was able to knock it out. All I needed to do now was get some cooked mutton. So I added some extra structures to my base, such as the Dwarven Smithy, the S Plus crafting station, and then I headed back out to my S Thylacolio before it woke up in to try and tame it. I was cutting it very close. Thankfully, Hornster was pretty fast getting around the map, and the map is kind of small in terms of surface area on above. So I was able to get back here relatively easily enough, and I fed it the cooked mutton that I had. The Thyla tamed up successfully, and I called him Lightning. He had decent stats as well, 38 points in HP, and his melee damage was kind of lacking, but we didn't really care too much about the melee damage, as he has the bleed effect that does damage over time based on the target's max health anyway. So I wasn't too stressed about that, but with Lightning in tow now, I felt pretty unstoppable. His damage, like I said, was kind of low, only hitting for 104. Hornster was actually hitting harder than him. Uh, but we did have that Nash ability that the Thylacolios can use. Plus, it's also easier to get around the map now because these guys can climb up vertical surfaces and walls and stuff like that. So I thought I'd try and take him out against a Paleo Arc Tyrannosaur. And uh, as you can see, it was a bit of a bloodbath. We did manage to kill it, it just took us a little bit of time to get there. On the way home, I stopped in the ice biome killing some Kairukus so that I could get some organic polymer so I could make some more structures back at the base when I spotted a level 72 female Paleo Arc Greater Yudi. 
Now my thought process behind this was to tame this guy up so that I could get the UD eggs and use those as kibble in order to get myself a Maywing. This process was very tedious and obviously teetering on the edge of absolute craziness because I knocked out the Paleo Arc UD underwater. Wasted all my darts for nothing. I then found a level 30 Uteranus instead and I was like, yep, I will settle for that in order to get myself some eggs. Successfully knocking it out with my Brands Bacon new long neck. I love this thing, it's so good. I love it, it's great. Knocking out the UD and taming it up in the process as well. So I just had to get these guys back to the soul terminals in order to produce some eggs for me. I also got an Ascendant Shotgun Blueprint on the way back to base and decided to hit up some of the other loot drops located around the area. And I got some decent stuff, some sickles, some fur gauntlets, but I managed to transfer all of that into the base and built myself a refrigerator, a generator, and got all of those placed down as well. I hit up some beaver dams the next day in order to try and get some cementing paste, making sure I dropped all that wood out of there because I know you guys would yell at me if I didn't. I only got a little bit of cementing paste, but it was all I kind of needed. And there were dinotheriums nearby. I didn't really want to risk facing the wrath of a herd of dinotheriums and all the Castoroiduses. Lightning was already pretty weak as it is. And then I found some dwarven archers out in the swamp. Now these guys had fire arrows that absolutely decimated lightning. We took 520 damage from one of their arrows, but I decided to return and try and fight them to see what they actually dropped, as these guys were going to be key in ordering to be able to fight the bosses at the end of the 100 days. As they dropped Mithril Lore and a bunch of other goodies that I would need to craft the summoners for the bosses. I also copped a full on blow from a Dano Sukus chomp. Well, almost copped it. Luckily I got out of there, otherwise that would have killed lightning for sure. I did, however, jump off to go to the toilet real quick and came back to lightning getting attacked by a Serratosaurus and almost killing lightning in the process. So I had to spend a bit of time healing up lightning so that we could return the next day. Upon returning, I headed back into the Dwarven Ruins to kill me some more dwarves because once again, I needed as much Mithril lore as I could get my grubby little hands on. I was a little bit scared, I'm not going to lie. I was trying to get their aggro. I didn't want to fight them all at once and pull them underneath this little structure here so that I could fight them systematically one at a time. And uh, I didn't realize that they could do this, but apparently they can. We also take headshot damage, but they also are able to hit you on the back of your mount. Now, at the time of this, I had no idea and I wasn't really paying too much attention to my own health when I got shot off the back by Dwarven Archer. You can guess what happened. Goodbye lightning, goodbye neck cushion. We lost both of them due to that tussle. So I returned on Hornster to take on a Berserk Raptor. Thankfully, Hornster's attack was able to actually knock back the Raptor, causing us to not take much damage. However, it did enrage nearby creatures and we unfortunately had to commit the unthinkable. I didn't mean to kill you. Oh, I feel terrible. I then went ahead and took on a Berserk Thylacolio that I spotted from across the lake and decided to try and kill him. Now, same situation, the knockback attack from Hornster was actually enough to knock the Thyla back from us and prevent us from taking damage until we hit a rock where we were kind of stuck from moving and in that case we did take a little bit of damage, but nothing too serious that we couldn't handle. It was then time to take on another Berserk Thylacolio. This one a little bit stronger at level 72 with 16.5k health. However, this time I prepared myself to be able to walk straight back in a straight line before actually hitting anything. And then took it into the water where I finished it off. Successfully killing it and walking on the bottom of the lake for some reason. I have no idea why that happened and grabbing all the loot out of it. I also tamed up a neck cushion 2.0 and a lady friend so that they could have sexy time together. I then found a Alpha Paleo Arc Carnotaurus at 162. Now this guy was the strongest dino we had faced at 45,000 HP. Thankfully, however, it did take the bleeding damage and I was able to claim its loot. I also started breeding up Neck Cushion 2.0 and his female misses. So a uh, casual yellow drop with an Ascendant Thylacolio saddle. Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much for that. That is kind of crazy. 
I then continued drop farming, finding more ascendant stuff. Then I went back down to the aberration zone. Now the plan here was to try and find a shadow main to tame up and I successfully found a 180 female down here alongside a level 24. Obviously I was going to try and get that 180 female. It was going to take a hell of a lot and they aggroed on me so that made matters worse. Thankfully however someone else on the server had actually set up a trap down here much earlier. So we were kind of lucky in that regard because we could use that to hopefully tame up the shadow main. First I had to kill the level 24 shadow main which I did. And then I had to try and get the 180 into the trap. How I was going to do that? Well, it was going to be a challenge. Kind of on there. Oh, I got something in there. Level 24. That's not what we want. At this stage, it's just loop to loop. I wonder if it's worth me trying to get in here. I think this works. And then do that. Ooh, baby. Yeah, that looked like it worked. A little bit of a cheaty cheaty way, <laughs> but I'll take it. After trapping the shadow main, I then continued around looking for other shadow mains that I could potentially tame up at the same time. I only found the 174, which I killed, and then I went ahead and got a bunch of fish so that I could tame the 180. There was no point in me getting the fish first and then trying to get the shadow main just because it takes so long. Well, it doesn't take long for the fish to actually spoil. I returned back to the aberration zone and they weren't sleeping because it was the middle of the day. So I had to wait for them. So what did I do? I tamed up a Shinehon, this little cutie. Look at how cute they are. I don't think I ever used them for anything. And then I also tamed up some dung beetles because, well, I was going to need them. Then I could finally begin taming up the 180 Shadow Mane. I did kill the level 24 with a crossbow arrow and slowly began the process of taming up these Shadow Manes. I do wish they weren't bugged where you fed them the fish and they just didn't get the proper thingy. But thankfully, it was just a waiting game with this trap involved. So after catching more fish, I decided to wander up to take a look for some stuff when an aberrant megalosaurus was alive and well, I tried to get Hornster out, but well, yeah, that, that didn't work out for me very well, did it? Thankfully, I was able to get back to my body utilizing my Iguanodon that I tamed up very, very early. So thankfully, Hornster was still okay. We did have someone from the server helping us out, just keeping an eye on things. And then I could finally go back to trying to finish taming this damn Shadow Mane. Let's go. Finally tamed it up. Oh, hallelujah. Let's get out of the, out of the, out of the trap. Out of the, out of the trap, please. Bro, are you kidding me? Get out of the trap. Let's take a look at its stats. Yo, that's kind of crazy. 50 HP base. Let's go. I'll take it. On the way out of the aberration zone, I also tamed up two Featherlights and decided to test out just how strong our new Shadow Mane was. Obviously, it paled in comparison to these heavily mutated, imprinted, leveled up Shadow Manes. And of course, the first bite that I received from a Onyx it gives me Mega Rabies because that's just typical of my luck to receive Mega Rabies on the first bite of an Onyx bite. I then also decided to check out some of the other players' bases on the servers, and this one was done by Zandrama, and it absolutely blew my mind. I loved it. I'm not the biggest Cahoon when it comes to building bases, so I love seeing designs like this that allow me to get my creative juices flowing. I then also knocked out a male Uteranus so that I could get a mate-boosted female, so that we could get those eggs production going, so that we could get that Maywing, hopefully. I then did get into tussle with it uh, against the Chalice Ethereum, however, but we were able to deal with it rather well enough. So I just cried it up and decided to head back to base. Back at base, I decided to get to work on building my greenhouse. I wanted it coming out down below the bottom of the base here where the waterfall flows. So I decided to go ahead, place all of my foundations and just get to work on building the bad boy up. I also tamed up a Fiomia so that we could get a bunch of poop. 
And I killed another Berserk Raptor. I then got to work on trapping a bunch more fish as I was going to try and get a male Shadow Man so that I could breed these guys together. As I was going to use these guys for the boss fights because obviously they're Shadow Mains, they're not easy to tame up. But it's an easy way to get AD armor on some dinos um, and I hadn't found any Rex blueprints or tamed any Rexes and I just genuinely like Shadow Mains more than Rexes to be honest. Alrighty guys, we've got a 174 male Shadow Mane that right here that we're going to try and tame up. First things first is I need to get him into the trap. Alright, now he's coming. Ouch. So after sacrificing myself to get the Shadow Mane in the trap, I threw Neck Cushion out to save him from the horrors that are awaiting me from the Shadow Mane. Thankfully, due to my last escapade, I had put a sleeping bag down here in this section of the Aberration Zone. So I thankfully could respawn back here instead of having to struggle getting down here on a single Iguanodon. So that made things a lot easier, and then I just got to work on taming up this Shadow Mane once again, the good old-fashioned way. My plan was simple. Make it go invisible, jump in there with my Shadow Mane, jump off my Shadow Mane, Reclaim my bag and then jump out of there with my shadow mane that way I could get everything from my body as I had stored all the fish baskets on my shadow mane because those things are hella heavy Oh, let's go Oh, so satisfying. This one went a lot smoother than the last one, that's for sure. At least this time we came prepared with enough fish baskets. Oh, baby, I'm excited. We have a breeding pair now, which is wonderful. All right, moment of truth. Let's take a look at the stats between the two of them. And the colors, also very important. Our guy has like... Are they purple or is it just the lighting around here? I think it's just the lighting. We might need to take them out here to take a proper look. Let's take a look here at the stats. So our female got the 50 points in HP, which is absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at our male stats. Here we go. Ooh, 47 points in melee damage. I will take that. It could have been higher. Could have been like we could have gotten less points into food. It was then time to get these guys back to base and get them breeding up. Obviously I needed an army of them and I needed their stats consolidated into the offspring perfectly. I did not have a lot of luck getting that to happen. It took so many days to get the perfect stats that we needed and you can see all the babies that we bred. Thankfully I did get some males with the correct stats, I was just waiting on the females to get the 50 HP and the 47 melee damage. But I was able to get and raise these males up so that they could also contribute to the fighting. It took me a long time to get them. I did find a female that had lower food but I didn't really care because it had the 50 HP and the 47 melee damage. So we got her out and started raising her up. Mind you guys, you guys are seeing this ore cut down. This took me like so many days to get due to the server rates and everything like that and breeding taking a while and all that. So it did take a while, but I finally had my perfect pair, both at 291, both with 50 HP and 47 melee damage. So from there, I could go ahead and continue breeding them up to get the army that I needed to fight the bosses. So I ventured out the next day in hopes to try and find a Serratosaurus. I also wanted to test out these Shadow Mains now that we had some imprinted ones and they hit very hard when I stumbled across a 174 Serratosaurus. I had already made up the Hemogoblin cocktail. It was ready to go in my inventory. So I gave one to my Shadow Mane and fed it to it in hopes that the, the Serratosaurus would get drunk off it and slowly start to tame up. However, that just was not the case. I obviously didn't build the trap big enough and for some reason it was just not getting any drunk whatsoever from the Shadow Main, probably because of the Thorn Mail. So I brought Sonic out to try and do it and fed Sonic the Hemogoblin cocktail and that slowly started working. However, the Serratosaurus just did not want a piece of us. It was ignoring me like crazy. It didn't want to take a bite out of my juicy blue bum. Just whatever I could do, it just didn't want a piece of it. So I just decided to give up on taming this 174 Serratosaurus and just killed it because it just was not attacking us. Even after letting it free from the trap, it would bite me once or twice, 
run away and then never be seen again. Which is really frustrating, because, you know, high-level dinos, you don't find them very often. And he would constantly get in fights with everything around us. You can see there, he got to 20% drunk, and then he kind of just ran off, got hit by something else, and it reset. So, I did manage to find another 180. It was very far from the area, so I did have to kite it back quite a distance to get it back into this trap. But it worked perfectly. I did extend the trap as well, and we used Sonic with the Hemo Goblin Cocktail to get this bad boy drunk so that I could feed it meat up its butt. After getting it drunk and feeding it its food, we managed to tame up the Serratosaurus with it coming out at 269. And I also got the perfect offspring, and then I went ahead and made myself an Ascendant Pump Shotgun from the blueprint that I had earlier. Not realizing that I could have used the Crafting Skill Potion to increase its damage. I placed down an alchemy bench and got to work making a bunch of gunpowder and headed out to some dwarven fortresses to kill some dwarfs in order to get some of the mithril or some diamonds and the energy crystals from them. Because like I said, I was going to need this for the boss fights. And these dwarves put up a hell of a fight. I went back to base, made some shotgun shells and then went to another fortress where I claimed some more loot. And then made my way out into the swamp. This is pretty much what I spent the next few days doing, killing dwarfs, grinding them down, because I was going to need all their resources that they give. Thankfully, nothing bad happened, and I was dealing a crap ton of damage. I went ahead and made up a bunch of mithril ingots, as many as I could make, and we also needed to use the obsidian flux to actually craft those into the other bars that we needed for the boss fights, as you needed to create the gem items. I also teamed up a Smilodon, as I was going to need it to go into the caves, located around Svartalheim, and I figured this guy was going to be the best thing. Well, I think it's safe to say that we have enough Shadow Manes now. Yo, oh, we've got a bright green Shadow Mane as well from one of the mutations. So I'd successfully bred up plenty of Shadow Manes, I just needed to raise them and ensure they were imprinted. So I headed back out once again to the Dwarven Fortresses. Thankfully, these dwarves spawn in pretty quickly, like we would kill them and then the next day or two days it would take for them to respawn and then we could get in. I also went ahead and fought any berserk creatures that I could find, as these guys also dropped the items that I was going to need to fight the bosses once again. I then made my way into my first cave, where we found level 800, level 900, level 700 cave denizens. Even this scorpion at 1,248, an absolutely insane level. Crazy. But I was able to get the artifact of the strong and I did get copies of these artifacts as I did have neck cushion 3.0 on my shoulders so that we could get those artifacts and get doubles of them for each of the bosses. Each of these artifact caves though were very challenging. Like in terms of tames and difficulty and, and things you had to do to actually get to them, they were quite difficult. But we did manage to get artifact of the brute from this swamp cave. Thankfully, I did have a gas mask, so I was able to prevent myself from taking damage. And then I made my way down into these mines, which... There was a lot of dudes down here. And I spotted another entrance down here that we could go through to actually continue through the cave, which I hadn't spotted before. So I made my way up, following the arrows as I did, breaking through any rocks that needed breaking, and eventually found myself into another artifact room filled with Megalosauruses. Thankfully, I was high up, so I could kill them from a distance, and I managed to claim the artifact of the Clever. However, there was more to this mine. As you can see from this Onik, my luck is still intact, considering the first bite that I got gave me Mega Rabies. Thankfully, I was able to survive coming out at half health, but the Rubble Gorm had something to say about that. Thankfully, I invaded it and got the artifact of the Hunter as well in the process. No, oh, don't make me kill the Otters. I'm a monster! All hail the sacred otter. No, don't eat your brethren! You said sacrilege! Don't do it, neck cushion! He's going for both of them! Absolute monster. I then returned back to the swamp cave and claimed the artifact of the pack as well, as I had forgotten that one on the other side. I also got the artifact of the immune from a cave filled with wyverns and bugs. And my bug repellent wore off, so I had to leg it out of that cave so quickly before things started trying to kill me. I saw my life flash before my eyes. Let's go, Artifact of the Devourer. We take those. And I went ahead and killed a bunch of other berserk dinos so that I could get the resources that I needed to create the gem... To create the gem bosses. 
I then headed into the snow cave. Thankfully, I was able to bring my shadow mains as there were Pelovias and Rexes and claimed the artifact of the Sky Lord as well from this cave. Thankfully, nothing too bad happened in these caves, but it was finally time to face the bosses. So I started with the gorilla, crafting myself the gem of the gorilla, as that was the only thing I needed now that I had all the artifacts, and I went ahead and fought the gamma version of the gorilla. The plan here was to do the alphas, however I needed to make sure that I was up to the task of defeating the gammas, and it was already very close to the 100 days milestone. So I had to make sure that I was up to the task of it, and I didn't actually even have enough mithril ore to be able to kill all the alpha bosses. So I settled on Gamma as I figured I would, that would be attainable and we successfully killed the Gamma Megapithecus. Next up was the Broodmother. So I crafted her gem and we got to work on fighting her. With a UD in tow and a Serratosaurus in tow to get some healing off and some buffs, I was hoping that we would be able to deal with her. And thankfully we were. The Broodmother falling to our Shadow Mains as well. Two bosses down, two to go. However, I needed to farm up some more Mithril Ore first, so I headed out to the various Dwarven Fortresses, where I found this Dwarven Soldier riding a Berserk Phylocolio. This thing was terrifying. Thankfully, with my two Shadow Mains, they felt like they were up to the task. You can see there, Berserk Dwarven Rider with 25,000 HP. Successfully killed that and killed this Berserk Therizinosaurus and I actually had the resources that I needed in order to continue the boss fights, thankfully. Once again, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video, which you can download right now using my link in the comments and claim the large bonus pack for free. So next up was the dragon. Now this guy, obviously the dragon's always really tough to fight. I did decide to try and ride on the UD as the auto courage rule wasn't actually working. It just wouldn't do it by itself. So it did take a lot of work and the dragon did slay quite a few of my canes, including the beauty and a bunch of my shadow names as well. We lost quite a lot of them. You can see there five just dropped just like that. Another two there. However, thankfully I was able to finally defeat the Gamma Dragon. I did need to, however, replenish my shadow mains. So I raised some more and then it was time to fight the Dinopithecus King. And all of it was going so well until it wasn't. I got knocked off at the back of my Shadow Mane. Thankfully, I was able to recover and remount it. However, disaster struck as I was stuck and got knocked off once again off my Shadow Mains. And I was killed alongside all my other Shadow Mains. And just like that, the end of the series was here. The 100 days on Ark's Vitalheim was over and I had failed my mission to complete this map in 100 days which just means I'm going to need to revisit it with Ark Survival Ascended. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe down below for more, and I will catch you in the next one.